The plot of this film is purely fictitious. Please do not take it seriously, and please do not imitate it. Any similarity is purely coincidental. Thank you for your support. Your likes and subscriptions are the motivation for my updates. Chapter 1 The Earth Explodes Through the electronic camera equipment on the spacecraft Shall you witness the entire process of the destruction of the Earth? Just now, a super explosion occurred in the core of the Earth. This explosion blew the Earth into pieces. The powerful explosion energy directly accelerated the moon's speed to 137 kilometers per second. According to estimates, the moon will fly directly it leaves the solar system and becomes a watering planet. A huge asteroid belt will appear in the original orbit of the Earth. And at the same time, the entire solar system will become an interstellar pinball battlefield. It is expected that in the next millions of years, all major planets in the solar system will be affected by various attacks from the Earth. Intermittent Bombardment Countless observation data were transmitted to Xiao Yu's brain. Xiao Yu sighed, increased the speed of the spacecraft to the maximum, and fled towards the outside of the solar system. In fact, ten years before the disaster, as the most outstanding scientist in mankind, he obtained doctorates in more than twenty disciplines such as theoretical physics, high-energy physics, astrophysics, material science, mechanical engineering, astronomy, chemistry, and computers. Xiao Yu, who has won more than 20 Nobel medals in a row, has already noticed these signs. Helplessly, Xiao Yu's early warning was ignored by human society and mercilessly ridiculed by his peers. Everyone thought Xiao Yu was crazy. One scientist even shouted excitedly to the media camera, I don't know Xiao Yu is. What kind of evidence is used to draw this conclusion? Is it a dream I had last night? The earth will be destroyed? It's a joke. Even the children in kindergarten know that the earth will continue to exist peacefully. Xiao Yu smiled bitterly and figured it out. Even if human society accepts the early warning, with the current level of human science and technology, there is no way to prevent destruction. Rather than letting human society live in despair, it is better to let them survive the last happy time is over. As a result, Xiao Yu faded out of the scientific world. And within the first two years, he accumulated a huge amount of wealth becoming the world's richest man in one fell swoop, and then started his own plan, relying on his own scientific accomplishment that is at least 20 years beyond that of human society. Xiao Yu spent eight years building mankind's first true interstellar spacecraft and assembled it in geosynchronous orbit. Then, Xiao Yu controlled it on the ground the center relied on the equipment it made to separate its soul. Through the sending equipment, it sent its soul to the main control computer of the spacecraft and merged with it. Then it accelerated without hesitation, broke away from the gravity of the Earth, and headed towards escape from outer space. Xiao Yu has verified that the human spirit, or soul, can last forever under certain conditions. Moreover, abandoning the physical body and integrating the mind and the computer has another advantage, which is that it saves the mass and space occupied by the huge life support system, and the food and drinking water reserves can be reduced to the point of being almost negligible. That's the whole story. It seems that I am the last human being in the universe. The current situation left Xiao Yu speechless. No, it seems that I, who exist purely in a mental state, cannot be considered a human being. However, it's great to have such huge computing power, unlimited energy and unlimited lifespan. Xiao Yu sighed as he felt every detail of his new body. Xiao Yu's new body is 30 meters long, 20 meters wide, and about 5 meters high. The spacecraft as a whole is divided into several areas including material storage room, material processing room, science laboratory, equipment manufacturing room, main control machine room, maintenance channel, etc. There is an extremely sophisticated robot that performs daily maintenance work on the entire spacecraft. In the vast starry sky and the boundless sea of stars, a small spaceship is advancing rapidly with a speed of about 33 kilometers per second. But even so, it will still take about 200 days to reach the nearest gas planet, Jupiter. That's right. The first destination of Xiao Yu's space voyage is Jupiter. Because Jupiter has nearly unlimited nuclear fuel. Although Xiao Yu chose chemical fuel as his spacecraft power for various reasons. After Xiao Yu developed controllable nuclear fusion, he would not hesitate to upgrade the power system to nuclear power. In the astronomical telescope, the direction of the Earth has changed into a large curtain of light. Xiao Yu knew that it was something similar to a tail formed by the evaporation of seawater on the Earth by the sun. These things will be slowly stripped out and scattered throughout the vast universe. The whole process may last for millions of years. In the future, 
Some of the countless fragments formed by the explosion of the Earth will rush towards the Sun. Some will rush into outer space. And the other part will slowly merge during the collision. And eventually form a large planet again. Of course, the quality will be much smaller than before. Hey! Xiao Yu sighed silently in his heart. Seeing his homeland being annihilated like this. And thinking of the 7 billion human beings who died in an instant. Xiao Yu felt very uncomfortable. It's a pity that I don't have the ability to save them. However, this explosion was a bit weird. As if it was controlled by some weird external force. Xiao Yu activated his huge computing power and made some logical calculations. But there was no result at all. After getting the result, I had to give up this idea. Where in the vast universe is home? Xiao Yu felt a little sad. But he adjusted it in an instant. With my current computing power, my technological development speed can match that of all mankind. Even at this speed, I can obtain new materials and create new and updated products. After powerful computers, it will speed up again. So, let's start exploring the infinite mysteries of the universe. Thinking of this, Xiao Yu began to feel encouraged again. At this moment, in the distance, in the direction of the Earth, a light spot caught Xiao Yu's attention. The astronomical telescope equipped on the outside of the spacecraft was immediately turned to the appropriate angle and aimed at the light spot. This light spot is very big, and the distance is not too far now. So Xiao Yu easily determined the mass of this star. It's the moon. Something is wrong. A bad thought suddenly flashed through Xiao Yu's mind, and he immediately input the orbital parameters, mass parameters, speed parameters, orbital eccentricity, and other parameters of the planets in the solar system into a formula. With powerful computing power, the results were calculated in one go. How could it be such a coincidence? How could it be such a coincidence? How could it happen to hit? At the current speed of the moon, it should have passed directly past Jupiter and flew into outer space. How could the orbits just happen to overlap? Oh my god, you are playing with me. Aren't you going to kill me? Xiao Yu stared at the result in stunned silence and cursed in his heart. God, do I really want to witness the most spectacular impact event in the history of the solar system? Xiao Yu screamed weakly. The calculation results clearly told him that at the current speed of the moon, in about 50 days, the moon would directly hit Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. Head on. Generally speaking, a head-on collision is unlikely to occur between stars of this magnitude. The most likely possibility is that Jupiter captures the moon as its own satellite, and then its orbit gradually shrinks. After the distance exceeds the Roche limit, the moon will be torn into several pieces, lining up to hit Jupiter one after another. By the time the impact occurs, countless thousands of years may have passed. But the moon's orbit is just such a coincidence that it happens to be the orbit of a direct head-on impact. My technological level and equipment level are still at the initial stage. How could I escape such a heroic cosmic impact event? Xiao Yu screamed. 70 million years ago, the meteor that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs was only 10 kilometers in diameter. And the diameter of the moon? It's more than 3,400 kilometers. Jupiter is a full 140,000 kilometers in diameter. When fragments of Comet Shoemaker Levi 9 hit Jupiter, each fragment was only about 2 kilometers in diameter. The total energy released by the impact exceeded 40 trillion tons of TNT explosives. The speed of the fragments of Comet Shoemaker Levi 9 is 210,000 km per hour. And the current speed of the moon is more than 400,000 km per hour. How much energy would be released by such an impact? Xiao Yu didn't dare to calculate. But Xiao Yu is certain that by then, the material ejection and ray burst caused by the impact will definitely sweep across the entire solar system. The asteroid belt will be directly blown away and the new asteroid belt in the original Earth's orbit will also be completely disrupted. It is expected that a significant portion of the mass will hit the sun. If the debris is too large, it will directly break through the sun's troposphere, causing a large amount of solar matter to be thrown away, and causing the sun to enter the aging stage in advance. In other words, this impact may destroy the entire solar system. Even if it cannot be destroyed, the entire solar system will become a H, L-like existence. Xiao Yu now increasingly suspects that the destruction of the Earth is the result of some secret calculation by some energy. Otherwise, things would not be such a coincidence. Mom, let's find a way to avoid the most violent stage of the impact first. If it is directly covered by the ray burst caused by the impact, with my current material technology, the entire spacecraft will definitely be melted instantly, even hundreds of millions of kilometers away. Does not work. While Xiao Yu was secretly frightened, 
his huge computing power also began to operate at full capacity. This central computer, designed and manufactured by Xiaoyu himself, has a technological level that is at least 20 years ahead of human beings. Its computing power is almost equivalent to that of Tianhe 2, the fastest supercomputer on Earth. But its energy consumption is tens of thousands of times that of Tianhe 2. 1. In an instant, countless orbit parameters, speed parameters, etc. were involved in the calculation, and countless indicator lights began to flash rapidly. It took half an hour for Xiaoyu to come back to his senses. This is the only way to do it. Well, it is estimated that there is a 50% chance of surviving the most violent initial period of the impact. However, my energy reserves are not enough. Xiaoyu secretly complained in his heart, changed the orbit, and set off towards Mars. It is expected to reach the orbit of Mars in 20 days. Then maintain your position and hide on the back of Mars. Use Mars as a shield. You should be able to survive this disaster. And if you can't go to Jupiter, then go to Saturn. Titan should be good. It has a large amount of methane stored on it, which can be used as fuel. But the oxidizer is still a headache. Without the oxidizer, methane cannot burn. No matter what, just take it one step at a time. I will die now. Chapter 2 The Moon and Jupiter Collide This is Xiaoyu's plan. But there is a big flaw in this plan. And that is the problem of fuel consumption before reaching Titan. With the Earth's current technology, rockets are used to obtain power for launching spacecraft. After reaching the second cosmic speed and breaking away from the Earth's gravitational field, the spacecraft mainly relies on inertia to fly. And the fuel it carries is only used to make some orbits fine-tuning, as well as necessary acceleration and deceleration. Of course, Xiaoyu's spaceship is not like this. Xiaoyu's spacecraft was assembled in geosynchronous orbit, and then relied on its own fuel to escape the Earth's gravitational field and began to set off towards outer space. Although he had stored as much fuel as possible at the beginning, and Xiaoyu had optimized the fuel utilization rate to the maximum extent, 35% of the total fuel had been consumed just by breaking away from the Earth's gravitational field. After a few times of acceleration, Xiaoyu now only carries 60% of the fuel he used to carry. And the amount of fuel required to stay hidden on the backside of Mars for a long time is not a small amount. Moreover, it needs to decelerate when reaching the orbit of Mars, accelerate when leaving the gravitational field of Mars, and decelerate again when reaching Titan. These all require a lot of fuel consumption. Xiaoyu's original plan was to fly directly to Europa because Europa is the most likely place in the solar system besides Earth to have liquid water. There is liquid water. With the help of the special local environment and some special technical means, Xiaoyu can collect liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as fuel, and then concentrate on studying nuclear fusion technology. When he fully masters the nuclear fusion engine technology, he can collect it from Jupiter. After enough fusion fuel, Xiaoyu left the solar system and flew into outer space. Now all the good plans have been disrupted by the collision of the moon with Jupiter. In desperation, Xiaoyu adjusted the engine injection direction, changed the trajectory, and flew towards Mars. Nearly 10 days have passed. During this period of time, the moon had crossed the orbit of Mars and was hurtling toward Jupiter like a crazy beast. Xiaoyu's camera is also paying close attention to the moon. 20 days flew by. Fiery red sparks appeared in Xiaoyu's field of vision as expected. After deceleration, the speed of Xiaoyu's spacecraft has dropped to 4,000 meters per second. This deceleration consumes at least 5% of the fuel, making Xiaoyu grin in pain. However, these consumptions are necessary. If it does not slow down, the spacecraft will pass by Mars. Only when the speed is about 4 kilometers per second, will it be captured by Mars and enter an orbit around Mars. Successfully entering the orbit around Mars at an altitude of 3,000 kilometers from Mars, Xiaoyu slowly rotated around Mars and began to wait quietly for the moment when the unprecedented impact came. This height is the optimal height calculated by Xiaoyu through precise calculations. At this height, the spacecraft can be completely hidden on the back of Mars to avoid the energy erupted by the impact, and energy consumption can be minimized when escaping the gravity of Mars. Xiaoyu's current spacecraft is making a circular motion similar to a circle with Mars as the center. At Xiaoyu's current speed, it would take less than two hours to orbit Mars. Before the moon hit Jupiter, meteorites from the Earth had already begun to visit Mars. Recently, the density and quality of meteorite impacts on Mars have increased significantly. Looking at the flashes of light that erupted from time to time on Mars, Xiaoyu began to feel inexplicably worried. Meteorite chunks from the Earth clearly have characteristics that indicate the existence of life. 
for example, this meteorite, which is 300 meters long and 50 meters wide, has an albedo as high as 0.7, and it obviously has a very smooth and bright surface. Xiaoyu speculated that this might be a meteorite mainly composed of steel. Xiaoyu was so greedy that he really wanted to get this piece of steel in his pocket. After all, transforming the spacecraft in the future will require a lot of materials. But the reality obviously disappointed Xiaoyu. Not to mention such a huge meteorite. Xiaoyu didn't have the ability to collect even a small pebble. After all, at such a high speed, a small pebble meteorite is equivalent to a grenade. Now Xiaoyu can no longer withstand these unexpected blows. This is also the largest meteorite in this period. At first, the Tengu Sky explosion that occurred on the Earth was speculated to be caused by a meteorite about 30 meters in diameter hitting the Earth and disintegrating in the atmosphere. The energy of that explosion was equivalent to the energy intensity of more than a thousand Hiroshima atomic bombs. The current steel meteorite is dozens of times larger in mass and volume than that one. Fortunately, Xiaoyu's spacecraft happened to be on the other side of Mars when the impact occurred. But even so, through the optical telescope, Xiaoyu also observed the huge impact of this meteorite on Mars. The huge shock wave increased the eccentricity of Mars by 0.2 percentage points. Directly behind the impact point, a mountain with a height of 10,000 meters suddenly rose. At the same time, countless dead volcanoes on Mars restarted. After the explosion, thick smoke and dust almost covered the entire surface of Mars. The permafrost ice at the poles was also melted. And there was rainfall on Mars that had never happened in 10,000 years. At the same time, several violent earthquakes almost changed the entire appearance of Mars. Shall you realize a sentence on a deeper level? The entire solar system is an exquisite overall structure, and one move affects the whole body. The explosion of the Earth is not just a matter of the Earth. The explosion of the Earth is destined to affect the entire solar system. And it is a huge impact that cannot be underestimated. Looking at all this, Xiao Yu felt inexplicably sad, feeling like a rabbit dying and a fox dying. Now, even if there are living things on Mars, they will all die. In addition to flexibly dodging several debris splashed from Mars by the impact, the impact on Mars basically had no impact on Xiao Yu. If I had to say it, it would raise Xiao Yu's estimate of the impact of the moon's impact on Jupiter to another level. After thinking about it, Xiao Yu actually began to look forward to this impact. I dare not say that such a level of impact is rare in the entire Milky Way. At least in the third acre of the third canal ever. Right. I actually being able to witness such a big event. My life is not in vain. Time has passed 20 days. There are still 10 days left before the estimated impact time. Xiao Yu had begun to slowly reduce his speed. Correspondingly, in order to avoid being pulled by the gravity of Mars and falling into Mars, Xiao Yu had to increase the jet power of the engine towards Mars. Finally, the day before the impact, Xiao Yu fixed the spacecraft on the back side of Mars. The current Xiao Yu is roughly in a straight line with the center of mass of Mars and the center of mass of Jupiter. This can avoid the influence from Jupiter to the greatest extent. Out of a sense of curiosity, Xiao Yu was really unwilling to miss the opportunity to witness a unique collision. Therefore, Xiao Yu placed a small satellite carried on the spacecraft in advance in orbit around Mars. In this way, even if Xiao Yu is hiding behind Mars, he can still see some images of the impact through the broadcast. Based on the current orbit, Mars is a full 500 million kilometers away from Jupiter. In other words, the images and effects of the impact would not be transmitted here until about half an hour after the impact occurred. Based on the data obtained from the last observation, Xiao Yu began to count down silently in his heart. In fact, by this time, the impact should have already occurred. It's just that the image of the impact has not traveled a long distance of 500 million kilometers. Imagining that peerless and astonishing scene, Xiao Yu's heart was full of expectations. 10, 9, 8, 2, 1. Everything was as expected. Xiao Yu saw an amazing scene. On the ecliptic plane, the light from the sun has been almost completely obscured by the debris caused by the explosion of the Earth. Therefore, the current solar system is dark. However, in the darkness, in the distant and endless sky, a huge light source suddenly appeared. Its light intensity was almost ten times greater than that of the sun. This huge light source instantly illuminates the entire solar system. The image only appeared for a moment. And then, the signal was cut off. Xiao Yu knew that the small satellite was melted by the powerful radiation from Jupiter. Before Xiao Yu could recover from the shock, he felt the huge impact of the collision between the moon and Jupiter. Powerful light sources, heat sources, 
and high-energy rays directly turn Mars upside down. The previous impact of steel meteorites from the Earth has covered the entire Martian atmosphere with endless dust, plunging the entire planet into darkness. The powerful energy from Jupiter attacked, and the high-energy rays directly heated the already chaotic Mars. The unbearable atmosphere and the imbalance of air pressure caused a super hurricane to blow on Mars in an instant. The wind was so strong that it almost blew some debris directly into the Mars synchronous orbit. At the same time, the surface of Mars on the side facing Jupiter began to melt, and the rocks and gravel were heated into a dark red torrent, raging on the surface of Mars, facing the mighty power of heaven and earth. Xiaoyu did not dare to move at all. He just hid behind Mars silently and observed all this silently. Xiaoyu began to feel grateful that he had made the right decision. If he hadn't found the big shield of Mars, I might have become a puddle of molten iron by now. The high energy rays did not stop at all. After passing the orbit of Mars in an instant, they continued to fly towards the orbit of the Earth at the speed of light. There is a large group of comets gathering in the Earth's orbit right now, under the influence of the Sun's light pressure. Heat and high energy particle flow. They all drag their long comet tails backwards. But the powerful energy from Jupiter arrived. Countless comet tails were blown away in an instant. And the Sun seemed to take off its veil and became brighter at this moment. But the next moment, the energy from Jupiter temporarily overwhelmed the energy of the Sun, blowing the comet tails towards the Sun, through the intensity of light reflected from Jupiter by the comet. Shall you calculate the approximate brightness of Jupiter at this moment? At this moment, the absolute magnitude of Jupiter is definitely more than 10 times greater than that of the Sun. In other words, if Jupiter and the Sun are placed at the same distance, the brightness of Jupiter at this moment will be more than 10 times higher than that of the Sun. What a majestic power this is! Chapter 3 Jupiter Wind Through the telescope, shall you observe that the debris formed by the explosion of the Earth began to fluctuate chaotically. Some small debris detached from the orbit and began to fly towards the Sun. But those large debris did not detach too far from the orbit. Shall you breathe a sigh of relief? Secretly glad that Taeyong had escaped a disaster. And he was also glad that he had escaped a disaster. High energy raid bursts are just like this. They are powerful and come quickly but also leave quickly. Xiaoyu did not come out from the back of Mars. Because the high energy ray burst was just the first blow. And there would be another wave after that. That is a flow of high energy charged particles. Also commonly known as solar wind. Auroras on Earth are caused by the collision of high energy charged particles from the sun with the Earth's magnetic field. When a solar flare breaks out and the intensity of the high energy charged particle flow reaches its maximum, it can even affect satellite communications and paralyze the power grid. A large-scale power outage in the United States in the 20th century was caused by a solar flare. And even if you think about it with your buttocks, you can imagine that the flow of high-energy charged particles from Jupiter this time will definitely exceed the Sun by countless times. After all, the particle stream erupted by the Sun is emitted in an overall stable state. But the current situation of Jupiter is, God knows, how earth-shaking it is. The speed of the flow of high-energy charged particles is much slower than the speed of light about 4 million kilometers per hour. Based on this calculation, it will reach Mars orbit in about 5 days. The most terrifying thing is that Xiaoyu now relies on electronic devices to survive. Although he is now completely hiding behind Mars, no one can say how much impact this Jupiter wind outbreak will have on Xiaoyu. The first wave of crisis has been avoided. Xiaoyu's heart was filled with curiosity. After thinking about it, Xiaoyu finally decided to squeeze out some of the remaining fuel to move the orbit and observe Jupiter. Moving out from behind the huge shadow of Mars, shall you turn the astronomical telescope and aimed at Jupiter. When observing Jupiter from the orbit of Mars, you can only see a point of light with the naked eye and no details. However, the optical telescope on Xiaoyu's spacecraft has been specially optimized, and the distance is now tens of millions of kilometers closer than on the Earth. Therefore, the quality of the Jupiter images obtained by Xiaoyu is no better than the original Hubble telescope. Difference. Xiaoyu was stunned again. The entire side of Jupiter facing the sun turned dark red and seemed to be bleeding. There are countless violent cyclones raging on Jupiter. And even the orbits of satellites are affected. Jupiter's axis of rotation was tilted a full three degrees higher than before due to this impact. Shall you observe this scene carefully? At the same time, all the observation equipment on the spacecraft was turned on at the same time. Trying his best to collect data. This kind of data is so precious and will serve as an important reference for Xiaoyu's future technological development. After observing for an hour, Xiaoyu suddenly noticed a very important problem. Nuclear fusion occurred in the impact area of Jupiter. Xiaoyu's heart tightened, 
and he immediately stopped other relevant data calculations and put all his computing power on the analysis of this phenomenon. Gradually, through the observation of Jupiter, Xiao Yu's originally imperfect theory began to become more complete. It is a theory about controllable nuclear fusion. In her unique way, the great nature taught Xiao Yu a lesson through the impact of the moon on Jupiter and taught him knowledge about controllable nuclear fusion. The most famous mass energy formula, E equals mc squared, can be traced back to Einstein. Humanity began to explore nuclear energy very early. The most obvious example is the hydrogen bomb. However, the hydrogen bomb is an uncontrollable nuclear fusion. It is okay to use it as a weapon. But the other ones are not okay. If you want to make good use of this great energy source, you must find a way to control nuclear fusion. As a master in the scientific community, Xiaoyu naturally has deep research on this matter. But even, he couldn't solve the problem. But now, through nature, the greatest teacher, Xiaoyu feels that he may be able to solve this problem. The biggest problem facing controlled nuclear fusion is that there is no material that can be used as a container for a nuclear fusion reactor. Because during nuclear fusion, the temperature reaches tens of millions or hundreds of millions of degrees, and no material known to mankind can withstand this temperature. Therefore, humans have proposed two methods, magnetic field constraint method and inertial constraint method. Relying on magnetic field or inertia to constrain the nuclear fusion reactor so that it can stably output energy to the outside world. However, research on these two methods is still at the theoretical stage. Xiaoyu's main focus is the magnetic field constraint method. Jupiter has a very strong magnetic field. Jupiter's magnetic field stably restrains the fusion reactor that is outputting energy at the impact point. This is the most concise and efficient teaching method. For example, if you don't know how to fold a paper airplane, and you are given a folded paper airplane without disassembly, and you are asked to figure out how to make an origami airplane, you may find it very difficult and unable to start. But if someone shows you how to fold a paper airplane, you might learn it in no time. Nature folded the paper airplane of controllable nuclear fusion in front of Xiaoyu. If Xiaoyu still had eyes, Xiaoyu's eyes must have turned red. If Xiaoyu is still breathing, his breathing must be extremely rapid now. No one understands the importance of controllable nuclear fusion better than Xiaoyu. With controllable nuclear fusion, it means that interstellar navigation is possible, and it means that energy can no longer be a shackle restricting the development of science and technology. My dream of space navigation finally has hope! Xiaoyu had the urge to cry. Xiaoyu has been observing for five days, collecting as much information as possible about controllable nuclear fusion. Then, before the expected flow of high-energy charged particles arrived, it hit on the back of Mars again. With these observational data, it is only a matter of time, sooner or later, for Xiaoyu to overcome the difficulty of controllable nuclear fusion. Build a huge space fleet. Leave the solar system and conquer the galaxy. Xiaoyu roared with excitement in his heart. Five hours after Xiaoyu hid on the back side of Mars, the stream of high-energy charged particles finally reached the orbit of Mars. The results were undoubtedly disastrous. Even with the resistance of the large shield of Mars and the influence of Jupiter's wind, half of the equipment on Xiaoyu's spacecraft was damaged in an instant, and the computing power of the central computer was reduced to 30% of its peak. The high-energy charged particle flow also has a strong stripping ability, while the magnetic field strength of Mars is simply negligible. In other words, Mars has almost no resistance to this powerful Jupiter wind. In almost an instant, the dirty atmosphere of Mars was almost completely stripped away, and the raging lava on the surface of Mars was directly exposed to space. Blown by the powerful and unparalleled winds of Jupiter, the entire Mars turned into a huge comet. It dragged a long comet tail toward the sun, carrying countless meteorites in it, covering Xiaoyu's small spacecraft entirely. Nah! Are you hacking kidding me? Xiaoyu was so shocked when he saw the scene that he couldn't help but cursed. The remaining 30% of the computing power of the central computer was activated at full speed, and the engine and radar equipment were also activated at full power. The energy consumption reached a point that made Xiaoyu's heart bleed. In the dark space without any light, Xiaoyu controlled the small spacecraft to flexibly dodge the meteorites flying everywhere. I have just obtained the most critical core technology of controllable nuclear fusion. A great future is waiting for me. How can I die now? This belief supported Xiaoyu through the three days when the Jupiter wind was raging. When Xiaoyu finally took a breath and did a full-body self-examination on his small spaceship, a touch of bitterness came to Xiaoyu's heart. The damage is really too serious. Xiaoyu sighed helplessly. Jupiter's winds dissipated, and Mars' comet tail began to gradually fade. 
but this process is likely to take a long time. Xiao Yu even speculated on the final outcome. The material in the Mars comet tail will gradually fall back into the orbit of Mars and then form a ring orbiting Mars. Mars is about to become the first solid planet in the solar system to have rings. Looking at the Earth's orbit again, the largest pieces of debris were not blown toward the sun by Jupiter's wind. This is a good phenomenon. Because if this thing really happens, a big hole will be punched out in the troposphere of the solar system. The material inside the sun will be ejected. And the infinite solar wind will sweep across the entire solar system. By then, the solar system will definitely become a purgatory within a purgatory. When it reaches that point, Xiao Yu really can't imagine what he has to do to find a way out. The prelude to this catastrophe that started with the explosion of the Earth and culminated with the Moon's impact on Jupiter has passed. At least, Jupiter's influence on the outside world has faded. After that, there will be a slow and profound impact on the entire solar system. The most important impact of this disaster is on the inner rocky planets. The three gas giant planets besides Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune were not greatly affected. Titan, which attracted Xiao Yu's greatest attention, happened to be on the backside of Saturn when the impact occurred. And it was lucky enough to escape. The original environment did not change much. There is a serious problem now. That is, Xiao Yu's small spacecraft has insufficient fuel. Not only that, the entire hull of the spacecraft has become tattered and riddled with holes. And several modules have short-circuited circuits. In order to prevent greater losses, Xiao Yu had to temporarily turn off the power supply of those modules. The raw material storage room was even directly destroyed. And the spare parts, raw materials, etc. stored in it were lost without a trace. A large piece of the hull was also directly torn off. Fortunately, the positioning system is still operating normally, and the gyroscope is operating without malfunction. Otherwise, Xiao Yu would really be lost in the vast universe. Is it possible that I, the new human being in the new century, will be trapped in the orbit of Mars forever? Until the energy is exhausted, and then he dies? Xiao Yu lamented in his heart. Infinite energy is waiting for Xiao Yu on Titan. As long as it can reach Titan. There is so much energy, that Xiao Yu can't even use it to make a planet bomb. Xiao Yu began to think nervously. Thinking about how to leave the orbit of Mars, and how to get to Titan. Chapter 4 Scavenger of the Universe In a broad sense, Spacecraft fuel is divided into two parts. One part is fuel. Xiao Yu uses liquid hydrogen. And the other part is oxidant. And Xiao Yu uses liquid oxygen. Oxidizer must be added to the fuel to burn it and generate power. Now, there is not much fuel left on the spacecraft. But there is still a lot of oxidizer left. In this case, if Xiao Yu can control the spacecraft to reach Titan, the almost unlimited methane on Titan can replace liquid hydrogen as Xiao Yu's current energy consumption. After developing a controllable nuclear fusion device, the nearby Saturn is an inexhaustible source of nuclear fusion fuel. By then, Xiao Yu will have the energy to repair the spacecraft, the energy to turn on the power to restore powerful computing power, and even the energy to mine minerals, manufacture new equipment, and new spaceships. The reality made Xiao Yu sigh. Titan is there, but Xiao Yu can't reach it. Infinite energy is there, but Xiao Yu can't go there because of lack of energy. Liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen. I want liquid hydrogen. Xiao Yu almost roared in depression. In fact, if he searches for it again, Xiao Yu's remaining fuel can still barely support him to reach the escape velocity of Mars and leave the orbit of Mars. But in that case, the remaining energy would only be able to support the central computer for nine months. Nine months seems like a long time. But compared to the long space voyage, it really flies by. Even if Xiao Yu ignores the consequences and barely escapes from the gravitational field of Mars by relying on remaining energy. Xiao Yu's sailing speed can only reach a maximum of 6 kilometers per second. At this speed, it will take about 7 years to reach Titan. In other words, Xiao Yu died while still halfway through. Such a result is absolutely unacceptable to Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu began to calculate carefully, trying to figure out another method. If I don't fly directly to Titan, but fly towards the sun first, with the help of Earth and Venus, and the sun's gravitational acceleration. My speed can reach about 8 kilometers per second. And the closer I get to the sun, the faster I go. In this way. Come on. It only takes me about 2 months to reach the Earth's orbit. Well, by the way, there are many comets in the Earth's asteroid belt. And a lot of water has been evaporated. If I can collect some water, after getting close to the sun, 
You can use the ionization effect of the sun to ionize water into oxygen and hydrogen. I will have energy again. Xiao Yu's spirit was shaken. In the confusion, Xiao Yu finally saw a little hope of survival. When it is close to the sun, the speed will reach up to 26 kilometers per second and then circle the sun once. It will continue to accelerate with the help of Mercury's gravity. Venus will just move to the other side of the sun and it will not be counted as Venus. The next step will be the gravity of Mars and Jupiter. I have to stay far away from Jupiter. But even if it passes by Jupiter tens of millions of kilometers away, Jupiter can at least accelerate my speed to 3 or 4 kilometers per second. Shall you calculate it carefully, feeling more and more excited. If I fly in the direction of the sun, circle the sun once and then go to Saturn. Although the distance has increased from about 1.3 billion kilometers directly to Saturn to about 1.9 billion kilometers. My speed has increased. I can save at least five years. Time! Moreover, on the Earth, I can obtain liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. If I am close to the sun, I can obtain a considerable amount of solar energy. In this way, the fuel has also been replenished. There is one thing that is worth worrying about. Shall you silently calculated? The Earth's orbit is now extremely chaotic. I have to be prepared to be attacked by meteorites. There is also the sun. The sun must also be affected by Jupiter. The strength of the solar wind is estimated at several levels stronger. And it's also a potential danger. Forget it. When we reach the Earth's orbit, we better leave the ecliptic plane temporarily. The less water we collect, the less. Safety first. As for the sun, we still won't cross the orbit of Mercury although the acceleration function will be less. The safety factor is it's a lot bigger, and it's a lot less taxing on the insulation. Okay, that's it. Xiao Yu made up his mind. After checking himself one last time to make sure that there would be no big loopholes in the entire plan, he gritted his teeth and started the spacecraft engine. This is a gamble. Who knows what dangers await? But if you continue to gamble, you still have about 30% hope of survival. If you don't gamble, you will just sit back and wait for death. Xiao Yu is really unwilling to die like this when controllable nuclear fusion technology has achieved a breakthrough and a bright future is waiting for him. It's hard to say, but I have to give it a try no matter what. There are really too many disadvantages. Not to mention whether the equipment will have new malfunctions during the long journey, nor whether it will be attacked by meteorites, or whether a sufficient amount of water can be collected. Just talk about the heat insulation layer of the spacecraft, the original design of the spacecraft at that time. The heat insulation layer was just to deal with the friction of the atmosphere when landing on the planet. But it was not designed to deal with the high temperature of the sun. However, in such a situation, the only thing you can do is to catch the duck and put it on the shelf. If it doesn't work, you have to get it. If you keep fighting, you will at least have a hope of survival. Xiao Yu was not willing to accept that he had managed to fuse his soul with the central computer by chance and had gone through many difficulties. He finally gained unlimited life extremely powerful computing power, and unlimited energy. However, before his interstellar journey had even begun, Xiao Yu just die, looking at Mars gradually going away. Xiao Yu said silently in his heart, Brother Mars, thank you for blocking such a strong wind and rain for me. When my technology develops in the future, I will definitely come back to help you transform it. Well, transform it into a green planet, release some animals on it, and transform you into a fairyland on Earth. After silently making a wish, shall you resolutely close the telescope? In this case, save as much energy as you can. Immediately afterwards, shall you shut down most of the non-essential functions of the main control computer, leaving only the navigation system, radar anti-collision system, and other necessary systems, and began a long and bleak journey. Mars is now about 80 million kilometers away from the Earth's orbit, and it will be two months before shall you can get close to the Earth's orbit. After such a long journey, he ended up back where he started. This result made Xiao Yu extremely depressed. There is also a relative speed issue involved here. For example, while Xiao Yu is orbiting Mars, he is also orbiting the Sun with Mars at a speed of about 25 kilometers per second. When Xiao Yu left Mars and flew toward the Sun from Mars, Xiao Yu flew out in a straight line along the tangent of the orbit. But from the position of the Sun, Xiao Yu flew along a parabola. The specific explanation is more complicated. In short, Xiao Yu's speed approaching the sun is about 8 kilometers per second. And then it will gradually accelerate under the influence of the sun's gravity. It will eventually take about 2 months to reach the Earth's orbit. 
In addition to letting the robot inside the spacecraft start making some necessary preparations for collecting water sources, the rest of the energy consumption has been reduced to a minimum. Xiaoyu can't even calculate the data obtained from Jupiter. Depressed, in addition to allocating a few tenths of CPU usage for the robot to use, Xiaoyu stared at the dark space in a daze all day long. Without the obstruction of the atmosphere, the starry sky appears extremely clear. Xiaoyu found Tianyuan Sea among countless stars. Estrada is the closest star to the sun that has been confirmed to have planets and is about 10.5 light years away. Tianyuan 4 is also the next destination in Xiaoyu's space flight plan because Tianyuan 4 has been determined to have a gas giant planet about 1.5 times the mass of Jupiter, which can provide sufficient nuclear fusion fuel for Xiaoyu. There are also two asteroid belts around Tianyuan 4, which can provide Xiaoyu with enough nuclear fusion fuel. Yu provides ample building materials. Tianyuan 4. Humanity's first interstellar voyage. Xiaoyu stared at the figure of Tianyuan 4, muttering to himself, and couldn't help but start to imagine what would happen after arriving in the Tianyuan 4 star system. The situation comes. After looking at it for a long time, Xiaoyu retracted his thoughts and sighed sadly. If this trip to the sun does not go well, let alone going to the Tianyuan 4 galaxy, even whether I can survive will be a problem. During the long voyage, more than a month has passed. The number of meteorite blocks in the interstellar space began to increase significantly. The current trajectory of the spacecraft has left the ecliptic plane. The trajectories of planets basically fall within the ecliptic plane. Even if the Earth explodes, most of the fragments of the Earth will still be on the ecliptic plane. Leaving the ecliptic plane reduces the chance of encountering danger to a minimum. For more than a month, shall you control the robot and use the remaining materials to make a simple filter to collect ice particles, dust and other materials in interstellar space. Because of the principle of conservation of angular momentum, even if the Earth explodes, most of its fragments will orbit the Sun along their original orbit, and their speed will not change much. These days, Xiaoyu has deliberately controlled his trajectory to move closer to the original Earth's trajectory. So the relative movement speed between Xiaoyu and these ice particles and dust is not very fast. Only about 1 to 200 meters per second. Relying on the strength of this filter, it is enough to capture them one by one. But the result made Xiaoyu couldn't help but lament in his heart. 24 hours have passed since the filter was opened. However, the total mass of material captured was less than 1 kilogram. Among them, Water accounts for less than 30%. Mosquitoes have small legs, but they are also meat. Take your time. Xiaoyu started to work as a cosmic scavenger while controlling his orbit to move closer to the Earth's orbit. Chapter 5 Capture After working as a cosmic scavenger for more than half a month, Xiaoyu realized the truth. Comets are all strong-willed guys. If calculated in terms of volume alone, comets close to stars can be regarded as the largest stars in the universe. The comet's tail stretches out with a maximum length of more than 100 million kilometers, like a huge broom, sweeping across the universe majestically. But only when you get closer can you realize how weak this guy is. After traveling through the comet's tail for more than half a month, Xiaoyu collected less than 5 kilograms of water. You can imagine how thin the material in the comet's tail is. This collection efficiency made Xiaoyu extremely depressed. If Xiaoyu still had hair now, Xiaoyu would definitely grab it in handfuls in frustration. Xiaoyu is now 30,000 kilometers above or below the ecliptic plane. Anyway, there is no such thing as up or down in the interstellar space. It can be set up or down. The so-called ecliptic plane is an imaginary plane. It can be simply understood that most of the orbits of all planets in the star system are on the same plane. And this plane is the ecliptic plane. This is already quite close to the original Earth orbit. Through the optical telescope, Xiaoyu could already see countless small black meteorites above, emitting a heart-stopping light. Xiaoyu has already made orbital adjustments. He plans to follow the Earth's meteorites to orbit the Sun for a while. After all, collecting materials is the serious thing. Although the speed is really slow, the lens of the optical telescope slowly swept across, and an inconspicuous figure entered Xiaoyu's field of vision. This is an irregular-shaped meteorite, about 30 meters long, 7 or 8 meters wide, and 5 or 6 meters high. The diffusely reflected light from nearby stars illuminates it. And then the light is collected by Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu's heart moved, and he immediately made some simple analysis on this meteorite. The results of the analysis immediately cheered up Xiaoyu. Analysis shows that this meteorite is composed of approximately 30% water, 69% iron, and trace amounts of nitrogen, silicon, hydrogen, oxygen, 
potassium and other elements. Among these trace elements, hydrogen and oxygen are the majority. Is this a gift from God to me? Xiao Yu immediately became excited. This meteorite has a volume of about 1,000 cubic meters and a mass of more than 3,000 tons. Even if hydrogen and oxygen each account for 0.1% of their mass, the total is 6 tons. With so much fuel, you can do a lot of things. Especially, there are more than 900 tons of water on it. After this water is close to the sun, it can also be ionized into hydrogen and oxygen with the help of the ionization effect of the sun, which is another huge income. There are also more than 2,000 tons of iron, which is enough for Xiaoyu to roughly repair the spacecraft. Capture it! We must capture it! Xiaoyu made up his mind instantly. At this time, the star blocking the meteorite moved away, and the sun's rays shone directly on it. Under the heat of the sun, the solid water, solid hydrogen and oxygen on the surface of the meteorite immediately began to volatilize rapidly. Fountains began to appear on the fluffy surface. Countless gaseous materials were sprayed out and the entire core was shrouded in a layer of white. In the fog, a long tail was dragged backward. Xiaoyu felt anxious when he saw it. These are my treasures. They can't be wasted like this. Xiaoyu immediately controlled the spacecraft to stand between the meteorite and the sun, using his own solar panels to withstand the sun's heat. Without the sunlight, the temperature of only a few K in the interstellar space immediately cooled it, and the long white tail dissipated at a speed visible to the naked eye. Xiaoyu breathed a sigh of relief and began to figure out how to truly put this gift given to him by God into his own pocket. When a big, sweet cake is placed in front of you, you will have enough motivation to make cutlery and other tableware. Xiaoyu no longer cared about energy consumption. Control the robot. Search the material storage room. And even disassemble some less important equipment. Intending to reuse it. The equipment manufacturing room is Xiaoyu's most closely protected place besides the main control room. Here, Xiaoyu collected all kinds of the most basic and important machinery to ensure that he had sufficient manufacturing power after obtaining the raw materials. Fortunately, the equipment manufacturing room did not suffer much damage during the previous great collision between heaven and earth. As the robot worked day and night, a mechanical claw with about 300 meters of high-strength cable attached to the back was quickly created. Xiaoyu is now only a few kilometers away from the meteorite. This distance, on an astronomical scale, is already close. But compared to Xiaoyu's catching power, it is still a bit longer. Xiaoyu had no choice but to carefully control the small spacecraft, adjust the power of the engine to the lowest level, and slowly approach the meteorite piece by piece. A few meters away. This is actually very risky. The distance of several thousand meters is the shortest distance for Xiaoyu to control the spacecraft to dodge. After crossing this bottom line, if another meteorite hits this meteorite at this time and causes it to hit Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu will have no time to dodge, and can only be destroyed by it. Wealth is gained through danger. Damn it! If you do this, you will be popular and drink spicy food from now on. Xiaoyu felt fierce in his heart, but his actions became more cautious. Gradually, the distance has shortened to 2,000 meters, 1,000 meters, and 500 meters. Just when victory was in sight, suddenly, a dark and inconspicuous figure broke into Xiaoyu's sight. Xiaoyu was shocked when he saw the figure hit the target meteorite at a relative speed of several hundred meters per second. The target meteorite exploded with a burst of fire, and then rolled up. Because of the heat of the impact, the solid water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, oxygen, etc. above began to volatilize violently, turning into large clouds of mist. Not only that, the target meteorite changed its trajectory due to this impact and began to fly away in another direction disappearing in the blink of an eye. Xiaoyu was angry and anxious, and cursed the meteorite that had caused trouble a thousand times. After the curse was over, he started to cheer up again, turning the astronomical telescope, looking for traces of the target meteorite. Xiaoyu knew that because of the recoil of the volatile gas and the original inertia, it couldn't run far. Sure enough, after Xiaoyu searched for two hours, he finally found it in the direction of the ecliptic, about 600 kilometers away from him. Xiaoyu did not dare to increase his speed too fast. He only dared to maintain the relative speed between himself and the meteorite at 50 meters per second, which is 180 miles, and slowly approached it. A speed of 180 miles is considered lightning fast on Earth. But here, even climbing at a snail's pace is considered a compliment. Xiaoyu ran for more than three hours before he got within 3,000 meters of it again. Damn it! 
If any blind guy dares to ruin my good deeds, I will use all my energy to kill you with a laser gun. Secretly making up his mind, Xiao Yu cautiously began to approach. The distance is getting closer and closer, and Xiao Yu's mind is getting closer and closer. Finally, the distance shrank to 280 meters. This distance is already within the catching range of the flying claws created by Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu aimed his gun at the target meteorite and decisively issued the launch order. The recoil of launching the flying claw caused Xiao Yu's spacecraft to shake for a while. This shaking affected the accuracy of the flying claw. The flying claw flew out like a sharp arrow, but it did not hit the target meteorite, but was far away from the target. The meteorite passed by about 50 meters away. Xiao Yu was not discouraged and controlled the machine to retract the flying claw, remodified the recoil parameters, and launched again. Continue to fail. Flying claw flew past the meteorite 20 meters away. Continue to modify the recoil parameters and continue launching. Finally, Xiao Yu succeeded this time. The flying claw accurately hit the middle of the target meteorite. The sharp flying claw pierced the fluffy outer layer of the target meteorite, then opened and stuck inside the meteorite, firmly connecting it to Xiao Yu's spacecraft. The meteorite was hit by an external force and immediately flew in the opposite direction. The high strength cable was stretched straight, and Xiao Yu's spacecraft flew out under the pull of the meteorite. It's so wonderful to be in a weightless environment, and many things that subvert common sense will happen. If you are on the Earth, and you launch a flying claw at a rock, even if the flying claw catches the rock, the rock will never escape. This is because of the Earth's gravity. But this is in space, and there is no gravity from the Earth. When a meteorite receives force, it will inevitably react. When it receives the impact of the flying claws, it will escape in the opposite direction. This situation is like Xiao Yu tying himself to the tail of an arrow with a rope then shooting the arrow out with a bow, and then being carried away by the arrow. This situation has long been considered by Xiao Yu. So Xiao Yu is not panicked at all. Xiao Yu did not dare to force it to stop, because such force would exceed the bearing capacity of the cable, and the cable would break. Xiao Yu only exerted force bit by bit, slowly reducing the kinetic energy of the target meteorite. After spending a full three hours and flying almost thousands of kilometers, Xiao Yu finally subdued the meteorite. Then, Xiao Yu dragged the meteor and slowly flew away from the ecliptic plane, just like a lion who quietly caught a calf among the cattle, but did not dare to devour it when surrounded by cattle, but moved the calf to a place far away from the cattle before starting to eat it. Xiao Yu, I don't dare to start my feast here, because it's too dangerous here. After spending three days, Xiao Yu dragged the target meteorite to a place 40,000 kilometers away from the ecliptic plane. Within the field of vision, there were no traces of other meteorites. Looking at the delicious meal in front of him, Xiao Yu roared excitedly. Let's eat! Let's eat! Chapter 6 Heading Towards the Sun Due to the sublimation of matter caused by sunlight, the mass of the meteorite has been reduced by more than 10% during its transportation over the past few days. Xiao Yu felt extremely distressed. After arriving at his destination, Xiao Yu was immediately ready to start eating. After blocking the sun with himself, Xiao Yu controlled the cable winch on the spacecraft to continuously rotate pulling the target meteorite towards him at a speed of about one decimeter per second. In other words, Xiao Yu himself was pulled over by the meteor. In the universe, it is meaningless to say who is approaching whom. Xiao Yu is flying towards the stationary sun at a speed of 20 kilometers per second. It can also be said that the sun is flying towards the stationary sun at a speed of 20 kilometers per second. Xiao Yu, who was stationary, flew over. Both versions were the same. After more than half an hour, Xiao Yu narrowed the distance between himself and the target meteorite to one meter. Then, Xiao Yu used a cable to connect the robot to his own hull, and then controlled the robot to transport the fixed machinery to the target meteorite. Securing these machines is a must, because the mass is too small. The escape velocity of this meteorite is almost negligible, which means that with a little force, these machines will escape from the meteorite. Such a loss is not something Xiao Yu can accept now. The robot dexterously controlled these machines, and set up a collection net where the meteorite faced away from the sun. After the collection net was set up, Xiao Yu put all the machines back into the spacecraft, then slowly moved away from the meteorite, and then carefully moved a little bit so that the sun's rays could shine directly on the meteorite. Immediately, the solid water, hydrogen, oxygen, etc. on the meteorite began to volatilize and turned into pieces of white mist, drifting toward the rear. However, it was blocked by the collection net that Xiao Yu had set up long ago, and was stored through the storage equipment behind the collection net. Got up, 
seeing that everything was going smoothly. Little stars almost appeared in Xiao Yu's eyes. Water, hydrogen, oxygen, come here, brother. Xiao Yu silently recited incoherent words. Extremely excited. After the storage equipment was full, Xiao Yu immediately moved over to block the sunlight again. Then closed the distance, controlled the robot, and transferred the collected materials. Looking at the fruits of his labor, Xiao Yu's lights flashed excitedly. 100 kilograms of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Three tons of water. This harvest made Xiao Yu very satisfied. Xiao Yu immediately processed the collected liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, separated the impurities, and after meeting the requirements, poured these energy into the engine. It feels so good to have enough energy. Xiao Yu sighed, full of energy. After working hard for several days, Xiao Yu collected all the water, hydrogen, and oxygen on the target meteorite into his pocket. Seeing that there were only metal objects and some gravel left, the volume had been reduced by more than half, and the mass had also been reduced by almost half. Xiao Yu began to think about how to make full use of these remaining materials. Xiao Yu's current metal processing ability is not very strong. In order to reduce mass and save space, Xiao Yu did not carry large scale metal processing equipment, but only some necessary small equipment. The original plan was to land on Europa and then developed slowly after the surrounding environment stabilized. But now, the original plan has to be changed. Xiao Yu is determined that most of the remaining material of this meteorite is very high quality steel, which can reach the kind of special steel used in the construction of space shuttles. Although the quality of these steel materials has been slightly affected by the Earth explosion, they can be restored to their original appearance immediately with a little processing. Even with Xiao Yu's technology, it would be very troublesome to process such steel. So Xiao Yu was really reluctant to give up these things. This should be the remains of a certain steel factory on the earth. Xiao Yu thought. There is no way. Just waste some time. Anyway, now that the energy has been replenished, we can last a little longer. After making up his mind, Xiao Yu transported out the most closely guarded metal processing equipment and started work on both sides. While building on the spot, he began to cut off the meteorite piece by piece and then transported it into the spacecraft and put it away. Xiao Yu has already noticed his shortcomings in development. The number of robots is too small. Only one. In other words, if this robot is damaged, Xiao Yu will lose most of his mobility. Although other equipment can also be controlled by Xiao Yu, they are not as flexible as robots and cannot handle many tasks. In that situation, Xiao Yu is really going to die. Even if Xiao Yu has the most incredible technology in his head, no matter how sophisticated the equipment manufacturing method is, it won't work without the power to take action. Who will execute it? So with the help of the special steel here, he dismantled the unused and not very useful mechanical equipment, gathered enough materials, and Xiao Yu immediately started building the second robot. The construction of the second robot took Xiao Yu five days. After finally completing it, Xiao Yu looked at the strange thing in front of him and smiled bitterly in his heart. Due to material limitations, the guy in front of Xiao Yu looked more like a monster made of a lot of black scrap metal. For example, the uneven SH, L, the pitch black color, and the messy exposed wires. However, although it looks a bit ugly, it has many functions. Even with Xiao Yu's accumulation these days, the function of this robot is a little stronger than the first one. After the construction of the second robot was completed, less than half of the cutting and transportation work of the meteorite was completed. With the addition of the second robot, Xiao Yu's work efficiency immediately doubled. Looking at some of the remaining materials, Xiao Yu thought for a moment and made up his mind to just stop working and get another robot out. So, Xiao Yu assigned one robot to continue collecting meteorite materials, and the other robot started. Reading. Seeing large pieces of high quality steel continuously entering his spaceship, Xiao Yu really wanted to imitate a certain emperor inside. All the heroes in the world have entered my ship. Two thirds of the way through the collection of meteorites, the third robot was born. Xiao Yu's mobility was further strengthened. Therefore, Xiao Yu continued to let one robot collect materials, while the other two robots began to control the machinery, process the materials, and began to repair the hull. In the collision between wood and moon, Xiao Yu was seriously injured. Now I finally have a chance to breathe. Xiao Yu re-strengthened the hull, repaired damaged equipment and wiring, redesigned the solar panels, and thickened the insulation layer. Finally, the small spacecraft he lived in returned to the civilian class from the refugee camp. Although the current spacecraft has not yet returned to its original condition, 
its various functions have been restored to almost 80 to 90 percent. Xiao Yu stayed here for more than two months. After all the preparations were completed, Xiao Yu calculated the best orbit to fly to Titan, then resolutely left this place and rushed towards the sun. After a long flight of more than half a month, an unusually bright planet entered Xiao Yu's field of vision. It was Venus, the planet of love, the morning star. Xiao Yu sighed, thinking of the good times when he was still on Earth. Venus, for thousands of years, countless literati have sung and praised it. Since we're here, let's take a look. By the way, we can also evaluate the impact of this collision between Jupiter and the moon on Venus. Xiao Yu made up his mind, without affecting the overall process. After adjusting the orbit slightly, it flew towards Venus. In the history of human spaceflight, Venus does not occupy a very important position because the environment on Venus is so harsh, although the thick clouds bring extremely high albedo to Venus, making it the brightest star observable on the Earth. Such thick clouds also bring an extremely serious greenhouse effect to Venus. The average surface temperature of Venus is more than 400 degrees Celsius. The atmospheric pressure is several times that of the Earth. Acid rain is rampant. Magma is raging on the surface. And geological activities are extremely active. Since the beginning of human spaceflight history, only a few spacecraft have reached the surface of Venus. But now Jean Xing's appearance surprised Xiao Yu. Most of Venus's thick clouds have actually disappeared. I think it was caused by the blowing of Jupiter's wind. This means that the temperature on the surface of Venus will slowly decrease. Xiao Yu made an estimate and concluded that in tens of thousands of years, the surface temperature of Venus may drop to about 100 degrees. Moreover, it is foreseeable that there will definitely be meteorites from the Earth hitting Venus in the future. And these meteorites may carry the seeds of life. The tenacity of life has been proven. In underwater volcanoes thousands of meters deep, under high temperature and pressure, bacteria can still survive. Thinking about it, there must be some life that can adapt to the environment of Venus. These lives will spread out on Venus, multiply and evolve. And after countless long periods of time, they may even evolve into intelligent life. If intelligent life evolves on Venus, when they look up at the starry sky, Will they have the same desire to develop into the universe as humans? And what will they think when they discover the remains of civilization in the Earth's meteorites? Xiao Yu thought silently. The existence of the solar system is a miracle. And life will always find a reason for its existence. Venus, I wish you good luck. Xiao Yu passed by Venus 3,000 kilometers away. Looked at the figure of Venus fading away. And let out a sigh. After storing the obtained data about Venus in the hard drive. Xiao Yu returned to his mind and looked into the distance. He saw the huge fireball suspended in the void of the universe, emitting infinite light and heat all the time. And suddenly a feeling came into his heart, a sense of pride. Start for the sun! Chapter 7 returned to Jupiter. When Xiao Yu got close to the sun, he realized that his previous experience of the sun was too superficial. You can never realize the power of the sun just from books. Now, Xiao Yu is 60 million kilometers away from the sun, still outside the orbit of Mercury at a distance of 60 million kilometers. Even Jupiter is just a bright spot at such a distance. And no details can be seen clearly. But the sun at this distance is as big as a millstone. There is no air here. So there is no diffuse reflection. In the dark sky, a huge fireball hung. There is infinite light and heat radiating from above. Xiao Yu tested the temperature of the heat shield and found it was about 400 degrees. A powerful stream of high-energy charged particles blows out from the sun and its intensity is more than 10 times higher than what has been measured on Earth. This should be caused by the influence of Jupiter. Xiao Yu made a guess, and then decisively stopped the idea of continuing to approach, and fine-tune the orbit into a orbit. This is the closest Xiao Yu has been to the sun since he was born, and probably in his entire life. If it weren't for the gravitational acceleration of the sun, Xiao Yu would not have come to such a dangerous place. The mass of the sun is not much different from that of Tianyuan Sea and there is a good analogy between the two. Anyway, with nothing to do, Xiao Yu allocated a few points on the CPU and began to calculate the collected sun data. These data helped Xiao Yu make a rough guess about the situation of the Tianyuan 4-star system to decide his actions after arriving at the Tianyuan 4-star system. Xiao Yu's ionization plan was also officially launched at this time. In the previous stage of collection, Xiao Yu collected a total of about 900 tons of water. These 900 tons of water will all be converted into hydrogen and oxygen during the approximately four-month journey around the sun. Becoming Xiao Yu's fuel. 900 tons of fuel have exceeded Xiao Yu's maximum reserve level. With sufficient fuel, 
Xiaoyu finally tried to feel like a nouveau riche. Several projects were carried out simultaneously and started at full capacity. The load rate of the central computer was reached. Max began to work hard to calculate the data obtained from Jupiter. At the same time, the robot breeding program was officially launched. Two robots were working hard to create the next generation. And one robot was assigned to continue to repair the spacecraft in details. Everything is developing in a good direction. At this time, Xiaoyu finally relaxed. Four months flew by. Xiaoyu's position moved from one side of the sun to the other. As the spacecraft gets further and further away from the sun, the speed of the spacecraft will slowly decrease under the influence of the sun's gravity. But since he planned to break away from the sun's gravity, it was naturally impossible for Xiaoyu not to prepare in advance. In fact, Xiaoyu started to accelerate slowly about a month and a half ago, accelerating the relative speed of the spacecraft from 20 kilometers per second to 40 kilometers per second. And it is still accelerating. It is expected that after crossing the orbit of Mars, Xiaoyu's speed will reach 60 kilometers per second, surpassing Voyager 1, the previous fastest human aircraft. After that, Xiaoyu will fly at this speed until he is 100 million kilometers away from Saturn, then start to slow down slowly, and finally land on Titan. Everything feels as familiar as it came, once again passing by Mars at a distance of 30,000 kilometers. Xiaoyu was filled with emotions as he looked at this planet that had suffered a huge disaster and provided a strong shelter for him. Okay, finally it's time to cross the asteroid belt and take a new step. Xiaoyu was full of confidence. The last time he planned to travel through the asteroid belt, he was forced to change his orbit by the big event of the Moon-Jupiter collision. Fortunately, Xiaoyu did not suffer a fatal blow. Xiaoyu was like an invincible little beast who regained supplies in the orbit of the Earth. And like Huhan San, he came back again. This time, no one can stop Xiaoyu. There are indeed many asteroids in the asteroid belt. The total number is estimated to be 1 million or more. But they are distributed in a huge space. And their density is very questionable. In fact, if you don't specifically select your target, you won't be able to find any shadows of asteroids when passing through the asteroid belt. It will seem as empty as the rest of the universe. Therefore, as long as you are not very unlucky, you generally don't have to worry about being attacked by an asteroid here. Shall you pass through the asteroid belt without incident? Under the influence of Jupiter's gravity, he was accelerated to 65 kilometers per second and rushed towards his destination at full speed. Here, it is about 300 million kilometers away from the sun. It is about 480 million kilometers from the orbit of Jupiter and about 1.1 billion kilometers from the orbit of Saturn. Fortunately, Jupiter, Saturn, and Xiaoyu are now on the same side of the sun. Otherwise, without Jupiter's gravitational acceleration, Xiaoyu would have spent a little more time. In the blink of an eye, nearly three months have passed. The distance between Xiaoyu and Jupiter has also shortened to less than 30 million kilometers. Looking at Jupiter getting closer and closer, Xiaoyu began to think about a very important question. That is, should we go and take a look near Jupiter? Xiaoyu has completed calculations on the data obtained from Jupiter and is currently in the stage of experimental verification. Before obtaining new data from experiments, Xiaoyu's research on nuclear fusion cannot go any further. Although Xiaoyu is 90% sure that the final answer lies in several of his assumptions, there is always a possibility of an accident. What if we observe Jupiter at close range at this time and get more data? Would it be more certain? After all, after arriving at Saturn, it is not an easy task to go to Jupiter. But the dangers are self-evident. Although a year has passed since the Jupiter-Moon impact event, a year is just a blink of an eye on an astronomical scale. The impact of such a huge impact cannot subside in a short time. Maybe there are countless satellite fragments flying around above Jupiter's orbit. Or maybe Jupiter's magnetic field has mutated, causing all the spacecraft instruments to malfunction. Shall you gritted his teeth? frowned, thought about it, and decided that he should go take a look. Having strong curiosity and desire for knowledge are the basic qualities of a scientist. As the most outstanding scientist, Xiaoyu undoubtedly has a curiosity strong enough to kill 500 cats. There are two reasons for going to Jupiter. One reason is that going to Jupiter for close observation will really help Xiaoyu in his research on nuclear fusion technology. The second reason is that Xiaoyu is really curious and really wants to see Jupiter. What is it like now? Even if you want to go see it, you have to think about safety. Well, we will reach Jupiter in about five days. During this time, we can strengthen and thicken the radiation protection layer of the spacecraft. Also, we can only reach Jupiter when we are far away from Jupiter. 
it passed by 200,000 kilometers away. And it can't get any closer. Well, really, it can't get any closer. Xiaoyu muttered silently. Commanding eight robots. During the past few months of the journey, the number of robots increased by five more and began to once again strengthen and thicken the radiation protection layer of the spacecraft. At the same time, the Geiger counter, magnetometer, the radar anti-collision system, optical detection system, and other systems were all turned on to maximum power. And the only laser gun was also taken out, ready to crush meteorites that could not be avoided at any time. After making all preparations, Xiaoyu silently looked at the growing Jupiter, feeling nervous and a little expectant. Jupiter's iconic stripes have disappeared. Xiaoyu knows that this is due to the impact of the moon. Even Jupiter's most famous great red spot was hit by the collision between Jupiter and the moon and disappeared. Getting closer, the distance between Xiaoyu and Jupiter has narrowed to 2 million kilometers. This distance is already quite close. But Xiaoyu is still flying forward without hesitation. After about 8 hours, the distance between Xiaoyu and Jupiter will be as close as possible. By then, the distance between Xiaoyu and Jupiter will be about 200,000 kilometers. And then, they will be far away. Jupiter, the best observation time is only 16 hours. The various instruments carried by Xiaoyu have been turned to maximum power, observing Jupiter with all their strength, and trying their best to obtain more data from Jupiter. So many instruments only occupy less than 30% of the central computer's computing power. Xiaoyu had a lot of energy to stare blankly at Jupiter to satisfy his curiosity. It's really spectacular, Xiaoyu murmured to himself. Behind Xiaoyu is the spectacular ring of Jupiter, and faint traces of Europa and Callisto can be seen. In front is the giant Jupiter. Jupiter now appears generally a chaotic tawny color. From time to time, huge cyclones that can almost be seen with the naked eye appear above it. Xiaoyu has no doubt about their power. If Xiaoyu's spaceship is thrown into it, it will be torn into pieces in less than a tenth of a second. At the two poles, there are countless gorgeous aurora flying around, which are countless times larger than the aurora on the Earth. With the huge Jupiter as the background, Xiaoyu's spacecraft looks like a small mosquito. Eight hours have passed, and the distance between Xiaoyu and Jupiter is now 400,000 kilometers. The closest distance of 200,000 kilometers is coming soon. Jupiter has occupied Xiaoyu's entire field of vision. Xiaoyu seemed to be able to see countless violent thunderstorms and lightning on Jupiter. Any lightning on Jupiter is hundreds of times more powerful than the most powerful lightning on Earth. Long lightning bolts rage in the clouds of Jupiter, piercing the sky and releasing unparalleled energy. Such a scene made Xiaoyu feel like his blood was boiling just thinking about it. 200,000 kilometers. A strange palpitation was transmitted to Xiaoyu's spirit. Xiaoyu recovered from his daze with a quick wit. Immediately afterwards, Xiaoyu felt a wave of data that almost stopped his heart. Why did the radiation intensity suddenly increase so much? Why did the outer SH L temperature suddenly increase to 200 degrees? Why were the instruments suddenly disturbed? Xiaoyu roared angrily and immediately started checking. Chapter 8 Radiation Source Capture Plan Hundreds of thousands of kilometers away. The huge monster Jupiter is watching here quietly. As chaotic as ever. In the distance, the huge Jupiter ring was moving quietly. With more than 60 satellites sinking and floating in it. Xiaoyu could not find any factors that might cause strong radiation in the Jupiter system. If Xiaoyu had not intentionally strengthened the heat insulation layer and radiation protection layer of the spacecraft before arriving. At this moment, Xiaoyu would have been caused by this abnormality. All the instruments had malfunctioned. The central computer had short-circuited. And he died directly. But even so, Xiaoyu was made very uncomfortable. On the spacecraft, subtle sparks had already exploded in some places. If not handled in time, it may cause a larger scale line short circuit, which will be dangerous. Thousands of sensors scattered throughout the hull of the spacecraft began to collect data at full capacity. Various detection equipment such as Geiger counters, magnetometers, photometers, and spectrum analyzers were activated at full capacity. Countless data were transmitted to Xiaoyu's brain and calculations began. Almost in an instant, Xiaoyu came to the conclusion. No red shift. No blue shift. How is this possible? This conclusion made Xiaoyu unable to figure it out. If there is radiation, there must be a source of radiation. According to the Doppler effect, when you are far away from the radiation source, the radiation band will move to the red end, which is a red shift. And conversely, when you get closer, there will be a blue shift. But Xiaoyu's current observation results are that there is neither red shift nor blue shift. 
This shows that the radiation cannot come from Jupiter. Because Xiaoyu is now moving away from Jupiter. Or Jupiter is moving away from Xiaoyu. If the radiation comes from Jupiter, then Xiaoyu should observe a red shift. There is only one possibility. The radiation source maintains the same moving rate as Xiaoyu's spacecraft. Both in speed and direction. In other words, the radiation source is simply on top of the spacecraft. Xiaoyu immediately started the next round of testing. The radiation inside the spacecraft is dozens of times weaker than the outside of the spacecraft. The maximum radiation detected by the sensor on the outer SH. L of the spacecraft is not from the outside of the spacecraft. No. Or is the radiation attached to the outer SH? L? Xiaoyu immediately started the optical sensor and carefully inspected the outer SH. L of the spacecraft. However, there is nothing on the outer SH. L of the spacecraft that does not belong to the original contents of the spacecraft. What the H? L is going on? Xiaoyu was worried. In such a situation, if you delay for a little longer, a serious accident may occur. However, Xiaoyu tried all his methods and could not detect the problem at all. Calm down. You must calm down. Xiaoyu suppressed the panic in his heart. If a big wind and wave like the collision of the moon and the moon comes, I don't believe that the boat will capsize in the gutter. At this time, the Geiger counter jumped wildly again, and another powerful radiation source was observed. The difference is that this time Xiaoyu observed an obvious blue shift, which showed that the radiation source was rapidly approaching him. After determining the location, Xiaoyu immediately aimed the optical detection equipment there. However, what he could see was only the huge Jupiter slowly rotating, and at most a few meteorites moving carelessly in their own orbits. Other than that, except, there is nothing else. But the radiation was still increasing gradually, and Xiaoyu almost started to curse. What on earth is it? What thing? Xiaoyu was depressed and couldn't figure it out. Suddenly, the spectrum analyzer showed that the blue shift of this powerful radiation source disappeared. At the same time, the radiation intensity on the outer SH. L of the spacecraft also doubled from before. This indicates that the radiation source has stopped moving. Is there another radiation source attached to the outer SH? L of my spacecraft? Xiaoyu speculated. But no matter how he searched, he could not find any objects that might emit radiation in the visible light band. Calculated based on the current radiation intensity, Xiaoyu's radiation protection layer will be unable to withstand two more such radiation sources. By then, the machinery, instruments, and circuits inside the spacecraft will be seriously damaged. Even irreparably damaged. Huh? Just when Xiaoyu was anxious, he noticed something unusual. He felt that the intensity of the radiation source had increased slightly. It's like the radiation source is trying to pass through the radiation shield and want to go inside the spacecraft. Does this thing have its own thoughts? Could it be life? Xiaoyu was startled and immediately connected some lines under the radiation protection layer to electricity. Under the action of the electromagnetic field, the feeling of being penetrated disappeared. Now Xiaoyu has passed the time when he is closest to Jupiter. Now, Xiaoyu is moving away from Jupiter at a speed of 58 kilometers per second. Jupiter is too weird here. Anyway, we have obtained enough observation data. So we should run quickly and get out of danger first. Xiaoyu made up his mind and accelerated for another 10 seconds, consuming several tons of fuel and increasing his speed. It accelerated to 63 kilometers per second. However, Xiaoyu sensed the danger again. He also observed a blue shift, which indicated that the radiation source was rapidly approaching him. This time, it's two different sources of radiation. Damn! This is going to kill me! Xiaoyu was horrified. In a panic, he didn't care that he couldn't see these things at all. He just took out the laser gun and aimed at the direction of the radiation source in the observation. A section of laser was fired at maximum power. The laser flashed away. And Xiaoyu's observation equipment showed that the blue shift of one radiation source disappeared. And the radiation intensity of this radiation source also decreased by two percentage points. This is so weird! Xiaoyu secretly breathed a sigh of relief. But the next moment, the radiation source blue shifted again. It was as if there was an invisible creature there. Under the blow of Xiaoyu's laser gun, it paused for a moment, and then continued to rush toward Xiaoyu. It's really weird! Xiaoyu cursed and continued to shoot in that direction with the laser gun. This shot did not weaken its strength. Xiaoyu checked the data and discovered that this thing had actually changed its position and avoided the laser gun's fire. Xiaoyu's heart trembled, and he immediately turned the gun and aimed it at the radiation source again. The radiation source hit again, and Xiaoyu took aim again. 
It's like a policeman, constantly targeting a robber who keeps dodging under constant laser strikes. Observation equipment shows that this radiation source is continuously reducing its intensity. However, although the intensity is reduced, its blue shift has not disappeared. The laser gun fired for about three minutes and consumed almost a ton of fuel. Finally, the radiation source disappeared from Xiao Yu's observation equipment. We really encountered a ghost. Although one radiation source was eliminated, Xiao Yu did not dare to neglect it all. He turned the laser gun again and aimed at another radiation source to shoot. Four minutes later, another the radiation source also disappeared, and Xiao Yu breathed a sigh of relief. Xiao Yu began to think about what this was. First of all, this thing is invisible, but its existence can be detected through Geiger counters. Their moving direction and speed can be determined through red shift and blue shift, and their radiation intensity can be reduced through laser guns until they are eliminated. Is this a creature on Jupiter? Gradually, after analysis, a surprising idea appeared in Xiao Yu's mind. It can actively attack Xiao Yu and actively avoid laser gun fire. This seems to indicate that this thing has its own consciousness. This completely subverted Xiao Yu's previous understanding of the word life. In the minds of most people, including Xiao Yu, life can be seen and touched. Even the tiniest virus, which only has a basic DNA structure, can show its shape under an electron microscope. So, how to define an existence that has its own consciousness, can move around, but has no mass, is completely transparent, does not emit or reflect any visible light, and the entire body is just a radiation source? How to define this kind of existence? There is no time for Xiao Yu to think, because Xiao Yu observed that at least hundreds of such radiation sources appeared on a certain Jupiter satellite 300,000 kilometers ahead, and they all showed a strong blue shift, which showed that they would it was approaching Xiao Yu at an astonishing speed, and the approaching speed of both parties was almost as high as 150 kilometers per second. At this speed, it only takes half an hour for the two sides to meet head-on. Xiao Yu's current radiation protection layer can only withstand up to four such radiation sources. If hundreds of radiation sources are attached to the surface of Xiao Yu's spacecraft, the SH L of Xiao Yu's spacecraft will be melted instantly, and all circuits of the spacecraft will be short-circuited. The central computer will be paralyzed instantly. Such a result means Xiao Yu's complete death, even if the central computer is repaired and can be turned on again in the future. Xiao Yu will not survive, because as soon as the phone is turned off, Xiao Yu's consciousness will become a piece of code fixed on the storage device and he will lose his self-awareness. Holy shit! Xiao Yu cursed, no longer caring about the energy consumption, increased the power of the laser gun to the maximum, aimed at that direction, and started shooting. The laser gun fires a powerful laser at a consumption rate of almost one ton of fuel per minute. But even so, it takes Xiao Yu almost two minutes to eliminate a radiation source. Based on this efficiency, when they met head-on, Xiao Yu could only eliminate 15 radiation sources at most. But what about the remaining 80 or 90 radiation sources? This won't work. Xiao Yu's brain began to operate at full power. In an instant, countless plans emerged, and Xiao Yu tested their feasibility one by one, and then gave up one by one. Finally, a plan passed the feasibility test. This is the only way. Then, give it a try. It's better than just sitting back and waiting for death. Xiao Yu sighed and began to control the robot to quickly transform a metal box and attach it to the inner wall of the spacecraft. Then let's start the radiation source capture plan. Chapter 9, I will definitely come back. Xiao Yu turned off most of the instruments, and covered the most important instruments that could not be turned off, such as the central computer, with high-blocking radiation-proof materials. Then he controlled the laser gun and randomly aimed at one of them. The radiation source started shooting. The shooting lasted for 30 seconds. The radiation source was dodging. After a pause, it was nearly 2,000 kilometers away from the large army of radiation sources. Then, Xiao Yu changed the target and aimed at another radiation source, and repeated this. Under Xiao Yu's conscious control, the radiation sources left the large army one by one, and were separated by a certain distance from each other, and the radiation intensity was weakened to varying degrees. In just 10 minutes, Xiao Yu consumed hundreds of tons of fuel, which made Xiao Yu heartbroken. But the consumption of these fuels is worthwhile. Because in this case, Xiao Yu does not have to worry about these radiation sources swarming up. By the time Xiao Yu had made all the preparations, the nearest radiation source was less than 3,000 kilometers away from Xiao Yu. According to estimates, 
It would only take 30 seconds at most for Xiao Yu to meet this forward radiation source head on. Xiao Yu began to wait quietly for the moment of meeting. Under the action of inertia, the spacecraft quickly moved forward. Ahead, there are hundreds of powerful radiation sources lining up and approaching Xiao Yu quickly. The moment the two parties came into contact, this weird radiation source was like a leech encountering fresh flesh and blood. It desperately stuck to the outer SH. L of Xiao Yu's spacecraft and squeezed inward desperately. The temperature of the outer SH. L of the spacecraft instantly rose to 200 degrees Celsius. And it continued to increase. Xiao Yu gritted his teeth. And when the next radiation source was about to approach, he opened a gap in the outer SH. L of the spacecraft. The gap was right opposite the metal box that Xiao Yu had prepared a long time ago. This metal box is two decimeters thick. Except for the side that is in contact with the outer SH. L of the spacecraft. It is entirely made of high strength radiation resistant and high temperature resistant materials. If we only talk about radiation protection and high temperature resistance, this box is more than a hundred times higher than the outer SH. L of the spacecraft. As a result, the radiation source that suddenly found an outlet cheered and poured in. Then, it was blocked by a stronger barrier of the metal box and could no longer move forward. A radioactive source was imprisoned in the box. Then the next one. Everything went as expected, and the radiation source was successfully locked into the box. Although these radiation sources show some characteristics of life, they do not seem to be intelligent, but only rely on instinct to act. At least, they won't be able to tell whether there is a trap ahead. It is precisely because they have no intelligence that Xiao Yu's plan can work. Gradually, all sources of radiation entered the box. Realizing that the temperature of the outer SH L of the spacecraft was rapidly weakening and the radiation intensity was also rapidly decreasing. Xiao Yu breathed a sigh of relief and reopened the previously closed instruments. The radiation source capture plan was successful. At this time, Xiao Yu was already 600,000 kilometers away from Jupiter. Xiao Yu breathed a huge sigh of relief. While maneuvering the spacecraft to quickly leave Jupiter, he also manipulated the instruments and began to analyze these strange radiation sources that showed certain characteristics of life. At this time, these radiation sources were densely packed on the inner wall of the metal box, refusing to leave for a moment, as if there was something outside the box attracting them. Through the previous phenomena, it can be basically determined that they have instincts and intelligence similar to those of living things. They should not have any intelligence. Otherwise, they would not be so stupid. So, let's assume that they are living creatures. But what exactly is on my spaceship? Something attracted them? Xiao Yu thought quietly, before the destruction of the Earth. Humans also launched several Jupiter probes. But they never encountered such strange creatures. In other words, these creatures were created in the near future. Well, the most likely scenario, it was created after the collision between Jupiter and the Moon. Xiao Yu analyzed slowly, and clues flashed through his mind. What on Earth is there that is not on Jupiter, but is on my spacecraft? It must be something like this that attracts them causing them to swarm toward me like a swarm of bloodthirsty locusts. Shall you confirm this speculation? No matter. Let's lock them up first. After we get to Titan and establish a solid base, we will analyze these guys. After finally getting through this major crisis, Shall you felt like seeing the light of day again. And at the same time, he felt a truth more deeply. The universe is endless. And even in a small solar system, there are so many incomprehensible beings in front of the great nature. It is better to remain in awe. At the same time, Xiao Yu also knew that he was no longer the only creature in the solar system. At least, there are hundreds of suspected creatures accompanying him in the boxes in his spaceship. While assessing the damage caused to him by this encounter, Xiao Yu slowly accelerated the spacecraft. Suddenly, Xiao Yu noticed something unusual. Huh? Xiao Yu pointed the detection equipment at the box in a strange way. Looking at the data fed back, Xiao Yu was surprised. The original hundreds of chaotic radiation sources disappeared, replaced by a single radiation source that was hundreds of times more powerful than the previous individual radiation sources. These radiation sources merge into one. Fortunately, even if it merges into one, its total radiation intensity is not greater than when it was dispersed before, but seems to have decreased slightly. So this box can still keep it contained. But shall you notice some strange changes? The metal material of this box seems to have changed a little under the influence of this weird radiation source. Xiao Yu's heart tightened, and he immediately started analyzing the box. It seems that its density has become a little larger. The molecules are arranged more densely. 
and the temperature outside the box is gradually decreasing. And the radiation that can be detected outside the box is also gradually decreasing. This means that the box blocks more heat and radiation inside the box. This shows that the thermal insulation and radiation resistance of the metal materials that make up the box have been enhanced for some special reasons. Xiao Yu perked up and immediately controlled the robot to cut some material from the outer wall of the box, took it to the laboratory and started testing. The test results came out quickly. The results show that in this short period of time, the thermal insulation performance and radiation resistance of the metal materials that make up the box have increased by 50 and 45 percentage points respectively. At the same time, its flexibility and impact resistance have also made a leap forward. I didn't expect that these weird things are still treasures. Xiao Yu exclaimed for a long time. The wonder of the creation of the universe once again gave him a great shock. Previously, there were two reasons that restricted Xiao Yu from embarking on a real interstellar journey. One is a power issue, and the other is a material technology issue. The power problem has already been solved. As long as the barrier to controllable nuclear fusion is broken, the power problem will be perfectly solved. Now, Xiao Yu has also seen the dawn of a solution to material technology. Although we have only seen some signs and are still far from a complete solution, we at least see hope. It can be said that if Xiao Yu cannot solve the problem of material technology, Xiao Yu will always be in a situation where a small meteorite can kill Xiao Yu. It is simply unbelievable to embark on an interstellar voyage that can take hundreds or even thousands of years in such a state. Moreover, if the problem of material technology is not solved, Xiao Yu's spacecraft will always remain small scale and will never be able to land directly on the planet. Otherwise, as soon as it gets close to the planet, its gravity will tear the entire spacecraft into pieces. And even if it lands on the planet, Xiao Yu will never be able to fly again. This is the shackles of materials technology. Now that materials technology has also been solved, how can Xiao Yu not be excited? As the saying goes, every loss must have a gain. Now it seems that my interstellar navigation plan is very promising. Xiao Yu thought excitedly. I just have to wait until I land on Titan and then build a large-scale base to transfer all new after researching the technology. We can then develop a new generation of interstellar spacecraft and set off towards Tianyuan 4. At the same time, Xiao Yu began to consider whether to return to Jupiter and try to capture some of this strange radiation source. After all, with the characteristic of improving material performance, the value of these radiation sources is not ordinary. Just as his mind was about to stir, Xiao Yu suddenly observed a collection of radiation sources hundreds of times more powerful than the previous hundreds of radiation sources, and they were showing a blue shift. Blue shift means they are approaching Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu's current speed has reached 60 km per second relative to the Sun, and 70 km per second relative to Jupiter. According to calculations, the speed of these radiation sources is at least 80 km per second relative to Jupiter. There are at least tens of thousands of single radiation sources. With such intensity, no matter how Xiao Yu plans or prevents, it will not have any effect. If he is caught up by these radiation sources, Xiao Yu will definitely be melted immediately and turn into an interstellar meteorite wandering in the vast sky, in the universe, forever. Xiao Yu was so frightened that he flew out of the sky. He immediately put aside his plan to return to Jupiter and recapture some radiation sources. He started accelerating again and flew away in the direction of Saturn. After watching the blue shift gradually disappear and making sure that he had escaped the pursuit of these weird Jupiter creatures, Xiao Yu calmed down and thought bitterly. Anyway, I have captured some radiation sources. After arriving at Titan, after developing controllable nuclear fusion technology, and breaking through the shackles of material technology, I will definitely come back and catch you all. I will definitely come back. Chapter 10 Records of the Heroes in the Sky After leaving the Jupiter system, Xiao Yu felt extremely happy. Although he had been frightened before, Xiao Yu believed that the frights were completely worth it. The value of these weird radiation sources goes beyond simply improving material properties. The most important value is its mechanism for transforming materials. In other words, why do metals experience significant improvements in various properties after being affected by these radiation sources? If this problem is clarified, Xiao Yu can use it as a basis to develop more and stronger materials. This is the greatest value of these radiation sources. There is no doubt that studying this problem requires a huge amount of data computing power. And what Xiao Yu is most indispensable for his computing power. The improvement in ability shown by the combination of human soul and computer is not as simple as 1 plus 1. 
a true electronic life's research capabilities are no weaker than those of the entire human society. Because he is supported by nearly unlimited learning ability, computing power, innovation ability, and accuracy that is unmatched by humans. Combining the two major advantages of humans and computers, there is no doubt that Xiaoyu is powerful. Watching Jupiter getting further away and getting smaller, Xiaoyu focused his attention on a bright star in the distance, which was Saturn. After observing the orientation and other data of several neutron stars in the universe, Xiaoyu determined his position. The current position is still 700 million kilometers away from Saturn. Figuring out your place in the universe is hard. However, humans have done some research in this area and basically solved this problem. That is to locate through pulsars. When a massive star evolves to its later years and undergoes a supernova explosion, if the remaining core mass is less than the Oppenheimer limit, a neutron star will be formed which relies on the balance between its own gravity and neutron degeneracy pressure to obtain its own stability. A pulsar is a type of neutron star that spins at extremely fast speeds and emits extremely powerful radiation at its poles, making it extremely stable. It is like a bright beacon in the universe. In this way, by observing the parameters of several pulsars relative to itself, one can infer its own position. Of course, this presupposes that the positions of these neutron stars have been determined before before Xiaoyu escaped from the Earth. He had copied all the astronomical data observed by humans to his hard drive, which naturally also included the data of these neutron stars. The journey to the universe is long, and another six months have passed. Looking at the Saturn that was getting bigger in front of him, Xiaoyu's mood cheered up. If it were not necessary to slow down when approaching Saturn, this time could be shortened by about a month. During these six months, Xiaoyu calculated the new data obtained from Jupiter and made a modification to his previous theory. Now, he is more confident about mastering controllable nuclear fusion technology. Moreover, during these five months, Xiaoyu also conducted detailed research on the strange radiation source locked in the box. For the convenience of naming, Xiaoyu also gave this peculiar Jupiter creature a name, calling it Number One. Of course, Xiaoyu did not dare to release Number One. In that case, the interior of the spacecraft will be burned and melted instantly. Conducting research through a thick metal box is like scratching the surface. But it's better than nothing. Even so, Xiaoyu also obtained a lot of data. He has initially determined that this is indeed a kind of creature. A strange creature. It has all the characteristics of life except that it has no physical mass. For example, when Xiaoyu sends an extremely high frequency radio wave to it, it will show restless fluctuations. And its radiation intensity will also weaken accordingly. But no matter how Xiaoyu operate he could never increase its radiation intensity. After a large number of experiments, Xiaoyu measured that the intelligence level of number one was roughly equivalent to that of a trilobite from ancient times. In other words, they are still in the early stages of evolution. During this period of time, the metal materials that make up the box have been strengthened a lot, and its various performance indicators have almost tripled their initial levels. But after reaching this level, there will be no improvement in the future. It seems that number one has a limit to the performance improvement of metal. Corresponding to the improved performance of metal materials, the radiation intensity of number one decreased by 0.03 percentage points. Xiaoyu estimated that if one ton of metal material were to double its original performance, the total radiation intensity of number one would be reduced by 0.01 percentage point. In other words, the radiation intensity of number one is enough to improve the performance of 10,000 tons of metal materials. This much metal material is enough to build the skeleton of a medium-sized spacecraft. You know, before the destruction of the Earth. Apart from the spacecraft secretly built by Xiaoyu, the heaviest human aircraft, the International Space Station, weighed less than 500 tons. Even Xiaoyu's spaceship, when fully loaded with fuel, weighs only a few thousand tons. And the metal materials used are no more than 2,000 tons. Xiaoyu is full of expectations for the performance of number one. The research on controllable nuclear fusion and the research on number one only occupied less than 10% of Xiaoyu's calculation rate. During these five months, most of Xiaoyu's energy was spent on discovering new stars and supplementing data on old stars. Xiaoyu is compiling a huge star catalog covering all stars. Of course, this work has just begun. This work seemed almost impossible to previous humans. Because the number of stars in the universe is too huge, the Milky Way alone contains between 100 and 400 billion stars. Therefore, for convenience, humans have compiled many star catalogs that classify various types of stars. Commonly used types include HD, SAW, 
BD, etc. But Xiaoyu doesn't care about this. He plans to compile all types of stars. Nebulae, star clusters, white dwarfs, neutron stars, black holes, galaxies, etc. into a star catalog. Because Xiaoyu has almost unbelievably powerful storage and retrieval abilities, the huge number is not an obstacle to him. In the past few months, Xiaoyu has initially sequenced more than 5 million stars through the detection system on his spacecraft that is not weaker than the Hubble Space Telescope. Combined with the data originally available to humans, and also corresponding observational data are attached, such as mass, volume, age, absolute magnitude, spectrum, metallicity, angular diameter, rotation speed, orbiting speed, position information, etc. This star catalog is dynamic because the stars in the universe are moving. The star catalog compiled by Xiao Yu will slowly change its data as time goes by. Such a great star catalog should have a shocking name. Well, let's name this great star catalog the Sky of Heroes. The sky is the universe. And the stars are the stars in the universe. The record of heroes in the sky. Xiao Yu was secretly proud as he read this resounding name. In the Sky of Heroes, the star numbered one is undoubtedly the sun. The sun has a special meaning to Xiao Yu. Jupiter is getting closer and closer. In Xiao Yu's field of vision, Saturn, surrounded by the spectacular rings, looks like a dancing beauty. Saturn's rings have amazing physical properties. It's huge, but extremely thin. The radius of Saturn's rings is about 110,000 kilometers, but its thickness is only about 20 meters. It is mainly composed of meteorites, ice particles, etc. Saturn has a similar structure to Jupiter which means that the resources that can be obtained on Jupiter can also be obtained on Saturn. Moreover, Titan's resource richness is no worse than Europa's for Xiaoyu. After reducing his speed relative to Saturn to 30 km per second, Xiaoyu entered the orbit around Saturn, and then slowly adjusted his speed to reduce his speed relative to Titan to 2 km per second, successfully entered orbit around Titan. At this time, there are more things that need to be done, because with Xiaoyu's current technology, he cannot take off directly from the star without leaving the rocket, even for a small star like Titan, which has an escape velocity of only 2.6 kilometers. It won't work. In other words, after Xiaoyu landed this time, there was no possibility of moving his position in a short period of time. Therefore, Xiaoyu must choose the most suitable area to land. This area must be land, but there must be a methane lake nearby to provide energy, and in order to obtain sufficient building materials, the landing location must be close to an area with relatively sufficient iron elements. Xiaoyu began a long journey around Titan. After tens of thousands of orbits, Xiaoyu gradually drew a three-dimensional map of Titan. On this map, Xiaoyu marked the differences in terrain, such as where are mountains, where are volcanoes, which areas are rich in iron, which areas are rich in silicon, which areas are lakes, which areas are land. After careful analysis, Xiaoyu finally selected a place. Xanadu, also known as Shangri-La, is a highly luminous reflective region in Titan's leading hemisphere that is as large as Australia. The traditional theory is that this is a huge methane lake, but after on-site observations, Xiaoyu denied this statement. Through the dense atmosphere, the surface conditions of Xanadu district came into Xiaoyu's lens. What appeared in front of Xiaoyu was a magical world. There is solid ground here, and there are lakes, but they are not very big. At the same time, there are rivers made entirely of liquid methane flowing slowly. Just like on Earth, geological exploration reports show that there is an extremely rich iron or in a certain area of Shandu district. Xiaoyu thought about it and chose the landing place here. After detailed orbit calculations, Xiaoyu slowly lowered his altitude and speed and began to slowly approach Titan's smooth surface. Chapter 11 Landing Titan has a thick atmosphere. The total mass of its atmosphere is even higher than the total mass of the Earth's atmosphere. Its main component is nitrogen, which is as high as 95%. An atmosphere with such a concentration represents severe atmospheric friction. Xiaoyu slowly adjusted his posture and penetrated into the atmosphere at a suitable angle. Under the high-speed friction, the outer SH, L of the spacecraft quickly turned red. But all this was expected. Xiaoyu was not worried at all. The altitude continued to decrease from 3,000 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers, and then to 100 kilometers. Entering the troposphere of Titan's atmosphere, the speed began to decrease sharply, plummeting from 2 kilometers per second to 1.5 kilometers per second, 1 kilometer per second, and 600 meters per second. 
when he was 3,000 meters above the ground. Xiao Yu opened his parachute. The thick atmosphere filled the parachute. And the speed suddenly dropped to 300 meters per second. This kind of speed is equivalent to a snail crawling in the universe. But it was still a little too fast for landing. Xiao Yu's hull was too fragile and could not withstand any violent collision. Xiao Yu's ideal landing plan is to land slowly. So after the speed dropped to 100 meters per second, Xiao Yu turned on the recoil rocket again. Using a series of methods, the spacecraft began to land at a speed of several meters per second. And it was still slowing down. Finally, when he was only two meters above the ground, Xiao Yu's speed dropped to a few decimeters per second. This speed is already within the acceptable range. The high temperature exhaust gas emitted by the reflection rocket melted Titan's surface. A large amount of material began to volatilize, and then condensed when it encountered cold in the air, turning into patches of white mist. In the thick white mist, Xiao Yu landed on the ground like an immortal descended from heaven. When the white fog dissipated, Xiao Yu opened the hatch. Six probing robots came out. They stand side by side, like a troop of soldiers. What caught Xiao Yu's eyes was a magical world. It was night on Titan, and the sky was dark. Under this thick atmosphere, there are basically no stars visible in the sky, and only a few bright stars can be observed. Fortunately, it has a huge moon. This huge figure is very conspicuous. That's Saturn. Yellowish Saturn. When viewed from Titan, Saturn appears to be the same size as the sun viewed from Earth. Saturn is 1.2 million kilometers away from Titan. This distance is enough to cover Titan within Saturn's own magnetic field which helps protect it from the solar wind from the sun. Titan takes approximately 16 days to orbit Saturn. The Earth is shrouded in a vast darkness, which can basically be described as being invisible. At least, with the six robots standing in a row in front of Xiao Yu's spacecraft. You can't take any pictures with an optical detector. Xiao Yu turned on the night vision device. As a result, a shocking scene unfolded in front of Xiao Yu. There's a lake in front of him, just a few hundred meters in front of Xiao Yu. It was a huge lake, blown by the wind blowing from Titan. The surface of the lake rippled. Some waves were lapping at the shore of the lake, making a splashing sound. This lake is so beautiful! Xiao Yu sighed. Let's call you Whale on Lake! Next to it, there was a winding river, and some liquid flowing from nowhere slowly merged into the lake. Underfoot, there is a slightly mottled ground, like sand and some stones, similar to the Gobi Desert on the Earth. Behind it, there is a small hill that is not very high. It is short and crouching there, like an ancient giant beast. This is a place 1.5 billion kilometers away from the Earth. Here, the Earth can no longer be seen with the naked eye. There have never been human footprints here. And it can even be said that there have never been biological footprints. This place is completely shaped by the great nature without any artificial force. As an intelligent and self-aware individual, Xiao Yu was the first person to come and see this place. Above, is giant Saturn. Ahead is a sea-like lake. Behind, there are short hills and a small river next to them. Xiao Yu suddenly felt the urge to cry. Then, the sensor on one robot detected liquid falling from the sky. And then the remaining five robots also detected it. Xiao Yu immediately realized a problem. It's raining. Yes, it rains on Titan too. However, the rain on Titan is not made of water, but liquid methane. There are also lakes and rivers all made of liquid methane. The rain gradually became heavier, and Xiao Yu couldn't laugh or cry. So he had to command the six robots to return to the cabin and postpone the exploration plan until after the rain stopped. After turning on the collection equipment and various sensors on the hull of the spacecraft, Xiao Yu began to feel the rain from the alien planet blankly. This feeling is very strange, as if Xiao Yu has returned to the past, the era when he lived carefree on the Earth. I no longer have a home, Xiao Yu thought sadly. I don't have any similar people anymore. I don't have a body anymore. So I can't be considered a real human being. The heavy rain was pouring. And Xiao Yu's thoughts drifted far away. For the first time, Xiao Yu began to let go of his fanatical desire to explore and began to have the energy to think about other things. For the first time, Xiao Yu really wanted to talk to someone. However, here, apart from Xiao Yu, the only thing that can barely be regarded as a living thing is the number one captured from Jupiter in the metal box. Xiao Yu sent out a burst of high-frequency pulses like a prank, looking at the restless number one in the box, rushing left and right. He suddenly felt better. This heavy rain lasted for several days. The rising lake water almost didn't reach Xiao Yu. However, Xiao Yu is not worried at all. He is quite confident in the ceiling of his spaceship. 
Moreover, the lake water will recede sooner or later. At this time, Shall you can also conveniently collect some methane as a reserve. Shall you disassembled an engine on the spacecraft and made some modifications, changing it from burning liquid hydrogen to burning methane. I tested it and everything is in good condition. After the rain, the sky clears and daytime has arrived on Titan. The sky of Titan is an intoxicating dark blue. When Titan rotates to the side of Saturn facing the sun, sunlight will shine on Titan. After most of the sunlight is reflected away, a slightly smaller part of the sunlight will penetrate to the ground and pass through the soil. The sky turns this blue due to diffuse reflection from moon's thick atmosphere. The principle is similar to the fact that the sky on Earth is blue. However, Titan's daytime is still very dim. Just like the nights on Earth when it is clear and the moon is not bright. But at least you can see a little something with the optical detector. Due to humans' inertial thinking, Xiaoyu has never been accustomed to the images captured by night vision devices. The scenery in the visible light band is more beautiful. As the sun shines in, the temperature rises a little. And then the liquid methane begins to sublimate into a gaseous state, just like the evaporation of water on the earth. And the high water level slowly recedes. Shall you knew that this was a unique methane gas liquid circulation system on Titan. The wet, muddy ground began to dry out. Shall you reset a formation of six robots and began to conduct on-site surveys of the surrounding terrain. For convenience, the robots built by Xiao Yu are all battery powered. A single charge can support them in the wild for six to eight hours. Of course, Xiao Yu also made some modifications to them in order to adapt to field detection activities. The remaining two robots stayed in the cabin of the spacecraft to prevent the loss of all robots in case of an accident. Under the unified command of Xiao Yu, these six robots followed a circle with the spacecraft as the center and began to explore the terrain. The terrain of Titan is very flat with no major undulations. According to previous three-dimensional images taken in orbit around Titan, the highest peaks on Titan do not exceed 300 meters. The cause of this phenomenon is not yet clear to show you. But according to speculation, it is probably related to some special geological activities. Or it may also be due to the influence of Saturn. The detection of the terrain is slowly unfolding. And a place 1,000 meters away from Xiaoyu has been detected. And iron ore has been detected in this area before. And Xiaoyu now wants to find the best mining point for this iron ore. Ahead, a large area of dark red caught Xiaoyu's attention. Xiaoyu directed a robot to approach, then squatted down, turned on the flash, and the image data about these things was transmitted back. Xiaoyu immediately launched an analysis. Dark red iron ore. An idea came to Xiaoyu's mind. Xiaoyu's mood suddenly became anxious. My luck is so good? Xiaoyu looked at the test data in disbelief. This is hematite, whose main component is iron oxide, which can be separated into iron and oxygen through technical means. Iron can be used to make steel, and oxygen can be used as an oxidant. Xiaoyu currently has many burning agents. Even the almost unlimited reserves of methane on Titan can be used as burning agents. The only thing that worries Xiaoyu is the oxidant. The hematite discovered almost exactly made up for Xiaoyu's shortage of supplies in two aspects. This discovery made Xiaoyu sigh. Moreover, Xiaoyu also discovered that most of this hematite is an open pit or vein. And there are many associated miscellaneous ores, and the types are also very rich. Such as copper, tin, gold, silver, silicon, chromium, nickel, etc. This, this is simply a gift from God. Could it be that God finally felt that I have been working hard recently? So he sent me this great gift? Well, that must be the case. Xiao Yu was overjoyed and immediately directed the six robots to move closer to him. And then together, they moved the mining equipment one after another. Mining, refining, building bases, building spaceships. The era of big construction is about to begin. Chapter 12 The Era of Great Construction This is a veritable era of great construction. Xiao Yu's small spaceship will become a prairie fire, bringing the light of science and technology to this corner of the solar system, and eventually illuminating the entire planet. The six robots started busy. Xiao Yu has a clear plan to speed up the mining progress. The insufficient number of robots is a major limitation. Therefore, the top priority is not to build a base, but to build robots. In order to better adapt to the extremely low temperature of minus 150 degrees below zero on Titan, as well as the special terrain and only about one-sixth of the gravity on Earth, Xiao Yu redesigned the new robot blueprint and smelted it with ore. After the equipment collected enough raw materials, Xiaoyu built the first Titan-specific mining and refining integrated robot. 
smelting iron or into steel requires a large amount of coal. As we all know, coal is the fossil of trees in ancient times on the earth, formed through special environments. Xiaoyu didn't think he could find coal on Titan. However, Xiaoyu had considered this situation before setting off from the earth. So he spent three months to develop a new set of steelmaking technology, which only required enough fuel and some special separation and reduction processes. With this technology, we can refine steel that is good enough, even better than the special steel on Earth. This kind of robot is a robot that applies new steelmaking technology. Xiaoyu named this robot Saturn One. The Saturn I robot is not a traditional humanoid robot, but a metal platform supported by four wheels. Several manipulators and detection equipment are installed on one side of the metal platform. It looks like a strange looking duck. However, although it looks a bit ugly, on the special terrain of Titan, the efficiency is several times higher than the original old model robot. Most of the land on Titan is flat, and it only needs to be slightly hardened, which saves Xiaoyu time in building roads. Moreover, this kind of ground is just suitable for the Saturn I robot to walk. After the experiment was a success, Xiaoyu took the time to build hundreds of more such robots, and then built some Saturn II robots according to different divisions of labor. Then, as the work required, he developed three to seven more. Five different types of robots were built, and the first six robots have been transferred into the spacecraft by Xiaoyu and are responsible for various operations inside the spacecraft. In this way, a total of seven types of robots are busy in the mine. The robots Xiaoyu built are not truly intelligent robots. In fact, with Xiaoyu's current technology, it is far from being able to build practical intelligent robots, let alone artificial intelligence. Xiaoyu did not install a central computer in the bodies of these robots at all but only installed a transmitting device and a receiving device, as well as various functional modules. All data collection was completed by detectors installed on the robots. And then the signal is sent to the spacecraft through the transmitting equipment and processed by Xiaoyu. After processing, the next operation instruction is sent back to the robot, which is implemented by the robot through the functional module. With Xiaoyu's current extremely powerful computing power, it would not be a problem to control tens of thousands of robots at the same time let alone hundreds of them. The advantage of this is that almost every robot can share Xiaoyu's wisdom, and the collaboration and tacit understanding between each individual is almost seamless. This is a true finger arm control. Xiaoyu commands these hundreds of robots just like commanding his own arms, and it is extremely precise and will never make mistakes. You can often see the scene. A Saturn VI robot collected a pile of hematite or from the ground through screening, and then poured it toward the ground, just as this pile of iron or was poured out of the container. But before it touched the ground, a Saturn I robot came over and caught the pile of hematite or with its body, without any of the ore being spilled on the ground. This is the benefit of powerful computing power and accuracy. In the mine, hundreds of robots were working in full swing without making any mistakes. It took Xiaoyu a month to build these hundreds of robots. This also includes a few days of suspension due to rain. You know, rain is very frequent on Titan. At first, Xiaoyu had the patience to wait for the water to slowly evaporate. But later Xiaoyu found that this was a waste of time. Anyway, there is unlimited methane replenishment on Titan. And the source of oxygen is not a problem. Xiaoyu simply developed a special type of robot. Every time it rains, it goes out with a huge flamethrower, which can reach thousands of meters. The Celsius flame is sprayed out, and a large pool of liquid methane will be turned into gas and evaporated almost instantly. In this month, Xiaoyu completed the construction of six robot parts production lines and an assembly workshop. As long as there are sufficient raw materials, these production lines can produce almost 20 robots a day if they are operated at full capacity. Moreover, if the parts production line is slightly modified, more types of robots with more diverse functions can be produced. The number of robots was enough. And Xiaoyu started the next step of construction. The content of this construction is to build a steel-making blast furnace. The blast furnace Xiao he wants to build is different from the blast furnaces on Earth. Steelmaking in blast furnaces on Earth requires a large amount of coke. And obviously there is no coke on Titan. Xiaoyu's blast furnace combines the latest steelmaking technology. Xiaoyu's hard drive contains a complete set of information for building a blast furnace. And it is a modified blast furnace that does not require coal and can make steel as long as it has enough energy. In order to build a steelmaking blast furnace, Xiaoyu even built a crane-type robot. Crane-type robots are big guys, not as small as Saturn 1 to 7. In order to build this big thing, Xiaoyu spent five days, thousands of tons of high-quality steel 
and more than half a month. After building the foundation and laying various pipes, such as the feed inlet, slag outlet, air inlet, etc., Xiaoyu started the construction of the blast furnace. When construction started, Xiaoyu discovered a problem. On Titan, at least in the areas that Xiaoyu had explored, it was difficult to find suitable insulation materials. After thinking for a long time, Xiaoyu gritted his teeth and simply abandoned the insulation layer and directly installed an air cooling system. You know, the wind on Titan has a temperature of more than 150 degrees below zero. And the air on Titan is very dense. Even denser than on Earth. Xiaoyu tested it and found that this air cooling system could fully meet the requirements. He couldn't help but be delighted. Pieces of polished steel plates were lifted by a crane-type robot and placed in the approximate position. Then another robotic arm lifted up a small robot to push the steel plates to the correct position. After the welding was completed, the next piece was started and so on, repeatedly, because the steelmaking furnace has not yet been completed. Xiaoyu's current steel production relies entirely on a few special small machines brought from the earth. Although after Xiaoyu's modification, these machines can make steel without coal. The output is hard to say. Faced with the increasing demand for steel, Xiaoyu's output is really pitiful. During this period of time, Xiaoyu once again experienced the feeling of waiting for the rice to come out of the pot. The huge demand for steel is a big pot with boiling water. Just put rice in it, and you can quickly make a pot of fragrant rice soup. However, Xiaoyu's steel production is like a rice field with poor yield, only willing to produce rice one grain at a time, which makes people anxious to wait. It took a full month of work before the steelmaking blast furnace was completed. Looking at the huge furnace that stood on the flat land of Titan and was 60 meters high, Xiaoyu sighed. This steelmaking blast furnace combines the functions of iron making and steelmaking. After the iron ore goes in, it is first reduced into pig iron. And then the pig iron enters another set of processes. After various smelting, it becomes steel. As for its output, Xiaoyu made an estimate. If ordinary steel is produced and the raw materials are sufficient, it can achieve a daily output of 1,000 tons. If Xiaoyu were to produce the highest quality steel he could, he would only be able to produce 10 tons per day. However, what is needed to build the base frame is a large amount of ordinary steel. At most, some chromium nickel alloy steel is used outside the base to withstand the extremely cold temperatures on Titan. The construction of the steelmaking blast furnace is completed. And at this time, the base construction really begins. Xiaoyu did not plan to build a base at the iron mine, but chose a place about 5 kilometers away from here. Compared with here, the terrain, geology, etc., there are more suitable for building large bases. Xiaoyu first commanded the fire-breathing robot to spray fire over the entire place with a radius of about one kilometer to remove all evaporable matter. Then he commanded the engineering robot to dig out countless trenches and pour the foundation, and began to direct other robots to produce large steel plates one by one, and then transport them there to start welding work. That's right. Xiaoyu plans to build a base made entirely of steel, because there are no raw materials for traditional building materials such as cement and bricks on Titan. There is a lot of steel. With the completion of the number one steelmaking blast furnace, Xiaoyu's steel production capacity has been greatly strengthened. He has even started construction on three sides. While the robot production line is operating at full capacity, he is also building the number two steelmaking blast furnace on one side and building the base on the other. In Shangdu district, next to the Blue Lake, there is a lively scene. Chapter 13 launching a rocket. Days pass day by day, and two years passed in the blink of an eye. In the past two years, Xiaoyu's number of robots has increased to more than 10,000. And the number of steelmaking blast furnaces has increased to 10. As well as supporting foundries, precision machining plants, etc. Of course, these factories are all built within the base. In the past two years, a base covering an area of one square kilometer has begun to take shape. But it is still in the early stages of construction. It's just that Xiaoyu built some more critical factories first. After these two years, the appearance of the Xanadu region on Titan has changed drastically. Xiaoyu's industrial zone covers an area of several square kilometers. In the industrial zone, there are bright lights and blast furnaces. Countless robots of various types shuttle back and forth. Busy. And Xiaoyu is the brains of this huge industrial park. There are more than 10,000 robots and tens of millions of sensors installed on various devices. Every data transmitted back will be perfectly received by Xiaoyu without any omissions. Moreover, at the moment of receipt, in an instant, Xiaoyu will immediately give the next work instructions. 
In other words, Xiaoyu can do tens of millions of things at the same time without the slightest error. Only Xiaoyu can achieve such efficiency. This is the power of combining people and electronic devices. Well, the information from sensor number 13 in area B is that the temperature is too high. Well, given order to controller number 65 to strengthen the operation of the cooling system. Sensor number 3050 in area D cannot receive data. Damn it. It seems to be broken again. Robot number 970. Please bring spare parts immediately and go to replace it. All kinds of messy but huge information flows are pouring into Xiaoyu's brain all the time. Xiaoyu's computer is working at full capacity to arrange various matters in an orderly manner. Seeing that the computing power usage soared to 95%, Xiaoyu sighed worriedly. Hey, although the computing power of the central computer far exceeds that of similar computers on the earth, it is still a little behind. Put the building of a new type of computer on the agenda. Xiaoyu could not let the computer usage increase to 100% because that would mean that the computer was running at full capacity, and some information would be generated that was too late to process, which could cause a major accident. Moreover, some computing power should always be reserved to prevent unexpected accidents. Reduce the production rate by 10 percentage points, and no longer build new equipment. In this way, you can save about 11 points of computing power. Well, let's invest all of this computing power in the research and development of new computers. Shall you thought for a while, and made up his mind. In addition to the problem of computing power limitations, Xiao Yu also noticed another problem. As the types of factories under construction increased and the demand for production gradually increased, Xiao Yu gradually felt that the current iron mine could no longer meet his needs. It's not that there aren't enough reserves. In fact, with the reserves of this iron mine, even if Xiao Yu mines it for another thousand years, he won't be able to finish it. The most important thing is that the element reserves here are a bit monotonous. Here, the largest reserve is undoubtedly iron, followed by copper, aluminum, gold and other metals. However, some metals necessary for industry, such as rare earth lanthanide elements, are much scarcer. In the early stages of construction, no impact was visible. But now, the scarcity of these elements and the limitation of computing power have become the two biggest problems restricting Xiaoyu's development. Xiaoyu made up his mind. The new computer cannot solve it in a short time. So let's solve this problem first. Xiao Yu went through all the technologies he had collected about helicopter construction before, and added some new technologies acquired during this period, combined with the special environment on Titan. After a month of construction, he finally created a helicopter came out. Building the helicopter took another two months of Xiao Yu's time. Placed in the factory building, it is completely black and looks like an upside-down bowl. It is the Wind God number 1 helicopter built by Xiao Yu. The appearance of this helicopter is very different from the helicopters on Earth. Speaking of which, it looks more like a flying saucer. This is because Xiaoyu has made the latest technological breakthrough and no longer needs propellers to obtain power. Moreover, the semicircular shape allows for maximum space with the least material. After completing the final series of tests, Xiaoyu became excited. Then, let's take off. Fengshin 1. Several jets in the lower part of Fengshin 1 suddenly ejected light blue flames. Under the powerful reverse thrust, Feng Shen One's body weighing hundreds of tons slowly rose and kept rising. Finally, the machine opened from the factory the skylight flew out. Xiao Yu gave an order. Next to Feng Shen Number One, a turning nozzle spurted out a stream of flames. Suddenly, Feng Shen Number One flew away and disappeared. Feng Shen One is equipped with the latest mineral detection equipment. On this voyage, it was tasked with helping Xiao Yu search for minerals. The maximum speed of Feng Shen 1 can reach three times the speed of sound, and its flexibility is much higher than that of various aircraft on the Earth. For example, Feng Shen 1 can hover in the air, take off and land vertically, and fly at extremely high speeds and at ultra-low altitudes. These data are beyond the reach of similar aircraft on Earth. Looking at the various data sent back by Feng Shen 1, shall you start an analysis? Well, there is an aluminum mine 80 kilometers away from here, but the reserves are too low. The location is too deep, and there is no mining value. So abandon it. There is actually a tungsten mine here. The location is not bad, but the reserves are a little small. Okay, we will send some robots to conduct on-site surveys in a while. Shall you control function one? About 300 meters away from the surface of Titan, and followed a spiral pattern, which shall use location as the center of the circle, gradually expanding the scope of exploration circle by circle. 
when the exploration radius expanded to 500 kilometers. Xiaoyu had to stop his plan to continue exploring. Because this distance is the maximum distance for effective communication. If it is further away, Function 1 will drop below the horizon. Because Titan is round. When Function 1 drops below the horizon, Titan itself will become the biggest killer of signal blocking. At that time, Xiaoyu will lose control of Function number 1. Without Xiaoyu's control of Function number 1, the result could only be a crash. And it is impossible for Xiaoyu to leave the spacecraft where he is currently living and transfer his position to the computer of Function 1. The reason is simple. The computer on Function 1 does not have such huge computing power. The amount of data generated by the entire base under construction will cause it to crash instantly. And Xiaoyu will die without any accident. After thinking about it, Xiaoyu wailed. Why the H? I do I have to build a satellite for this crappy plane? No. One is not enough. Based on the mass and volume of Titan, I at least 12 satellites must be built to provide signal coverage without blind spots. 12 satellites. This workload gave Xiaoyu an extremely headache. If construction starts, it means that Xiaoyu's plan to develop a new type of computer will be postponed. Moreover, Xiaoyu cannot allow the 12 satellites to be built to have only a simple navigation and communication function. To add functions such as observing Saturn, observing other satellites, or observing the sun, etc., this would take up a lot of Xiaoyu's calculations. Come on! It's going to be done sooner or later anyway. So let's make it perfect and do it once and for all. Xiaoyu thought for a while and had to reluctantly postpone the research on new computers again and reduce the base construction rate by 10% and started the construction of satellites and launch rockets with all efforts. Xiaoyu plans to play a big game this time. On Earth, Countries that have mastered high-end technology may use one rocket to launch two or more satellites at the same time, which is called one-rocket multi-satellite technology. This technology is very high-end and cannot be afforded by ordinary countries. However, Xiaoyu plans to get one arrow and 12 stars this time for fun. Yes, that's right. One stone kills 12 stars. Use one rocket to launch 12 satellites at the same time. Xiaoyu did this to save construction resources. After all, the rocket is a big thing and a disposable item. If it is launched 12 times in a row, Xiaoyu's current metal output, especially rare metal output, will be directly thrown into the poor class. If it is launched only once, although a single rocket will consume more resources, in total, it will save much more than launching 12 times. However, one arrow and 12 stars is also a challenge for Xiaoyu, because Xiaoyu has never done this kind of thing before. If it weren't for the fact that this is Titan, the gravity is much smaller than that of the Earth. The height that needs to be launched and the speed that needs to be reached are much smaller than those of the Earth. And the corresponding difficulty is also much smaller. Xiaoyu would not be able to kill him. Dare to make such an attempt. This time, it took Xiaoyu two months to complete the construction of the rocket and satellite. Within the huge factory building, a huge rocket 10 meters high stood vertically. That's right. Compared to rockets on Earth that are often 40 or 50 meters high, this 10-meter rocket can be considered a little guy. Above the Earth, the height of rockets is generally 40 or 50 meters. The main reason is that rockets on Earth are generally three-stage rockets. Because only in this way can the rockets have enough power to send satellites hundreds of kilometers away, orbiting the Earth. But it's different here with Xiaoyu. Titan's gravity is small, and its orbiting altitude is low. Correspondingly, the requirements for rockets are much less. So Xiaoyu's rocket only has one level. In fact, if it were not necessary to launch 12 satellites at once, Xiaoyu could completely modify the rocket to be only 7 meters high. Chapter 14 Photonic Computer After completing the last overall inspection, Xiaoyu gave the order to ignite and launch. A light yellow flame was ejected from the tail of the rocket. Under the reverse thrust of the flame, the huge rocket began to rise slowly, getting faster and faster. A few seconds later, the rocket flew to an altitude of tens of meters tilted its body slightly, and flew into the sky in the direction of Titan's rotation. The advantage of this is that it can use a little bit of Titan's rotation speed to more easily reach orbiting speed, which can save a lot of fuel. The function one helicopter rose to an altitude of 10,000 meters, where it silently watched the huge rocket flying higher and higher. During this launch event, function one temporarily served as a communication relay station. One minute later, the rocket reached Titan's orbit and successfully separated from the engine. Then the cabin opened, and a string of 12 fixed satellites flew out. Here's another side of Titan. 
due to the lack of sufficient communication relay stations. They have temporarily left Xiaoyu's monitoring range. In other words, these things have disappeared from Xiaoyu's eyes. The next actions are no longer carried out under Xiaoyu's command, but are run by the program compiled by himself. Xiaoyu waited silently on the ground. If everything goes well, he will receive the signal from the first satellite in 30 minutes. This time should not exceed 40 minutes at most. If Xiaoyu has not received the satellite return signal after 40 minutes, it will prove that the launch failed. Xiaoyu was confident in the program segments he had reserved on the satellite, but he still couldn't help feeling a little uneasy. Looking at the shrinking countdown, Xiaoyu was filled with anticipation. In the orbit 100 kilometers away from Titan, there are two strings of things that look like candied haws floating quietly. They have achieved a speed of 2.4 kilometers per second, which exceeds Titan's first cosmic speed, so they will not fall. Behind them are the remains of the rocket slowly falling to the ground. The rocket has completed its mission and is about to fall to the ground and then disappear while rubbing against the atmosphere. The silence lasted only 10 seconds. 10 seconds later, the two strings of candied haws like objects suddenly made a little noise. Then, the thing that maintained the connection between them suddenly broke, and the two strings of candied haws lubes turned into 12 separate individuals. However, their orbit, speed and other parameters have not changed so they still maintain their previous appearance. Flying forward quietly in formation. After more than 10 seconds, the tails of these 12 things suddenly emitted weak light blue flames at the same time. Driven by the light blue flame, they moved away from each other in an orderly manner. After the distance was large enough, the light blue flame suddenly became larger, pushing them to fly away quickly. Like a group of people shot by thunder, the toad has arrived. Under the guidance of their respective reserve programs, they each searched for their own tracks. On the ground, Xiaoyu stared at the time in a daze. Half an hour has passed, but he still hasn't received any return signal. Don't be in a hurry! Don't be in a hurry! There are still ten minutes before the deadline! Xiaoyu comforted himself. Then, just after this thought flashed through, a string of radio waves was transmitted into Xiaoyu's receiver. Report to base! Ares-1 is working normally! Ares! is the codename given by Xiaoyu to these satellites. Namely Ares-1 to Ares-12. Great! After receiving this return message, Xiaoyu was overjoyed and immediately took over control, ordering Ares-1 to immediately contact the remaining 11 satellites. Report to base. Ares-7 is working normally. Report to base. Ares-4 is working normally. Report to base. Ares-12 is working normally. 12 satellites. All working normally. Shall you breathe a huge sigh of relief? From then on, these satellites will be connected into a large network in the sky, covering the entire planet. As long as the receiving and transmitting equipment is installed, Shall you can already communicate with any place on the surface of Titan. Unlike before, he can only reduce the control range to a radius of 500 kilometers. Okay, function one. Let's go. Shall you is full of confidence with the satellite network as an information and communication transfer station. Xiaoyu immediately dispatched the Fengshin-1 helicopter and continued the detection along the place where it was last detected. Although Xiaoyu had already drawn a rough three-dimensional map before landing on Titan, and also made a rough detection of the distribution of minerals, the detection accuracy at high altitude is really not as good as that on the ground. Detected. In order to obtain further detailed information on the distribution of minerals on Titan, Shao Yu side built Feng Shen 1. Shao Yu estimates that it will only take about three months for Feng Shen 1 to detect the entire Titan. Then, Shao Yu will select some valuable mineral deposits and use Feng Shen 1 to transport some robots there to carry out field work. Survey. If there is mining value, suitable mining and smelting equipment will be transported to the past. The matter of launching the satellite came to an end, and Shao Yu started working on developing a new generation of new computers. Regarding the next generation of computers, there are many research directions on Earth. Generally speaking, they are divided into photonic computers, quantum computers, neuron computers, etc. Xiaoyu's main focus is photon computers, because photonic computers are the most practical and most likely to be realized. Photonic computers have the advantages of low energy consumption and high computing speed. Xiaoyu estimated that with the same volume and the same energy consumption, the photon computer would be at least hundreds of times faster than his current ordinary computer. By that time, the limitations of computing power will completely disappear. Even if Xiaoyu builds a few more bases, the computing power will be completely sufficient. 
Xiao Yu had already started research in this area when he was on Earth. The original plan was to install a photon computer on his spacecraft. However, because some technical obstacles had not been overcome, Xiao Yu had no choice but to use the current computer. However, Xiao Yu's research on photon computer technology can be regarded as the most profound on Earth. Now, with the support of supercomputing power and outstanding innovative thinking, Xiao Yu broke through the technical barriers in just three months. Photonic computers have successfully moved from the laboratory to the application stage. Based on my current level of distributed computing technology, well, the best solution is to assemble it using 300,000 photon CPUs. If there are any more, the level of distributed computing will not be enough, which will lead to a decrease in computing power. Xiaoyu made an estimate, and after reaching the conclusion, he immediately started large-scale manufacturing of photonic computers. The assembly location this time is in the center of the base. Here, Xiaoyu used the most advanced materials, and even asked, Number one, captured from Jupiter to help improve the material performance. And then he built the computer room with confidence. There is no way. It is expected that Xiaoyu will live here for nearly a hundred years. So Xiaoyu cannot help but be cautious. With such a mentality, the sturdiness of this computer room is almost unbelievable. Even if a nuclear bomb explodes at close range, it will not have an impact on the interior of the computer room. The price paid was that the radiation intensity of number one was reduced by a full 20 percentage points. There are thousands of robots busy in the computer room, putting photon hard drives into the cabinet in sequence. Inside is a liquid hydrogen cooling pool. There are robots one after another busy placing photon CPUs one by one and soaking them in liquid hydrogen. Above the slot, this computer room is several hundred square meters in size and is divided into several small areas, including data storage area, computing area, link area, cache area, etc. There are countless black-coated optical fibers connecting every component. After the construction of the photonic computer was completed, Xiaoyu couldn't wait to come here through the data line. Then, his head turned slightly, and his super speed immediately made Xiaoyu ecstatic. In the past, to analyze the operation mode of electrons and the impact on the final result in a controllable nuclear fusion reaction, Xiaoyu needed to use 5% of the total computing power to calculate for 3 hours. But now, it takes only an instant to calculate it turns out that even calculating pi to 1 gigabit decimal point only takes a few tenths of a second. Its calculation speed is more than a hundred times faster than before. According to Xiaoyu's estimation, the calculation speed of this photon computer is, it is definitely more than a thousand times faster than the original central computer. Xiaoyu was filled with joy and immediately started the data transfer work. You know, the data generated in the few years after leaving the earth are all stored on the original hard drive. If these hard drives are lost, it means that Xiaoyu has forgotten this knowledge and information. This is absolutely not allowed by Xiaoyu. The transmission of huge amounts of data, measured in petabytes, lasted for almost three months before it was completely transferred to Xiaoyu's new home. All the data interfaces were originally transferred to Xiaoyu's new home, and huge amounts of data were still rolling in. However, in the face of Xiaoyu's incredible computing power, it became a small stream trying to destroy the dam. Seems extremely ridiculous. Xiaoyu handles all kinds of data in the sky, on the ground, and even underground with ease and ease, and is extremely comfortable. During this period, Xiaoyu discovered a total of 365 mineral deposits of various types, of which 96 were valuable for mining, basically covering various elements currently needed. It's just that titanium and zirconium, two extremely important metals for space navigation, have not found mineral veins, which makes Xiaoyu very regretful. Relying on associated ores to obtain titanium and zirconium, the yield is too low. Well, on the Earth, the reserves of titanium and zirconium are very high. Perhaps, it is time to consider launching a spacecraft to mine the asteroid belt on the Earth. But this requires after successfully developing controllable nuclear fusion. Then, controllable nuclear fusion research begins. Chapter 15 Rare Earth Expeditionary Core Ever since Einstein broke down the concepts of absolute mass and absolute energy and came to the conclusion that mass and energy are interchangeable, Human research in this area has never stopped. Atomic bombs and hydrogen bombs are the best proof. To put it bluntly, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion are just a way of converting mass into energy. But the conversion efficiency of nuclear fusion is higher. In this area of research, Xiaoyu can be regarded as standing on the shoulders of giants. With the previous research results of all mankind as reserves. 
and the personal teachings of the great natural teacher on Jupiter. Xiao Yu is very confident in breaking through controllable nuclear fusion. We are very confident about the technical barriers. 500 kilometers away from the base. Xiao Yu rebuilt a small base and used Feng Shen 1 to transport 50 specially made robots for research purposes. This is a specialized controlled nuclear fusion research institute. Although Xiao Yu has considerable confidence in mastering this technology, he still has to make some risk estimates. It is no joke if the fusion reactor explodes. Such power may destroy the base that Xiao Yu has worked hard to build in one fell swoop. Lose. Xiao Yu took out the deuterium, tritium and other raw materials that had been prepared from the old spacecraft, and began intense research. At the same time, in another direction nearly a thousand kilometers away from Xiao Yu, in the long dark night, a bright spot suddenly appeared. Then a second one. A third one. Seven in total. This is a prospecting team. These seven robots carried enough instruments to carry out on-the-spot investigation of a rare earth mining area here. Behind the robot formation, a strange semicircular aircraft roared. After a powerful airflow was ejected from the bottom, the entire aircraft quickly took off and flew towards the base. This is Feng Shen 1 returning home after completing its transportation mission. On the ground, in the darkness, there were only seven lonely robots, walking forward step by step with weird steps. Xiao Yu divided his spirit into one part in hundreds of millions, and watched this place through the night vision devices of seven robots. The ground is still flat, with basically no big undulations. The terrain here is basically the same as the terrain of the rest of Titan. A robot slowly bent down, and the searchlight above its head illuminated the ground brightly. A large area of orange-red ground was taken into a photo, which was sent to Xiao Yu's head through the satellite in the sky. Xiao Yu issued the next action order. The robot stretched out its right hand, and a shovel came out of the palm. It shoveled a shovelful of dirt on the ground. Then, the robot put its head up, and a strange red glow came out of its eyes. Light. Start analyzing these things. The remaining six robots went in other directions and dispersed. One robot stopped after walking a thousand meters, then squatted down, with a drill protruding from its arm and piercing it into the ground. Xiao Yu is watching here closely. The drill went deeper and deeper. 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters. It extended to 5 meters underground before stopping. Then, the robot began to slowly lift the drill out. The bottom of the iron drill has already brought some samples taken out from 5 meters underground on Titan. The robot also moved its head up. Its eyes began to glow with a strange red light. And it began to analyze these minerals. At the same time, Xiao Yu, a thousand kilometers away, had obtained the data in real time. The field survey lasted for two days, and the seven robots surveyed a total area of approximately five kilometers. After combining the data obtained by the seven robots, Xiao Yu took a gentle breath. This is, this is a rare rich mine. It is so rich in reserves and easy to mine. There are no such mines on the earth. It's not common. Moreover, the most important thing is that there is a medium-sized methane lake not far from this mineral vein, which means that Xiao Yu can obtain energy replenishment nearby and only needs to replenish oxygen here regularly. Such conditions are truly unique. This result made Xiao Yu extremely happy. In fact, this result made Xiao Yu immediately make up his mind to establish another industrial base in this high-quality rare earth mining area. Xiao Yu is wealthy now, which is completely different from the time when he was wandering in the starry sky. There is almost unlimited energy on Titan, and there are high-quality metal veins in the open air. There is no need to worry about the source of energy or materials. Building an industrial base is a matter of time. The main base is base number one. The Controlled Nuclear Fusion Research Institute is base number two. And here is base number three. During this period, ten more robot production lines came online. Now, more than 70 robots are born almost every day. If it weren't for the scarcity of certain metal raw materials, Xiao Yu could even increase this production rate to more than 120 units per day. Of course, this day refers to the time on Earth, and a day is 24 hours long. As a human being, you should never forget your roots, even if you leave the Earth. Xiao Yu said so. For this mine, we have to suspend the manufacture of other less important equipment. We also need to design and manufacture some special mining equipment for this rare earth mine. Also, there is no iron ore there, and the building materials for various factories are also be prepared. Xiao Yu made a timetable and planned to complete all preparations in two months. The machines roared and the robots shuttled busily. 
Countless kinds of strange machines were created and gathered at a temporary storage point outside the base. Fortunately, Xiaoyu now changed his mind. With the powerful computing power provided by the photon computer, Xiaoyu was not overwhelmed by these huge calculation data. In the huge computer room, countless red or blue indicator lights kept flashing. And the light white mist that kept floating out of the liquid hydrogen cooling pool proved how hot Xiaoyu's brain was at this moment. There are at least dozens of robots shuttling back and forth inside. Busy handling all of daily matters. It took Xiaoyu two full months to complete all preparations. In the temporary storage point for materials, there is a large group of robots lined up in neat lines, pulling various simple carts. There are countless various materials stacked on the carts, as well as large machinery. Rare Earth Expeditionary Corps. Let's go! At this moment, Xiaoyu shouted a slogan unusually heroic. The so-called Rare Earth Expeditionary Corps consists of a thousand robots, including construction robots, mining robots, flamethrower robots, maintenance robots, and other format robots, as well as various rare earth mining equipment, many building materials, and function, composed of helicopters. Because the amount of supplies was too large, Xiaoyu could not transport them with function one. So he simply formed a team called the Rare Earth Expeditionary Corps, which was actually a group of transport convoys. The Function 1 helicopter served as the navigator. As Xiaoyu gave the order to set off, a thousand robots took steps at the same time, pulling the cart behind them and began to move forward. Large machines with wheels started to move automatically, following closely behind the large army. Simple computer equipment is also installed on it. Under Xiaoyu's control, you can go wherever you want, which is extremely convenient. The huge legion set off, looking like a group of refugees under the flying dust. Xiaoyu was a little dissatisfied with the flying dust, because it was a little different from the heroic scene he had imagined in his head. A small place is a small place. How can it compare with the earth? Xiaoyu curled his lips and began to prepare the next batch of supplies to transport troops. In this army, almost every robot pulls tons of supplies. This is unimaginable on earth. But here is Titan, where the gravity is less than one-sixth of earth. Here, everyone is a Hercules. Dozens of flamethrower robots carried heavy and strange-looking cans on their backs and held huge flamethrowers in their hands. They continued to spray the ground with flamethrowers in front of the troops, evaporating all small liquid methane lakes and clearing the way for the large troops behind them. Above the head, the Function 1 helicopter, full of science fiction atmosphere, was hovering at low altitude, constantly roaring, and under Xiaoyu's control, it guided the direction of the troop. The huge robot army is advancing in an orderly manner. Rain cannot stop their footsteps. Wind cannot stop their footsteps. And darkness cannot stop their footsteps. The Rare Earth Expedition Corps marches forward resolutely, vowing to illuminate this dark corner of the solar system with a light of science and technology. Their forward speed reached about 25 kilometers per hour. As long as they have sufficient energy, they don't need to rest. At this speed, they can reach the designated location in about two days because they encountered a small mountain range and a large lake on the way. The Rare Earth Expedition Corps had to take a longer detour, which delayed a bit of time. However, even so, they still arrived 47 hours after setting off this Rare Earth Mineral Vein. At this time, it happened to be dawn in the Rare Earth Mining Area. The weak sunlight reaches here through a long distance of 1.7 billion kilometers, penetrates Titan's thick atmosphere, and shines on the Rare Earth Expedition Corps. At dawn, on an orange red land, stood a thousand robots, as well as countless supplies and countless heavy machinery. Overhead, the huge function one helicopter kept circling, its searchlights blaring in all directions. It was not until it was confirmed that the Rare Earth Expedition Corps had successfully arrived at its destination that it let out a low roar and flew away. The sun reached the middle of the sky, and it was already noon. After rest and inspection, a thousand robots and various machines began to get busy. Construction of base number 3 has begun. Chapter 16 Black Base 3 is not different from the main base and base 2. The purpose of building the third base is very simple. Which is to mine, refine ore, and then transport the finished mineral products to the main base. So base 3 is relatively simple. 15 days after the construction, most of the materials brought by the Rare Earth Expeditionary Corps have been transformed into factories and machines. With this construction progress, it is estimated that the remaining materials can support about three days. At this time, the Material Replenishment Brigade set off, 
This material replenishment brigade is composed of 300 load-carrying robots, carrying a large amount of materials, and sets off towards the third base. The main base has become a strong backing to support the construction of the entire Titan. And all this construction is to build an interstellar navigation fleet. In the dark night, this huge army advanced quietly. And this time, the Function 1 helicopter still served as the navigator. Xiao Yu first contacted Function 1 through the satellite in the sky. And then Function 1 guided the material replenishment brigade toward the finish line. Two days later, the four successfully arrived at base number three. Some robots began to return, while others stayed. The lake next to base number three was named Lake Number Two by Xiao Yu. At this moment, next to Lake Number Two, there was a bustling construction scene. At this moment, base number three has begun to take shape. With such a group of construction troops who are extremely efficient, will not make mistakes and will not get tired. Any construction task is not worth mentioning. Xiao Yu even thought proudly. If the contractor boss on the earth knew that such a construction army existed, would he drool with envy? Lake number 2 covers an area of about 5 square kilometers, and its deepest point is about 60 meters. This not-so-large methane lake provides the most solid fuel backing for Xiao Yu's construction army. Next to lake number 2, there is a lone robot walking around. This is a robot responsible for surveying terrain and geological data for Xiao Yu to make next construction plans. It walked freely around the lake, squatting on the ground from time to time, and used its eyes that could emit red light to do some testing on the ground. After measuring five more geological points, it has completed today's task and it's time to go back and rest. However, after it completed the detection of four more geological points, Xiao Yu suddenly lost its signal. In the center of base number three, there is a large radio station. This radio station is responsible for communicating with satellites in the sky. More than a thousand robots in base number three will transmit signals to it at any time. And then it will send the signals that need to be processed to satellite in the sky. The satellite will transfer the signal to another satellite. And finally transmit it to the main base. Where Xiao Yu will process these signals. Xiao Yu will then pass the process signal to the radio station according to the same procedures and the radio station will pass the signal to more than a thousand robots busy at base number three, directing them to work tirelessly. It can be said that the more than 10,000 robots and hundreds of millions of sensors on Titan are Xiao Yu's eyes. The photon computer provides Xiao Yu with huge computing power. The failure of any robot or sensor will be immediately noticed by Xiao Yu. The connection between the radio station and the robot is real-time. That is to say, the radio station and the robot are in contact at all times. Now, a robot signal suddenly disappeared. And Xiao Yu noticed it immediately. Xiao Yu immediately retrieved all the information about the robot. Well, Rare Earth Type 3 robot is responsible for geological survey. The location where the signal disappeared is located 500 meters from Lake Number 2 to Base Number 3. Could it be that the signal transmitter is broken? Xiao Yu made this speculation, but then denied it. Because the maintenance records clearly show that this robot had just replaced a new signal transmitter 8 hours ago. Xiao Yu is very confident about the quality of his products. This is not the quality of scum on the earth. This is for your own use. Xiao Yu naturally has very strict quality requirements when producing these things. The lake has risen and submerged it. Impossible. According to calculations, the next high tide of lake number two will be three hours later. Or is there something blocking the signal between it and the base? It's also impossible. Titan, come on. Is there anything else that moves besides me? Xiao Yu was puzzled and had to send the other robots to check. In order to prevent accidents, Xiao Yu sent an exploration team consisting of one flamethrower robot and four ordinary robots. The robots closest to the missing robot received the order and immediately gave up the work they were doing and walked towards lake number two. A searchlight also turned on the light, illuminating their path forward. Xiao Yu increased the computing power placed on these five robots. Immediately, all the information explored by these five robots was transferred to Xiao Yu's mind even some second-hand information that did not need to be handled by Xiao Yu personally. Level information was also transmitted. In the dark night, a high-power searchlight paved a bright road for them. In this bright avenue, these five robots move forward cautiously. It's getting farther and farther away from base number three, and getting closer and closer to lake number two. Xiao Yu silently calculated the distance. At this distance, the searchlight of base three has lost its effect. The missing robot is 900 meters to the left in front of the robot team. Okay. Turn on the overhead miner's lamp. Maximize the power. And maximize the forward speed. 
Xiaoyu issued new instructions. This command was transmitted to these five robots within a few tenths of a second through satellites in the sky and radio stations on the ground. The five robots immediately turned around and turned on the searchlights above their heads, opening up a patch of light in the night. The methane content in the air has not increased, which means that the lake water has not swelled. The seismic wave monitor has not detected the shock waves, which means that no geological changes have occurred here. So, what exactly caused this? Where's the robot missing? Xiaoyu silently made speculations and controlled the robot to move forward. Xiaoyu couldn't help but be careless. In a cosmic space where murderous intentions are everywhere and crises are everywhere, any negligence may lead to catastrophe. Suddenly, Xiaoyu noticed something was wrong. The ground here is all orange. This is the color of lanthanide oxides. But Xiaoyu saw that 300 meters in front of the robot team. The ground turned completely black. Xiaoyu's heart skipped a beat. No! No! Xiaoyu ordered the robot team to stop and look at the black quietly. This blackness is moving. Come from the direction of lake number 2 and move towards base number 3. Xiaoyu made some calculations and found that the moving speed of this piece of black reached 5 meters per minute. Is this a living thing? Xiaoyu's brain was spinning rapidly and he increased the share allocated to the five robots several times. At the same time, he ordered the Function 1 helicopter to take off immediately and rush here. It is estimated that in 15 minutes can be reached. During this period, Xiaoyu conducted a thermal imager test. No way! Xiaoyu was surprised. Because the average temperature of that black ground is minus 156 degrees. The temperature of the orange-red ground next to it was minus 162 degrees. The temperature in this black patch is 6 degrees higher than next to it. Xiaoyu knew that this must mean something. But to say that this piece of black is a living thing is really difficult for Xiaoyu to accept. Although there are some very cold-resistant bacteria living in the Antarctic and Arctic regions of the Earth. The lowest temperature there is only over minus 60 degrees Celsius. Which is incomparable with here. Could it be that the universe is so vast and creation is so miraculous that there are really creatures that can survive in an environment of more than 160 degrees below zero? Xiaoyu felt very incredible. It's more than 160 degrees below zero. What is this concept? In such an environment, people will be immediately frozen into ice sculptures. With a slight blow, their heads and arms will be broken like stones. And even steel will be frozen to the point of losing its hardness and toughness. The three bases and various robots built by Xiaoyu would have been frozen to the point of being unable to move had it not been for the addition of nickel and cadmium to the building materials which gave them special cold resistance. How could there be living things in such an environment? Xiaoyu really couldn't accept this speculation. The function one helicopter has arrived. In these 15 minutes, this strange black area advanced 80 meters and was still 220 meters away from the exploration team. On the function one helicopter, a huge detection beam was shot down. Within the bright circular spot, there was a deep black. Then, the black within the light spot surged strangely under Xiaoyu's gaze as if the black next to it noticed the light here and rushed here one after another. Higher and higher. Higher and higher. Within five minutes, the thickness of the black material in the circular light spot area increased to one decimeter. Compared with the flatness of the rest of the place, it seemed as if a small mountain had risen out of thin air. These things have phototaxes. Xiaoyu came to a conclusion. It is still unclear whether these things are living things. So Xiaoyu can only use the word things to call them. Detection team, move forward. Xiaoyu was determined to find out what they were. And for this, he would not hesitate to sacrifice these five robots. If you don't figure these things out, just think about it. Xiaoyu will feel uneasy. How can you allow others to snore on the side of the couch? One robot in the detection team composed of five robots began to move forward slowly. And the other robot followed 10 meters behind it. Closely monitoring everything. The distance is slowly getting closer. 200 meters. 150 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters, 1 meter. Chapter 17 War. The forward robot met this black. To Xiaoyu's expectation. When the distance was reduced to 1 decimeter, these unknown black things suddenly increased their movement speed. It took almost only an instant to cross the decimeter distance and come into contact with the robot. Dark Silver SH. L. As if this robot was meat and potatoes. Black waves came in one after another. Under Xiaoyu's gaze, it only took 30 seconds for this black to cover the whole body of the robot. At this moment, Xiaoyu suddenly lost the information about this robot in his mind. The indicator lights on the robot are still flashing. 
which proves that the instruments on the robot are still running. But the signal was blocked. Without Xiao Yu's command, the robot immediately stood there blankly, losing its ability to move. Xiao Yu finally knew how the first robot disappeared. There is no doubt that these strange black creatures have an extremely powerful ability to block signals. It was at this time that Xiao Yu finally saw clearly what these black waves were. They are tons of bugs. It's like bugs the size of ants on the earth. Endless bugs. These bugs have flat bodies, less than a tenth of a millimeter thick, but three millimeters long and one millimeter wide. They have no legs and rely only on the wriggling motion of their abdomens to move forward. But there is no doubt about it. They are living things. Creatures on Titan. Creatures that can survive in temperatures of more than 160 degrees below zero. Xiao Yu's head started to spin rapidly. And countless guesses flowed through Xiao Yu's head. The robot still stood there blankly. It took five minutes before the indicator light went out. The bugs invaded its body and destroyed its circuits. Xiao Yu understood what happened. No! We can't let them get close to base 3. Base 3 has vital rare earth veins. And the Jedi can't give up here. Xiao Yu made up his mind in an instant. And then, his powerful computing power began to calculate. And there were countless responses. Plans flashed through Xiao Yu's mind. But were rejected one by one. No. There is too little information. I don't know their weaknesses. Their evolutionary direction. Or what they rely on to survive. Xiao Yu sighed and directed the Feng Shun 1 helicopter to land slowly until it was only 5 meters above the ground. Only a short distance away, a mechanical arm landed from below, grabbed the robot that had lost contact, and flew towards the main base. The remaining four robots immediately returned to base 3, based on the distance traveled and the forward speed of these unknown creatures at 5 meters per minute. It is estimated that it will take about 3 days for these unknown creatures to approach base number 3. In other words, Xiao Yu has enough preparation time. Of course, the premise of all this is that Xiao Yu can find out all the information about these creatures and find ways to deal with them within these three days. It only took the Feng Shun 1 helicopter 15 minutes to return to the main base. What greeted it was a huge fully sealed transparent glass box. The robot was put in and sealed. And then a robot moved the box into it. In the laboratory, Xiao Yu immediately allocated 0.01% of his computing power and began to analyze these unknown creatures. You know, Xiao Yu's current computing power is equivalent to more than a thousand times that of the central computer on the old spaceship. The computing power of 0.01% is almost equivalent to one-tenth of the computing power of that central computer. Xiao Yu controlled a precision robot, made some slices of these unknown creatures, and put them under the microscope. It has a basic cell structure. Huh? There is no water in the cell fluid? It is actually composed entirely of liquid methane? This discovery shocked Xiao Yu inexplicably. In the deep-rooted concept of human beings, we have always believed that water is closely connected with life. Without water, there would be no life. But who would have thought that in an environment like Titan, organisms that use liquid methane instead of water could evolve? These creatures truly subverted Xiao Yu's perception, and once again made Xiao Yu feel that the universe is huge and full of wonders. Xiao Yu vaguely made a guess. And then the Feng Shun 1 helicopter took off again and came to lake number 2 next to base number 3. He took about 2 liters of liquid methane samples and returned to the main base, putting the liquid methane into the laboratory. Xiao Yu immediately began to analyze it. The results of the analysis once again confirmed Xiao Yu's guess. Xiao Yu found small plankton in the liquid methane. These plankton are similar to bacteria on Earth and feed on organic matter. The difference is that the bacteria on the Earth have water as their main structure and these plankton have liquid methane as their main structure. These plankton breathe nitrogen and feed on organic matter. And these weird black bugs feed on these plankton. Based on liquid methane, an ecosystem has evolved on Titan that is completely different from that on Earth. So, what attracted them and made them start attacking the number three base? Xiao Yu began to explore another question. Xiao Yu already had a vague guess in his mind. So, Xiao Yu inserted a glass rod with a temperature of about minus 180 degrees into the glass box. In the glass box, the temperature was minus 162 degrees. Xiao Yu watched their reactions closely. The black bugs moved away from the glass rod, as if the glass rod contained murderous poison. Xiao Yu was deep in thought. He pulled out the glass rod, heated it to minus 140 degrees, and then put it back into the glass box. Immediately, the black bug began to move restlessly. They approached the glass rod one after another, and in just a few dozen seconds, they completely covered the glass rod. 
In fact, the temperature of minus 140 degrees heated the methane in their bodies to a boiling state, causing them to be directly scalded to death. They refused to let go of the glass rod. Avoiding the cold and tending to the heat? Xiao Yu came to a conclusion. It seems that no matter where the creature is, as long as it is a creature, it cannot violate the law of conservation of energy. Xiao Yu sighed. The answer is simple. Any living thing that can move needs energy, because they cannot move at will without energy. In most cases, heat represents energy. On Titan, the average temperature is more than 160 degrees below zero, and the average temperature of these black bugs is more than 150 degrees below zero. To maintain life, they must maintain their own body temperature. Therefore, their crazy pursuit of heat constitutes their entire lives. Therefore, base number three, which generates huge amounts of heat all the time, is their ideal paradise. Everything is explained. What needs to be solved now is how to get rid of these bugs. The rare earth mineral veins in base three are too important to Xiao Yu. And there is no way Xiao Yu will give up. Since these bugs pose a threat to Xiao Yu, the only way is to eliminate them. Xiao Yu quickly came up with a plan. The plan was very simple. Burn them to death. The air pressure on Titan is greater than that on Earth. So the boiling point of liquid methane is higher than on Earth. About minus 152 degrees Celsius. Then, the way to kill them is very simple. As long as the temperature is heated to the boiling point of liquid methane, the methane in their bodies will boil and they will be burned to death. It's like putting a human being into a high temperature container and directly heating the water in the human body until it boils. Xiao Yu took out the bodies of all the dead bugs and prepared to examine their bodies with X-rays. But the result once again exceeded Xiao Yu's expectations. X-rays can't penetrate their bodies. Xiao Yu was very interested and immediately started a series of other inspections. The result of the examination made Xiao Yu sigh with emotion again. Sure enough, danger and opportunity coexist. Who would have known that the corpses of these bugs would have such strong radiation protection capabilities? The result of the inspection is that the radiation protection performance of these bugs is more than 10 times stronger than the best radiation protection materials on Earth. Shall you laugh ferociously? Since you dare to invade my number 3 base, then don't blame me for using your corpses as construction materials. Shall you quickly made an assessment of his own strength at base number 3. Currently, base 3 has 15 flamethrower robots and 20 laser gun robots. Originally these robots were used for mining, but now Xiao Yu temporarily brought them closer to the army. This little defense force is not enough, Xiao Yu thought. But now that there are creatures on Titan, the defense here at the main base cannot be relaxed. God knows that there are these bugs in the blue lake. So, spray there are still a lot of muskets, and they are easy to manufacture. It will take one day to transform 300 fire-breathing robots and set off towards base 3. An emergency plan was formulated urgently. And one day later, 300 fire-breathing robots carried enough fuel and set off towards base number 3. After another 45 hours, the fire-breathing robot arrived at its destination and was ready. The construction of base number 3 has stopped. All non-attack forces are concentrated in several large factories. And immovable machinery has been shut down. Without heat production, they will probably not attract the attention of black bugs. 290 robots formed the first line of defense. And then the remaining 45 robots surrounded the large factory building to form the second line of defense. The function one helicopter served as the inspector. It constantly hovered at low altitude at base number 3 and sent battle reports to Xiao Yu at any time for Xiao Yu to make the next decision. After making all preparations, Xiao Yu began to wait quietly for the war to come. Chapter 18 Hydrogen Bomb Hydrogen Bomb these black bugs were like a huge black curtain, slowly covering the entire ground and swarming towards base 3. When the distance was reduced to 3 meters, Xiao Yu gave the launch order. Facing lake number 2 at base number 3, dozens of huge flamethrowers erupted in flames at the same time. Dozens of fire dragons straped the ground. Suddenly, the originally quiet black wave began to boil. Under the huge searchlight, Xiao Yu saw that the black bug that had been swept by the flames immediately exploded and turned over to death. Even in places where the flames did not reach, the insects died one after another because of the heat transmitted through the air. Killing them is too easy. Even taking a piece of thousand-year-old ice from the coldest area of Antarctica and throwing it on them will kill them. Not because of the cold, but because the ice was too hot. The coldest place in the Antarctic region is only minus 70 degrees Celsius, which is indeed too hot for these creatures that live at minus 160 degrees Celsius. Almost instantly. 
tens of thousands of black bugs were killed. The liquid methane in their bodies was heated to the boiling point. It boiled instantly and burst their bodies. Then they evaporated away, leaving a field of mummies on the ground. However, there are too many of them, almost endless. Moreover, they are like moths rushing to the fire. The high temperature flames not only fail to scare them away, but instead make them go crazy and gather towards the high temperature areas, as if they are queuing up and eager to die. This fearless spirit really shocked Xiao Yu. But it was only for a moment. Seeing the increasing number of insect corpses on the ground, Xiao Yu was extremely excited. Because these are excellent materials for building interstellar spaceships. Where can you find such good radiation proof materials? Humph! You are not afraid of death. Why should I be afraid of being killed? Come on! Kill as many as you want! Xiao Yu laughed, feeling very excited. The robots lined up in front of the base seemed to feel Xiao Yu's excitement. And the flames sprayed even more fiercely. Every moment, thousands of bugs die. And every moment, thousands more bugs are added. The war continues in this cruelty. Three hours after the battle, Xiao Yu's excitement has disappeared. During this period of time, Xiao Yu eliminated at least billions of black bugs. But the black wave still continued without stopping. The flamethrower robot's flamethrower had to temporarily stop due to the high temperature. The more than 200 robots turned into more than 100 robots defending on the front line. And the remaining more than 100 robots were behind the defense line, waiting for the muzzles to cool down. After the muzzles cooled down, these robots went to the front line and replaced the original robots. Repeatedly, these robots stayed here firmly, preventing the black wave of insects from moving forward. In front of him, black insect corpses were piled up one meter high. At least tens of billions of bugs were sacrificed here. But there were still a continuous stream of bugs coming from behind. In fact, one robot was overwhelmed by the growing mountain of bug corpses because it could not dodge. And it instantly lost its signal. There was no other way. So Xiao Yu had no choice but to command the robot defense line to retreat slowly. Xiao Yu's mood became serious, and he began to truly regard these insects as his opponents because he discovered that if he couldn't come up with an effective way to deal with this situation, he might really lose base number 3 to the attack of insects. The insect tie continued to move forward, crossing the mountain of insect corpses more than 1 meter high, and continued to move forward. Gradually, after the defense line retreated 5 meters, a mountain of corpses once again accumulated in front of the robot defense line. Xiaoyu began to complain secretly. There is not much fuel left. We can last for up to 3 hours. Xiao Yu received an early warning. In the past, fuel was taken directly from Lake Number 2, and the oxidizer was transported by Function Number 1. But now, Lake Number 2 naturally does not dare to go, and the source of fuel becomes a problem. Mom, you are forcing me! Xiao Yu felt furious and immediately commanded the Function 1 to return, loaded 90 tons of fuel, and set off towards the Number 3 base. This coming and going consumes an hour. Within this hour, the robot defense line retreated three more times. Among them, there were several times when the insect mountain collapsed, and five robots lost their signal because they had no time to dodge, including the robot at the beginning. Xiao Yu has lost seven robots. Xiao Yu controlled function number one and flew towards lake number two. Base number three is about 20 kilometers away from lake number two. Xiao Yu turned on the searchlight and looked at the ground. What he saw made Xiao Yu secretly shocked. There are too many bugs. The endless tide of insects formed a huge torrent that was 1 kilometer wide and 20 kilometers long, with one end connected to lake number 2 and the other end connected to base number 3. At the defense line of base 3, a huge number of bugs die every moment, which means that a huge number of bugs crawl out of the blue lake every moment. Holy shit! Xiao Yu cursed and immediately steered the function one back to sea. It took half an hour for Xiao Yu to create some methane incendiary bombs, coupled with enough oxidants and loaded them on the function one. Superior. An hour later, function one returned to the black tide, and then dropped the bomb without hesitation. Boom! Fire shot up into the sky, and the high temperature flames caused by the special incendiary bombs covered at least dozens of square meters, and the killing range reached hundreds of square meters. At this moment, Xiao Yu estimated that at least 10 million bugs were dead, but there were more bugs coming. They are not afraid of death and the harsh environment makes them willing to sacrifice their lives in pursuit of heat. Xiao Yu kept throwing incendiary bombs, and the insects kept coming. Xiao Yu had to admit that function number one could not stop the progress of the insect. Mom, this is too crazy! Xiao Yu muttered to himself. 
During this period of time, the robot defense line was forced to retreat 10 times. Nearly 50 meters. 100 meters behind you is the site where the machinery is placed at base number 3. This won't work. We must find a way. Xiao Yu gritted his teeth and thought quickly. A solution was thought of. A huge excavating machine was modified and some steel plates were added to both sides of the machine. Then, the excavator started at full power and roared towards the insect swarm. The robot defense line opened a gap in time, allowing the huge excavator to pass smoothly. Then, the huge excavator roared and rushed over. The mountain of insects that had accumulated nearly two meters high was destroyed by the impact. At the moment of the impact, the excavator was covered in insects, and Xiaoyu lost its signal. However, under the optical detector, Xiaoyu clearly saw that the excavator still ran forward several hundred meters under the action of inertia before stopping. This excavator crashed into at least a section of the insect mountain that was tens of meters long. In fact, these bugs do not pose much of a threat to Xiaoyu. The biggest threat to Xiaoyu is the mountain of bugs formed after the bugs die. As soon as the insect mountain forms ahead, Xiaoyu must retreat, because the collapse of the insect mountain may instantly cover the robot. Even if the robot cannot be covered, the height of the insect mountain will greatly reduce the power of the flamethrower. Seeing that the excavator collision method worked, Xiaoyu felt happy and controlled the other excavators to rush out, completely destroying the worm mountain in front of him, and finally felt a little calmer. But Xiaoyu immediately realized that this method could only delay time, because there are only dozens of excavators in the entire number 3 base. What happens after the excavators are used up? We have to think of other ways! Xiaoyu began to think hard. Gradually, a crazy idea popped up in Xiaoyu's head. Damn it! You forced me to do this! Xiaoyu muttered to himself. If I can't kill you all, then I'll kill your lair! Xiaoyu's plan is very simple. Make a hydrogen bomb and throw it directly into lake number 2. A high-yield hydrogen bomb is enough to evaporate lake number 2. Base number 3 is 20 kilometers away from lake number 2, and the impact suffered is within an acceptable range. Even if there is some damage, it is still better than being drowned by the insect tide. Xiaoyu gritted his teeth and began to plan the whole plan. Base number two. The Nuclear Fusion Research Institute has enough nuclear fusion fuel. Although controllable nuclear fusion has not yet been developed, building a hydrogen bomb is still not a problem. There is enough uranium-235 on the old spacecraft, which can be used to build atomic bombs, which can be used as trigger ammunition for hydrogen bombs. Just as he said, Xiaoyu controlled foam shin number 1 and transported uranium-235 to the number 2 base. Controlled nuclear fusion research was suspended, and he began to make hydrogen bombs with all his strength. A hydrogen bomb explosion requires trigger ammunition to detonate, and generally an atomic bomb is used as the detonator. From here we can also see the power of the hydrogen bomb. The famous atomic bomb is nothing more than a detonator in the face of the hydrogen bomb. It took Xiaoyu half a month to make this hydrogen bomb. In this half month, Xiaoyu lost another 20 robots, and the insect wave pushed the position another 90 meters. As long as he advanced 10 meters further, he would truly come into contact with the number 3 base. But there is still an endless supply of bugs from lake number 2. Xiaoyu didn't even dare to estimate how many bugs there were there. Keep going! Hold on for 5 more days! Xiaoyu murmured to himself. Although the hydrogen bomb has been built, it cannot be launched yet. A hydrogen bomb of this magnitude must be launched with a rocket, not Fengshin 1. Otherwise, Fengshin 1 will also be killed, which is unacceptable to Xiaoyu. There are still five days until the rocket is caused. Chapter 19 All Extinction The brutal war is still going on. The pursuit of heat is the meaning of life for these bugs. Therefore, for the sake of heat, he would not hesitate to die. Therefore, Xiaoyu's fire-breathing tactics did not frighten them at all but only attracted them even more. Another insect mountain composed of insect corpses gradually grew taller. One decimeter. Two decimeters. One meter. One and a half meters. Xiaoyu had to control the robot defense line to retreat again. Four days have passed. And there is still one day left before the missile is caused. Because Titan is smaller in size. And the main base and base number three are a thousand kilometers apart. Such a distance has already caused base number three to fall below the horizon of the main base so intercontinental missile technology must be used. Launch this hydrogen bomb. In base 2, hundreds of robots are busy working in the nuclear fusion research laboratory. The components were manufactured one by one and immediately transported to the huge factory and assembled on a cylindrical behemoth. 
The function one helicopter constantly shuttles back and forth between the main base and the second base, transporting batches of components that cannot be manufactured at the second base for the purpose of assembling missiles. The insect tide is still the last five meters away from base three. The number of Xiao Yu's robots lost has reached as many as 50, which resulted in a serious lack of firepower on the front line. Xiao Yu gritted his teeth and added the robots deployed around the factory to the front line. Anyway, the hydrogen bomb can be launched immediately, and we must survive this period no matter what. Xiao Yu secretly made up his mind. In base number two, the intercontinental missiles have been assembled. This intercontinental missile is five meters high and about one and a half meters in diameter. It can provide enough power for the missile to send it outside the atmosphere. And then after flying for a certain distance in space, the hydrogen bomb equipped with a navigator will re-enter the atmosphere and fly towards lake number two. Several robots are busy doing final inspections. Xiao Yu is also carefully analyzing various data from thousands of sensors on the intercontinental missile. Well, the pressure chamber is normal. The combustion chamber is normal. The navigator is normal. And the separator is normal. After Xiao Yu completed his analysis, he issued the last instruction. 10 seconds countdown. Ready to launch. A faint white mist began to emit from the tail of the missile. Xiao Yu knew that it was because the engine was preheating and heating the surrounding air. 1982 on fire. Immediately, a pale yellow flame erupted from the tail of the missile. It was weak at first, but after five seconds, it became stronger. The huge recoil pushed the rocket to slowly rise. When Xiao Yu made this missile, he did not install a booster and still use single-stage rocket technology instead of multi-stage rocket technology on Earth. Because this is Titan, the gravity is much smaller than that of the Earth, and the power provided by the single-stage rocket is enough. The rocket rose slowly, getting faster and faster, and after 30 seconds, it had disappeared from the detector at base 2. Xiao Yu then turned his attention to receiving satellite signals. Twelve satellites flying in space will take over the mission of Function 1 and guide the intercontinental missile. After flying to an altitude of more than 10 kilometers, the missile turned and began to fly in the direction of Titan's rotation, whether it is an intercontinental missile or a rocket. When it is launched, it is not launched vertically upwards, but along the direction of the star's rotation, entering space in an oblique line, because this can save a lot of fuel with the help of the speed of the star's rotation. The speed of the missile quickly increased to 2.2 kilometers per second. After continuing to fly for 50 seconds, it had reached outside Titan's atmosphere. Here, 113 kilometers away from Titan, it has left Titan's atmosphere. Seen from here, Titan looks like a huge ball, slowly rotating in space. Behind is the huge planet Saturn, with its beautiful ring surrounding it, which is extremely gorgeous. If it weren't for the preservation of base number three, Xiao Yu would really not want to destroy such a beautiful scene. Intercontinental missiles are the most powerful killer weapons developed so far in human evolution. Start separation. Xiao Yu issued a new order through the Ares 3 satellite closest to the missile. Two meters away from the rocket warhead, a burst of fire suddenly erupted, and a large smoke erupted. The missile body immediately broke into two parts. One part continued to accelerate towards space, while the lower part lost the power to continue accelerating and began to move towards Saturn. Six fell down. This speed has not yet reached Titan's first cosmic speed, so it cannot orbit Titan. It will only fall down and then destroy itself in the process of friction with the atmosphere. After the warhead continued to accelerate for five seconds, it began to slide in space. This distance depends entirely on inertial flight. Shall you remotely control the Ares series satellites and closely monitor the warheads? The warhead was shaped into a cone by Shao Yu. This shape helps improve accuracy and speed into the atmosphere for maximum impact. There are some small holes in the bottom of the cone. At this moment, from these small holes, light blue flames are constantly erupting, and they disappear in a blink of an eye. This is Xiao Yu controlling these miniature engines and making some posture adjustments to the warhead. Gradually, the rocket warhead turned to be with its bottom facing up and its head facing Titan. The inertial flight lasted for three minutes in total. Already arrived at the scheduled location. Xiao Yu gave the order. Start re-entry procedures. This information is transmitted to the controller on the warhead through the satellite. Immediately, the engine at the tail of the warhead's cone-shaped body began to start, and the huge recoil began to push the rocket egg head to rotate at high speed. It began to fall rapidly. Target. Lake number two. Here, there is less than a hundred kilometers of vertical height from lake number two, depending on the speed of the warhead. 
It will only take about a minute to reach the target. Next, there will be a brutal nuclear strike. The warhead rotated at high speed and inserted straight into the atmosphere. Immediately, under the huge friction force, the warhead turned red, which represented a high temperature of at least 1,000 degrees Celsius. Its tail brought out a long white smoke, and the top hit the air and erupted with a huge scream. From the ground, it looks like a meteor lost in the universe. This meteor will bring destruction to all creatures in Lake Number 2, if it were a war on Earth. When intercontinental missiles were launched, a large number of false warheads and false targets would be launched at this stage in order to prevent them from being intercepted. But you don't have to do this on Titan. Shao Yu didn't believe that someone would come to intercept his missiles here. The nuclear warhead is rapidly approaching the target. 50 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 1 kilometer, 500 meters, 200 meters to detonate. Shao Yu gave the order to detonate. Immediately, inside the warhead, a series of incredible atomic reactions began. The first thing to be detonated was the atomic bomb. In its detonator, a large number of atomic bombs were detonated. And then the high temperature and high pressure environment caused by the explosion detonated the atomic bomb. Countless neutrons are fired and bombard the uranium atoms in the atomic bomb. The uranium atoms begin to fission. And during the fission process, new neutrons are released, which begin to bombard the remaining uranium atoms. In an instant, huge energy burst out detonated the atomic bomb, and the atomic bomb detonated the hydrogen bomb. The energy of the atomic bomb explosion heats the fusion raw material in the center of the warhead to a high temperature of tens of millions of degrees. In such a high temperature and high pressure environment, deuterium and tritium are fused into helium. At the same time, a considerable part of the mass is converted into energy. According to e equals the energy erupted by the mass energy formula MC carat 2 is extremely huge. 10 meters above lake number 2, the hydrogen bomb exploded. Standing on lake number two, you can see such an incredible phenomenon. There is a meteor falling from the sky. It drags a long tail with a brilliant brilliance. In the dim atmosphere of Titan, this meteor is very conspicuous. It landed straight towards lake number two and exploded the moment before it touched lake number two. Infinite light and heat burst out. A huge mushroom cloud rose into the sky and the high temperature of hundreds of millions of degrees instantly evaporated the infinite liquid methane. There was endless white mist, endless flash, endless heat, and endless rays. At this moment, the lake surface set off huge waves. Then, the moment this huge wave flew into the air, it evaporated without a trace before it had time to fall. The high temperature and high pressure caused a huge air pressure difference. In an instant, huge winds rose out of the sky, carrying a huge amount of heat energy and sweeping around. Its wind force is stronger than the most powerful typhoon. At base number three, the robot stared blankly into the distance, looking at this majestic power that originally belonged only to heaven and earth. This hydrogen bomb heated the air within a radius of 40 kilometers by at least 20 degrees. The temperature here temporarily rose to minus 140 degrees. 140 degrees below zero is an unacceptable low temperature for humans. But for these black bugs, 140 degrees below zero means that the liquid methane in their bodies will be heated to boiling. Which means that their bodies will exploding by boiling methane represents their death. The attack is all round. With no blind spots. The endless sea of insects that covered the distance from lake number two to base number three all died at this moment. The huge lake number two was turned into an empty pit after all the liquid methane was evaporated by this large yield hydrogen bomb. All the black bugs hiding inside were undoubtedly dead. A hydrogen bomb will wipe out all the black bugs. Chapter 20 Technological Breakthrough This is the first time Xiaoyu has made a hydrogen bomb. And it is also the first time Xiaoyu has seen a hydrogen bomb explode. Although Xiaoyu had been mentally prepared early in the morning. Such an earth-shaking scene still left Xiaoyu dumbfounded and speechless. At the moment of the explosion, Xiaoyu observed seismic waves equivalent to a magnitude 4 earthquake at the main base a thousand kilometers away. Base number 3 observed shock waves equivalent to a magnitude 7 earthquake. Fortunately, Xiaoyu's factories and buildings are all made of pure steel. So the magnitude 7 earthquake will not have much impact on them. At most, some machinery is not fixed properly and is damaged a little. If it is repaired, it can still be used. The explosion formed a huge storm, sweeping across a distance of dozens of kilometers and reaching base number 3. Fortunately, Xiaoyu was prepared and moved all movable machinery to fix factories. These storms did not have any impact on Xiaoyu. At most, 
it will blow away a layer of sand on the ground, making rare earth mining easier. After the storm passed, Xiao Yu saw the insect corpses in front of him, which were messed up by the wind and scattered everywhere. Immediately, Xiao Yu's eyes began to light up. These, these are gifts from God to me. If Xiao Yu still had hands, Xiao Yu's hands would definitely tremble. Just before the hydrogen bomb exploded, Xiao Yu was still angry. He was angry that there were so many bugs and they were killing them endlessly. But now, he hoped that there would be more bugs. The more the better. These days, Xiao Yu has completely analyzed the various physical properties of the insect corpses. It was found that they have unexpectedly strong radiation protection and high temperature resistance. The average thickness of the bodies of these bugs is only 0.1 millimeter. But even with this thickness, its radiation protection capability is equivalent to the entire radiation protection layer on Xiao Yu's old spacecraft. Moreover, even the thousands of degrees of heat from the flamethrower could not burn their corpses. As long as we collect them and make them into a radiation protection layer and a heat insulation layer, then I'm afraid even the radiation intensity and heat of 1 million kilometers from the sun will not be able to do anything to me. Xiao Yu laughed. Laughed? Well, we will immediately increase the number of troops in base number three. This time, we must develop some robots that specialize in collecting insect corpses. Xiao Yu immediately made up his mind. By the way, I wonder if there are such black bugs in other lakes. At this moment, an idea popped up in Xiao Yu's mind. Anyway, on Titan, Xiao Yu has no worries about damaging the ecological environment. What a joke. Is there an ecological environment on Titan? Even if there is, it belongs to those bugs and has nothing to do with Xiao Yu. Killing them will not bring any psychological burden to Xiao Yu. It started to rain. Xiao Yu figured it out immediately after a little calculation. This is because the entire lake number two was evaporated and a large number of rain clouds formed over this place. The heavy rain fell. And Xiao Yu suddenly became embarrassed. And quickly ordered all the robots to retreat into the factory to take shelter from the rain. But the next moment, a question caught Xiao Yu's attention. In front of base three, a large number of insect corpses were washed away by the torrent caused by the rain. Because the terrain of lake number two is relatively low. These liquids actually flowed towards lake number two. It seems that there is a strong tendency to continue to fill up lake number two. Xiao Yu suddenly cursed. I worked so hard to empty lake number two, but I haven't collected the fruits of my labor yet. Will it be in vain in the end? No. We must find a way. If lake number two contains liquid methane again, Xiao Yu's work of collecting insect corpses will become much more difficult. And even if you think with your buttocks, you can figure out that there must be a huge number of insect corpses waiting for Xiao Yu in the number two lake that was blown up. These are extremely precious resources. And Xiao Yu is absolutely unwilling to waste them. Damn it! Wait for me! Xiao Yu murmured to himself. The powerful photon computer only calculated for three seconds before a plan emerged. Moreover, it only took two seconds to pass the three step plan. 1700 feasibility tests. Xiao Yu immediately decided to adopt this plan. Stop the rain near base 3. Prevent lake number 2 from refilling. At the main base, countless robots were busy. A large amount of water from whale on lake was collected. And together with liquid oxygen, it was made into high pressure incendiary bombs. The function 1 helicopter quickly took off, carrying these incendiary bombs and flew towards 50 kilometers behind lake number 2. This is a desolate wilderness with no mineral veins, no mountains, and no lakes. Right here, Xiao Yu threw down incendiary bombs one after another. As soon as the incendiary bomb touched the ground, it immediately burned under the combustion supporting effect of liquid oxygen. Large areas of flames rose up, covering almost several kilometers of the ground. The infinite air is heated and then rises. The large amount of hot air almost made the function one helicopter unsteady. Xiao Yu quickly controlled the function number one helicopter to throw down the remaining incendiary bombs and fled quickly. It is common sense that air becomes lighter and rises when heated. Xiao Yu planned to use this common sense to block the rainfall at base number three and lake number two, preventing them from destroying the fruits of his labor. Under the action of the laws of physics, the fire here immediately caused a chain reaction. A large amount of hot air is heated and rises, and the air pressure in this area immediately becomes negative pressure. As a result, the cold air from the surrounding area was immediately poured in, filling the empty space here. But the cold air is immediately heated and continues to rise. So the surrounding cold air continues to rush in to replenish the The sea of fire caused by Xiao Yu caused violent air flow. Once the air flows, 
it will form wind. And the wind will blow the clouds over. Without clouds, where would there be rain? This is Xiao Yu's entire plan. Xiao Yu is greatly encouraged by monitoring the flow of air. However, the burning range here is not large enough. And the fire will be extinguished if it continues for another 20 minutes. Xiao Yu thought, controlling Feng Shen 1 to return to the base, and loaded a huge amount of incendiary bombs. Back here, strong winds are already blowing here. But Feng Shen 1 has superior performance and is much stronger than helicopters on Earth. Naturally, it will not be afraid of this wind force. Following the same example, Xiao Yu dropped the incendiary bomb and continued to return for five hours. At base number three, the wind direction detector reported good news. Here, the wind has begun to blow, and the wind force is still increasing. Moreover, as expected by Xiao Yu, the wind direction was indeed towards the burning area. Very good! Very good! Xiao Yu looked at the rain that gradually decreased until it stopped completely, and his heart was filled with pride. It is estimated that some liquid methane has accumulated in lake number two, but it should not be much. If it is not in the way, just keep them as a fuel source for base number three. Xiao Yu made up his mind. The robot production line has begun production at full capacity. What is being produced this time is a vacuum cleaner type robot. These tiny insect corpses are really hard to get rid of if you rely on traditional collection methods. Use a robot vacuum cleaner to deal with them. Just fine. Three days later, the first batch of 50 vacuum cleaner robots arrived at their destination. Xiao Yu commanded these robots to go out immediately to collect the insect corpses. Behind each robot is a large machine. These machines are responsible for loading the insect corpses collected by the vacuum cleaner robot and are also responsible for adding fuel to the vacuum cleaner robot. In this way, the vacuum cleaner robot can continue to work for a long time without having to return to the base every once in a while, which greatly improves efficiency. These robots carry a giant package on their backs, and their arms are two large vacuum cleaners. Just sweep it on the ground, and the insect corpses that fall on the ground mixed with dust will be sucked in and stored in the package. When the package is full, they will transfer the contents of the package to large loading machines. While the insect corpse collection plan was being launched, the construction of base number three was also restarted. With the continuous replenishment of materials from the main base, the construction of the third base is in full swing, and rare earth finished products have even begun to be produced. Xiao Yu estimates that in just three days, rare earth production will be on track. By then, a major bottleneck restricting Xiao Yu's development will disappear. Under the control of Xiao Yu's huge computing power, everything went smoothly. The matter at base number three came to an end for the time being, and Xiao Yu began to plan for the construction of base number four and base number five. Each of these bases will have different responsibilities. Some are mainly responsible for producing silicon. Some are mainly responsible for producing aluminum. Some are mainly responsible for producing gold. And so on. The raw materials they produce will be gathered together at the main base and will eventually be turned into components after various smelting, processing, casting and other processes. These components will turn into interstellar ships, taking Xiao Yu on a great interstellar voyage. At the same time, large-scale insect inspections are also in full swing. After this period of construction, Xiao Yu gradually felt that only one helicopter, Feng Shen 1, was not enough. So Xiao Yu started the construction of Feng Shen 2 and Feng Shen 3 without hesitation. The Feng Shen 1 helicopter inspected all methane lakes with an area of more than 1 hectare on Titan, and installed a heat source next to each methane lake. In this way, as long as there are black bugs in the lake, they will be these heat sources are attracted. And then Xiao Yu will find out. Then, Xiao Yu will decide whether to launch a hydrogen bomb based on its value. The ecology on Titan will be destroyed if it is destroyed. Anyway, there are no intelligent creatures on Titan, and a large number of hydrogen bomb explosions will not affect Xiao Yu himself. Large-scale Titan construction is in full swing. At the same time, good news came from the number 2 Research Institute, the Controlled Nuclear Fusion Laboratory. There has been a huge technological breakthrough in controllable nuclear fusion research. Chapter 21 Hope Humanity has been conducting research on controllable nuclear fusion technology for decades. During these times, although humans have not broken through this technological shackles, they have also accumulated a huge amount of research data through a large amount of research. These data have provided Xiao Yu with very important reference, especially when Jupiter and the Moon collide. The phenomenon that occurred on Jupiter taught Xiao Yu a very important lesson. On these foundations, and with the powerful computing power of photonic computers, 
Xiaoyu finally achieved a very important technological breakthrough today. In the Controlled Nuclear Fusion Research Laboratory at base number 2, there is a huge glass box, and the outside is covered with various lines. These lines will produce a specific magnetic field. Under the constraints of this magnetic field, in the center of the glass box, there is a very bright and dazzling light point suspended in midair, radiating a huge amount of light and heat all the time, making it impossible for people to look directly. They are undergoing nuclear fusion, fusing deuterium and tritium into helium. In this process, part of the mass is converted into energy. Xiaoyu allocated 10% of his computing power to focus on this place, quickly performing various calculations. Looking at the experimental data one by one, Xiaoyu felt inexplicably excited. He had been waiting for this moment for too long. Relying on chemical fuels for interstellar navigation is unrealistic because its energy efficiency ratio is too low. If we really have to rely on chemical fuels to travel from the solar system to the Tianyuan star system, Xiaoyu estimates that he will have to build a kilometer-level spacecraft and fill more than 90% of its space with fuel, just barely enough. It can be said that controllable nuclear fusion technology is the stepping stone to open the door to interstellar navigation. Without controllable nuclear fusion, relying solely on chemical fuels, Xiaoyu will be confined to the solar system forever, unable to escape. Okay, let's start building a new generation of nuclear fusion-powered spaceships. Xiaoyu started a new plan. He wants to build an epic-making spacecraft that uses the latest technology in terms of power system, structural materials, and control system. All the construction carried out in the early stage is to serve this purpose. The huge special steel smelting blast furnace flows out dark red molten steel all the time. After condensation, these molten steel will turn into steel ingots for processing. However, shall you added another process before condensation. This process involves exposing the molten steel to radiation from, number one, for about five minutes before it condenses. After experiments, Shall you found that when the metal is in a high temperature liquid state, the radiation irradiation from, number one, can achieve the greatest performance improvement with a minimum radiation intensity. Therefore, poor number one, was caught here by Shall you and acted as a coolie selling blood. These five minutes of radiation exposure are enough to increase the various properties of these special steels to more than three times their original value. During the smelting process of these steels, Shall you also added the corpses of black bugs in a certain proportion. In this way, the heat insulation and radiation protection properties of these steels were greatly improved. Xiaoyu is doing his best to build the highest quality materials. These materials, after being processed in the equipment manufacturing room, will become parts of this great, epic-making spacecraft. In the huge assembly workshop of the main base, various components from at least hundreds of equipment manufacturing rooms are gathered. There were at least hundreds of robots busy here, assembling various precision components one by one. It took half a year of work before the spacecraft was completed. This is a saucer-shaped spacecraft with a diameter of 20 meters and a height of about 5 meters. The power system uses a nuclear fusion engine. The control system uses the latest photon computer. And the construction materials use the highest quality steel that Xiaoyu can produce. This is a spaceship that has been the work of Xiaoyu. It is the most advanced spacecraft that Xiaoyu can create with his current technology. In order to build this spacecraft, the radiation intensity of Number one, was directly reduced to 30% of the maximum radiation intensity, and 70% of the radiation intensity was used. The carcasses of black bugs have used up nearly 200 tons, accounting for 30% of the current reserves. Although the consumption is so huge, Xiaoyu believes that it is worth it. Even if the radiation intensity of number one is used up, they can still go to Jupiter to capture them. As for the corpses of black bugs, Xiaoyu is not worried at all. During this period of time, Shall you discover this kind of creature in at least thousands of larger lakes on Titan? It is estimated that its total storage capacity will reach millions of tons. Such a large amount of reserves is enough Shall you has built a large fleet. Today is the day for the test flight of this spacecraft. Shall you stopped most of the construction progress and allocated at least 40% of the computing power of the photon computer here, which is almost equal to the total computing power of all supercomputers on the Earth. We must make sure that nothing goes wrong. Shall you thought silently in his heart. You carry our hope for interstellar navigation. Let's call you Hope. The mass of the Hope is about 3,000 tons. This level of spacecraft is classified by Xiaoyu into the Village class spacecraft. If a spaceship of more than 10,000 tons is built in the future, it will be classified by Xiaoyu into the Township level spacecraft category. And so on. With the increase in tonnage, 
until the county level, city level, provincial level, level, national level, and several other different categories. Under shall use full attention, the village level spaceship, the hope, sprayed out a stream of light blue flames from the bottom of the spacecraft and slowly left the ground. Yes, the Hope spacecraft does not need a rocket to send it into interstellar space, but has the ability to take off directly, because its powerful and efficient power system can provide it with long-lasting and strong enough power. And advanced material technology ensures that it is not designed according to aerodynamics, nor will it be affected by the gravity of the planet during high-speed movement. Air resistance shreds. Ten seconds later, the Hope was 3,000 meters above the ground. The huge friction made its SH. L slightly red, and the temperature was estimated to be over 800 degrees Celsius. But Xiaoyi was not worried at all. The outer SH, L of the spacecraft, which is made of special steel mixed with black insect corpses, can withstand this temperature. Its speed was getting faster and faster. One minute later, Hope was 100 kilometers above the ground and reached Titan's orbit, but it was still accelerating. At this time, the communication between Xiaoyu and Hope relied entirely on the 12 Aries satellites launched previously. Xiaoyu controlled the Hope to leave Titan, and there was a sudden break in the interstellar space. The speed suddenly dropped from 3 kilometers per second to almost stationary. The spacecraft passed the overload resistance test. The acceleration of gravity on the Earth is 9.8 meters per second. This means that on a spacecraft that is accelerating at a speed of 9.8 meters per second all the time, due to the effect of inertia, a person feels the gravity is the same as on the Earth. If the spacecraft were to accelerate at a speed of 19.6 meters per second, the person would feel twice the gravity of the Earth. This is overload. A trained superpilot can withstand 10 times the overload, which means that the human body's endurance limit is an acceleration of 98 meters per second. Exceeding this acceleration, the human body will suffer irreparable damage or even death. The spacecraft hull also has an overload limit it can withstand. Ordinary large aircraft can withstand a maximum overload of about 20 times. If this value is exceeded, the aircraft body will be torn apart by inertial force and air resistance. Before the destruction of the Earth, the spacecraft built by humans could withstand about 30 to 40 times overload, which is a maximum acceleration of 400 meters per second. If this limit was exceeded, the spacecraft would be torn apart by inertial force. Shall you just tested his spaceship? Test results show that it can withstand an overload of approximately 230 times the maximum. In other words, Xiaoyu spacecraft can withstand accelerations of up to 2,200 meters per second. This means that the Hope spacecraft can change from a static state to a state of running 2 kilometers per second in one second. And it can also stop instantly while running at a high speed of 2 kilometers per second. This means tremendous flexibility. With such powerful flexibility, coupled with Xiaoyu's terrifying calculation speed, even if there are tens of thousands of people and tens of thousands of guns firing at the Hope at the same time. Xiaoyu can control the Hope and in just a short time within a few seconds, he completely dodged bullets. After the anti-overload test was completed, Xiaoyu started another test. Conventional fuel storage capacity. Maximum operating speed test. In space navigation, the only things that consume fuel are acceleration, deceleration, and course changes. Normal flight mainly relies on inertia but no fuel is consumed at this stage. The fastest spacecraft powered by chemical fuel or nuclear fission created by mankind is Voyager 1, which reaches a speed of approximately 18 kilometers per second relative to the sun. Why can't it be made faster? It's because of fuel restrictions. Before Xiaoyu reached Titan, he had reached a speed of 60 kilometers per second because he received additional fuel. What Xiaoyu wants to test now is the maximum speed that the Hope can support if it carries a conventional amount of fuel. A powerful blue flame spewed out from the tail of the Hope, and it began to accelerate at a terrifying speed, getting faster and faster. Conventional fuel storage capacity. Maximum operating speed of 300 kilometers per second. Conventional fuel storage capacity can support the Hope to make more than six such accelerations and decelerations. If you do not consider the deceleration problem and only consider the maximum power of the engine and continue to accelerate, when the fuel is exhausted, its speed can reach 1,000 kilometers per second. This data shocked Xiaoyu. Chapter 22 Scavengers 300 kilometers per second What does this speed mean? The speed of the solar wind is probably similar to this. In other words, if a large-scale flare erupts on the sun at this moment, strong solar wind erupts, and Xiaoyu escapes into outer space at this time, the solar wind will never catch up with Xiaoyu. 
Voyager 1, the farthest spacecraft currently built by mankind, is currently about 17.8 billion kilometers away from the Earth and 16 billion kilometers away from Xiaoyu. If Xiaoyu were to control the hope and set off to catch up with Voyager 1, it would only take less than two years to catch up. Voyager 1 has been flying in space for 38 years. At this speed, it only takes about two months to fly from Saturn to Earth. In the past, it wouldn't have taken more than a few years to even think about it. This is the huge technological leap that controllable nuclear fusion has brought to Xiaoyu. This is also the reason why Xiaoyu attaches so much importance to controllable nuclear fusion. A civilization can only be said to be an interstellar civilization after it has mastered controllable nuclear fusion technology. Now Xiaoyu can proudly announce that mankind has entered the stage of interstellar civilization. Although Xiaoyu is the only one left in the entire human civilization, there had never been such a moment before. Xiaoyu felt that his whole body was full of hope. Xiaoyu couldn't put it down and control the hope to fly around in space and conducted various performance tests on it. Only when he had mastered all the performance data of the hope and the fuel consumption was almost complete. Did Xiaoyu control it? Landed on the ground. During this period of testing, Xiaoyu also discovered some problems that had not been considered before, as well as some technical flaws of the hope. Next, Xiaoyu began a long process of testing and transformation. This is the first interstellar spacecraft built by Xiaoyu, and it must be perfect. Time passed slowly, and in the blink of an eye, two years passed. In the past two years, the number of Xiaoyu's bases on Titan has grown to 93. Each base has its own main output. These materials are transported to the main base by the function helicopter. After that, it will be transformed into various construction materials to provide strong support for Xiaoyu's era of great construction. In the past two years, the number of function helicopters has grown to more than 100. These aircraft are busy shuttles in Titan's atmosphere and are responsible for transporting supplies between various bases. The sight of hundreds of thousands of robots, similar to the Rare Earth Expedition Corps, reaching their destination by walking will never happen again. This is a major technological advancement, which means that Xiaoyu is becoming more and more powerful. The area of the main base has expanded to two square kilometers. Within the base, there are various factories and buildings, and countless robots shuttle back and forth. There are currently about 100,000 robots in the main base. The total number of robots in all bases on Titan has probably exceeded 1 million. These millions of robots, as well as various machines and sensors, are all under Xiaoyu's unified control and work in an orderly manner. It can be said that Xiaoyu's eyes are everywhere on Titan. If Xiaoyu wants to know any subtle movement happening anywhere on Titan, it cannot escape Xiaoyu's perception. Although he has mastered controllable nuclear fusion technology, Xiaoyu has not turned the power source in the base into nuclear fusion power. Because on Titan, methane is almost inexhaustible and easy to access. And fusion raw materials need to be collected from Saturn. In comparison, conventional chemical fuels are cheaper and more practical. Even so, Xiaoyu has begun to consider building a nuclear fusion power collection fleet. Although Xiaoyu only has one, village, level spaceship now. Xiaoyu has to think about the future. Moreover, the lack of titanium and zirconium also forced Xiaoyu to find a solution as soon as possible. The best case scenario is to find these two mineral deposits on the other satellites of Saturn. Otherwise, the search scope will be expanded to Uranus and Neptune. If they cannot be found again, they will have to go to Mars or the original Earth orbit to search. Jupiter. Xiaoyu doesn't plan to go yet. The radiation source there brought too much psychological shadow to Xiaoyu. Of course, in the future, Xiaoyu will definitely build a fleet dedicated to capturing Jupiter ghosts like number one. But not now. Jupiter Ghost Jupiter Ghost is a good name. Let's name those weird radiation source creatures Jupiter Ghost. Or with spirit for short. Xiaoyu thought. As for these black bugs, let's call them black bugs. In the past two years, Xiaoyu launched three more hydrogen bombs, emptied three methane lakes, and harvested at least 1,500 tons of black insect corpses. Of course, with the hope there, Xiaoyu no longer wasted time building rockets to launch hydrogen bombs. With the speed of the hope, it is enough to escape the impact of the hydrogen bomb before it explodes. Xiaoyu also began to try to raise black insects artificially. After all, things like black insects are really useful. In this way, Xiaoyu can still supplement the black insect resources after leaving Titan in the future. Xiaoyu has never found a way to artificially raise things like with spirits. 70% of the radiation intensity of number one has been used up during this period of time. 
it has remained in this half-dead state. No matter how you tried his best, he could not make it strong again. Well, the artificial satellites surrounding Saturn have been built. There are 18 in the first batch. Let's launch them first, Xiao Yu thought, controlling the robot and placing these satellites into the hope. Xiao Yu doesn't really believe in computer programs. No matter how powerful a computer program is, it is still dead. How can it compare to the flexibility of the human mind? It is for this reason that Xiao Yu built 12 Aries satellites to provide signal coverage for the entire Titan. Now, for the same reason, Xiao Yu plans to provide signal coverage for Saturn. Otherwise, when the hope flies behind Saturn, it will lose contact with Xiao Yu. There's another benefit to having signal coverage for Saturn. Xiao Yu's plan is to launch 60 to 80 Saturn satellites. In this way, except for some signal dead spots, it will be equivalent to providing signal coverage for almost the entire solar system. By then, Hope will be able to fly freely within the solar system without having to worry about losing contact. After such a long period of testing, Xiao Yu has become quite comfortable in operating the Hope. As the order was given, a light blue flame rose from the bottom of the Hope and flew quickly towards outer space, including the acceleration and deceleration time. It took about two hours for the Hope to arrive at a distance of 100,000 kilometers from Saturn. After adjusting to the appropriate speed in orbit, the Hope opened its cabin and the first Saturn satellite was released. In the distance, the huge Earth yellow Saturn is floating there quietly, surrounded by the gorgeous rings of Saturn, which is strange and strange. With a huge Saturn as the background, the Hope spacecraft looks like a small ant. After the satellite is released, the Saturn satellite will begin to orbit Saturn under the action of inertia. It carries some fuel on it, which can be used for orbit adjustment and daily consumption. Then, Xiao Yu adjusted the orbit again left here, and release the second satellite at the second position. After repeating this for 18 times, the mission was finally completed. These 18 Saturn satellites, with orbital altitudes ranging from 50,000 kilometers to 2 million kilometers, basically cover the entire Saturn and its satellite system. Of course, due to the insufficient number of satellites at the beginning, this coverage was only approximate coverage. In the future, Xiao Yu will launch more satellites to complete this project. After completing the mission, Xiao Yu controlled the Hope spacecraft and approached Saturn. This takeoff also has another mission, which is to collect fusion raw materials such as deuterium, tritium, and helium. After two years of consumption, Xiao Yu did not have much fusion fuel left. Saturn's volume is more than 760 times that of Earth, but its mass is only 95 times that of Earth. This means that the average density of Saturn is very low, even lower than the density of water. Xiao Yu carefully controlled the Hope spacecraft and stopped at the edge of Saturn's upper atmosphere. Compared to Jupiter, Saturn has always been very calm. However, this calm is relatively speaking. Saturn has the fastest storm in the entire solar system, with a speed of more than 1,800 km per hour, which is much more powerful than the storms on the Earth. Xiao Yu carefully analyzed the atmospheric flow. After a long time, he chose a place and flew in quietly. Xiao Yu is making observations at all times in order to adjust his trajectory according to the flow of Saturn's atmosphere, so as to minimize the risk. After a while, several gaps were opened in the SH, L of the Hope, and several large air pumps began to work. Immediately, a large amount of Saturn's gas was pumped in. And then, inside the Hope, it went through a series of separation and purification processes. Waiting for the formalities, useful elements are collected and useless elements are ejected overboard. Saturn's atmosphere is mainly composed of hydrogen. But ordinary hydrogen is not cost-effective as a fusion fuel. Xiao Yu mainly collects hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, and helium-3. The content of these things is much less. But even so, its content is many times higher than on Earth or Titan. Xiao Yu comfortably roamed in the atmosphere of Saturn and started working as a scavenger. Of course, it was limited to the surface atmosphere. Xiao Yu didn't dare to go inside. It's too dangerous there. It took 10 days for Xiao Yu to collect enough raw materials. And then Xiao Yu controlled the hope to leave Saturn and return to Titan. Continue to build satellites. Provide signal coverage for the entire Saturn system. And even the entire solar system. And then start the titanium and zirconium collection plan. The with spirit capture plan should also be officially launched. Tian Yu on sea. Wait for me. I'll be here soon. Chapter 23 Titanium and Zirconium Collection Plan after having the village, nuclear fusion-powered spacecraft Hope, Xiao Yu truly realized the convenience brought to him 
by technological progress. When the Hope was initially designed, it was designed for dual use in interstellar space and near-Earth space. In this way, whether it is launching satellites or transporting materials between stars, it is dozens of times more convenient and faster than before. More than twice that, at least, Using HOPE to launch 18 satellites around Saturn saved Xiao Yu a huge amount of materials required to build 18 rockets. After making up his mind to provide signal coverage for the entire Saturn system, Xiao Bianyu increased the speed of manufacturing satellites. Now Xiao Yu has completed the basic accumulation, except for the two elements titanium and zirconium, which are relatively scarce. A total of 93 bases on Titan produce huge amounts of materials all the time, which are inexhaustible. Finally, with these material sources, Xiao Yu can start developing new technologies with peace of mind. Countless robots are busy shuttling around. As long as there is enough energy, they will never feel tired or ask for rest. Under the hard work of these efficient construction workers, satellites were manufactured one after another, and Hope was responsible for transporting these satellites to the appropriate locations. The Titanium and Zirconium Collection Plan has officially begun. In addition to basic communication functions, these satellites, manufactured by Xiao Yu also serve as the function of searching for the two elements titanium and zirconium. Xiao Yu added extremely sensitive element analysis instruments to these satellites. Xiao Yu believed that as long as these two elements exist in the Saturn system, they will be found by him. It took Hope three full months to put nearly 80 satellites into orbit one by one, since there are no stable Lagrangian points in the Saturnian system. All but seven of these moons orbit Saturn. At this point, the entire Saturn system has been completely covered by Xiao Yu's signal. As long as it is within the Saturn system and does not enter the interior of the planet, it can contact Xiao Yu no matter where the hope is. The entire Saturn system is a huge system. Before the Earth was destroyed, humans had already discovered that the entire Saturn system had at least 62 satellites. After Xiao Yu was stationed on Titan, he discovered many rocks orbiting Saturn. However, these rocks were too small and could only be regarded as meteorites not satellites. Of the 62 satellites, only 7 have enough mass to reach hydrostatic equilibrium. That is, only 7 satellites are spherical. The so-called hydrostatic equilibrium means that when a star reaches a certain mass, the gravitational force of its various parts will tend to be balanced. In order to achieve this balance, it will inevitably form a spherical-like shape. This is also the reason why all large stars discovered by humans are spherical or approximately spherical and only asteroids have irregular shapes because they do not have enough mass. These seven Saturn satellites are the focus of Xiao Yu's search. Seven satellites have been specially launched into orbits around them. Xiao Yu directed the hope to embark on a tortuous journey for the remaining small satellites, visiting them one by one. But the result disappointed Xiao Yu. It seems that when the gods created the Saturn system, they forgot to add titanium and zirconium. Xiao Yu searched the entire Saturn system and found no trace of these two elements. In fact, it cannot be said that nothing has been found. But the bit that has been found has no mining value at all. The reserves are low and mining is difficult. If it is found, it is equal to not found. After the search lasted for three months, Xiao Yu wisely gave up the idea. Then, there are only two options left. One is to develop towards the inner planets and search for Mars or the proto-Earth orbit. The other is to develop towards the outer planets and search for Uranus and Neptune. After weighing the pros and cons, Xiao Yu chose the first option. The reason is simple. The orbit of Neptune is 1.4 billion kilometers away from the orbit of Saturn. And the orbit of the Earth is 1.3 billion kilometers away from Saturn. The distance is not too far apart. And it is even closer to the Earth. In Earth orbit, Xiao Yu can determine that there are large amounts of titanium and zirconium. This is something that humans on the original Earth have long discovered. Although fusion fuel can be replenished on Neptune, whether these two elements are present on Neptune still needs to be explored separately. Okay. Xiao Yu sighed and began to make plans to return to Earth. But there was a big difficulty with this plan. That is, the distance is too far. It is so far away that even if it travels at the speed of light of a radio signal, it will take more than 70 minutes to complete. In other words, Xiao Yu sends a signal to the Hope in Earth orbit on Titan. And the Hope will take more than 70 minutes. It will be available after a few minutes. This is unacceptable to Xiao Yu, who values absolute control. Moreover, without hope, daily affairs such as the Saturn system, launching satellites, and maintaining satellites cannot be carried out at all. But if Xiao Yu leaves the main base on Titan and follows the hope to Earth orbit, the construction on Titan 
will come to a complete standstill without Xiao Yu's supervision. This is also something Xiao Yu is unwilling to accept. Extra distance communication. I don't know when it will be developed. Xiao Yu lamented. Now Xiao Yu is very eager to obtain ultra distance communication technology. The so called over distance communication, as the name suggests, is communication that transcends distance. Also called real time communication. That is, no matter how far the distance is, the communication between them is real time and without delay. Many people have already started researching this technology on Earth. The most promising breakthrough at present is to achieve long distance communication based on the quantum entanglement effect of quantum mechanics. However, this technology is still in theory and cannot even be implemented in a laboratory, let alone practical applications. Xiao Yu has no way to achieve it now. However, Xiao Yu has a plan. After he arrives in the Tianyuan 4 star system, he will build a very large particle collider orbiting Tianyuan 4. After he has a breakthrough in his basic physical theory, he will then study long distance communication technology. In fact, human science has not made any major progress in recent decades. It has been developing on the two cornerstones of relativity and quantum theory. And at most it has only been tinkering with some details. Human society seems to be prosperous. But in fact it is only a technological development. Not a theoretical development. As for long distance communication. There is no doubt that it cannot be realized under the current framework of basic physical theory. Xiao Yu shook his head slightly. Shook these thoughts out of his mind. And began to think about how to use the current technical level to solve the current problems. Only by using programming technology at a distant scale of 1.3 billion kilometers, I can only have some general control over the hope. The specific details must be programmed in advance and let the hope do it by itself. Well, there is also the hope after leaving. There are interstellar transportation issues here in the Saturn system. So let's build another spaceship. The radiation intensity of the number one Kodama is not strong enough to build another spaceship. So let's use the hope to capture some Kodama first. However, Jupiter is also 700 million kilometers away from here, and a signal takes 40 minutes. I really don't feel at ease to face these dangerous creatures by relying on procedures alone. Shall you sighed and continue to think. At the speed of the hope, it will take a month to reach Jupiter, including the time required for capture. The round trip will take about two and a half months. Well, then, leave the main base and go to Jupiter. Then, go to the original Earth orbit for mining I just have to rely on the program to do the things I want. I really can't afford to waste so long. After thinking slowly, Xiao Yu formulated a plan. After the general framework came out, Xiao Yu began to tinker with the details. That is, how to use limited resources and time to do the most. Since we are going to Jupiter, it is just a good idea to pave the way for the trip to Earth. Well, place a high-power communication satellite at the Lagrange point of the Sun and Saturn and then place a high-power communication satellite at the Lagrange point of the Sun and Jupiter. Basically, the communication problem is solved. After making up his mind, Xiao Yu immediately started the construction of these two satellites. With a previous experience of building nearly a hundred satellites, the construction process of these two satellites was smooth, and it took only one month to complete. After everything was ready, Xiao Yu put the two satellites into the Hope, and made proper arrangements for the 93 bases on Titan such as shutting down certain machines, suspending mining, and writing some programs. Let some robots be responsible for the daily maintenance of the base, etc. And after making all arrangements, Xiaoyu came to the photon computer on the Hope through the optical cable. Although the main control computer on the Hope is also a photon computer, its computing power is countless times worse than that in the main base. However, Xiaoyu didn't plan to use this computer to do anything with a large amount of calculations. So he just thought of taking a rest. Controlling the hope to leave Titan. Xiao Yu first reached the Lagrange point of the Sun and Saturn. After stopping, he placed a satellite here and then continued to accelerate. Three minutes later, the speed of the hope reached 3 150 kilometers per second. It quickly left the Saturn system and flew towards Jupiter. The long journey lasted for a month. Seeing Jupiter's familiar face again, Xiao Yu couldn't help but feel excited. I've said it before. I will come back with the latest materials modified from the Black Insect Corpse. This time, let me see what else you can do to me. Be obedient and become my construction material. Arriving at an orbit 100,000 kilometers away from Jupiter, Xiao Yu shouted arrogantly. Chapter 24 Dawn Hope is built using the most advanced materials, and its radiation resistance is dozens of times stronger than that of previous old spacecraft. 
Moreover, the Hope uses nuclear fusion power, so there is no need to worry about fuel consumption when it is close to Jupiter. When building the Hope, shall you consider the possibility of conflict with other creatures? So 10 laser cannons and 3 high-yield hydrogen bombs were installed on the Hope. It can be said that this time, Shao Yu was fully prepared. However, Shao Yu remained cautious enough when facing these strange creatures, turning on the detection power of various instruments to the maximum. Shao Yu flew slowly along the orbit around Jupiter. According to my previous speculation, the reason why my spaceship attracted so many with spirits was because there was something on my spacecraft that attracted them. This time, I came here just to verify it so that I can launch a large-scale arrest in the future. Shao Yu thought slowly. After discovering that there was a group of wood spirits in front of him that showed a blue shift with about a hundred times the initial radiation amount, Xiao Yu quickly released a simple satellite, keeping it about 100 meters away from him. In an orbit of 100 kilometers, they revolve around Jupiter together. The overall strength of this group of wood spirits is about the same as that of the number one wood spirit at its peak. Now, Xiao Yu can completely ignore such a strong wood spirit, calculated based on the amount of blue shift. The speed of this with spirit relative to the Hope is approximately 100 km per second. After excluding the Hope's speed of 43 km per second, the speed of these Kodama is about 60 km per second. This group of with spirits quickly arrived at a location only a thousand km away from Xiaoyu. This location is only about 800 km away from the crewed satellite that Xiaoyu previously released. But at this moment, the performance of this group of with spirits was far beyond Xiaoyu's expectations. They ignored the crew satellites that were relatively close, but rushed directly towards the Hope, tightly attached to the SH, L of the Hope, and tried their best to get in. Xiao Yu's brows knitted tightly. What is it about the spacecraft that attracts them? This time I came to Jupiter, and the one I took was not the old spacecraft. In other words, what attracted them was something that the old spacecraft and the Hope shared. But they didn't not being attracted to that crewed satellite eliminates a lot of things. What is it that attracts them? While Xiao Yu was thinking, he weakened the radiation protection ability of a certain part of the Hope's SH. L. And set up a trap on the inner wall. And neatly captured this group of wood spirits. After that, Xiao Yu started to do the elimination method. First of all, it won't be a computer. The computer on the old spacecraft uses large scale integrated circuits. But the Hope is a photon computer with a different architecture. It's not the same thing at all. Moreover, there is also a computer on that simple satellite modules, but these with spirits disdain them. It can't be these materials. They are just tightly attached to the SH. L. And if there is a slight hole, they will drill in. It can be determined that it is not these special steel materials that attract them. Is it heat? No. It's unlikely. You can find places with much higher temperatures than my anywhere on Jupiter. Radiant energy? Impossible. I've done many experiments on Titan. Shall you thought quickly, and gradually, a terrible idea came to him. Am I the one who attracted them? Xiao Yu decided to do another experiment. Another with spirit gathering point was discovered ahead. There are about seven or eight. Xiao Yu neatly eliminated seven of them with laser cannons. After leaving only one, Xiao Yu gritted his teeth and moved the position through radio waves. From the hope to the simple satellite next to it. This simple satellite has no protective measures. If it is approached by a with spirit, just one with spirit can destroy Xiao Yu. But Xiao Yu was confident that he would escape in time after Mu Ling showed signs of approaching him. In order to clarify this problem, and for the subsequent large scale arrest plan, Xiao Yu believed that it was worth taking a little risk. The hope is quickly approaching the wood spirit. The distance was shortened from 10,000 kilometers to 5,000 kilometers, and then to 1,000 kilometers. Hope, the rudimentary satellite, and this Kodama form a triangle. Based on Xiao Yu's knowledge of the wood spirit's habits, Xiao Yu knew that he would make a decision when the wood spirit reached 300 kilometers away from the Hope, whether to fly to Hope or to fly to a crewed satellite. The wood spirit is coming. At a distance of 300 kilometers from the Hope, it changed its direction without any hesitation and rushed towards the simple satellite at a speed of 60 kilometers per second, coupled with the speed of the simple satellite itself. The wood spirit will come into contact with it in three seconds. The time left for Xiao Yu was only three seconds. Although it is short, it is enough. It only took Xiao Yu less than a second to run out of the simple satellite and send himself to the main control computer of the Hope using radio waves. And this with spirit seemed to have something in its heart. It felt Xiao Yu's departure. And it immediately changed its direction and swooped towards the Hope 
until it was blocked by the SH. L of the hope, and could not advance even an inch. The reaction of this with spirit has confirmed Xiao Yu's guess. And Xiao Yu can't help but think deeply. So, why do I attract them? Xiao Yu thought about it. The biggest difference between me and the computer is that I have independent thinking. But the computer does not. Could it be that it is my independent thinking that attracts them? Or in other words, is it my wisdom? This is the only explanation. Xiao Yu came to this conclusion. Could it be that after devouring my wisdom, they will evolve? Is there such an evolutionary path? It doesn't evolve wisdom on its own. But it can evolve by devouring the wisdom of other creatures. This is just a rough guess. Unfortunately, there are no other intelligent creatures around Xiao Yu for him to confirm this guess. Xiao Yu was unwilling to do the experiment on his own. So he had to keep this guess in his heart and leave it to be verified later. After tidying up the wood spirit, Xiao Yu continued his journey. Over the past few years, it seems that there are more radiation sources on Jupiter. Xiao Yu could detect that there were many radiation sources 100,000 kilometers below him. On the surface of Jupiter, and even deeper, covering almost the entire Jupiter. Xiao Yu didn't dare to go there. So he just fought gorillas on the outside. Otherwise, no matter how strong he is, if thousands of wood spirits pounce on him, he will still have to finish the game. Even in the outer layer, the density of wood spirits is more than 10 times higher than the last time they used the old spaceship to escape. Despite the strength of the hope, it still encountered danger several times. Fortunately, Xiao Yu prepared enough fuel, and the high-power laser cannons attacked at the same time, slowing down their speed and reducing their intensity. Xiao Yu was able to survive the crisis safely, after confirming that it was only him who attracted these wood spirits, and that the mechanical equipment he made would not be interfered by the wood spirits. Xiao Yu also started a prospecting plan for the Jupiter system while capturing the wood spirits. The Jupiter system is much larger than the Saturn system, and it is much closer than the Earth. If titanium and zirconium can be found here, their mining period and mining cost will undoubtedly be much lower than on Earth. For Galileo's satellites and dozens of smaller satellites were all explored by Xiao Yu. But the results disappointed Xiao Yu. In the Jupiter system, there are still no veins of titanium and zirconium worth mining. Hey, let's just look for it honestly on the Earth. Xiao Yu sighed and embarked on the journey back with the tens of thousands of wood spirits he captured. Such a number of Kodama is enough for Xiao Yu to build more than a hundred village, level spaceships like the Hope. And even one, county, level spacecraft is enough. In Xiao Yu's classification, spacecraft of about 3,000 tons, such as Hope, are village, level. Spacecraft of more than 10,000 tons are township, level. And spacecraft of more than 100,000 tons are county, level. In Xiao Yu's design drawings, the county, class spacecraft is already at least 500 meters in length, which is larger than the large aircraft carriers on the Earth. Xiao Yu's plan is to start his trip to Tianyuan 4 after building at least three, county, level spacecraft and the supporting township level and village level spacecraft this goal is no longer far away the long march of thousands of miles with Xiao Yu's persistence for several years was at least half completed full of harvest fruits Xiao Yu returned to Titan in the nearly three months since Xiao Yu left Titan has been quiet as usual without any accidents even the expected invasion of black insects and the loss of one or two bases have not occurred this is the most likely scenario. Happened. Xiao Yu couldn't help but secretly sigh at his good luck. Xiao Yu, who couldn't wait to return to the computer at the main base and once again experience the pleasure of powerful computing power, immediately began to restore productivity on Titan after detecting and processing the backlog of data during this period. Xiao Yu has a grand goal. Now, with enough with spirits and black insect corpses, as well as various endless resources, and all his titanium and zirconium inventories, Xiao Yu plans to build a township class spacecraft. This, Xiang, class spacecraft will reach a level of 30,000 tons. It will still be butterfly shaped, but its diameter will reach 100 meters. Xiao Yu named the first, Xiang, class spacecraft that has not yet been completed. Dawn! If the hope only allowed Xiao Yu to see the hope of Yuan Yuanzi, then the Shuguang, which allowed Xiao Yu to see the dawn of realizing his dream of a great voyage. Chapter 25 Mining Xiao Yu began intensive pre-construction preparations. First of all, Xiao Yu spent two months building a brand new titanium and zirconium processing and smelting base next to a methane lake that was confirmed to be free of black insects in order to prepare for the large amount of raw or that might arrive after the earth mining trip. Then, 
Shall you build thousands of small nuclear fusion engines with certain intelligence? And loaded them all into the Hope. After all preparations were made, the Hope took off smoothly. And after rushing to the original Earth orbit, the construction of the Shubwang began. Various bases, collection, smelting and other equipment have been built. Now there is no need to expand the scale again. It only needs to maintain the current production rate. Therefore, shall you in addition to dividing a fixed part of the calculation rate to maintain the operation of all bases in addition. All remaining energy at this stage is devoted to the construction of Dawn. Within the main base, hundreds of planes take off and land every day, delivering supplies here in an endless stream. Immediately after the plane lands, robots will sort the raw materials they brought and send them to different processing workshops. After purification or retempering, they will be manufactured into individual parts, and then robots will transport them to in the final assembly workshop. Large components are assembled and then transported to a large factory for assembly. Countless robots are like hardworking worker ants, and the huge dawn is like an ant nest. Under the busyness of these hardworking workers, the dawn gradually showed its signs. By this time, hope had already reached its original Earth orbit after a long two-month journey. After these years of development, an asteroid belt around the sun has been formed in the original Earth orbit, with a total circumference of more than 1 billion kilometers, a width of about 10,000 kilometers, and a thickness of only about 10 kilometers. Shall you knew that this was formed under the influence of the sun's gravity. The current Earth is the ring of the sun, just like the rings of Saturn and the rings of Jupiter. In the future, these things can no longer be called the Earth, but should be called solar rings. After observing the movement of the Earth through the Hope, Shao Yu secretly sighed. He knew that under the gravitational disturbance of the outer planets, such as Jupiter, Mars, and the inner Venus, no new planets could be formed here in the Earth's orbit. Earth is a thing of the past. This place is 1.3 billion kilometers away from Shao Yu. There is a delay of about 80 minutes in communication between here and Titan. Therefore, Shao Yu handed over most of the operating authority of the Hope to the pre-programmed programs and he only monitored the situation of the Hope at any time. An endless stream of data is transmitted to a high-power communication satellite pre-placed at the Lagrange point of Jupiter. This satellite in turn transmits the signal to a satellite placed at the Lagrange point of Saturn, which in turn transmits the signal to satellites orbiting Saturn. They then transmit the signal to satellites orbiting Titan. After such twists and turns, the signal can be transmitted to Xiaoyu's mind. If Xiaoyu wants to send instructions, he must also follow this process. But the order is exactly the opposite. Through these data, Shao Yu can know the movements of the Hope. Hope has been surveying beneath this ring in its original Earth orbit. It is equipped with extremely sensitive titanium and zirconium detection instruments. As long as meteorites rich in titanium and zirconium are found and their sizes are within an acceptable range, Hope will take action on them. Huh? The Hope has discovered a meteorite that meets the conditions? Shao Yu was overjoyed and immediately waited for the next signal to be transmitted. This meteorite has a shape close to a cube, with a length, width and height of about 10 meters, and a volume of about 1,000 cubic meters. It is mainly composed of 30% rock and 69% ilmenite, and the rest is the mass of some impurities is as high as about 5,000 tons, which is heavier than the entire hope. According to estimates, Shao Yu can smelt nearly a thousand tons of titanium from just this meteorite. It's already worth starting, Shao Yu thought to himself. According to the preset program, the next step is for the Hope to drag it below the solar ring to obtain a quiet processing environment. When Xiao Yu received this signal, the signal had been running in space for more than an hour. In other words, this had happened more than an hour ago. Faintly, Xiao Yu felt a little nervous. Practice is the best way to test the accuracy of a program. Although Xiao Yu had already tested the program hundreds of thousands of times before the launch of Hope, testing is just a test after all. Whether the program runs correctly depends on how it performs in practice. Continuous signals continue to come. Xiao Yu saw that the Hope first cautiously approached the meteorite. It was not until the distance was shortened to 30 meters that he launched a mechanical claw. After firmly fixing it, the engine had started and dragged the meteorite away from the solar ring. Everything was as Xiao Yu expected. Seeing that his preset program had withstood the test of practice, Xiao Yu breathed a sigh of relief and continued to pay attention to the next move of the Hope. The Hope slowly brought the meteorite closer and scanned it with a three-dimensional scanner. After calculating the center of gravity, density and other information, it found the best place to install the engine. That's right. The role that the thousands of small nuclear fusion engines 
that Xiao Yu built before will play is this. Xiao Yu's plan is to find a meteorite that meets the conditions. Install an engine on it. And let it fly to Titan on its own under the power provided by the nuclear fusion engine. After all, due to the tonnage limitation of the Hope, the transportation capacity is really limited. If the Hope alone transports it back and forth, I am afraid that Xiao Yu will not be able to obtain enough materials in a hundred years. The power that a small nuclear fusion engine can provide is extremely limited. And correspondingly, the acceleration it can provide for a meteorite is also limited. This means that it takes about a year for a meteorite to fly to reach Titan. This also benefits from the acceleration caused by the gravitational acceleration of Saturn, Jupiter, and other stars during the flight. But even so, using this method is much more cost-effective than having the Nozomi transported one trip at a time. After all, at the speed of the hope, a round trip would take four months. And even if the towed transportation method was used, a maximum of 100,000 tons of meteorites could be transported in one trip. And no more. This kind of efficiency is really low. After bringing the meteorite close enough, the Hope opened the hatch. Several robots installed a small nuclear fusion engine on the meteorite. After fixing it, they returned to the Hope, start looking for the next valuable meteorite. As for this meteorite, about 30 minutes after the Hope left, the small nuclear fusion engine installed on the side facing the sun suddenly ejected a stream of light blue flames, pushing the meteorite to accelerate forward. During the year-long flight, high-power communication satellites scattered in space will serve as navigation tasks to ensure that it can reach Titan safely and accurately. Seeing that everything was going smoothly, Xiao Yu breathed a sigh of relief and was full of confidence in this mining plan. Three days later, Hope found another meteorite that met the conditions. The mass of this meteorite is much greater than that of the previous meteorite. Its volume is approximately more than 30,000 cubic meters and its mass reaches an astonishing hundreds of thousands of tons. But its ilmenite content also reaches an astonishing 80%. According to calculations, Xiaoyu can obtain more than 30,000 tons of titanium or from this meteorite. In Xiaoyu's setting, the Hope does not have the decision-making power to decide whether to collect such a large meteorite. After it sent the information to Xiaoyu, it began to track the meteorite. Waiting for Xiaoyu's reply, Xiaoyu thought for a while and decided to collect it. After all, more than 30,000 tons of titanium, or is not a small amount. It's just that the transportation plan needs to be revised. Xiaoyu quickly made an improved transportation plan and sent it to the Hope. After the Hope received the signal, it followed the program guidelines and first towed it away from the ecliptic plane, then installed 15 nuclear fusion engines on it before leaving and continuing to explore the next meteorite. It took half a year for the Hope to collect nearly 300 meteorites of different sizes and masses. The largest weighed 300,000 tons, and the smallest weighed 2,000 tons. Xiao Yu has estimated that these nearly 300 meteorites can provide him with about 3 million tons of titanium ore, and about 1 million tons of zirconium ore, enough to support him in completing the first phase of interstellar fleet construction. After completing all this, installing the 300 meteorites on the fusion engines one by one, and sending them on their way, Xiao Yu gave the order for the hope to return. The speed of hope is several times faster than that of meteorites. But even so, it is expected that it will take another two months for Hope to return to Titan. Then, after another four months or so, the first meteorite will arrive, will reach the orbit of Saturn. At that time, Hope will be needed to respond. After all, there are too many variables in one year, and it is difficult to ensure that the meteorites can accurately hit their targets. Moreover, when entering the atmosphere, Xiaoyu did not want to lose mass due to friction with the atmosphere. That would be too much of a loss. However, Xiaoyu has made a complete response plan to ensure that these meteorites reach the processing plant he prepared for them safely with minimal losses. Half a year has passed, and the construction of Dawn has come to an end. All post-processing is currently underway. Soon, Dawn will be able to leave Titan and fly freely in space. Everything is moving forward according to Xiaoyu's plan. Chapter 26 Mutated with Spirit During the construction of Dawn, Xiaoyu adopted some of the latest technologies such as more reasonable circuit design, more efficient engine design, etc. According to estimates, the technological content of Dawn is at least 10 years more advanced than that of Hope. In particular, the Dawn is equipped with a large number of weapon systems. The number of high-power laser cannons has increased to 30, and the reserve of strategic hydrogen bombs has increased to 10. In addition, the Dawn is also equipped with a large number of conventional weapon systems. For example, 
up to 100 conventional ammunition missiles, such as high-rate machine guns, etc. Not only that, Xiaoyu is also intensively developing the next generation of new weapons. But Xiaoyu also knew that hope was slim. The hydrogen bomb already represents the most lethal weapon within the framework of the two cornerstones of physics, relativity and quantum mechanics. Without breakthroughs in basic physical theory, it would be impossible for humans to develop weapons more powerful than hydrogen bombs. What Xiaoyu is doing now is just making some preliminary physical theory reserves. The discovery of black insect creatures and with spirit creatures in the solar system made Xiao Yu wary of alien civilizations he might encounter. Xiao Yu is not a peacemaker. If he encounters an alien intelligent civilization, Xiao Yu would rather destroy it directly than risk contact with the other party. Time passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye, the Hope had completed half of its return journey and reached the orbit of Jupiter. Xiao Yu's thoughts couldn't help but come alive again. It's better to let the Hope go to Jupiter again and capture some with spirits. Anyway, I'm not on the Hope, and the Hope is very safe. Xiaoyu wrote a program and sent it to the Hope. The Hope immediately changed its course and flew towards Jupiter. In order to prevent unexpected situations, Xiaoyu also added a piece of code about risk assessment to the program. This code includes an index assessment of various possible dangers. It has the highest authority over the manipulation of the Hope. If the risk index at the evaluation exceeds 90 points, the Hope will desperately escape from Jupiter. The Hope slowly approached Jupiter under the control of the program. It first scanned all the Kodama within a range of 150,000 kilometers around itself. After finding that their number was within its acceptable range, it first selected a relatively weak with spirit gathering point flew over. This Kodama gathering point was 400,000 kilometers away from Jupiter. The Hope quietly approached them. Then, the Hope stretched out a mechanical arm from the hull. The top of this mechanical arm had a special plate made of highly radiation-resistant material. It formed a large net. Just like catching bugs, the mechanical arm swung by and caught all the wood spirits in this wood spirit gathering point. Those wood spirits were still ignorant, neither resisting nor avoiding. Xiaoyu, who had been paying attention to the situation of the hope, was immediately overjoyed. Because this means that his speculation is correct. And in the future, he will have an endless supply of wood spirits to build his spaceship. The hope began its journey of free flight. Creatures like the wood spirit did not occupy space anyway. As long as the total radiation amount was within the allowable range of the confinement device, the Hope did not have to worry about being damaged by the Wood Spirit. In an orbit of 200,000 kilometers from Jupiter, a meteorite block about half a meter in diameter is rotating carelessly around Jupiter. On it, there were about 30 initial strength Wood Spirits gathered. From behind, the Hope quietly accelerated and slowly approached it. After the speeds of the two were synchronized, the mechanical arm on the Hope swung past and took the meteorite and the 30 with spirits on it. Caught one piece. The meteorite block was then discarded, and the wood spirit on it was imprisoned in a metal box. This similar situation lasted for more than half a month, and Xiaoyu captured nearly 10,000 wood spirits. Looking at the fruitful fruits of his labor, Xiaoyu thought with satisfaction, Catch another thousand! Catch another thousand and then return. Ahead, a wood spirit gathering point appeared. According to the intensity calculation, there were probably more than 1,300 wood spirits gathered there. The Hope stopped there and began to send signals, asking Xiaoyu for instructions. Xiaoyu thought for a while and decided to take action. Against the background of the huge Jupiter, the tiny Hope began to slowly approach a point where nothing could be seen. Although it was just a void when viewed with the naked eye or optical instruments, the radiometer clearly told Xiaoyu that there were more than a thousand wood spirits gathered there. Only 3,000 kilometers away from this wood spirit gathering point, a sudden change occurred. This group of wood spirits began to show a strong blue shift. It was at this time that the Hope detected that this wood spirit gathering point was home to 1,200 wood spirits. It was clearly an extremely powerful radiation source with a gathering of 300 wood spirits and a group of powerful wood spirits whose radiation volume alone is 3 to 10 times the size of ordinary wood spirits. I'll go. Xiaoyu screamed but there was nothing he could do. Because when he received this signal, more than half an hour had passed since the incident happened. In other words, everything that was supposed to happen happened. As for what happened specifically, Xiaoyu could only make a judgment based on the signal he received next. Xiaoyu's mind was stretched to the extreme, and he watched the movement of the Hope closely. The Hope is the first true interstellar spacecraft built by Xiaoyu. It has special meaning to him, and there is no room for surprise. 
while watching the movements of the hope. Xiao Yu also began to think nervously. What is going on? Why does this powerful wood spirit show different behavioral characteristics from other wood spirits? It actually knows how to actively attack the truth? For the time being, he couldn't understand the truth. So Xiao Yu simply put it behind him. There's just one thing that Xiao Yu understands very clearly. That is, if I want to capture the wood spirit again in the future, I'm afraid it won't be that easy. Information from the hope was continuously transmitted into Xiao Yu's brain. Xiao Yu saw that the moment the group of wood spirits showed a strong blue shift, the danger assessment code immediately started running, and the danger index rose linearly, from 10 to 20, then to 50, and it was still going on. Rise. However, what Xiao Yu has said is that when the danger index rises to 70 points, the hope will stop and observe. When the danger index reaches 80 points, the hope will launch an attack. When the danger index reaches 90 points, the hope will desperate escape. Now. The risk index is only 50 points. So the hope is still trying to slowly approach the group of wood spirits. The strength of this group of wood spirits is equivalent to 1,200 times the initial strength of the wood spirits. Even if the hope has the special bonuses of black insect corpses and wood spirit radiation, it can't withstand so much wood spirit radiation. If this group of wood spirits approaches, the hope will be immediately damaged and most of its instruments will be destroyed. And Xiao Yi will completely lose the hope. The approaching speed of the two reached 100 kilometers per second. In other words, in just 30 seconds, the two will collide head on. At this moment, Xiao Yu regretted and wanted to grab a handful of his hair. Xiao Yu regretted very much that he had not perfected the risk assessment procedure. The risk index was slowly rising, and finally it reached 70 points. Under the operation of the program, the hope stopped, as if wondering what was happening ahead. Mom, you idiot, run away. Xiao Yu shouted silently. This is the difference between programs and human brains. The program will always only execute according to the preset code, without any flexibility. If Xiao Yu was in this situation, he would have run as far as he could. But what is a premonition for a program? Is it one or zero? The group of wood spirits was only 2,000 kilometers away from the hope. At this moment, the danger index climbed to 80. The five high-power laser cannons facing the wood spirit started firing. The power of these laser cannons is more than 10 times more powerful than the laser guns of the old spaceship at the beginning. However, those wood spirits are all mutated, and their strength is generally much stronger than ordinary wood spirits. A laser cannon needs to fire continuously. It takes half a minute to eliminate one. What's more, among this group of wood spirits, there is also a super powerful wood spirit with a radiation intensity equivalent to 300 ordinary wood spirits. Xiao Yue closed his eyes and didn't dare to look any further. It only takes them 20 seconds to cover the distance of 1,500 kilometers. The risk index is constantly rising. 81. 82. 85. 89. Finally, 10 seconds before the encounter, the danger assessment index climbed to 90. The preset escape procedure came into effect immediately, and the hope ignored it and turned around and ran away. At this moment, the Hope's powerful overload resistance and maneuverability were fully revealed. Almost instantly, it climbed from a relatively stationary state to a speed of 2 kilometers per second. And it is still rising. While escaping, the five laser cannons continued to fire, trying their best to block the pursuit speed of the Wood Spirit. Xiao Yu's mind was tense. As for whether the Hope could escape, he really wasn't sure at all. Time passed by second by second. The Wood Spirit chased the Hope at a fixed speed, while the Hope continued to accelerate after chasing and escaping. 30 seconds later, the leading Kodama caught up with the Hope and stuck tightly to the SH. L of the Hope. Fortunately, fortunately, it's just a wood spirit with seven times the normal strength. I can still handle it. Xiao Yu muttered silently and continued to watch the Hope closely. Another Kodama caught up with the Hope. At the same time, the speed of the Hope continued to increase. 40 seconds passed, and the speed of the Hope climbed to 80 kilometers per second. At this moment, Xiao Yu was sweating profusely. The speed of 80 kilometers per second is enough to escape the pursuit of the wood spirit. Looking at the dozen wood spirits tightly attached to the SH. L of the Hope. Xiao Yu smiled bitterly in his heart. Chapter 27 Special Materials Research Base. Accelerating at full speed. The Hope's speed climbed to 400 kilometers per second. Consuming one-fifth of its conventional fuel reserves. But he finally escaped. And Xiao Yu was very happy. The program on the Hope started running and automatically captured the Kodama attached to the SH. L of the Hope. 
At the same time, Xiao Yu had a little curiosity in his heart. Why do these wood spirits attack me? Why are these wood spirits so much stronger than ordinary wood spirits? Several questions were wandering in Xiao Yu's mind. Suddenly, a strange phenomenon caught Xiao Yu's attention. Xiao Yu divided the wood spirits captured during this period into more than 20 parts. And each part was stored in a special high radiation resistance box. The strange phenomenon occurred when the mutated wood spirit was captured in the box behind the prison. In this box, in addition to the dozen mutated wood spirits, there are also about hundreds of ordinary wood spirits that were caught before. Through the observation instrument, Xiao Yu clearly saw that the mutated wood spirits showed unusual aggression. They bit the ordinary wood spirits fiercely and swallowed them in one bite. At the same time, they the radiation intensity itself has also increased. This is... This is... Xiao Yu was surprised and uncertain. Soon, these dozen mutated wood spirits devoured hundreds of ordinary wood spirits. Then, these dozen mutated wood spirits began to fight and devour each other again. It took a full hour for them to finish their battle. And at this time, there was only one wood spirit left in the box. Its strength is a full 250 times that of ordinary wood spirits. Xiao Yu's heart moved, and he commanded the hope to open a small opening in the box where it was imprisoned. Immediately, as if it had received some order, the wood spirit suddenly rushed towards the gap as fast as lightning. Fortunately, the program moved faster and blocked the gap the moment before it escaped. In addition to instinct, it also has rudimentary wisdom. Xiao Yu was shocked. No wonder I was attacked. The most powerful wood spirit must have similar rudimentary wisdom. So it took the initiative attack me. Devour. Evolve. That's it. But I think only some special wood spirits have such abilities. Although the group of wood spirits I captured initially merged into one. They didn't show any intelligence. Xiao Yu thought silently. This will cause trouble. Jupiter is so big. Who knows how many wood spirits have evolved wisdom. It will not be so easy to catch them in the future. But fortunately, the hope escaped this time. We will figure out what to do next. Xiao Yu shook his head and ended his thinking in this regard. More than half a month later, the hope successfully returned to Titan and then took on the busy tasks of collecting nuclear fusion fuel, transporting supplies between interstellar areas, repairing damaged satellites, etc. It was extremely busy, and it took half a year for the hope to return to Titan. Got some free time. On Titan, everything develops in an orderly manner. Under the existing 93 bases, Xiao Yu built another high-energy physics research institute and began to conduct research on physical theory. The importance of physical theory is beyond doubt. The development of human society to the present depends entirely on the two major theories established almost a hundred years ago. The theory of relativity and quantum theory. Even all of Xiao Yu's current achievements are based on these two theories. If new theoretical physics research is not conducted, Xiao Yu will soon not know how to develop the future. Regarding the next step of theoretical research, Xiao Yu focuses on the space direction. Quantum theory describes microscopic particles, and relativity describes the macroscopic world and combines matter and energy. Under the current physical foundation, the next development direction of physics is likely to be space. However, Theoretical research is a delicate job, and Xiao Yu has no intention of producing results in a short time. In addition to the Institute of High Energy Physics, Xiao Yu also built another base, which is responsible for researching various special materials. Although the research on black insect corpses and with spirits started early, Xiao Yu never launched large scale research in the early stage due to computing power. Now, as the construction of Shuguang comes to an end, Xiao Yu finally has enough energy to study this. The other 93 bases have been operating well, and a large amount of materials are produced at all times for Xiao Yu's construction. The construction of the Township class spacecraft and the Shuguang has come to an end, and Xiao Yu has begun to try to construct the construction drawings of the larger County class spacecraft. However, all of Xiao Yu's titanium and zirconium reserves are almost used up. Before the arrival of the Earth meteorite, Xiao Yu is temporarily unable to build new spacecraft. After a long wait, Xu Wang finally ushered in its test flight day. The dawn is several times larger than the hope. Correspondingly, it is much heavier than the hope. However, Xu Wang uses the Fusion Type 2 engine newly developed by Xiao Yu, which can provide it with more powerful power. As the order to take off was given, the Xu Wang's tail sprayed out several streams of light blue flames, and a large cloud of smoke rose on the ground. In the dense smoke, the Xu Wang which was full of science fiction, 
took off. Dawn's takeoff speed was not fast. At least much slower than that of Hope. It took it more than 10 minutes to fly outside Titan's atmosphere. Xiao Yu immediately conducted various performance tests on it. Following Xiao Yu's instructions, the Shu Wang began various difficult actions in space. For example, flying rapidly for a period of time and suddenly stopping, or telling to rotate, or firing laser cannons during flight, etc. After struggling for several hours, Xiao Yu got all the information he wanted. Everything is as expected. Not bad. The maximum acceleration has reached 1.5 kilometers per second. The maximum overload resistance has reached 170 times the Earth's gravity. And the maximum speed with a conventional amount of fuel has reached 1,500 kilometers per second. Very good, very good. Looking at these experimental data, Xiao Yu nodded with satisfaction. Although the Donning's maneuverability is not as good as that of the Hope. Its endurance, firepower, resistance, maximum speed with conventional fuel, etc. All exceed that of the Hope by a lot. There is nothing that can be done about the loss of mobility. Everyone knows that the bigger something is, the less flexible it must be. In Xiao Yu's plan, if an interstellar war breaks out, a spaceship like the Dawn should be the flagship of the team. It is responsible for tasks such as fire suppression and covering one's own attacks. For close combat, it should be left to a ship like the Hope, Village, class spacecraft, or smaller spacecraft can be used. Xiao Yu controlled the Shiguang and flew proudly in the Saturn system, ready to beat anyone who disobeyed. A meteorite about 20 meters in diameter appeared in front. Xiao Yu's hard move. Just use it to test the weapon power and SH. L strength of the Dawn. Xiao Yu gave the order to attack. Immediately, the instruments inside the Shuguang began to scan the meteorite. In almost ten thousandths of a second, the speed, position, orbit, center of gravity, and density of the meteorite were obtained. After waiting for various data, the locking instrument immediately locked it. The door at the bottom of the spacecraft was opened, and the launcher was extended. On it was a space missile, and its warhead was a high-yield strategic-level hydrogen bomb. This meteorite was flying carefree around Saturn 30,000 kilometers away from dawn. It never imagined that it would be annihilated just because of someone's wrong thoughts. Launch! Xiao Yu gave the launch order. Immediately, the mechanical arm on the launcher was released, and a stream of fire spewed out from the tail of the space missile, roaring and rushing forward. The shape of this missile is not the cylinder shape commonly used on the Earth, but a sphere, because on the Earth, the shape of a cylinder with a cone on top can minimize air resistance and speed up oneself. But Xiao Yu is different. With Xiao Yu's current level of technology, the most important thing that needs to be overcome is not air resistance, but the tearing effect of strong acceleration on the missile body. The spherical shape can evenly distribute the tearing force to the entire missile body to prevent the missile body from being torn apart by strong acceleration. This is Xiao Yu's valuable experience gained through tens of thousands of experiments. Almost instantly. The speed of this spherical missile, under the action of the powerful jet stream at its tail, accelerated to a speed of almost 2,000 kilometers per second. It only took 15 seconds to reach this missile, around meteorites. Moments before impact, the hydrogen bomb was detonated, under the action of endless flash and high temperature. This meteorite with a mass of approximately several thousand tons was instantly vaporized and disappeared. Tenth of a second later, powerful radiation and heat flow arrived at dawn. But the Dawn remained motionless. Those powerful radiation and heat did not have any impact on Dawn's high strength SH. L. The power is pretty good. Xiao Yu was filled with joy. Next, Xiao Yu tested the power of laser cannons and high speed machine guns, respectively. On this day, the meteorites around Dawn were extremely unlucky. Often a meteorite is carefree and moving on its own trajectory without provoking anyone. But the next moment, a powerful laser from nowhere vaporizes it or a large meteorite comes, pile high-velocity machine gun bullets, and smash them into pieces. Due to the size limit of the dawn, the laser cannon is the most powerful. However, after the larger county-level spacecraft is built, the power of the laser cannon can be further improved. With so many weapons, I don't care. I'm not afraid anymore if I encounter any blind aliens. Shall you thought happily? Chapter 28 Flying Stones from the Sky Xiao Yu is not worried that the alien technology he encounters will exceed his own. Although theoretical deductions indicate that aliens, especially intelligent aliens, should exist in large numbers, the Fermi paradox shows that there are far fewer intelligent alien civilizations than expected. 
there should be fewer people who are beyond their own technological level. Xiaoyu didn't think he would be unlucky to that extent. There is another reason why Xiaoyu is not worried. The hydrogen bomb is the most accomplished weapon based on the two cornerstones of relativity and quantum theory. In other words, as long as the alien civilization encountered has not broken through the shackles of these two theories, it will not be able to possess weapons more powerful than hydrogen bombs. In this case, why should Xiaoyu be afraid? The development of civilizations has similarities. For example, on the ancient earth, several civilizations that did not communicate with each other all chose gold as their equivalent. This is a concrete manifestation of the similarity of civilizations. Xiaoyu is convinced that the development of science and technology should proceed from easy to difficult. And it is impossible for a civilization in the universe to study science from difficult to easy. If there are extraterrestrial intelligent civilizations, then it is very likely that they will go through the stages of cold weapons, hot weapons, and nuclear power. As long as they have not broken through nuclear power and entered the next stage, Xiaoyu has nothing to fear. You must know that Xiaoyu's power is basically a special case. Xiaoyu's fleet has no social structure, which means there are no internal conflicts, no loss of power due to internal wrangling, conflicts, etc. In other words, Xiaoyu's power is united and can be exerted 100%. Moreover, thanks to Xiaoyu's powerful computing power, Xiaoyu's power can even be exerted to a super level, as long as the opponent's technological level is not different from his own. Then with the same technology, Xiaoyu can definitely sweep everything. This is the huge advantage of combining the wisdom of the human brain and the computing power of computers. After the successful test flight, Don replaced Hope and took on the task of collecting nuclear fusion fuel in Saturn. After all, the size difference determines Don's higher work efficiency. Hope returned to Titan and took on various daily maintenance tasks for the satellite. Everything is developing in an orderly manner. Half a year later, the first proto-Earth meteorite arrived in the orbit of Saturn. Hope is already a million kilometers outside of Saturn's orbit, ready to receive it. In the quiet space, with a huge Saturn as the background, facing the direction of the sun, a small black dot, trailing a long tail flame behind it, quickly hit Saturn. After the meteorite passed over the Hope, Xiaoyu also began to control the Hope, accelerating in the direction of Saturn. Gradually, gradually, as the speed of the Hope increased, the Hope and the meteorite remained relatively stationary below the position. The two flew towards Saturn together at a speed of more than 30 kilometers per second. Xiaoyu slowly approached the meteorite, fixed it first, and then controlled the robot to install six small nuclear fusion engines at its best placement point, and installed a huge parachute on the other side. After making all preparations, Xiaoyu maneuvered the hope away from it. After calculating the optimal orbit, the nuclear fusion engine started to drive the meteorite away from its original offset orbit and towards the correct orbit when it was still 100,000 kilometers away from Titan's atmosphere, together with the original engine. A total of seven engines worked together to push it in the opposite direction and began to slow down. Its speed relative to Titan began to slowly decrease from 25 kilometers per second to 15 kilometers per second and then to 5 kilometers per second. And it was still slowly and continuously declining, reaching the same speed as Titan. When the six atmospheres came into contact, its speed had dropped to less than 1 km per second. The process of slowing down is necessary. If you don't slow down, the meteorite will hit Titan at a very high speed. This first small meteorite is okay. But if it is the largest one, it has a mass of 300,000 tons. If the meteorite hits Titan head-on, it is estimated to have an impact on Titan's crust. It is not uncommon for the large earthquakes caused to destroy several of Xiaoyu's bases. When it was only 10 km away from the atmosphere, the meteorite speed had been reduced to 300 meters per second under the recoil of seven nuclear fusion power engines. Then, it crashed into the atmosphere. Titan's thick atmosphere caused violent friction with it, causing its surface to turn red. However, under such huge friction, its speed was further reduced. The parachute also opened. This is a high-strength large parachute specially made by Xiaoyu for these meteorites. The entire parachute is estimated to be several hundred square meters in size when opened. This parachute, together with the nuclear fusion engine and air friction, will provide enough cushioning force for the meteorite to ensure that it lands smoothly. Its height is constantly decreasing. Around the expected landing area, 10 function helicopters were closely monitoring the area, under the combined action of three different forces. The final landing speed of the meteorite was 16 meters per second. This speed, 
equivalent to a snail's crawling, smashed a large crater into the ground of Titan that was 20 meters deep and 60 meters in radius. The shockwave cause was even observed by Xiaoyu, who was a thousand kilometers away from the impact point. Fortunately, everything is within acceptable limits. Ten Feng Shen helicopters flew over together and lowered the thick steel cable. A robot fixed the steel cable on the meteorite. The ten Feng Shen helicopters worked together to pull it up and flew towards the titanium and zirconium processing base. Go! The whole process was a hit or miss. Three days later, the second meteorite arrived. This is a large meteorite with a mass of 200,000 tons. Shall you control the hope and installed more than 50 small nuclear fusion engines on it before it landed safely? But also a large crater with a diameter of several hundred meters was left on the ground. In this way, every few days, a meteorite falls from the sky. These meteorites bring enough titanium and zirconium to Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu now has sufficient raw materials. There are sufficient black insect corpses, sufficient wood spirits, sufficient technological reserves, and sufficient construction resources. With the support of huge resources, Xiaoyu has a new plan. It's time to start fleet construction. Xiaoyu thought silently. In Xiaoyu's plan, the interstellar fleet of Yuan 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 4 includes at least three county class spacecraft at least 30 township class spacecraft and thousands of village class spacecraft. After all, the journey is long. From the solar system to the Tianyuan star system, it is about 10.5 light years away, based on Xiaoyu's estimated maximum speed of 500 kilometers per second. It would take more than 6,000 years. The long period of more than 6,000 years is basically equal to the development time of the entire human society, or even longer. In such a long period of time, the loss of the spacecraft itself, damage to parts, etc., all need to be taken into consideration. It is simply not possible to have a small fleet. Even in Xiaoyu's plan, at least half of the more than a thousand spaceships are material spacecraft. That is to say, it does nothing else. After maintaining its own navigation ability, it is specially used to reserve supplies. Even so, in Xiaoyu's estimation, it would be an eye-opener for God to see half of the entire fleet remaining after arriving at the destination. Therefore, the choice of sailing purpose is very important. Because you only have one chance to make a choice. And if you make the wrong choice, you will find it empty and empty when you arrive at your destination. Which will be a great pleasure. In that situation, Xiao Yu had no choice but to wait for death. In the Tianyuan four-star system, it can be determined that there is at least one Jupiter-like planet where Xiaoyu can be replenished with sufficient nuclear fusion fuel. It is speculated that there is an Earth-like planet, where Xiaoyu can be replenished with building materials, used to build new ships. It doesn't matter even if the speculated Earth-like planets don't exist, because Xiaoyu knows that the Tianyuan four-star system also has a large number of asteroid rings, where raw materials can also be supplemented. The greatest obstacles to interstellar travel are the vast distances, and the time it takes to travel across them. Now Xiaoyu, with nuclear fusion power, is still like this. If Xiaoyu is still powered by chemical fuel, he would not even think about interstellar navigation. Calling it a daydream is a bit exaggerated. Calling him crazy and having a bad mind. It's almost the same if it falls off. The universe is really too big. The relationship between Tian Yuan Si and the sun is equivalent to the neighbor relationship between the front yard and the backyard. However, with human power, it takes such a long time to get from one point to that point. Therefore, in humankind's past interstellar navigation concepts. Extremely huge spaceships were used as carriers. There must be at least thousands of people on the spacecraft. Because in this way, sufficient reproduction can be guaranteed. And it depends on one generation. Generations of humans have taken turns to realize their dream of interstellar navigation. Of course, Xiaoyu has no worries in this regard. As long as there is enough fuel to ensure that the central computer is turned on. Time is a simple number to Xiaoyu. 1,000 years and 10,000 years are just different numbers. It has been almost 10 years since Xiaoyu left the Earth. In these 10 years, many things have happened. From the escape from Jupiter, to the landing on Titan, to the completion of the first base. All kinds of things, bit by bit, flowed through Xiaoyu's heart one by one. People always have to look forward. Although our hometown is good, although it is safe and comfortable, how can we achieve great achievements if we don't venture outside? Let's start the fleet construction plan. Xiaoyu sighed and started his plan. Chapter 29 Space Elevator In Xiaoyu's plan, the county, 
class spacecraft has a minimum weight of 100,000 tons and a length of at least 500 meters. Shall you weight his raw material reserves? And after comprehensive calculations, he planned to build a 300,000 ton county class spaceship as his flagship. The remaining two ships might as well be slightly smaller and built at 200,000 tons. The level is good. Such a large spacecraft can no longer be built from the ground. It is simply because it is too large and has too much mass. After it is built, which shall use current level of technology, it will not be able to take off from the ground. If it had to take off from the ground, the hull of the spacecraft might be seriously damaged. If only the hull is damaged, it is still good. If it is replaced by a million ton city class spacecraft or a 10 million ton provincial class spacecraft, after it is completed, it will not be able to be in the vicinity of a massive star within the Roche limit. Otherwise, it will be completely torn apart by the gravity of the star. Although Shao Yu's spacecraft is made of the strongest and toughest materials, it is hollow, except for the outer SH. L. Most of the interior is space. Overall, the density of the spacecraft is not even comparable to water. The so-called Roche limit refers to the limit distance at which a rigid body or fluid can fly around a massive star without being torn apart by its gravity. Taking the Earth as an example, with Shao Yu's current level of technology, if a 10 million ton, provincial, spacecraft is within 20,000 kilometers from the Earth, the gravity of the Earth will be unbalanced throughout the hull of the spacecraft. It will be torn into pieces by the Earth's gravity. The reason why artificial satellites launched by humans in the past were not torn into pieces was because they were too small and the materials were tough. In science fiction movies, huge alien spaceships take off and land vertically from the Earth, coming and going freely. It is certain that they are civilizations that have mastered anti-gravity technology. Otherwise, with such a huge hull, they would not be able to do it at all. To this point, with Xiao Yu's current technology, he is still a little short of mastering anti-gravity technology. Although there is no way to build a county class spacecraft from the ground, Xiao Yu found a solution early on, which is to build a dock in a synchronous orbit 2,000 kilometers away from Titan in order to build a county class spacecraft. But in this case, the transportation of materials becomes a big problem. Currently, there are only two spacecrafts capable of traveling in space. The Hope and Dawn. However, compared to the hundreds of thousands of tons of materials required to build a county class spacecraft, the transportation capabilities of these two spacecrafts are still weak. Quite a bit. At this time, the Material Science and Technology Research Institute established in advance came in handy. During this period of time, Xiao Yu has developed a new type of nanopolymer material, which is at least a hundred times stronger than steel. Xiao Yu named this material Rope of Life, and he planned to use this material to make a space elevator. Xiao Yu dispatched a large army of robots to dig a large pit several hundred meters deep on Titan's equator, and buried a metal block weighing at least several thousand tons in this large pit. Then he maneuvered the Hope to 2,000 kilometers above the crater, Node 1, and hovered there. Then, a milky white rope-like object stretched out from underneath the hope. This thing is the highest expression of Xiao Yu's material technology. The rope of life. A rope of life with a radius of 1 millimeter can withstand a maximum tensile force of nearly 10 tons. You can imagine how tough this material is. The radius of the rope of life extending below the hope is a full 2 centimeters. According to estimates, this rope of life can withstand a pulling force of nearly 4,000 tons. A small nuclear fusion engine is installed at one end of this rope of life. After the engine is started, it will continuously pull it down towards Titan. The rope does not end until it is pulled out for 10 kilometers. A small nuclear fusion engine is also installed at the other end of the rope of life. These two nuclear fusion engines fix the 10 kilometer long rope of life in the air and slowly rotate together with Titan's rotation. Then the hope returned, reattached a life rope, and returned to its original location. After connecting one end of the new rope of life to the original one, the rope of life continued to descend under the action of the nuclear fusion engine. After going back and forth for more than 200 times, one end of this rope of life was connected to the pre-dug hole on Titan. Shall you fix it on the big metal block and then control the robot to lift the big metal block? Very well. The other end is in space, fixed on another large metal block by the hope. In this way, a simple space elevator is completed. The principle of this space elevator is very simple. When the speed of an object exceeds the second cosmic speed of the star, it will fly away from the star and never come back. 
The space end of this space elevator has a moving speed that has exceeded Titan's second cosmic speed, but it is fixed by the rope of life. Of course, it will generate an upward pulling force, pulling the rope of life away, straighten, and because Titan has its own rotation through the rope of life, Titan will continue to accelerate the large metal block at the space end of the rope of life, so that its speed will always be maintained at the speed of escape and will never fall. The most wonderful thing is that at the space end of the rope of life, due to centrifugal force, there will be a force similar to gravity. In this way, when processing and building the hull, you don't have to suffer from weightlessness and inconvenient construction. To put it simply, the principle of the space elevator is like a person throwing a large iron chain with an iron ball on the top. The iron ball wants to fly, but it is fixed by the iron chain. It cannot fly away, but will stretch the iron chain straight. In this way, shall you can use this rope of life that will never fall off to continuously transport supplies into space. Shall you can even make a pulley to pull supplies into space from the ground. Of course, that was after all the space elevators were built. The current space elevator is just beginning to take shape. In the next few months, shall you performed a lot of processing on this space elevator, including strengthening and thickening the rope of life, thickening its diameter to one decimeter, and installing a large number of equipment, and also stationed a large number of robots at the space end of the space elevator to begin the construction of the dock. It took Xiao Yu half a year to build this space elevator. While this space elevator was being constructed, Xiao Yu started the construction of the other two space elevators. When the first space elevator was built, the other two space elevators were already in the advanced stages of construction. There are three space elevators in total, providing Xiao Yu with powerful material transportation capabilities. On the ground, countless special steels, special materials, various build components, and various types of robots were transported up one by one for consumption in the construction of the space dock. At the same time, construction on the ground base has also begun in full swing. In addition to the original base, Xiao Yu started the construction of three more bases. Several major ground bases were fully engaged in the construction of village and township level spacecraft at the same time. The three shipyards in space were fully engaged in the construction of county level spacecraft. Spaceship. All kinds of materials were used up like running water. And what they got back were three large docks. Enough to build a 300,000 ton spaceship. And hundreds of village class ships neatly placed on the ground spaceships and dozens of township-class spacecrafts, the smallest of which is as big as the Hope. While the county-level spacecraft was being constructed, Xiao Yu controlled all the hundreds of village-level spacecraft to fly to Saturn and worked hard to reserve supplies. After all, after leaving the solar system, Xiao Yu will no longer be able to get even a piece of scrap metal to replenish his energy. While all efforts are being made to build the spacecraft, the construction of a new generation of photonic computers is also on the agenda. During this period, Xiao Yu has updated research results on the architecture of photonic computers, as well as computing modes, instruction sets, etc. It is expected that after the new computer is built, Xiao Yu's computing power can be increased five times on the original basis. In this way, while controlling more than a thousand spaceships in the entire fleet, Xiao Yu is also able to start compilation of the records of the sky of heroes and conduct various scientific researches. By then, the latest photon computer will be installed on the flagship and become the brain of the entire fleet, while the old photon computer will be installed on another, county, class spacecraft to serve as various auxiliary functions. Calculation work that does not require Xiao Yu's direct intervention. By this time, Xiao Yu no longer paid attention to sustainable development. He carried out, already, attacks on all methane lakes with black worms on Titan. Depending on the size of the lake, Either nuclear strikes or conventional high-explosive attacks were used. Ammunition strikes. In short, Xiao Yu, in addition to keeping some black insects for artificial breeding, killed all the black insects he could collect, and then collected their corpses. Some were used to build spaceships, and some were stored, saved for future use. The entire Titan is in bad luck. In the past few years, fires and mushroom clouds would burst out from time to time on Titan. The entire Titan was turned upside down by Xiao Yu. This is the last madness before leaving. Since you can't come back, let's stay here and leave some traces of yourself. Xiao Yu thought so. Three years have passed in a hurry. And the construction of three, county, class spacecraft has been completed. One thousand, village, class spacecraft and seventy, township, 
class spacecraft have also been built. Xiaoyu's long-awaited interstellar voyage will soon begin. Chapter 30 Massive Arrests Xiaoyu named these three, county, level spaceships as Yuanhang, Sun, and Tianyuan respectively. Among them, the Sun has the largest tonnage and is the flagship where Xiaoyu lives. Together, these three spacecraft form the core strength of Xiaoyu's fleet. Xiaoyu equipped these three spacecraft with a large number of weapons including hydrogen bombs, atomic bombs, laser cannons, missiles, high-speed machine guns, etc. Xiaoyu's purpose was to turn these spacecraft into war fortresses. In fact, if possible, Xiaoyu even wanted to build a city-level or provincial-level spaceship. But after careful consideration, Xiaoyu gave up this idea. Because there is no need to build such a big spaceship. Due to Xiaoyu's current technological limitations, if such a large spaceship is built, its power system, protection system, maneuverability, etc. will not be able to keep up. And it will not be as practical as a county-level spacecraft. Compared with a three-county-level spacecraft, the weapons and equipment of the 70 township class spacecraft are one level lower. But they are also quite powerful. The village class spacecraft is not equipped with nuclear bombs. In Xiaoyu's plan, if an interstellar war breaks out, the village class spacecraft will mainly serve as escort and close combat with the enemy. And there is no need to equip nuclear bombs. Xiaoyu has already arrived in the sun, controlling a total of 1,073 spacecraft, leaving Titan and all coming to space. Looking at the huge space fleet behind him, Xiaoyu felt a sense of pride in his heart. These are all my own handiwork. They will carry me on a great voyage. However, there is one more thing to do before sailing away. That is, reach Jupiter and capture the Wood Spirit. Set off! Xiaoyu gave the order to move forward, and the huge fleet began to set sail toward Jupiter. In order to build this huge fleet, Xiaoyu's Wood Spirit reserves were completely exhausted. For future construction, Xiaoyu must reserve some wood spirits and take them with him to the Tianyuan four-star system. Although it was discovered that the wood spirits had undergone some mutations and had a little bit of wisdom besides instinct, Xiaoyu was not worried at all. With such a huge fleet in hand, if he encounters a wood spirit of the same strength that made Xiaoyu escape in embarrassment last time, Xiaoyu is sure to destroy it within a second. The laser cannon on a village-level spaceship, like the Hope, is not as powerful as a county-level spacecraft. As the volume and mass increase, the maneuverability of the interstellar spacecraft will inevitably decrease. A village-level spaceship can withstand an overload of 230 times, but the largest county-level spacecraft can only withstand an overload of no more than 100 times. This means that the three spacecrafts, Yuanhang, Sun, and Tianyuan, can only withstand accelerations of up to 500 meters per second. The huge fleet accelerated together finally accelerating to a speed of 400 kilometers per second, and flew towards Jupiter together. During the space voyage for more than half a month, Xiaoyu controlled the fleet to continuously arrange various formations, and gradually became proficient in all aspects of the space formation. Finally, the huge figure of Jupiter appeared in Xiaoyu's sight. Xiaoyu controlled the entire fleet, began to slow down, and slowly entered the orbit around Jupiter. The densely packed spaceships are like gods of death bringing destruction to the creatures on Jupiter. Because of Xiaoyu's personal command, the wood spirits on Jupiter were attracted by the aura of wisdom. For a time, whether they were mutated with spirits or ordinary wood spirits, they all swarmed madly toward Xiaoyu's fleet. Come over. The total number is almost 100,000. It was detected that numerous radiation sources showed strong blue shifts. And Xiaoyu was not panicked at all. The huge computing power came into play. And almost in an instant, all the approaching speed, Radiation intensity, current position, and other information of each of the 100,000 wood spirits were calculated. And each wood spirit was calculated. Lingdu has arranged a response plan. Either eliminate them directly, let them get close, and then capture them. Or use a laser gun to slow them down. Etc. The entire capture plan progressed very smoothly under Xiaoyu's planning. Among this large group of wood spirits, there are hundreds of mutated wood spirits and their lowest radiation intensity has reached a hundred times the radiation amount of ordinary wood spirits. Xiaoyu is very interested in this mutated wood spirit. 1,000 village-level spacecraft and 70 township-level spacecraft started shooting together, but they shoot at different targets. Xiaoyu's huge computing power ensures the maximum optimization of the output power. A wood spirit only needs seven laser guns to fire at the same time for three and a half seconds to destroy it. 
then Shao Yu can guarantee that the laser gun shooting time will never be its 4 seconds. Similarly, in Shao Yu's plan, a with spirit needs to approach the fleet and be captured in 30 seconds. Then under Shao Yu's control, this with spirit will definitely not be captured in 29 seconds or approach the fleet in 31 seconds. Shao Yu's control of the fleet was so precise. More than a thousand spaceships cooperated in a tacit understanding and no resources were wasted. Under the huge fleet, these with spirits were like lambs to be slaughtered. Whether they were mutant with spirits or ordinary with spirits, they had no resistance at all. They were all captured by Xiao Yu into the spacecraft and locked up in the spaceship, inside each special box. In less than three hours, Xiao Yu wiped out at least half of this huge group of with spirits, which numbered almost more than 100,000, and captured the other half. Looking at his harvest, Xiao Yu smiled happily and secretly sighed. I also had a great day. You were quite arrogant last time. Right. Chasing and biting my butt? Why are you not arrogant now? Come on! Speaking carelessly, Xiao Yu controlled a huge fleet and rushed to the next Wood Spirit gathering point. The number of the entire Wood Spirit population can be said to be endless. Jupiter, which is thousands of times the size of the Earth, is really too big. Xiao Yu didn't even dare to estimate how many Wood Spirits there were on the entire Jupiter. Tens of millions? Hundreds of millions? Billions? Who knows? The huge Jupiter is like a huge undefended orchard, full of fruit trees. And the fruit trees are full of sweet and delicious fruits. Xiao Yu is now like a collector, collecting these ripe, sweet and delicious fruits one by one, collected into one's own pocket, compared with the long journey of thousands of years that he is about to embark on. No amount of fruit reserves is too much. Xiao Yu thought to himself, cheered up even more, and began to run rampant on Jupiter. During the transfer, Xiao Yu even lost interest in taking action against the lone with spirit and directly fired a laser to destroy it. The so-called richness is just what you think it is. It wasn't until 10 minutes later that Xiao Yu found another wood spirit gathering point. This wood spirit gathering point is tens of thousands of kilometers away from the surface of Jupiter. It relies on a small meteorite with a diameter of about 20 meters and orbits Jupiter carefree. Xiao Yu sneered and rushed towards them. The wood spirits felt the smell of wisdom and under simple instinctive control. They immediately seemed to go crazy and rushed towards Xiao Yu crazily. Xiao Yu burst out laughing. Just when I asked you to come over, I caught you easily. Immediately, Xiao Yu commanded a huge fleet to send out laser beams at the same time, pulling the wood spirits away from each other one by one, and then controlled the village level spacecraft to go up and catch them one by one. During this hunt, a total of 3,000 ordinary wood spirits were caught with a radiation intensity equivalent to that of them. After Xiao Yu closed them, he continued to search. For Xiao Yu, the Wood Spirit capture plan was the last meal before the 6,300 year long famine. Xiao Yu would seize this opportunity no matter what and feast on it. Pause. During the month and a half of arrest, Xiao Yu was like a ferocious tiger, wreaking havoc among the sheep. This tiger eats an extremely huge amount of food and has no regard for sustainable development. As for the Wood Spirit, Xiao Yu eats it as much as he can and wastes it while eating, without any sense of thrift and housekeeping. If you can't eat it, just destroy it. Anyway, in the orchard of Jupiter, there are endless fruits for Xiao Yu to pick. In this month and a half, Xiao Yu captured at least millions of wood spirits, among which the number of mutated wood spirits reached thousands. Xiao Yu deliberately imprisoned each mutated wood spirit with hundreds of ordinary wood spirits, deliberately letting them devour the ordinary wood spirits. As a result, after half a month, Xiao Yu only had thousands of wood spirits left. But the radiation intensity of each wood spirit was thousands of times that of ordinary wood spirits. Xiao Yu already knew that the mutated wood spirit had the ability to evolve. Xiao Yu did this just to see to what extent the mutated wood spirit could eventually evolve and what level of wisdom it could possess. However, the result disappointed Xiao Yu. Even if the radiation intensity of these mutated wood spirits reached thousands of times that of ordinary wood spirits, their intelligence level was only equivalent to that of an ant at most and they only knew some simple information exchanges and mutual understanding. Simple collaboration between them. And the rest is unknown. It's useless. Xiao Yu shook his head and sighed, giving up on letting them evolve wisdom and accompany him to relieve his boredom. The arrest operation lasted for another month and a half. When Xiao Yu really had no place to imprison these wood spirits, Xiao Yu stopped the action. Looking at the endless wood spirits on Jupiter, Xiao Yu couldn't help but feel a little pity in his heart. Don't eat when you are full. Otherwise it will be bad if you hold yourself up. 
Xiaoyu comforted himself like this and controlled a huge fleet to leave Jupiter. Xiaoyu will arrive at Titan again, where he will rest for the last time. He will then reach Saturn, where he will refuel for the final time. Then, it's time to leave the solar system and embark on the first interstellar voyage in human history. Chapter 31 The Tomb of 7 Billion Humans This is the last time away from the sun. This time away, there will be no return. As the distance got farther and farther, the sun became dimmer and dimmer, and Xiaoyu's mood became a little heavy for no reason. The road ahead is long, and what awaits Xiaoyu will be a long journey of 10.5 light years, and a long time of 6,300 years. What kind of strange things will you encounter during your journey? What dangers will be encountered? Xiaoyu doesn't know, but Xiaoyu still decided to set off. What dominates a scientist's thinking is a crazy desire for exploration. So crazy that even his life can be sacrificed. Therefore, Xiaoyu did not choose to continue developing in the solar system, but chose to set off immediately after gaining the ability to navigate interstellar space. In fact, to be precise, Xiaoyu's current technology can only be said to have obtained the ability to navigate between planets. Because at the speed of nuclear fusion power, interstellar navigation can take thousands of years, which is enough to keep out all creatures with a lifespan of less than 10,000 years. However, after Xiaoyu combined with the computer, he abandoned his physical body and left only his spirit. His lifespan is almost endless. Relying on this almost cheating method, he gained the ability to use interplanetary navigation technology to carry out interstellar navigation. Human beings have made calculations and found that the minimum threshold for interstellar navigation is to reach 5% of the speed of light, which is a speed of 15,000 kilometers per second. In this case, it would take about 200 years to reach the Tianyuan 4 galaxy from the solar system, compared with the human lifespan at that time. This time was already within the acceptable range. However, before the development of a new generation of engines, the speed of 15,000 kilometers per second was a bit of a luxury for Xiaoyu. Returning to Titan from Jupiter again, Xiaoyu did not land. On Titan, two large-scale photonic computers have been transplanted by Xiaoyu to the Sun and Yuanhang respectively. The current base is completely controlled by the computers on the small spacecraft from the beginning. Although it seems to Xiaoyu now that this computer is too backward and the computing speed is too slow, now all 99 bases on Titan have stopped operating and all kinds of machinery have been sealed. Only some simple maintenance tasks are left to be done by this computer, which is enough. Titan's atmosphere has extremely low oxygen content and low temperature, so there is no need to worry about mechanical rust and damage. Xiaoyu hopes that these machines and equipment can exist for a long time, and they will still be intact after tens of thousands of years, because a large part of Venus' atmosphere has been stripped away, causing the surface temperature of Venus to drop. Intelligent life forms are likely to evolve on Venus in the infinite future. Therefore, Xiaoyu hopes that the things he left behind can point out the direction of evolution for intelligent creatures on Venus. And by the way, leave some evidence that humans once existed in the solar system. Looking at Titan shrouded in fog from space, Xiaoyu felt filled with emotions. Twenty years have passed like this, Xiaoyu thought silently in his heart. In the blink of an eye, twenty years have passed since I left the Earth. In the past twenty years, a lot of things have happened. The time when we were living carefree on Earth seems like just yesterday. Scenes of past events flowed through Xiaoyu's mind. Being far away from the Earth for the first time. The fear when facing the collision between Jupiter and the Moon. The surprise when eating a big meal for the first time. The difficulties on Titan. The excitement when mastering controllable nuclear fusion technology. Etc. Etc. One pile. One piece. Let's go! Let's go! Although it is safe and comfortable in the solar system. How can we achieve great achievements without experiencing wind and rain? Let's go! Let's go! The boundless universe is the ultimate goal of my exploration. Xiaoyu threw away thousands of thoughts from his mind controlled a huge fleet, and flew towards Saturn. In the Saturn system, Xiaoyu will replenish fuel for the last time. Then, Xiaoyu will leave the solar system and embark on a long voyage towards Tianyuan-4. Xiaoyu frantically replenished fuel and stayed in the atmosphere of Saturn for half a month. He did not leave Saturn until he couldn't hold it anymore. After taking one last reluctant look at Titan, Xiaoyu moved forward resolutely, heading towards the outer reaches of the solar system. At this time, Xiaoyu had already filled half of the entire fleet's spaceships, including three county-level spaceships, the Yuanhang, the Sun, and the Tianyuan. 
as well as nearly 500 village level and township level spaceships. Plant supplies. If it weren't for the fact that part of the spacecraft had to remain maneuverable in order to deal with possible unexpected situations, shall you even plan to load all the spacecraft with supplies? During this period of time, shall you has deeply realized the truth. In space, the place where meteorites are flying is not the most dangerous place. But the empty place is the most dangerous place. Because any star there is at least a thousand years voyage away. And there is nothing there. If an unexpected situation occurs, you can't get any supplies. You can only wait for the energy to run out. And then die and turn into ice. The cosmic stones are drifting with the tide in infinite time. This is just a galaxy level voyage. If it is a river level voyage, it will be even more terrifying. There, to get a piece of scrap metal, you might have to travel at the speed of light for millions of years. Long time is the biggest enemy of interstellar navigation. Shao Yu had a lot of thoughts. And while thinking about things randomly, he controlled the fleet to slowly accelerate. At first, when leaving the Earth, Shao Yu was extremely eager to leave the solar system. But when he really wanted to leave the solar system, Shao Yu was reluctant to leave. Shao Yu thought of someone. That was a girl. Very young. Very beautiful. Energetic. Pure and lovely. Back when we were still on Earth, this girl was a researcher at Xiao Yu's research institute. The girl liked Xiao Yu. But Xiao Yu focused solely on science and was dismissive of the relationship between men and women. He even severely criticized the girl because of this incident, which caused the girl to sadly leave Xiao Yu's research place. Xiao Yu never thought that he had done anything wrong. But at this time, Xiao Yu actually felt a little regretful in his heart. She is dead now. Right. She has entered death with 7 billion humans. But it seems that since she left the Institute and until the destruction of the Earth, during this period, a total of seven years, I have not received any information from her. Information. And I don't know what happened to her afterwards. Shall you thought. And controlled the three-dimensional color projector of the sun to weave a figure out. In the cabin of the sun, as the three-dimensional color projector moved, a girl's figure gradually appeared. Well, no. Her eyes should be a little bigger. Uh, okay. The waist should be a little thinner. The bridge of the nose should be a little straighter. And the breast should be a little bigger. Shall you modified various data. And gradually, the three-dimensional color projector projected the figure of a smiling girl in the air. She just stood there, looking forward with tender eyes, as if she had a lot to say. Shall you generated a piece of code. And after executing it, the girl made a sound. Director Shao. Are you okay? Her voice was gentle and shy. Exactly the same as the tone of her words on Earth. Xiao Yu looked at her figure blankly and murmured. Chin Emo. I'm fine. I'm still alive. How about you? I'm already dead. I died 20 years ago. The girl said with a smile. Yes. You are dead. You died 20 years ago. And I have gained infinite life. But I no longer have a body. Xiao Yu said sadly. It is very risky to strip away your body and mind. While on Earth, Xiao Yu happened to get an unknown substance from the universe. After studying it for several years, he took great risks and separated his spirit from his body. Xiao Yu would never dare to take risks again until he fully mastered all the properties of this substance. In other words, even if there is another body, Xiao Yu will not choose to combine with it. Because of the combination, Xiao Yu will not be able to get out. Xiao Yu will be restricted by his body again and will suffer from illness and death. Chinimo. Wait for me. When I completely master the human genetic code, I will resurrect you. Xiao Yu murmured. When Xiao Yu left the Earth, he had stored up a human gene bank and sperm bank. But while avoiding the collision between the moon and the moon, he was hit by a meteorite and lost them all. I'll wait for you. Chin Mo smiled slightly. After saying this, Chin Mo's body turned into a piece of light and shadow and disappeared. When you are resurrected, I will accept your confession. Xiao Yu whispered staring blankly at the light and shadow that Chin Mo's body turned into. Huh, to collect his mind from the infinite thoughts. Xiao Yu sighed softly, put aside these messy thoughts, and continued to control the huge fleet to escape outside the solar system. Gradually, the months passed by. Xiao Yu's fleet has reached the orbit of Uranus. We are almost reaching the orbit of Uranus. Let's leave a tombstone of human civilization here. Xiao Yu thought. The orbit of Uranus is approximately 2.7 billion kilometers from the Earth's orbit. Looking at the sun from the orbit of Uranus, it is just a bright spot in the sky, and its essential difference from other stars can no longer be seen. Xiao Yu sighed 
and used the metal materials he had saved to build a tombstone. He also used nuclear fusion technology to create a battery that could last for at least millions of years to supply energy to an ever-burning lamp. This tombstone will revolve around the sun in a cycle of 130 years. And for up to 1 million years, this ever-burning lamp will always be on, illuminating a line of words engraved on the tombstone. The Tomb of 7 Billion Humans One of the Humans Xiao Yu Li Chapter 32 Lost Star Xiao Yu did not visit Uranus because Uranus happened to be moving to the other side of the sun at this time. However, according to estimates, after another 2 billion kilometers of flight, Xiao Yu's fleet will pass by Neptune when it reaches the orbit of Neptune, giving it a rare opportunity to observe Neptune up close. At this moment, the speed of Xiao Yu's fleet relative to the sun has reached 500 kilometers per second. During the long journey, Xiao Yu arranged the fleet in the shape of a sphere. At the core of the sphere were three county-level spaceships. Outside, there were 70 township-level spaceships surrounding it. Beyond that, there were a thousand a village-level spaceship, like stars over the moon, guards the county-level and township-level spacecraft in the center. Each spacecraft is at least 500 kilometers apart from each other. More than a thousand spacecraft form a big ball with a diameter of 10,000 kilometers. Xiaoyu is sitting in the center of the big ball, commanding a huge fleet, majestic in the traveling rapidly through space. In front of the fleet, the village-level spacecraft that was on guard duty emitted laser beams from time to time to vaporize the asteroids blocking the road ahead. Xiaoyu's fleet is like a crab, running rampant in the solar system. Ahead, Neptune, as blue as the ocean, has entered Xiaoyu's field of vision. Here, Xiaoyu saw the spectacular big black spot on Neptune and observed Triton at close range. Triton was once a Kuiper Belt object that was later captured by Neptune's strong gravity. So Triton's orbit is retrograde and it is slowly approaching Neptune. When its distance from Neptune exceeds the Roche limit, it will be torn apart by Neptune's strong gravity. And then the fragments of Triton will hit Neptune. It is foreseeable that this will be another huge impact event no less than the collision between Jupiter and the Moon. However, because it is too far away, it will not have much impact on the inner planets. Xiaoyu did not slow down his fleet. Now that he has made up his mind to leave the solar system, no matter what kind of scenery, Xiaoyu can no longer stop. The encounter with Neptune lasted only a moment. Not only did Xiaoyu not stop for Neptune, but instead used Neptune's gravity to accelerate the speed of his fleet to 520 kilometers per second. A month later, Xiaoyu's fleet reached the orbit of Pluto. After looking through the telescope and expressing some sympathy for Pluto, which is 300 million kilometers away, Xiaoyu continued to fly towards the outer solar system. This is already the territory of the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is the main source of short periodic comets in the solar system. For example, the famous Halley's Comet is believed to come from here. But Xiaoyu was not so lucky to encounter it. Halley's Comet is currently wandering in no corner of the solar system. Here, it is 6 billion kilometers away from the sun. Looking at the sun from here, it is only slightly brighter than looking at Venus from Earth. She had become a mere point of light, devoid of all detail. But even though she is so far away, she still dominates everything here. Yes, in the Kuiper Belt, celestial bodies such as Pluto, Xena, and Sedna are still orbiting the bright spot in the distance together with countless cold rocks. Here, it's cold and dark. Loneliness is the eternal melody of the universe. And light is the rare scenery in the universe. There are at least 100 million celestial bodies scattered in this huge space. But Xiao Yu couldn't see anything. Compared to this huge space, the density of matter is really too thin. Xiao Yu is still moving forward courageously. In space, because you have lost the reference object, you cannot notice that you are moving. Xiao Yu's huge fleet was suspended quietly in space without any movement. Xiao Yu has been observing the intensity of the solar wind. During this nine month long journey, Xiao Yu saw that the speed of the solar wind was slowly decreasing, which meant that the influence of the sun on this place was getting weaker and weaker. Gradually, gradually, the speed of the solar wind dropped from a few hundred kilometers per second to below the speed of sound, which is 340 meters per second. Xiao Yu knew that he had arrived at the edge of the solar system. Beyond, there will be an infinite world of interstellar media. The sun, with its powerful energy and solar wind, has carved out a world of its own in the interstellar medium. And the place where Xiao Yu is located will be the border between the sun empire and the interstellar medium. Here is the heliopause. Here, it is 18 billion kilometers away from the sun. Under the influence of the interstellar medium, the speed of the solar wind finally dropped below the speed of sound. 
The solar wind will have a fierce confrontation with the interstellar medium here. And countless particles will collide fiercely in a place invisible to Xiaoyu. The temperature here is as high as several thousand degrees Celsius. Yes, it is cold and dark here. And humans will be instantly frozen into ice blocks here. But the temperature here is indeed as high as several thousand degrees Celsius. Temperature is just a physical quantity that measures the intensity of thermal motion of molecules in an object. There is too little material here, and it is too thin. So although the temperature is high, it has no effect on Xiaoyu. Just like in the Earth's ionosphere, the temperature is as high as more than a thousand degrees. But there are still many artificial celestial bodies flying freely there. This is the final battlefield. In its confrontation with the interstellar medium, the solar wind was completely defeated. Xiaoyu knew that after passing through this place, apart from gravity, the sun would have no other means to influence this place. It took Xiaoyu two days to pass through here and pass through the heliosphere. Looking at the detector, the number of high-energy charged particles from the sun slowly decreased and finally disappeared. Looking at the bright spot in the distance that was already somewhat dim and not much different from the other stars in the universe, Xiaoyu felt something in his heart an indescribable taste. Mother! Dear mother! Goodbye! Goodbye! Xiaoyu murmured to himself, feeling the urge to cry. Moving forward, there will be the interstellar medium, which is the world of hydrogen and helium from the Milky Way. The matter here is so thin that it is unimaginable, not even reaching the point where there is one atom per cubic centimeter. This density is equivalent to the material density of a drop of water evenly distributed in a space of 5 million cubic kilometers. What will greet Xiaoyu ahead will be a lonely journey of more than 6,000 years in such a space. After leaving the heliosphere, Xiaoyu had been depressed for a year. During this year, Xiaoyu had been in a state of mental trance. The daily operations of the fleet were all handed over to automatic programs. Xiaoyu just looked at the direction of the sun through the telescope every day, immersed in memories and unable to extricate himself. Fortunately, the route has already been set, and there is no need to worry about being attacked by asteroids here. So no accidents happened to Xiaoyu's fleet. Here, it is already 35 billion kilometers away from the sun. It takes 32 hours for the sun's light to reach here. But here, in such a remote place, Xiaoyu made a major discovery. He discovered a planet. Yes, having reached hydrostatic equilibrium and possessing enough mass to clear its orbit of other small bodies. This planet, in every way, fits astronomers' definition of a planet. Its mass is 1.5 times that of the Earth. It is a rocky planet that orbits the sun at an extremely slow speed, with a period of 732 years. Looking at this planet, Xiaoyu's heart suddenly became enlightened and he understood many things. Previously, humans have been wondering whether there is another large planet beyond the orbit of Pluto. Otherwise, there is no way to explain the weird orbits of many small celestial bodies in the Kuiper Belt. Now, Xiaoyu finally found the answer. There is indeed a big planet here, but because it is too small and too dark here, humans have not been able to discover it. Xiaoyu named this planet, Lost Star. This is a lost land and there has never been any trace of it in human written records. Xiaoyu put great energy into Lost Star. Xiaoyu even rushed to build a detection satellite and launched it in the orbit of the Lost Star. In this way, even if Xiaoyu's fleet continues to leave, Xiaoyu can continue to observe the Lost Star. The Lost Star has no atmosphere. But on the surface of the Lost Star, Xiaoyu observed a liquid that looked like liquid nitrogen and a white solid that looked like water ice. This suggests that if there were the right temperatures for water ice to melt, and liquid nitrogen to sublime. It could have an atmosphere like Earth. There are mountains on the lost star, which proves that it once had crustal movement, and that it has a liquid, hot core. Perhaps, there will also be volcanic eruptions and hot springs caused by geothermal heat, and there may be life in the hot springs. Xiaoyu has a lot of thoughts in his heart. Xiaoyu's observation of the lost star lasted for a full year, until he could no longer receive signals from the satellite. Xiaoyu had to give up his research on it with regret. The discovery of the lost star saved Xiaoyu from his depression. Xiaoyu regained his energy and had the desire to explore. The compilation work of the Heroes of the Sky has been restarted. And research on projects such as ultra-distance communication, anti-gravity technology, and new generation spacecraft engines has also been put on the agenda. Physics theoretical research is also being carried out in full swing. To the point that the huge amount of scientific calculations has pushed the main computer's calculation schedule to 300 years later. In other words, the data required for calculation now is enough to keep the main computer operating at full capacity for 300 years. 
This result made Xiao Yu smile bitterly. However, there was plenty of time during the journey, and Xiao Yu was not in a hurry. Time slowly slipped away in this lonely but fulfilling state. Since the encounter with the lost star, Xiao Yu has not encountered any material objects again. This situation lasted for 600 years. 600 years later, Xiao Yu arrived at a place. Here is the Oort Cloud, one light year away from the sun. Chapter 33 Unusual Signal Ever since primitive Homo sapiens first looked up at the stars millions of years ago on Earth, humankind has never stopped exploring the mysterious universe. It has been developing until today. And Xiao Yu has taken a crucial step. Human beings have finally moved a full light-year distance. Although, Xiao Yu is the only human left in the universe. Here is the Oort Cloud, which is one light-year away from the sun, about 9.5 trillion kilometers away. Looking at the sun here is not as bright as looking at Sirius from the Earth. The sun has truly become an ordinary member among countless stars. In the distance, a dark meteorite block of about 10 cubic meters flashed past, quickly running towards the sun. Xiao Yu smiled bitterly because he observed that the orbit of the meteorite had been changed due to the influence of the mass of his fleet. According to calculations, after thousands of years, it will enter the inner solar system and emit a spectacular comet tail before being evaporated by the sun. Here, there are hundreds of billions of meteorites scattered in the vast darkness, and their total mass is estimated to be about 10 times the mass of the Earth. They are the remaining waste materials from the production of the sun, due to the influence of large planets such as Jupiter. They were not lucky enough to form a large planet like the Earth or Mars. Instead, they were expelled from the interior during the gravitational battle billions of years ago. The solar system has come to this lonely place, and only a few meteorites can get the chance to encounter the sun again. It's too far away from the sun, so far away that other stars may also have an effect on them. It is expected that in millions of years, a star called Gliese 710 will pass by them at close range. At that time, some or cloud stars will be captured by it, and other stars may be captured by it, banished to the inner solar system. Xiao Yu commanded a village-level spacecraft, nimbly approached a meteorite block with a volume of tens of cubic meters, and captured it within the hull. These meteorites contain some traces of the early stages of the formation of the solar system, which are very helpful for Xiao Yu to study the evolution of stars. Except for the two meteorites observed by Xiao Yu, the Oort cloud was still as empty as the rest. Xiao Yu's footsteps did not stop at all and continued to pass through at high speed. The Oort Cloud is the final boundary of a star's sphere of influence. Outside the Oort Cloud, there will no longer be any stars controlled by the sun's gravity, except for a little faint starlight. The sun will have no ability to have any impact here. Perhaps, 5 billion years from now, when the sun dies, the planetary nebula it formed may spread here. Countless time passed by in a hurry. And more than 2,000 years passed since Xiao Yu left the Oort Cloud. When 1,600 years passed, all the replacement parts stored by Xiao Yu were used up. Therefore, over the next 400 years, 50 village level spacecraft were abandoned. Their parts were disassembled and installed on the remaining ships, replacing their damaged parts. There is only an empty SH L left of these 50 village level spaceships. Without their power system, they will no longer have the ability to continue to follow the large force and Xiao Yu does not have the ability to carry them additionally. Abandoned, they can only drift along a fixed track in the endless universe forever. Along with these 50 village-level spaceships, two township-level spaceships were abandoned. Although the three county-level spacecraft have also undergone an overhaul, they still have the ability to continue sailing. 40% of the entire voyage has been completed. A distance of four light-years. If Xiao Yu's goal is the chosen Alpha Centauri star, Xiao Yu has reached his destination by now. Alpha Centauri is commonly known as Proxima Centauri. It is a triple star with three stars orbiting each other and moving chaotically. According to observations, there will not be any stable large planets there. So although it is the closest place, Xiao Yu did not choose it. In these 2,000 years, Xiao Yu passed through at least four large gas clusters. Every time he passed through a gas cluster, Xiao Yu's speed was reduced once. And then Xiao Yu had to accelerate and correct his course and every acceleration and course correction consumes a lot of fuel. However, thanks to Xiao Yu's initial reserves of as much as possible, the nuclear fusion fuel reserves are still optimistic, enough to support Xiao Yu's voyage to the Tianyuan four-star system. The largest of these gas clusters was one light year in length and more than 10 light days in width. Xiao Yu walked through it for more than 20 years before passing through it. In the universe, there are quite a few such large gas clusters. In fact, 
The solar system was born from such a gas mass. That was billions of years ago. Under the disturbance of a nearby supernova explosion, this gas mass began to slowly shrink toward the center. Eventually, the density of matter in the center of the gas mass became higher and higher, and the temperature became higher and higher, finally triggering a nuclear fusion reaction. And the primitive sun was born. The powerful stellar wind of the original sun blew away the dust surrounding itself. And then, the dust slowly condensed into planets. After billions of years of development, they stabilized and became what they are today. If a star exerts a certain influence on this gas mass at this time, a star may be born here in the endless future. It is a pity that Xiaoyu does not have such ability. Otherwise Xiaoyu would be very interested in building a star. This gas mass reduced Xiaoyu's speed from 563 km per second to 506 km per second and also caused Xiaoyu's course to shift by one thousandth of a degree. Interstellar navigation must be absolutely precise. And its accuracy requirements are more precise than swatting mosquitoes on the moon from the Earth. Because the distance is so long, the initial slight error will be magnified countless times. If this error of one thousandth of a degree is allowed, Xiaoyu will pass by tens of billions of kilometers away from the destination. Fortunately, Xiaoyu has a pulsar navigation system. Using the signals from six pulsars to correct the course, Xiaoyu continued to fly towards Tianyuan Sea. Here, it is five light years away from the sun and four, five and a half light years away from Tianyuan. The voyage is about to be halfway completed, and 3,700 years have passed since Xiaoyu set off from Saturn. The number of village level spaceships lost increased to 135, and the township level spacecrafts lost reached eight. However, the three county-level spaceships remained the same and everything was operating normally. The reason is simple. The county-level spacecraft has the greatest value. Usually, Xiaoyu removes the parts from the village-level and township-level spaceships and installs them on the county-level spacecraft. By sacrificing the small spacecraft, the health of the large spacecraft was gained. Xiaoyu's fleet was like a group of refugees. Along the way, refugees continued to die of cold and starvation and were then ruthlessly abandoned. Although nuclear fusion is the most efficient energy source at this stage, and the materials used to build the spacecraft are the embodiment of Xiaoyu's highest material technology, they are still somewhat powerless in the face of a long time. Before Xiaoyu's technology achieves new breakthroughs, these losses are inevitable. Five light years away from the sun, the brightness of the sun further weakens, finally disappearing into the stars, and no features can be found anymore. The brightness of Tianyuan Sea is constantly getting brighter, even without the obstruction of a few gas masses. Tianyuan 4 is brighter than the sun when viewed from here. During these nearly 4,000 years, Xiaoyu's technology has been developing, but only at the technical level. For example, Xiaoyu has an updated photon computer construction model. It is expected that after the model is perfected, Xiaoyu will be able to create today's photonic computers are dozens of times faster in computing speed but consume much less energy and are much smaller in size than new computers, such as more efficient nuclear fusion application technology and the internal mechanism of with spirit-reinforced materials. Now Xiaoyu can already use some kind of strong magnetic field to simulate the process of with spirit-strengthening materials, but the efficiency is not as high as that of with spirit. Another most significant breakthrough concerns laser application technology. Laser application technology can be divided into two aspects. The attack aspect is laser guns laser cannons, etc. in the traditional sense. The defense aspect is the legendary protective cover technology. Now Xiaoyu has a preliminary inference about the energy protective cover technology in his mind. It is nothing more than using a strong magnetic field to restrain high-energy photons to form a protective film outside the spacecraft hull. However, specific verification still needs to wait until the four Tianyuan galaxies have received sufficient material replenishment before proceeding. In contrast, there is still no breakthrough development in basic physics. But Xiaoyu is not in a hurry. Xiaoyu believes that it is only a matter of time before a breakthrough in basic physical theory is achieved after reaching the Tianyuan 4 galaxy, obtaining enough material supplements, and building a large particle collider surrounding Tianyuan 4. Xiaoyu even had a vague speculation in his mind. If the Tianyuan 4 large particle colliders really find the Higgs boson and thereby verify the Higgs field, Xiaoyu will have the hope of obtaining nearly unlimited energy source. When the time comes, all the difficulties that hinder Xiaoyu's voyage will be wiped out. From here, we can also see the greatness of relativity and quantum theory. Even now, with the capability of interstellar navigation, Xiaoyu, who is many years advanced in technology than human beings, 
in the final analysis, is still resting on the laurels of relativity and quantum theory. The endless voyage continues. The village-level spaceship that was taking the lead suddenly detected an unusual fluctuation. It was a burst of radio waves with a certain pattern. Shall you can confirm that this wave of radio waves was not sent by himself? This radio wave immediately attracted Xiao Yu's full attention. But because the duration of this radio wave was too short, Xiao Yu was unable to locate its emission source. After thinking for a while, Xiao Yu made a decision. Chapter 34 Two Messages This burst of radio waves has obvious traces of intelligent civilization. Specifically, it has three triple repeating bands and five twice repeating bands. And there seems to be some logical connection between the repeating bands. Although there is no way to locate the source of this radio wave, Based on the current information, Xiao Yu can be sure that it is not far from him. Xiao Yu felt nervous. This was probably the first time humans had come into contact with extraterrestrial intelligent civilization. And receiving radio waves in such a void can prove that this alien civilization has at least acquired the ability to travel to the stars. It won't be so unlucky. Right. Xiao Yu muttered silently. Xiao Yu doesn't think that other alien civilizations will be like him and start interstellar navigation when their technological level only reaches the capability of interplanetary navigation. In other words, this civilization is likely to reach a sailing speed of 5% of the speed of light. This represents an insurmountable technological gap. In the face of this technology, Xiao Yu will be a lamb to be slaughtered without the ability to resist. Xiao Yu adjusted the remaining 800 spacecraft to radio silent mode, turned off all visible light emissions, and at the same time, turned on various observation equipment to maximum power. In the boundless dark universe, Xiao Yu was sneaking silently. Xiao Yu began intense decoding work, trying to translate the signal carried in this radio wave into a language he could understand. At the same time, Xiao Yu secretly prepared all laser cannons, high speed machine guns, hydrogen bombs, etc., for launch, ready to fight at any time. Under such circumstances, Xiao Yu could not escape, because now, that civilization should not have discovered Xiao Yu. And escaping means starting the nuclear fusion engine. Once the nuclear fusion engine is started, it will emit strong radiation. And it is almost certain that it will be discovered by the other party. And then you will become a target yourself. Shall you could only maintain the current speed and slowly slide forward under the influence of inertia. A full 10 days have passed. During this period, everything was quiet as usual. Shall you was just waiting in silence and preparing in silence. Then, shall you receive the second message. This piece of information still shows obvious logical characteristics. These two information receptions finally allowed Xiao Yu to roughly locate the source of the information emission. Probably this information emission source is 800,000 kilometers ahead of Xiao Yu. Approaching Xiao Yu at a speed of 4 kilometers per second. Xiao Yu is approaching Tianyuan 4 at a speed of 550 kilometers per second. Which means that this unknown information emission source is also approaching Tianyuan 4 but its speed is only 546 kilometers per second. According to this speed, Xiao Yu will be in contact with him in two and a half days. Escape! Or, Xiao Yu was caught in a contradiction. Let's parse out the information first. Xiao Yu calculated, with two pieces of information for comparison. It will take about three hours to decipher their meaning. Once the information is parsed, we can then decide whether to escape. Xiao Yu manipulated huge computing power and performed a large number of calculations on these two pieces of information. After three hours, Xiao Yu finally deciphered these two pieces of information. The number 7 survey satellite is about to run out of fuel. The speed is 13.5 kilometers per second. The detection module has been shut down. Please ask for next instructions. Survey satellite number 7 successfully deorbited. The communication module is about to be shut down. Please confirm. Looking at these two pieces of information, Xiao Yu fell into deep thought. Judging from the literal meaning, this is a message communicated between a device called Sky Survey Satellite Number 7 and a console somewhere. Of course, the original text of the message does not refer to Sky Survey Satellite Number 7. The general meaning of the original text seems to be that it refers to some kind of instrument numbered 7 that can fly in orbit. Translated according to the Earth's words. Shall you translate it as Sky Survey Satellite Number 7? There was a gap of 10 days between the two messages. Based on its logic, it seems that after the first message was sent, the console went through some kind of control. It took 10 days to maneuver the satellite out of its original orbit and shut down its communication module. This contains a lot of information. 
What Xiao Yi needs to do is to analyze the information he needs from these two short messages. Such as the other party's technological level. Such as the other party's social model. And most importantly, whether the other party is well-intentioned, civilized, or malicious civilization. Analyzed. This task is very difficult. The amount of information is too small. And there are too many things that need to be analyzed. But it has to be done even if it doesn't work. Shall you sighed and started modeling work. One social model after another was built. And then, the models that did not conform to the known information were overturned. And the models that conformed to the known information were continuously improved. Finally, shall you analyze some information? First of all, it is known that this satellite-like instrument is abandoned after the fuel is consumed. Then we can know that from the perspective of this civilization, the cost of recycling this instrument is higher than the instrument itself. This confused Xiao Yu. Since interstellar navigation is launched, it is inevitable to reserve a large amount of fuel. As for a normally operating instrument, there are too many components that can be recycled. For example, Xiao Yu. After the village level spacecraft is damaged, Xiao Yu will spend fuel to capture it, dismantle it, and recycle the available parts, rather than discarding it directly. It seems that this civilization's fleet is in an energy crisis. This is the only explanation. Xiao Yu thought silently, feeling heavy. Now that this civilization is in an energy crisis, Xiao Yu is in danger, because this civilization is likely to rob Xiao Yu away. There was another message. The speed is 13.5 kilometers per second. Xiao Yu was also confused. 13.5 kilometers per second? Xiao Yu thought. Since the speed is marked, there must be a reference object. So, what is this instrument moving relative to? At present, this instrument can only it moves relative to the console. So there is one thing that is difficult to understand. Normally, it will take at least a year for an instrument to run out of fuel. In such a long time, it can fly a distance of 400 million kilometers. However, judging from the signal strength I received, it is impossible for this signal to be received by a console 400 million kilometers away. This is a contradiction. Xiao Yu thought carefully and had an explanation in his mind. To explain this contradiction, we can only explain it by saying that this instrument is making circular motion around the console. Xiao Yu manipulated the huge computing power and made many calculations in an instant. But in this case, new contradictions will arise. Under what circumstances would a fleet need a satellite with a sailing speed of 13.5 kilometers to revolve around it at all times? Xiao Yu has calculated that only a star with a mass of 1.6 times that of the Earth can orbit at a speed of 13.5 kilometers. This is a startling conclusion. Could it be that the total mass of this fleet has reached 1.6 times that of the Earth? That's why a special instrument is needed to monitor the fleet's situation at any time. No. It's impossible. The fleets have their own communication systems. Why do we have to get a satellite? Come out? Moreover, how could such a huge fleet fail to recover the fuel of a satellite? Xiao Yu was puzzled and could not unify these two contradictory pieces of information no matter what. These two pieces of information also involve a very key word. Detection module. Obviously, the detection module is only needed when there are unknown situations. So, under what circumstances does a fleet need to use an external instrument to detect the internal structure? This is another contradiction. I can't figure it out. Let's give up here and calculate their level of civilization first. Xiao Yu thought in his mind. First of all, it can be determined that they have not mastered long-distance communication. That is to say, in terms of quantum theory, they are no deeper than me. Then, in terms of energy, the first message said that the fuel is about to run out. And then it ran, it took 10 days to turn off the communication module. So I can make some assumptions about fuel utilization. Assume for the moment that the instrument is moving in a circular motion, mainly relying on inertia to maintain its orbit. Judging from its abandonment, its mass cannot be too large. Otherwise it cannot be abandoned so easily. Assume for the moment that its mass is 10 tons. And assuming that only 0.1% of its fuel remains. Then, from a comprehensive analysis, there's still fusion energy. Xiao Yu came to this conclusion. But new contradictions emerged again. How could a civilization that uses nuclear fusion as energy build such a huge fleet? One question after another popped up in Xiao Yu's heart. Since this satellite has been abandoned, Maybe I can capture it. Xiao Yu suddenly had an adventurous idea in his heart. After thinking for a while, Xiao Yu gritted his teeth and made up his mind. Do it. Why don't you dare? There's no way to run away now anyway. 
Why not find out as much as possible about their level of civilization? And even if you die, you'll have to die spectacularly. After making up his mind, Xiao Yu turned on the optical detection equipment to the highest accuracy. Finally, with the help of weak starlight reflection, Xiao Yu found the instrument at an offset of 500 kilometers from the estimated location. It was a strange instrument that was about 10 cubic meters in size and shaped like a starfish. Looking at this thing in front of him, Xiao Yu was very excited. This is Xiao Yu's first contact with an alien civilization. Xiao Yu controlled a village level spacecraft and approached the satellite with the lowest power. At the lowest power, the nuclear fusion engine of the village class spacecraft only emits extremely weak radiation, which will presumably not be discovered by the speculated alien civilization. After getting close, Xiao Yu used a mechanical arm to grab the satellite into the cabin. Then it was transported into the largest and most well-equipped county-level spacecraft and analyzed. Chapter 35 Triggered Hydrogen Bomb Detonator The mass of this satellite is about 7.5 tons, which is not much different from Xiao Yu's estimate. Xiao Yu first analyzed its material system. The results show that its construction materials are all common elements in the universe. And there are no materials that Xiao Yu cannot understand. Moreover, its material performance is no stronger than the material strengthened by with spirits and black insects in Xiao Yu's place. In Xiao Yu's speculation, it is impossible for an alien super civilization that can build a fleet with such a huge mass to still use such low level materials. Xiao Yu became more and more confused. The next thing to analyze is its power system. From the power system, we can see the degree of scientific and technological development of a civilization. After taking it apart, Xiao Yu looked at the familiar nuclear fusion engine and was speechless. I didn't expect that you really use nuclear fusion energy? And it also used electric energy? Huh? Photon computing control board? God. It's so similar. Although the nuclear fusion engine in this satellite is slightly different from Xiao Yu's. The overall principle is the same. Looking at everything familiar in front of him. Xiao Yu felt like he couldn't laugh or cry. But at the same time, he felt greatly relaxed no matter how many contradictions there are that cannot be explained. In the end, it uses nuclear fusion power, relies on electricity to transmit energy, and relies on photon computing control panels to construct computing modules. This means that the technological level of this civilization will never exceed that of Mrs. Xiaoyu. Many. At the same time, Xiaoyu once again confirmed his speculation about the similarities in the progress of civilization. It's very simple. Since most civilizations develop from low to high levels, it is very likely that they will also go through a process similar to the civilization on Earth. Although there will be differences in details due to differences in civilizations, the general direction is the same, such as chemical energy and nuclear energy. Huh? What is this? Shall you bypass the power module and began to check the rest of the components? At this time, a strange thing attracted his attention. It was something similar to a camera on Earth with a protruding lens and a smooth glass lens in the lens. Xiao Yu disassembled it and began to analyze the various subtle photon circuits inside. Gradually, Xiao Yu was completely attracted by this photon line. Xiao Yu stopped all other irrelevant calculations and mobilized at least 20% of his computing power to analyze this circuit board. After analyzing for a full 50 minutes, Xiao Yu took a breath and came back to his senses. From this circuit board, it can be seen that they have at least surpassed my five-year technological level. Otherwise, they would not be able to design such efficient circuits. This five-year period is calculated based on the level of scientific and technological progress on Earth. Currently, Xiao Yu's technology has long since stagnated due to the lack of sufficient materials to carry out research on basic physical theories and various other experiments. Xiao Yu learned a lot from this circuit board. And at the same time, he also analyzed the function of this instrument. This is a thermal imaging detector. And its working principle is similar to something like a night vision device on the Earth. After analyzing this instrument, Xiao Yu began to analyze the next instrument. After a full 20 hours of analysis, Xiao Yu completed the analysis of the entire instrument. This is indeed a satellite. And its main role is to find heat sources on a massive object. This function made Xiao Yu unable to figure it out. Heat source? Need to find it. At the same time, Xiao Yu also had a general understanding of the technology of this civilization. Generally speaking, this is a civilization that surpasses Xiao Yu's current technology by about 10 years. That is to say, the utilization efficiency of nuclear fusion is higher than Xiao Yu's. The computing power is faster than Xiao Yu's. 
and the spacecraft it builds is higher than Xiao Yu's. It's just faster. The weapon is more powerful. In short, the difference is not very big. Xiao Yu already had a comprehensive understanding of the technology of this civilization. And at the same time, he felt settled. Xiao Yu thought, One thing is strange. This satellite is obviously made for a large object that is at least twice the size of the Earth. They only have technology that is 10 years ahead of mine. It is impossible to build such a large fleet. Let's leave this question aside for now. At present, what needs to be determined is, what attitude should I have towards this civilization? Xiao Yu thought and slowly began to analyze. According to the model, if two civilizations with similar technological development levels meet in the universe, they are most likely to have peaceful contact exchange information with each other, or engage in material trade, and then separate peacefully after initial testing, or even conflict. This is the first alien civilization I have encountered. Maybe I should show some kindness to them. But I can't speculate on their social structure and moral system. That is, I can't know whether they are kind or malicious towards me. Or should I show my kindness while also showing my force? Shall you remember a theory that was once very popular on Earth? The Dark Jungle Theory. In this theoretical system, there is no possibility for two different interstellar civilizations to coexist peacefully. Xiao Yu felt that at this moment. He seemed to have fallen into the so-called chain of suspicion. Xiao Yu didn't know whether the dark jungle theory was correct. And Xiao Yu had no interest in using his own life to verify the dark jungle theory. Xiao Yu only knew that his contact with the other party was inevitable. Then, Xiao Yu must come up with a contact plan as soon as possible. Whether the dark jungle theory is correct or not, I will not consider it for now. Anyway, from my standpoint, if the benefits that can be obtained are less than the price that I will pay, then I will not choose to pay. The same is true in the universe. If you are with it, if civilizations coexist peacefully, there will be greater benefits. Naturally, I will not choose to attack it. I believe that this unknown civilization will also have such logic. Then, what I need to do is very simple. Show peace with me, while we will gain benefits from coexistence. I will demonstrate my force system to deter them. Two civilizations with similar technological levels. If conflict breaks out, both parties may die together. But if they coexist peacefully, both parties may benefit. Which one to choose? Any civilization with normal intelligence must know clearly. In the final analysis, interests. Everything is interests. And interests are the highest guiding principle. Shall you thought silently. So, how to show benefits and deterrence at the same time? Putting this problem aside for now, the top priority is to find them. They are definitely not far away from me. An existence hidden in the dark, with no idea whether it is good or malicious, is very dangerous. Although, I don't know if they have found me, but if I find them first, I will have the initiative to contact them. Xiao Yu slowly adjusted the fleet formation, adjusting the entire fleet into a huge circle with a diameter of 8,000 kilometers. In this way, Xiao Yu used these more than 800 spacecraft to form a huge radio telescope array. At the same time, Xiao Yu installed a condenser on each spacecraft. In this way, Xiao Yu can collect signals in various bands, whether it is infrared, ultraviolet, visible light, X-rays, gamma rays, etc. Xiao Yu cannot escape Xiao Yu. Exploration of space. Even if it were not for technological limitations, Xiao Yu would also like to build a neutrino and gravitational wave detector. Xiao Yu searched for a full month, but did not find any material suspected of being created by civilization. It shouldn't be, Xiao Yu thought. There are various signs that this alien civilization must be near me. Did they also discover me? So they chose radio silence? Xiao Yu started to think about a question. That is, in the dark universe, when there is no visible light, how to find an object that does not emit any radiation? or that only emits a trace amount of radiation, which is close to nothing. In turn, Xiao Yu also began to think about how this civilization that has surpassed him for nearly 10 years will discover himself when he maintains radio silence, turns off all nuclear fusion engines, and blocks all radiation in the visible and invisible light bands. Xiao Yu calculated and couldn't find any technology that could detect him in this situation. But one thing, Xiao Yu can be sure that if he doesn't hide it deliberately, there are still many ways to discover himself. Does that also mean that the other party is also deliberately hiding it? Xiao Yu was horrified. It seems that there is only one explanation. Otherwise, why can't I find the other party? Take the initiative to show your body. Show your goodwill and strength to the other party. And take the initiative to contact the other party? 
Xiao Yu thought nervously. But this is very risky. After showing his body, what greets Xiao Yu may be a high yield hydrogen bomb. Xiao Yu thought for a long time, but still couldn't make up his mind to take this risk. The current situation is very delicate. Two civilizations with similar levels of technological development are deliberately hiding themselves. And Xiao Yu can be sure that the other party is also desperately looking for him. In this case, no one dares to take risks. So, how to break the deadlock? Contact between two civilizations is inevitable. Because the two sides are not far apart. And leaving voluntarily means starting the nuclear fusion engine. Which means that your body will be exposed. At the same time, Xiao Yu thought of a question. Have you been exposed? After all, he had previously controlled the spacecraft, captured the satellite, and also controlled the spacecraft to form a radio telescope array. In this process, Xiao Yu has used the lowest power, but Xiao Yu cannot confirm whether the other party has more advanced technology to detect the trace amounts of radiation he emits. I'm sure that the other party already knows my existence. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to hide it deliberately. I just don't know if my specific coordinates have been exposed. Xiao Yu was thinking about this problem. Suddenly, Xiao Yu detected a weak signal. This signal is very weak. If Xiao Yu had not arranged a radio telescope array, Xiao Yu would not be able to detect this signal at all. Xiao Yu's heart tightened, and he immediately began to analyze the signal. As a result, Xiao Yu was shocked. Damn it! This is the signal for a triggered hydrogen bomb detonator. Chapter 36 Shooting Each Other The signal came from the front of Xiao Yu's route, 10,000 kilometers away. Xiao Yu has also made trigger-type hydrogen bomb detonators. Its basic principle is to send out a signal at any time to detect whether there is an object within a certain distance from itself. And if so, it will automatically explode. Generally speaking, trigger-type hydrogen bombs cannot be avoided. Because in the absence of visible light, the triggered hydrogen bomb detonator will only emit an extremely weak signal to detect whether an object is approaching it. Once this signal is observed by the equipment, it means that the distance is close enough to detonate a hydrogen bomb. This time, if Xiao Yu hadn't happened to arrange the fleet into a radio telescope array, Xiao Yu would have died without knowing how he died. It is impossible for Xiao Yu to place a hydrogen bomb on his route. Then it can only be placed by the unknown civilization. The purpose is very simple. Just to eliminate Xiao Yu. A large yield hydrogen bomb exploded at close range will emit extremely strong radiation in an instant, which will instantly disrupt circuits and burn sensitive components. It is certain that if these hydrogen bombs were detonated, Xiao Yu would die ugly. Xiao Yu and this hydrogen bomb trap are approaching at a speed of 10 kilometers per second. According to predictions, Xiao Yu will enter the detonation point of the hydrogen bomb in 14 minutes. This distance is really too dangerous. Damn it! Xiao Yu cursed, no longer caring about hiding his figure, and controlled the entire fleet to burst out with the strongest power and rush downwards. More than 800 spacecraft simultaneously ejected bright flames from their tails, illuminating the dark space. The radio telescope array was immediately broken, and the weak signal from the trigger-type hydrogen bomb detonator also disappeared. Xiao Yu did not dare to neglect it all, and controlled the fleet to rush hundreds of thousands of kilometers before stopping in shock. This instant acceleration and deceleration consumed at least 10% of the energy. Xiao Yu felt extremely angry. Why? Can this alien civilization be sure that attacking me will gain greater benefits than living in peace with me? Where do they get the confidence? After all, I have also mastered controllable nuclear fusion. And my technological level is no different from theirs. How many? Xiao Yu has never been so angry in thousands of years. Just a little. Xiao Yu just missed falling into death. Xiao Yu had never experienced this kind of dangerous situation during the collision between wood and moon. In particular, this is simply an unnecessary disaster. Originally, Xiao Yu still wanted to coexist peacefully with the other party. Damn it! Do you think I'm a soft persimmon? I'm going to fight with you! Xiao Yu felt fierce in his heart and made up his mind instantly. While Xiao Yu was thinking about how to launch a counterattack, a light suddenly shone in the distance, hundreds of thousands of kilometers away. Xiao Yu quickly pointed the detection equipment there and immediately became even more angry. You still dare to launch missiles at me? That's right. That bright spot is the flame ejected from the engine of an interstellar missile. The relative speed of this missile reached at least 3,000 kilometers per second. In other words, the missile will reach Xiao Yu in about 30 seconds. What is certain is that the warhead of this missile is definitely a hydrogen bomb with a large yield. Xiao Yu immediately controlled 10 Township class spacecraft to lock on the missile, aimed at it with a high power laser cannon, and then pressed the launch button without hesitation. Immediately, 
10 high-energy lasers were fired from 10 laser cannons and hit the interstellar missile when they were on Earth. The Yankees had a Star Wars plan. The main part of the plan was to study how to use satellites deployed in space to emit lasers to intercept intercontinental missiles of enemy countries. It can be said that the use of lasers to deal with missiles has precedence on Earth and has been studied in depth. However, the Yankee Star Wars plan has never been implemented. No country on Earth has actually used lasers to intercept missiles. At most, they have only conducted some experiments and hit a few target satellites. Now, Xiao Yu has truly used lasers in actual combat. The running speed of laser is the speed of light. Therefore, even if the speed of the interstellar missile reaches 3,000 kilometers per second, it is impossible to escape the laser irradiation. However, there is a very critical point. The speed of the laser is very fast. But the muzzle rotation speed of the laser transmitter is not that fast. This means that there must be an extremely fast computer that can calculate the trajectory of the missile in an instant. And then control the laser transmitter to aim it. Moreover, there is another point. The principle of laser is to gather extremely powerful energy in a very small area. So it has such a powerful lethality. However, since the area of effect is small, it means that the laser is unlikely to damage the entire missile, cause destruction, and only precision strikes are an option. For example, destroying the missile's warhead causes its detonator to malfunction. Xiaoyu did not dare to use laser to cut the missile directly, because the laser cannon has its power limit. It would take at least two minutes to cut through the missile, which is made of extremely tough materials. The time left for Xiaoyu was only 30 seconds. Xiaoyu gritted his teeth and used all his powerful computing power to calculate the most likely location of the detonator, and then irradiated the laser at that location without hesitation. The powerful laser rays continued to melt the affected area. Finally, the laser penetrated and destroyed the hydrogen bomb detonator. After that, Xiaoyu aimed the laser at the missile engine and began to destroy the missile engine. Ten seconds later, the entire missile exploded and disintegrated with a loud bang. The scale of the explosion was not large, which proved that what exploded was only the fuel in its engine, not the high-yield hydrogen bomb in its warhead. Xiaoyu breathed a sigh of relief. But the next moment, Xiaoyu's heart became tense again. In the distance, hundreds of light spots appeared simultaneously. This means that hundreds of interstellar missiles are flying towards Xiaoyu. Damn it! Xiaoyu cursed secretly, controlling all the laser guns and laser cannons on more than 800 spaceships, using his powerful computing power to the extreme. And the central computer usage rate almost soared to 90%. Countless A lasers shot out. In space, countless bright lights burst out, including missile engines exploding and warhead hydrogen bombs exploding. That was because Xiaoyu accidentally triggered the damaged and explosive device in the hydrogen bomb detonator. Xiaoyu's energy reserves are being consumed rapidly. But at this moment, Xiaoyu could no longer care about his heartache. The entire battle only lasted a minute. Hundreds of interstellar missiles were wiped out by Xiaoyu. And Xiaoyu's fleet lost 20 village-level spacecraft and one township-level spacecraft due to interception errors of three missiles. It's not rude to come back without reciprocating. And I want you to see my methods. Xiaoyu thought fiercely in his heart. The spacecraft launcher stretched out. And as the order was given, nearly a hundred interstellar missiles were launched. They dragged their long tail flames and rushed towards an unknown place in the dark space at a speed of nearly 2,500 kilometers per second. Previously, by calculating the orbits of hundreds of interstellar missiles, Xiaoyu had roughly determined the location of the enemy fleet. Then, various detection devices were aimed in that direction and launched with all their strength. Finally, they captured the opponent's clues and determined the opponent's position. After that, Xiaoyu immediately used revenge methods. After 30 seconds of flight, thousands of lasers were suddenly fired from that unknown location. Each missile was chased by dozens and hundreds of lasers. In the end, it could only explode helplessly in space. And in the brilliance of the missile explosion, with the help of high-precision optical detectors, Xiaoyu saw an astonishing sight. There, there is a planet from Xiaoyu's position. The planet is about a few meters in diameter, which shows that its volume is about twice that of the Earth, and its mass is about 1.6 times that of the Earth. This is the same as Xiaoyu's previous speculation. Xiaoyu finally understood what the previous satellite was used for. All doubts are easily solved. Their fleet is indeed twice the size of the Earth, and its mass is indeed 1.6 times that of the Earth, because their fleet is just a planet. Through spectral analysis, Xiaoyu also mastered some data on its atmosphere. 
This planet has a thick atmosphere, the main components of which are sulfur and nitrogen. Seeing this astonishing scene in front of him, Xiao Yu was shocked. Where is this place? This is the vast universe. The endless darkness of space. Here, the nearest star is also five light years away. How could a planet appear here? Gradually, a name appeared in Xiao Yu's heart. Wandering planet. In space, there is a special kind of celestial body. According to their mass, they undoubtedly belong to the category of planets. But they do not belong to any stars. Perhaps they originally had a main star. But in the battle of gravity, as victims, they were expelled from their originally stable stellar orbits and could only wander around in space without a destination. But, in such an environment, how could this planet have a gaseous atmosphere? Shouldn't they be frozen solid and fall on the surface of the planet? Most importantly, how could such a planet evolve intelligent life? How is it possible for intelligent life to evolve? More doubts emerged in Xiao Yu's mind. Nuclear strikes had no effect. However, this was what Xiao Yu had expected. Xiao Yu had no intention of using these hundreds of hydrogen bombs to hit the opponent. After the nuclear bomb exploded and the radiation released blocked all signals, Xiao Yu took advantage of the chaos to quickly change the course of the fleet. At the same time, he maintained radio silence to isolate all radiation in the visible and invisible light bands. Xiao Yu hit himself again. And at the same time, Xiao Yu locked the position of the planet tightly. In a war, the side that hides itself will undoubtedly have a great advantage. All Xiao Yu has to do is hide himself in the darkness, find the right opportunity, and strike with a fatal blow. Chapter 37, Trebuchet The situation developed very delicately. In this battle that lasted less than 10 minutes, Xiao Yu, who was originally exposed, hit again, and the alien civilization that was originally in the dark was found by Xiao Yu. But at present, Xiao Yu does not have the advantage because the other party is a planet. This means that the other party has nearly unlimited energy replenishment capabilities. But Xiao Yu here uses a little and uses less. Besides, it is easier to destroy a fleet than a planet. After hiding himself and gaining temporary safety, Xiao Yu began to quickly think about his next course of action. So far, apart from exchanging missiles, Xiao Yu has not had any communication with this alien civilization. Without communication, Xiao Yu would have no way to determine the enemy's social structure, moral system, etc. In other words, Xiao Yu has lost the possibility of exploiting the enemy's internal contradictions to open a gap from within the enemy. There are only two feasible ways, either to defeat the opponent, or to escape at the risk of being annihilated. Xiao Yu began to rethink the question at the beginning. That is, why did this civilization take the initiative to attack him? Xiao Yu firmly believes that his theory is correct. Since this civilization has taken the initiative to attack him, it can be confirmed that the other party believes that attacking will gain greater benefits than coexisting peacefully with him. This benefit is big enough to launch an attack on yourself at the risk of losing both sides. So what exactly is this huge benefit? Xiaoyu began to think carefully about all the information he had exposed. First of all, Xiaoyu can be sure that given the other party's level of technology, he definitely discovered himself when he controlled the spacecraft to capture the other party's satellite. After discovering themselves, they immediately set up hydrogen bomb traps in an attempt to annihilate themselves in one fell swoop. So, in the process of capturing the other party's satellite, what huge possible benefits did the other party discover from itself? Xiao Yu established a huge data model, put himself in the opponent's position, and began to calculate under what circumstances he would launch an attack on another fleet first. After half an hour, Xiao Yu came to a conclusion. The conclusion shows that there are about three possibilities that will lead to an active attack. First, the other party may think that its behavior of capturing the other party's satellite is a sign of an active attack. In order to protect themselves, they set up a trap first, hoping to eliminate Xiao Yu. Secondly, judging from the fact that the other party abandoned the satellite, the other party is in a serious energy crisis or some other crisis. Even if there is no crisis, the other party must be subject to some restrictions. So the other party wants to rob itself to obtain supplies. Replenish? Thirdly, in the eyes of the other party, the act of annihilating civilization itself is the greatest benefit. Xiao Yu doesn't know why the act of annihilating civilization is of interest. But if the first two possibilities are not true, the third speculation will become the most likely. Perhaps the other party is a perverted civilization. If the other civilizations are eliminated, they will gain great spiritual satisfaction. This possibility is not impossible. After all, things in the universe are all kinds of strange. 
who can explain clearly. Xiao Yu believes that the second possibility is the most likely. The first is the second most likely. And the third is the least likely. Okay, let's rely on the second possibility for the time being to formulate the next battle plan. Xiao Yu thought for a while and started to calculate the data again. Through these 10 minutes of fighting, Xiao Yu has become familiar with the opponent's fighting mode. Among them, one point attracted Xiao Yu's attention. That is, the opponent did not send warships to fight against itself, but only launched missiles or lasers to fight against itself through bases, satellites and other devices arranged in the planet's synchronous orbit. This is a point that is difficult to understand. Generally speaking, no one wants the battlefield to be in their own home. At least, if the Xia Kingdom conflicts with other countries while on Earth, they will definitely want the battlefield to be outside the territory of their own country. This is common sense to prevent the country from being affected by the war. So why doesn't the other party send a fleet to fight with itself, but is only willing to fight with the planet as a support? The other party doesn't have the ability to create an interstellar team? There is no such possibility. Xiao Yu first denied this. After all, the missiles launched by the opponent reached a terrifying speed of 3,000 kilometers per second, which was faster than Xiao Yu's missiles. No one would believe that such a civilization did not have the ability to build an interstellar fleet. So the other party has the ability to build an interstellar fleet, but is unwilling to send it out due to certain restrictions, such as lack of fuel, material limitations, etc. Xiao Yu made some calculations and combined with his second inference before. He confirmed this. After confirming the opponent's star-level combat ability and its limitations, Xiao Yu became excited, and a plan slowly took shape in Xiao Yu's mind. You are in the light. I am in the dark. Let's see if I don't kill you. If I can't kill you, I will also cripple you. Xiao Yu thought fiercely, controlling the robot, and quickly created a robot inside the sun. A simple interstellar missile launcher came out. This interstellar missile launcher does not use any high-tech launch equipment but uses a technology that primitive humans have already mastered. That is, the ejection device, a device similar to the trebuchet of the cold weapon era. Xiao Yu commanded the robot, and after setting the ejection direction of the ejection device, he transported an interstellar missile and installed it on the ejection device. Then, in the cabin, he charged the ejection device and looked under the missile, the tight high elastic spring. Xiao Yu gave the launch order. The spring bounced up, and the huge elastic force bounced the spherical interstellar missile towards the ceiling of the cabin. The moment before the interstellar missile collided with the ceiling, the ceiling actively opened a gap, allowing the interstellar missile to fly out, and then immediately closed, and then the outer SH. L of the spacecraft opened, placing the missile into interstellar space. Xiao Yu was 1 million kilometers away from the planet, and the speed of the missile reached 3 kilometers per second. In other words, the missile will arrive at the alien planet in 3 days. And then, bang, with a loud sound, it exploded. The speed of 3 kilometers per second is similar to a snail's crawl compared to the interstellar missile's constant speed of several thousand kilometers per second. But there is an advantage to doing so, and that is concealment. This is a purely physical launch device. So no heat energy or any radiation will be generated during the launch process. Therefore, it is impossible for an alien civilization to discover that Xiao Yu quietly threw a missile from the spacecraft. Nor is it possible to find out the location of Xiao Yu's fleet by calculating the ballistic trajectory of the hydrogen bomb. Doing so not only conceals the interstellar missile, ensuring that it cannot be discovered and destroyed by the opponent, but also ensures that the position of one's own fleet cannot be calculated by the opponent. In this interstellar missile, a program has been preset by Xiao Yu. This program will control this large yield hydrogen bomb to explode after approaching the alien planet. This is the first interstellar missile, and after that, there will be a second one and a third one. Xiao Yu controlled more than 800 spacecrafts and ejected more than 100 high-yield hydrogen bombs before he stopped this uncivilized behavior of throwing objects at high altitudes. Then, he waited with some anticipation in his heart for the moment when the hydrogen bombs exploded. There is no doubt about the concealment of these interstellar missiles. This is vast space. And the nearest star is 5 light years away. So the visible light here is extremely weak. In addition, these missiles are very small in size. So it is basically certain that these missiles will not be affected by reflected visible light. Discover. Moreover, these interstellar missiles will not emit any detectable radiation during operation. So it can basically be ensured that the opponent has no ability to discover these killer weapons. The greatest possibility is that after approaching the planet, these hydrogen bombs will be detected by the other party's radar detection equipment. 
But if it reaches that distance, it doesn't matter even if the hydrogen bomb is discovered. Because the distance at that time was close enough. Xiaoyu has set up damaged and explosive devices on these missiles. That is, these hydrogen bombs will explode immediately as soon as they are attacked. Then these hydrogen bombs will destroy the atmosphere of the other planet, emit a lot of harmful radiation, and pollute the ecological environment of the other planet. If there is rainfall on the other planet, these radioactive waste will spread throughout the other planet along with the atmospheric circulation system, contaminating water sources, contaminating food, etc., eventually leaving no clean place on the entire planet's surface. According to Xiaoyu's calculation, if the Earth were to be detonated by a hundred hydrogen bombs of such huge yield within a short distance outside the atmosphere, within three years, the incidence of cancer among humans on the Earth would increase to a terrifying 37%. That is, for every 100 people on Earth, there will be 37 cancer patients. This does not include other secondary disasters. In short, this move will cause huge harm to these hateful aliens. It's so wonderful! Shall you look forward to these beautiful pictures? And little stars almost appeared in his eyes. I had good intentions and originally wanted to live in peace with you. But you attacked first. Hum! In this case, don't blame me for being unkind. Shall you thought secretly. Time passed slowly. During this time, everything was calm as usual. But Shall you can be sure that the other party must be trying his best to find him. However, they don't know yet that they have been discovered by Xiao Yu. So in order to avoid possible exposure, they must be cautious in their search and do not dare to search in a big way. In this strange silence, two days have passed and one day is left before the hydrogen bomb is detonated. Chapter 38 Attack Ever since Xiao Yu discovered the hydrogen bomb trap and was almost completely annihilated, these two civilizations have been locked in a fight to the death. One civilization will inevitably be annihilated and completely destroyed. Time passed bit by bit while waiting. And finally, it was time for the hydrogen bomb to detonate as predicted. Xiao Yu aimed all optical equipment in the direction of the planet. Fifty seconds later, Xiao Yu observed the brilliance of the first hydrogen bomb explosion. Under the strong light, Xiao Yu saw at least three small black spots similar to bases or satellites in the orbit of the planet, which were swallowed up by endless light and heat. Great! Xiao Yu was extremely excited. On the alien planet, after the hydrogen bomb exploded, there was no movement. It seemed that it was deceived by this ghost-like extraterrestrial visitor. Three minutes later, the second hydrogen bomb reached its intended target and exploded like a brilliant firework blooming in space, bringing death to Xiao Yu's enemies. Xiao Yu seemed to be able to see that scene. In the dark space, a powerful light source suddenly appeared, illuminating the darkness. But what it brought was not warmth and light, but coldness and chilling. Since this planet has an atmosphere, it is certain that it must have an atmospheric circulation system. This means that the radiation garbage brought by the hydrogen bomb will slowly spread to the world along with the atmospheric circulation system. If it is just a hydrogen bomb, it will not matter even if it spreads. Because diffusion also means dilution. And the radiation damage that a hydrogen bomb can bring is too small. But what about 10 high-yield hydrogen bombs? What about 100? Next comes the third hydrogen bomb. After the third hydrogen bomb exploded, there was finally a reaction on the planet. Shall you observe that the power of the radar beam coming from the direction of the planet increased sharply to the point where Shall you could clearly locate it. Fortunately, Shall Yu's spacecraft materials have strong radar wave absorption properties. Otherwise, there is no guarantee that Shao Yu would be discovered by the opponent's radar detection system. But those hydrogen bombs were too close. No matter how good their materials are, they still can't hide their figures under such powerful radar sweeps. Shao Yu saw countless laser beams erupting from the planet, shooting randomly in space. Shao Yu seemed to be able to feel the other party's panic. The powerful radar transmission power showed that they no longer cared about whether doing so would expose their traces. The messy laser beam showed that they were in a panic and just wanted to destroy all hydrogen bombs immediately and prevent them from exploding over their own planet. Consider whether what you are doing is useful. Shall you did not use this opportunity to attack the opponent, but continued to hide in the darkness, staring coldly at the panicked aliens. Launching an attack means exposing his traces. And if he continues to hide, Shall you will get more opportunities. There isn't much time left for these aliens. Because a hydrogen bomb will arrive at the predetermined orbit almost every few minutes. So all the hydrogen bombs will explode within a few hours. If these aliens want to stop them, they must hide them within a few hours. Find all the small and nasty creatures in the dark space. 
Shall you just watch silently? After a few hours, silence returned to space. Xiao Yu did some statistics and found that of the 85 hydrogen bombs he launched, a total of 69 exploded, and 16 of the hydrogen bombs were intercepted by the opponent. This is an amazing result. This is the first time Xiao Yu has caused substantial harm to the opponent. They already know that their location has been exposed. I wonder how they will choose to respond next. Xiao Yu was very interested in this, and he was even vaguely looking forward to the performance of these aliens. The first time he encountered an alien civilization, it had a technological level similar to his own. It has to be said that Xiao Yu was really lucky. In this collision of civilizations, Xiao Yu will accumulate valuable experience in interstellar warfare. If it were me, what would I do? Xiao Yu began to think about this problem and slowly calculated. Well, first of all, I will find a way to hide myself first. Otherwise, I can't guarantee whether I will be hit like this again. So, how can a planet be hidden? First of all, Conventional methods, such as radio silence, visible light shielding and other means will definitely be used. But they have been mastered by me now. Even if I use these means, they will not work. I can always use simple calculate their positions. Change the current orbit? This is even more unreliable. God knows how much energy it will consume to change the orbit of a planet. Such energy will 100% emit a huge amount of radiation that cannot be shielded. In this way doing it will only expose you more completely. Xiao Yu thought about it, and couldn't think of a way to hide this planet again. I couldn't help but look forward to the other party's performance even more. If he doesn't think of a way to hide it, he will only continue to be hit by Xiao Yu uninterruptedly. If he wants to hide it, Xiao Yu really can't think of a way. Or I will simply give up the idea of hiding, and choose to find the other party regardless of the consequences. Both parties are exposed at the same time, or hidden at the same time. This is the balance, Xiao Yu thought. Maybe they will choose this method. Well, I have to prepare in advance and try not to be found out by the other party. Xiao Yu immediately began to speculate on what method the other party might use to find him. Perhaps it will be a high-intensity radar beam scanning the entire space? Or emitting a high-intensity light source to search through the visible light band? Xiao Yu was still thinking and began to modify his fleet without being exposed in order to avoid various detection methods that the other party might come while transforming the fleet. Xiao Yu also launched about 50 interstellar missiles one after another through ejection. This method cannot completely eliminate the opponent in a short period of time, but it can fundamentally cut off the opponent's vitality. It may last for hundreds of thousands of years. Due to harmful radiation, the creatures on this planet will be destroyed. They will all become extinct. Anyway, Xiao Yu has a lot of time. There are still thousands of years left in the long journey. He is also idle. It is not bad to kill an enemy easily. During this period of time, the planet no longer cared about the problem of exposure, and always turned on various detection methods to the maximum power. This also caused Xiao Yu's nuclear bomb hit rate to plummet. 50 interstellar missiles could reach only 12 bombs exploded at the exact location, and the rest were all intercepted. I'm at odds with you, Xiao Yu thought indifferently. Hydrogen bombs? I have a lot of them. So many that you can eat them as jelly beans. Even if only one out of a hundred can explode. I can steal your exhausted. This wonderful time lasted for a full month. Within this month, the planet has always maintained a defensive posture, and the large-scale detection methods expected by Xiao Yu have never arrived. A month later, the alien planet made an action that was beyond Xiao Yu's expectation. A powerful beam of light suddenly burst out from a certain part of the planet. Xiao Yu immediately analyzed it. It was the beam of a very powerful nuclear fusion engine. What are they going to do? Change their orbit? Are they not that stupid? Even a blind person can see such a bright beam. Looking at this incredible scene, Xiao Yu suddenly became confused. But the next moment, Xiao Yu understood he came over. And at the same time, he began to sigh sincerely. It is indeed shameless. It turns out that a civilization ten years more advanced than me would actually have such a method. In Xiao Yu's previous reasoning, it was impossible for them to hide. And they would only choose to find Xiao Yu so that both parties could get back to the same starting line. However, they found the possibility to hide again amid the impossibility. That is high-power signal interference, including ultraviolet, infrared, visible light bands, Rengen rays, gamma rays, neutrinos, etc. All-weather signal interference at 360 degrees without blind spots. Under this powerful signal interference, Xiaoyu suddenly became a blind man, 
unable to see or observe anything. Xiao Yu suddenly went crazy. Can you use such shameless means? Faced with such an offensive, Xiao Yu had no choice but to stay where he was and wait for the signal interference to pass. If Xiao Yu's estimate is not wrong, the other party will disappear when the interference dissipates. At that time, it will not be that simple to find the other party. When he was on the earth, Xiao Yu heard a saying that there is no morality in wars between races. The purpose is to kill each other. As long as it is effective, any despicable means are encouraged. The current situation is more serious than a war between races. This is a conflict between different interstellar civilizations. Here, there is even less morality at all. The so-called despicability of the other party is a complement to one's own methods. There is no doubt that Xiao Yu has just praised the other party's methods. This method of making oneself invisible again is a stroke of genius. In fact, speaking of it, it doesn't have much technical content. However, this method is within the blind corner of thinking. And most people really can't think of it. At least, Xiao Yu fell into a blind corner of his thinking and did not come up with such a method. Okay, let me let you go for now. When I find a way to find you, I will continue to give you nuclear bomb gift packages. Xiao Yu thought slowly and hid himself more tightly in the dark universe. Chapter 39 Three Possibilities The other party's method is indeed very vicious. It's not about the method itself, but the meaning it represents. If the other party uses all weather detection methods and wants to find Xiao Yu no matter what the cost, Xiao Yu really can't escape the other party's search. But at that point, it's a head to head fight between the two sides, and it's hard to say who will win. Although the opponent is a civilization that is nearly 10 years ahead of Xiao Yu in technology, Xiao Yu's excellent fleet control and precise control can make up for this gap. In that kind of head on situation, the most likely outcome is that both sides will suffer losses. The losing side will be exterminated, and the winning side will definitely suffer a tragic victory. But now, the other party did not choose to find him out, but chose to hide himself. That means that the other party is deliberately delaying time. They intend to bring Xiao Yu down by relying on their advantage of having the entire planet as their rear. It was delayed until Xiao Yu couldn't hold it anymore and jumped out to seek a decisive battle. At that time, they would take the initiative. Of course, Xiao Yu also has a way to break this deadlock, which is to find the other party. However, this method is really difficult to implement. If Xiao Yu can find the opponent in advance, he will regain the initiative. If he cannot find the opponent, he will be slowly dragged down by the opponent. And in the end, he will probably be completely annihilated by the opponent. The powerful radiation interference lasted for three days. After three days, the interference slowly weakened and finally disappeared. Looking at the restored clean space, Xiao Yu began to think about how to find a planet that fully conceals itself and does not emit any radiation in the absence of visible light. They chose to hide instead of finding me. This means that they are not sure of defeating me. Xiao Yu sighed. This action of the alien planet once again proved their scruples about Xiao Yu. I must find them. Otherwise, I will very likely die. Xiao Yu thought silently. I left the solar system and traveled thousands of years to get here. How can I die like this? We must find them. We must find them. Xiao Yu murmured to himself, increasing the usage rate of the central computer to 90%, and tried his best to calculate various methods. Xiao Yu thought of a way. Perhaps this method can be tried. Xiao Yu thought, operating the high precision telescope and began to scan all visible stars in the entire sky to see if any stars suddenly disappeared or became weaker. This method is very simple. It is to search the whole sky for stars that have disappeared from Xiao Yu's sight or whose luminosity has weakened because they were blocked by the alien planet. Then, Xiao Yu can calculate the orientation and distance of the alien planet by calculating the degree of weakening of the star's luminosity. But a month has passed, and Xiao Yu has gained nothing. No stars can be observed disappearing or luminosity weakening. Then, there are only three possibilities. The first possibility is that they use some kind of camouflage method to disguise the light of stars with normal luminosity. And then, they were observed by me. This possibility is unlikely. This method requires too high a technological content. The second possibility is that their planets do not block any stars recorded in my sky of heroes. Even if the stars are not recorded in the sky of heroes, I don't know about them. But this possibility is not very likely. Either, heroes' sky record has so far included more than 300 million stars. With so many stars, it is unlikely that they will block any of them. The third possibility is that they are too far away from me. If the distance exceeds 30 million kilometers, 
With this precision, the number of stars that can be observed by my telescope exceeds 1 trillion. Among so many stars, most of them are some of it, I haven't recorded yet. The third possibility is the most likely. Xiao Yu came to the conclusion, and then had to give up trying to find them through this method. Time passed slowly bit by bit. Gradually, one month passed, two months passed, and half a year passed. Both sides have remained silent, and no one dares to take the initiative. Xiao Yu didn't know what the other party was doing specifically. Anyway, Xiao Yu had been looking for ways to find out the other party during this period of time. But for six months, there has been basically no progress. In the past six months, Xiao Yu has experienced at least tens of thousands of failures. Xiao Yu once tried to find them through gravitational acceleration and detection of infrared band radiation. However, perhaps because the distance was too far, the gravitational acceleration exerted by the star on Xiao Yu's fleet was too weak, and the infrared band radiation was too weak. It was almost imperceptible. In desperation, Xiao Yu gave up this method. Xiao Yu once again confirmed that the distance between the other party and himself was at least 30 million kilometers away. Or can I choose to escape? With such a long distance, even if their interstellar missiles reach a speed of 3,000 kilometers per second, it will take more than three hours to reach me. Whether it is interception or avoidance, I can do it. High power laser cannons are almost useless at such a distance. Xiao Yu slowly began to think about it. After thinking for a while, Xiao Yu had to reluctantly give up his escape plan. The best destination for wandering planets is to find a stable star and enter its orbit. Judging from the overlap between their orbits and mine, their target is probably also Tian Yuan 4. It is impossible for me if they change their destinations. Their planets are probably unlikely to change their destinations. And how can one star system accommodate two civilizations? Only one of us is destined to survive. Xiao Yu sighed and continued to make plans to find the other party and eliminate them. After another failure, Xiao Yu Qiang cheered up and put the latest plan into the feasibility test program. After only half a second, the results came out. After passing 37,000 obstacles, this plan was defeated by the 37,001 obstacle. This means that this plan still doesn't work. No, there must be a way. There must be a way. I am the most outstanding one among 7 billion human beings. How could I lose? I will definitely not lose. Xiao Yu secretly encouraged himself in his heart. But after his next plan was still shot, Xiao Yu gradually had some thoughts of giving up on himself. Damn, if it doesn't work, I'll jump out first and fight head on. I don't believe I can't defeat them. Xiao Yu's heart was furious. His impulse and strong reason were conflicting with each other. Xiao Yu gritted his teeth and still couldn't calm down. Come. Xiao Yu thought of the program he compiled when he just left the solar system. After a quick search, Xiao Yu dug out the program from a corner of the huge memory. After running, the three-dimensional projector projected a figure in the cabin. This girl is Chinemo. She just stood there quietly, looking at Xiao Yu with a smile. Her eyes were very gentle and calm, as if there was an invisible warm breath emanating from her body slowly soothing Xiao Yu's increasingly irritable mind. Xiao Yu remembered what Chen Emma once said to him when he was on Earth. That was when Xiao Yu had just led a group of researchers under him to solve a technical problem that the outside world thought could not be solved. Chen Mo's big eyes turned into crescents. She wiped the sweat on her forehead with the back of her hand and breathed softly. Said Xiao Li, Director Xiao, you are so powerful. I knew you would find a way. At that time, Chen Mo's face was slightly red. She was wearing a white hat and looked at Xiao Yu with admiration. I knew you would find a way. Looking at the virtual Chinemo in front of him, Xiao Yu fell into memories. Xiao Yu trembled and compiled a short program. After running it, Chin Mo's shadow in front of him said these words again. I knew you would find a way. Yes, I will definitely find a way. Xiao Yu murmured to himself, and his irritable mind gradually calmed down. Xiao Yu kept the three dimensional projector illuminated. Under Chin Mo's gaze, he plunged into the ocean of data and began to calculate possible plans one by one. Then, he conducted feasibility tests on each plan. Another month has passed, and there is still no movement in the silent and dark space. It seems that alien civilization has not yet found a way to find Xiao Yu. But today, Xiao Yu suddenly noticed something unusual. Through the weak reflection of starlight, the high precision optical telescope on Xiao Yu's spacecraft accidentally saw something about a few cubic meters in size floating aimlessly in space. This thing has a regular rectangular appearance, with several signal transmitter-like things extending out from one side. Xiao Yu's mood immediately became tense. 
Do I know it? It's not that simple. It must be like this. When the signal interferes, while they are invisible, they also release a lot of detectors to randomly detect aimlessly in space. If traces of me are found, this instrument will broadcast in space and then they will receive the signal. This way, they can avoid exposing their own positions and find out my position. The more Xiao Yu thought about it, the more frightened he became. Fortunately, I discovered this thing in advance and it didn't discover me in advance. Xiao Yu began to feel lucky. If this instrument performs space broadcasting, Xiao Yu will definitely be able to receive the signal. Since this instrument is not performing space broadcast, it means that it has not discovered Xiao Yu yet. Xiao Yu immediately had a plan to destroy it. Chapter 40 Gravitational Lensing The method of destroying enemy detectors is very simple. It is still the ejection device used to launch interstellar missiles. But the interstellar missiles are replaced with conventional high-explosive ammunition. To deal with such small things, it is a bit wasteful to use hydrogen bombs. After calculating the trajectory, Xiao Yu aimed at the instrument and launched the ammunition. 70 seconds later, the high explosive ammunition passed through a distance of several thousand kilometers and met the detection instrument of the alien civilization head on. Then, the preset detonation device was activated and the ammunition was detonated, bursting into a ball of fire in the air. The detection instrument was like a kite with its string broken spinning in circles without knowing where it had been. Time is getting more and more urgent. Although this instrument did not detect Xiao Yu, Xiao Yu could not guarantee whether the next instrument would find him before he discovered it. It's like there is a sharp sword hanging above your head at any time, and it can be cut down at any time. This feeling of being threatened at any time is not good. The two civilizations in the dark universe are trying to find each other first. Whoever finds the opponent first will have a huge advantage. In the subsequent collision between the two civilizations, the winning rate can be increased by at least 30 percentage points. The current situation is not optimistic. The other party has found an effective method. But Xiao Yu has not found his own method yet. The other party can use this method of releasing some detectors to wander randomly in space. But Xiao Yu cannot. The reason is simple. To achieve effective signal coverage and accommodate a huge search area, God knows how many detectors are needed. The other party has its own planet. With its own planet as a material base the other party can obtain unlimited materials and build so many detectors. But Xiao Yu only has one fleet. Xiao Yu's materials are limited and cannot be compared with the other party. Xiao Yu must find another way to fight against the opponent. Otherwise, Xiao Yu could only pray for his good luck to prevent himself from being discovered by the opponent. However, what if luck can be good for one year, 10 years, 50 years, or 100 years? There are still several thousand years left before reaching the Tianyuan 4 galaxy. Moreover, Xiao Yu cannot guarantee that he will be able to defeat the opponent after reaching the Tianyuan 4 star system. Xiao Yu continued to make calculations. Under Chen Mo's gaze, he suppressed his self destruction and made calculations patiently. I don't know how many times I failed. And I don't know how much time has passed. Xiao Yu only knew that during this period of time, he had destroyed at least 10 more enemy detectors. Gradually, Xiao Yu's eyes brightened. Xiao Yu thought of a way. This method has passed the 40,000 detection obstacles set by Xiao Yu. This proves that this plan is feasible. Moreover, this plan does not involve a certain amount of luck like the other party's method. But that as long as it takes a certain amount of time, Xiao Yu will be able to find the other party. It's like launching a large number of detectors to randomly search for this method. The other party can use it. But Xiao Yu can't. Similarly, Xiao Yu can use this method. But the other party can't. That is, gravitational lensing. The concept of gravitational lensing was first proposed and predicted by Einstein, the greatest scientist in human history. Simply put, gravitational lensing means that when starlight passes around a massive star, the light that originally travels in a straight line will be it is bent due to the gravitational pull of the massive star, which looks like a slight shift in the position of the protostar. Xiao Yu knew that the mass of this alien civilization's planet was greater than that of the Earth. It is certain that gravitational lensing will also occur around this planet. However, on a cosmic scale, the mass of this planet is still too small, and the gravitational lensing effect may be negligible. This means that an instrument with a very high precision is required to observe in which direction the gravitational lensing phenomenon occurs. The next thing is very simple. As long as Xiao Yu observes which direction the gravitational lensing phenomenon occurs, and then through a series of precise calculations, he can calculate the opponent's position. This is also the reason why Xiao Yu can use this method, but the other party cannot. 
Although Xiaoyu's fleet has a total mass of tens of millions of tons. Compared with a planet, it can be regarded as an ant and can be ignored. It is so difficult to observe the gravitational lensing phenomenon of a planet, let alone the gravitational lensing of Xiaoyu's fleet. At least, Xiaoyu estimated that a civilization that is thousands of years ahead of his own technology might be able to observe it. But this alien civilization definitely does not have this ability. The position of the original star in the sky has been recorded in Xiaoyu's sky record of heroes. The offset position can be obtained by observing now. What Xiaoyu has to do is very simple. That is, reobserve all the visible stars in the entire sky, and then compare them with the data in the sky of heroes record to see where the starlight has shifted. But it is easy to say, but not easy to do. This requires extremely high precision observation instruments and a huge amount of data calculations. Xiaoyu prepared for half a year to do this. Countless data were collected into the central computer. After being processed by the central computer, the results were compared with the original data in the hero's sky record. One star after another was eliminated by Xiaoyu. Every star that is excluded proves that there is no trace of the enemy in this direction. Gradually, Xiaoyu's search range became smaller and smaller. After the past three months, Shall you search range of 360 degrees in the entire sky has been reduced to a range of 160 degrees in less than half of the sky. The next star to be measured is a star located in the constellation Canis Major, which humans usually call Military City 1. Military Market 1 is 500 light years away from the sun. Before, humans had no detailed data about Military Market 1. However, when compiling the heavenly records of the heroes, Shall you measured Military Market 1 and collected its information, mass, volume, spectral type and other data. As soon as Jiangjun City observed it again, Xiaoyu began to analyze its various data and then compared it with the original data. Huh? When comparing, Xiaoyu found an extremely small gap. After removing the error caused by the movement of its own position, Junqiai's position is slightly offset from the original position and its right ascension and declination are approximately 19 millionths of a degree higher than the original position. Offset, Xiaoyu immediately caught this message and immediately started a second review. The results of the re-examination came out quickly, and the conclusion remained unchanged. Military Market 1 did experience an unexplained slight shift. After eliminating all possibilities, the alien planet hidden somewhere between himself and Junqiai became the only explanation. Xiaoyu became excited and immediately took Junqiai as the center of the circle and measured several stars on the celestial sphere and around Junqiai. The results showed that the stars around Junqiai had all undergone changes in size. Unequal offsets. Okay, I finally found you, Xiaoyu murmured, feeling extremely excited. With these data, Xiaoyu calculated the specific location of the alien planet in only 30 seconds. They are located in the direction of Canis Major, about 32 million kilometers away from Xiaoyu. It's disrespectful to come back without reciprocating. If you launch a detector to find me, I will launch a hydrogen bomb back to you and wait and see. Xiaoyu immediately prepared for launch and launched a large yield hydrogen bomb. It is expected that in three months, the hydrogen bomb will reach the predetermined location and then explode. After searching for more than a year, Xiaoyu found the other party. The anger that had been suppressed for a year suddenly burst out. Xiaoyu couldn't wait to see the scene of the hydrogen bomb explosion and express his resentment. However, Xiaoyu's behavior is still under rational control. Xiaoyu deliberately launched the second batch of hydrogen bombs 10 days after the first one. This batch of hydrogen bombs contained a total of 20. After five days of silence, Xiaoyu launched the third batch of 12 hydrogen bombs. Xiaoyu deliberately made his launch time and quantity irregular. In this way, the opponent would not be able to organize effective interception methods and they would become frightened birds, always worried about the attack of hydrogen bombs, and always living in the shadow of the incoming hydrogen bomb. Down. Because they never know when the next hydrogen bomb will arrive. Enjoy the hydrogen bomb feast. You bastards! Xiaoyu thought viciously. In three months, Xiaoyu launched a total of about 300 hydrogen bombs. Even if only 30 of these 300 hydrogen bombs can explode, they will bring extremely powerful radiation disaster to the planet. Xiaoyu even made an estimate that if a hydrogen bomb of the same equivalent was exploded on the Earth, the radiation hazards caused by it would cause various cancers, infant deformities, etc., and the human population would collapse within a hundred years. The population of 7 billion dropped to less than 100 million. This basically means the annihilation of the race. Of course, 
Xiaoyi didn't know the body structure, radiation resistance level, etc. of these aliens. But judging from their panic response last time, they were also very afraid of these hydrogen bombs. Blow it up! Blow it up! The scheduled explosion time has come. Xiaoyu's eyes lit up, and he stared nervously at the calculated direction of the planet. In the distance, a faint burst of light suddenly burst out, and it was fleeting. Its brightness was not even as bright as some distant and dim stars. But that planet is more than 30 million kilometers away from Xiaoyu. And even at such a long distance, the light it emits can still be observed by Xiaoyu. And its intensity can be imagined. Xiaoyu felt excited and immediately made a calculation on it. The calculation results show that this burst of fire was the first hydrogen bomb launched by Xiaoyu. Under this burst of firelight, Xiaoyu also observed the faint light reflected by the planet. This shows that everything is as Xiaoyu expected. Their planet is indeed at that location. Chapter 41 Frontal Battlefield Xiaoyu could almost imagine those hateful aliens looking furious. Xiaoyu, who has mastered the technology of gravitational lens, will no longer be afraid of any of their hidden methods. Because, in Xiaoyu's technological plan, if it develops at normal speed for hundreds of years, Xiaoyu will not be able to master the technology of shielding gravitational lenses. Those aliens are only 10 years ahead of Xiaoyu. This means that even if they use large-scale interference methods again and hide their figures again, Xiaoyu will find them and continue to harass them continuously. And after being harassed by Xiaoyu for more than 100 years, they may have been harassed to extinction. Xiaoyu's mood was extremely cheerful. After the hydrogen bomb exploded, there was a brief silence on the planet. After more than 10 minutes, countless powerful radar beams and laser beams were released, sweeping around in space. But in the first wave of offensive, Xiaoyu only threw one hydrogen bomb. Their actions were just useless. Xiaoyu just turned on the detection and receiving equipment to the maximum power, but did not release any radiation himself. Xiaoyu is like a ghost in the dark night, quietly watching the increasingly crazy enemies, waiting for their demise. The all-round defense method of the alien planet stopped after two days. Then, another day passed. Xiaoyu's second batch of nuclear bombs arrived. In the second batch, 15 of the 20 nuclear bombs exploded, and 5 were intercepted. This time, their all-round defense lasted for 5 days. After their all-round defense measures ceased, the third batch of nuclear bombs arrived. Seeing the other party being teased around under his own tricks, Xiaoyu let out a strong breath of evil in his heart. Xiaoyu almost laughed. Xiaoyu could almost imagine a gloomy and bleak scene on an alien planet. Or, their current lives are transferred to underground radiation-proof bases, lingering like groundhogs. Xiaoyu estimated that if it were a human being, under such a blow, he would have caused the death of billions of humans by now. With fields barren, water sources polluted, large-scale plagues rampant, and society collapse, unable to maintain normal social order. In other words, under such circumstances, mankind is not far from the end of the world. Of course, the situation of these aliens may be better than that of humans. After all, their current technology is much more advanced than that of humans at that time. While watching the other party, Xiaoyu began to nervously develop new weapons. Existing weapons each have their own limitations, such as interstellar missiles, whose fastest speed is only a few thousand kilometers per second, which is really too slow in space where millions of kilometers are often measured. Moreover, although interstellar missiles are powerful, they are easily intercepted by laser cannons. Until new materials that can defend against laser cannon strikes are developed, interstellar missiles are not practical weapons. Secondly, there are various laser weapons. This weapon also has its limitations. That is, it consumes a lot of energy and the strike range is too small. But it also has its own advantages. That is, at this stage, in space, Laser weapons are almost undefendable. The beam emitted by a laser weapon is not visible light in the usual sense, but extremely high-frequency invisible light, so it cannot be reflected by mirrors. The only defense method is to cover it with something to prevent it from shining directly on the hull. This kind of defense method is not practical for Xiaoyu. But the enemy is an entire planet, and the situation is different from Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu does not expect to use laser cannons to destroy the opponent. So the hope of destroying the opponent still depends on nuclear bombs. Xiaoyu silently made calculations, calculating the opponent's next possible move, and calculating how to deal with the opponent's next step. They should have noticed that I have mastered the method of finding them. So the next step is to find me no matter what the cost, and then start a large-scale head-on confrontation. Xiaoyu thought he said, 
in a head-to-head -head confrontation. The high-speed machine gun will come in handy. Well, prepare in advance. The three largest spaceships. The Sun, the Yuanhang, and the Tian Yuan, while serving as the core of the fleet, also assume the responsibilities of the weapons processing plant, equipment maintenance plant, etc. Therefore, during this period of time, Xiao Yu's various equipment was fully activated, and a steady stream of munitions and supplies were produced and equipped in the barrel of the gun, ready to be fired at any time. At the same time, thousands of detection satellites were also produced by Xiao Yu. These satellites are extremely small and have extremely simple functions. They are small in size for easy concealment and simple in function because they only need to perform detection functions. Xiao Yu does not expect these satellites to cause a blow to the enemy. When an interstellar war occurs, these satellites will become Xiao Yu's eyes, collecting various intelligence on the battlefield for Xiao Yu. In addition, Xiao Yu has also modified a large number of small missiles. These missiles are made of highly concealable materials. Their volume and mass are only one hundredth of that of interstellar missiles, and their warheads use conventional high explosive ammunition. This means that although they are far less powerful than hydrogen bombs, they will have extremely high concealment and flexibility, are cheap, and can be manufactured in large quantities. The intermittent nuclear strikes lasted for half a year. Finally, the alien planet seemed to have had enough of Xiao Yu's harassment. Unable to bear it, they finally used the ultimate method. Large scale. All sky. No dead spot detection method. Under this detection method, Xiao Yu could no longer hide his figure. So Xiao Yu simply stood up on his own. Have you finally chosen to fight hard? Come on! I've been waiting for a long time! At this moment, Xiao Yu felt a little excited in his heart. Xiao Yu could already guess the opponent's battle plan. They originally planned to hide themselves, and then secretly consume Xiao Yu's strength. After Xiao Yu's strength dropped to a certain level, they would choose to fight Xiao Yu head on. In this way, they can capture Xiao Yu without any danger. But the development of things was exactly the opposite. Not only did they fail to find Xiao Yu, but Xiao Yu discovered his traces. They couldn't stand being hit by hundreds of nuclear bombs from Xiao Yu. So they had no choice but to choose this road. After all, if they don't fight hard, they may lose the ability to fight with Xiao Yu. With a previous harassment that lasted for half a year, Xiao Yu was certain that he had caused great damage to them. Otherwise, they would not have been able to make such a desperate move to fight head on. Being able to force the opponent to make such an action means that in this war, Xiao Yu's winning rate has increased by at least 30 percentage points compared to before. This is the benefit of hiding in the dark. Xiao Yu saw their interstellar fleet for the first time. Most of Xiao Yu's spaceships adopt a butterfly or circular structure which allows the spacecraft hull to receive even force and prevent it from being destroyed by strong overload. However, the other party's spaceship is different from Xiao Yu's. Their spaceships all adopt a triangular structure, and their length, volume, etc. are all smaller than Xiao Yu's. Maybe they have tougher materials and stress-bearing structures. Xiao Yu thought, the reduction in size means greater flexibility, and accordingly, the endurance and firepower will be weakened. It can be said that each has its advantages. Xiao Yu is not afraid of frontal war in space. This alien space team has a total of more than 500 spaceships. Among them, there is a flagship spacecraft that is half the size of a county-level spacecraft. Two spaceships are equivalent in size to Xiao Yu's county-level spacecraft. And the remaining are all small spacecraft smaller than village-level and township-level spacecrafts. Xiao Yu no longer concealed his traces. He led the remaining 800 or so spaceships started their nuclear fusion engines, and flew forward mightily. The two sides are 30 million kilometers apart and approaching at a speed of 200 kilometers per second. In about 40 hours, the two sides will meet head-on. 20 hours later, the two sides were 15 million kilometers apart. Shall you release the detection satellite and hit in space first? A large-scale space war will be unlike any type of war on Earth, because the battlefield is extremely large, may occupy hundreds of thousands of kilometers of space and is three-dimensional. In this case, it will be impossible to rely on the detection capabilities of a single spacecraft to collect intelligence. Therefore, the existence of detection satellites is necessary. This helps Xiao Yu grasp the overall situation of the battlefield so that he can better command the battle. This is the most reasonable method of space warfare calculated by Xiao Yu after tens of millions of simulations. Thirty hours later, the two sides were eight million kilometers apart. At this position, the sun and the Yuanhang gradually slowed down, leading the escorting more than a hundred village level 
and township-level spacecraft to break away from the large force. All the remaining spaceships surrounded the Tianyuan and rushed towards the battlefield with murderous intent. It is impossible for Xiaoyu to put all his strength into the battlefield at once. When a war breaks out, these spaceships will become Xiaoyu's rear. 35 hours later, the two sides were 4 million kilometers apart. The first wave of confrontation is coming soon. A large number of small missiles were launched by Xiaoyu. These missiles are extremely fast and extremely concealed, which makes interception difficult. Moreover, using these small missiles to consume the opponent's fuel reserves is also a cost-effective deal. 40 hours later, the two sides were 500,000 kilometers apart, and the high-speed machine gun specially modified by Xiaoyu began to fire. The overwhelming bullets began to rush forward. These bullets have extremely high initial velocity and are smaller in size. They are basically the same as ordinary bullets on the Earth, so they will be impossible to intercept. These bullets rely primarily on extremely high kinetic energy to produce their destructive power. This will be the most commonly used and most abundant weapon in interstellar warfare at this stage. Chapter 42 Data Flood Before the two sides actually start to contact, a large number of micro-missiles and an overwhelming torrent of bullets will first cause damage to the other side. Before the shield technology is truly put into practice, micro-missiles and ordinary bullets will become the most used weapons on the battlefield because of their excellent characteristics of being difficult to intercept and cheap. This conclusion can be reached thanks to the countless deductions made by Xiaoyu's huge computing power. Xiaoyu conducted a large-scale simulation deduction for this destined interstellar war. During the deduction, Xiaoyu tried tens of thousands of different methods of war and selected the most economical and efficient one. Kind. That is, conventional weapons are the main combat power. High-energy laser cannons are the high-end combat power. Micro-laser guns are the main defense power. And large-yield nuclear bombs are the ultimate combat power. Xiaoyu didn't know whether the other party also had this understanding. But after all, the other party was also a civilization. And there would definitely be countless amazing people among them. Their understanding of war would probably be the same as his own. In other words, they probably also use the same tactics as themselves. However, even if the opponent uses the same method as Xiaoyu and launches a large number of micro-missiles and ordinary bullets in the early stage, Xiaoyu has a way to deal with it. Xiaoyu secretly developed a laser launcher that can defend against micro-missiles and ordinary bullets. However, it has not been tested in actual combat, and it is unclear how effective it will be. Another half hour passed, and the two sides were 100,000 kilometers apart. At this distance, if the other party adopts the same method as Xiaoyu, then Xiaoyu will now be greeted by a frenzy of strikes from micro-missiles and ordinary bullets. Don't pin your hopes of victory on the enemy's stupidity. Xiaoyu muttered silently. The opponent is an entire civilization. Although they are definitely inferior to me. We can't underestimate them. Then come out. Giant flash. Bomb. That's right. Giant flashbangs. This is a kind of ammunition specially developed by Xiaoyu for lighting in space. Powered by a nuclear fusion engine. It can provide bright flash bombs for tens of thousands of kilometers in radius. Xiaoyu is already certain that the other party is a dark civilization. A creature that lives in the dark like a bat. Visible light is redundant and not needed for them. Then the strong light emitted by Xiaoyu's giant flash bomb may bring a certain blow to the opponent while providing himself with light. Three huge munitions were launched from the launch pad of the Tianyuan spacecraft and flew to their respective positions. 30 seconds later, three giant flash bombs exploded together. Suddenly, it was as if three small suns suddenly appeared in the space illuminating a place with a radius of hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Xiaoyu saw that tens of thousands of kilometers away, the formation of the alien fleet was a little scattered. Xiaoyu immediately became excited. This means that the giant flash bomb has had a little impact on them. At the same time, with the help of the bright light emitted by the giant flash bomb, Xiaoyu's optical equipment observed a dense torrent of bullets flying rapidly towards him in front of him. It is expected that in 10 seconds, these torn of bullets will hit his spaceship head-on. Sure enough, you can't underestimate the enemy. They have indeed mastered such combat skills. However, they don't seem to have micro-missiles. Xiaoyu thought to himself. These space bullets are obviously different from the bullets on the Earth. First of all, because of their small size, their speed is extremely high, reaching at least 5,000 kilometers per second. This means that if you are unlucky and happen to be hit by a bullet in a weak point of the spacecraft, and then damage the engine. A bullet may destroy a spacecraft. Fortunately, fortunately, I was prepared. 
Xiaoyu immediately gave the order. Activate the laser defense system. The so-called laser defense system is not that kind of energy shield. Xiaoyu's technology has not yet developed to that extent. This is the corresponding defense method calculated after Xiaoyu deduced the tactic of using ordinary bullets and micro-missiles to attack the enemy. The laser defense system is a defense system that uses a large number of low-power laser guns installed on the spacecraft to intercept ordinary bullets and micro-missiles so that they will not hit itself. The giant flash bomb fired before was also part of the laser defense system. The reason is simple. Because in the universe, these tiny bullets will basically not be observed unless there is a powerful light source. Shall you can capture the trajectory with the help of light reflection and then control the laser gun to destroy it. A rough estimate of the number of bullets Shall you faced was at least tens of millions. The number of Shall you spaceships participating in the battle was more than 600. And there were tens of thousands of miniature low-power laser guns installed on them. Let you see the power of human intelligence with powerful computing power. Shall you thought proudly. And the huge computing power was immediately activated. The central computer usage rate soared to 95%. Immediately, Shao Yu was the trajectory of each of the tens of millions of bullets you observed was calculated. Then, the bullets that could not hit him were released by Shao Yu. And the bullets that would hit his own spacecraft were released by Shao Yu. You controlled each micro laser gun and started to intercept. At the same time, he calculated the trajectories of tens of millions of bullets. And then controlled tens of thousands of micro laser guns to intercept. While intercepting, Shao Yu also controlled more than 600 spacecrafts and always watch the opponent's movements. The amount of calculation required is huge. But this huge torrent of calculations was completely digested by Xiao Yu. Immediately, countless high-energy lasers and the invisible light band crisscrossed the universe. The muzzle of the laser gun rotated, accurately capturing the bullets moving at a high speed of 5,000 kilometers per second, and then destroying them mercilessly. Because the bullet body is extremely small, even a micro-laser gun can vaporize a bullet in only a few tenths of a second. In these 10 seconds, Xiao Yu demonstrated breathtaking precise control capabilities. The trajectory of every bullet, every strike of a laser gun, and even every tiny dodge movement of every spaceship are all linked to the situation on the entire battlefield. Throughout the entire process, Xiao Yu did not waste any time or energy. The entire fleet and tens of thousands of laser guns cooperated to the point of superb tacit understanding. No bullet will be chased by two laser guns at the same time and no bullet will be ignored by the laser gun. It often happens that a spaceship in the rear aims at another spacecraft and launches a laser gun. But the spacecraft dodges the moment before the laser gun is launched. This time of dodging not only avoids the laser behind also dodged a bullet flying from the front. Then the bullet was directly destroyed by the laser. Countless laser guns and more than 600 spacecraft performed a dazzling and breathtaking performance in space. This torrent of bullets was all dealt with by Xiao Yu within 10 seconds. These tens of millions of bullets only destroyed 10 of Xiaoyu's village-level spaceships and slightly damaged dozens of them. This is because there are too many bullets, too few laser guns, and limited hardware conditions. So there is really no way. Tens of millions of bullets only cause so little damage to Xiaoyu. This record is enough for Xiaoyu to be proud of. After dealing with the torrent of bullets, Xiaoyu launched a high-power laser cannon and began to attack the opponent. At the same time, Xiao Yu nervously watched the torrent of bullets he hit. In Xiao Yu's expectation, in three seconds, it would be time for his own micro missiles and torrent of bullets to strike the opponent head on. Xiao Yu is very curious about what kind of response methods they will have. Will they also use micro laser guns for defense like him? However, even if the opponent also has a laser defense system, its efficiency will definitely not be as good as Xiao Yu. The reason is very simple Xiao Yu's entire fleet is like one person. Xiao Yu controls these spaceships like a finger. And their spaceships must be manually operated. No matter how well they are trained. They cannot achieve such a level. High efficiency represents an insurmountable gap. 3, 2, 1. Xiao Yu silently counted down. 0. In the distance. Tens of thousands of kilometers away. Countless bright fires suddenly burst out. Xiao Yu knew that they were caused by the collision of high-speed flying bullets with the hull of the spacecraft. These flames proved that his bullets hit the enemy spacecraft. At such a high speed, the energy of each bullet is many times greater than that of a grenade. One or two bullets may be resisted by the spacecraft's tough SH. L. But if the ants kill the elephant, the bullets if there are too many, they will never be able to withstand it and will only be penetrated and destroyed. As the torrent of bullets pounded their fleet, the micro-missiles also arrived. 
The speed of micro-missiles is slower than bullets. But their warheads are loaded with high explosive ammunition. And their destructive power is much greater than bullets. The destructive power of a micro-missile is comparable to hundreds of bullets. The enemy's neat flight formation began to appear chaotic. At the same time, laser beams began to appear in space to intercept these bullets. But the other party's clumsy movements made Xiaoyu almost laugh. Not only the interception efficiency is low, but also accidental damage often occurs. There are often situations where the laser beam does not intercept the bullet, but accidentally damages one's own spacecraft. Looking at the enemies in chaos, Xiaoyu controlled the high-power laser cannon and aimed at them. Just let me add more fuel to you, Xiaoyu thought, and gave the launch order without hesitation. Hundreds of powerful lasers were fired, spanning a distance of tens of thousands of kilometers, and illuminated the alien spacecraft. Chapter 43, Close Combat Currently, the two sides are 30,000 kilometers apart. Xiaoyu controlled the fleet and began to slow down, getting ready for close combat. At such a distance, the energy loss of the laser beam emitted by the laser cannon before reaching the target is already very small. These laser cannons will become another nightmare for them. Before the two sides actually came into contact, Xiaoyu had already struck them three times. The first time, it was a giant flash bomb, which slightly scattered their formation, which hated light. The second strike was an endless torrent of bullets and thousands of micro-missiles. This wave of attacks completely disrupted the opponent's attack formation and basically disrupted their attack plan. At this distance, it is the best distance for high-power laser cannons to strike. If it is too far away, the energy loss will be too great. If it is too close, the laser cannon may cause accidental damage to one's own spaceship after entering into close combat. So it cannot be used if it is too close. Now that the distance is less than 30,000 kilometers, it is the most appropriate time to use laser cannons. However, the opponent did not use laser cannons to attack Xiaoyu. This basically proves that Xiaoyu's attack has caused great damage to the opponent, leaving them in a hurry. The third strike, after the torrent of bullets and micro-missiles, was hundreds of high-energy laser beams. These laser beams will cause fundamental damage to them. These laser beams can penetrate their spacecraft causing paralysis of their internal life support systems. Shall you observe that a large amount of gas escaped from the breach in their spacecraft? The effects of the torrent of bullets and micro-missiles made Shall Yu's heart beat. Shall you even considered whether to turn around and retreat, not to fight the opponent in close combat, but to rely only on bullets and micro-missiles to eliminate the opponent. But after thinking about it, Shall you gave up this plan. The distance was too close now, and it was too late to turn around and leave. Ahead, there were still countless sparks exploding, blooming in the silent universe illuminated by giant flash bombs. From time to time, a spaceship suddenly disintegrated. Xiaoyu knew that it was because the bullet happened to hit the engine of the opponent's spacecraft. The disintegrated and exploded spacecraft erupted into a huge fire, like beautiful flowers blooming in the universe. This spectacular scene was like a silent pantomime. If there is a medium in the universe that can transmit sound, under such a sound and light effect, the scene in front of us will definitely be more heroic than countless so-called big scene Star Wars movies. The opponent's fleet has a total of more than 500 spaceships. Under Xiaoyu's attack methods, the other side has already lost at least 50 spaceships before the war has really started. At the same time, nearly 100 spaceships have been damaged. After receiving varying degrees of damage, the attack power of the entire fleet was greatly reduced. The opponent's spacecraft is indeed more advanced than Xiaoyu's spacecraft and its firepower is more intense than Xiaoyu's spacecraft. But in the tentative attack before contact, their spacecraft's battle damage rate is much higher than that of Xiaoyu's. There is no way. Xiaoyu, who has both human intelligence and powerful computing power of computers, surpasses them by a lot in terms of soft power. Xiaoyu's shooting continued. In fact, the two sides never stopped shooting at each other. There were countless bullets flying back and forth, but 70% of the bullets attacking Xiaoyu were intercepted by Xiaoyu. Only a limited part of the bullets attacking the alien fleet could be intercepted. Xiaoyu saw that after the initial panic, the opponent's fleet's formation had slowly stabilized. The bullet interception rate had also increased. And high-energy laser beams began to be emitted to destroy Xiaoyu's fleet. At the same time, the distance between the two sides has also been reduced to less than 3,000 kilometers. And the frontal battlefield of close combat is coming soon. Come on! Come on! Who is afraid of whom? Xiaoyu shouted excitedly and rushed forward without fear. The brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting began. Immediately, the fleet formations of both sides were disrupted. 
each ship's spaceship rushed into the other's fleet. Hundreds of spaceships chased each other in a vast area of tens of thousands of kilometers, fighting fiercely. At this time, thousands of microsatellites launched in advance came in handy. These extremely small satellites with extremely simple functions are quietly hidden in space. With the help of the light emitted by giant flash bombs, they collect all data on the battlefield and then transmit it to Xiaoyu to provide data reference for Xiaoyu to command the entire fleet. In the battlefield, bullets were flying randomly. Missiles were firing randomly. Spacecrafts were scurrying around. And laser beams were shooting everywhere. It was chaos. In this kind of battle situation, if any spacecraft is not careful, it will be hit from all directions and explode in an instant. This is a war scene beyond human imagination. Any attempt to describe this war pales into insignificance. There were countless bullets fired from thousands of spaceships ricocheting in all directions. Xiaoyu saw an enemy spacecraft tightly chasing one of his own spaceships, constantly firing huge amounts of bullets. Majestic. It was arrogant. But the next moment, it was hit by laser beams from several nearby spaceships and a huge number of bullets and exploded. Thousands of microsatellites are hidden in the dark space, providing Xiaoyu with real-time, comprehensive and detailed battlefield pictures. Even if it were not blocked by factors such as spaceships and firelight, Xiaoyu could grasp the flight path of every bullet in the battlefield. This means extremely large computing power requirements. The utilization rate of the central computer has reached 95%. In the main control room of the sun, tens of thousands of photon CPUs soaked in the liquid hydrogen cooling pool emitted huge heat causing the liquid hydrogen cooling pool to almost boil. Thanks to Xiaoyu's special cooling system, the heat was suppressed. Looking at this scene, Xiaoyu secretly sighed. It's fine in normal times, but when war requires a huge amount of computing power, my central computer's computing power is still a bit insufficient. After this enemy is eliminated, it's time to use the new computer construction is on the agenda. The more powerful the computing power, the more accurately Xiaoyu can control the battlefield situation. Xiaoyu has estimated that if his computing power can be doubled again, the damage rate of his own spacecraft can be based on the current level. Another 20% drop. Even if there is the influence of the chaotic situation, Xiaoyu cannot grasp all the movements on the battlefield. But with a part of the battlefield situation that he currently knows, Xiaoyu is enough to do many almost unbelievable things. Every bullet released by Xiaoyu's spaceship has been specially calculated, which means that every bullet will be used to its maximum effect by Xiaoyu and it is basically impossible for one's own bullets to accidentally damage the bullet. Condition. Because Xiaoyu calculated the ejection direction of every bullet after hitting the enemy spacecraft, Xiaoyu's huge computing power was used to the extreme, while controlling nearly 10,000 laser guns for defense. Xiaoyu also controlled a spaceship to fight with the opponent, and also controlled high-speed machine guns, high-power laser cannons, etc. to attack. A huge fleet of 600 spaceships truly became a whole under Xiaoyu's precise control. Every tiny action he makes will achieve maximum results while consuming the minimum resources. In Xiaoyu's mind, the entire battlefield is a three-dimensional animation. In this animation, every spaceship, every bullet, and every laser beam is a string of data. This string of data indicates their position, speed, direction, and energy. Then Xiaoyu will command his own spacecraft to make one action after another through comprehensive calculation of these data. It can be said that every bullet fired, every spacecraft movement, every laser beam is backed by Xiaoyu's grasp of the entire situation. After the war lasted for half an hour, Xiaoyu discovered that his previous estimate was wrong, because Xiaoyu discovered that his fleet was slowly being suppressed by the opponent. My soft power is far beyond theirs, but in terms of hard power, the gap between me and them is not as small as I had previously estimated, even if Xiaoyu has such precise control. Overall, in close combat, the damage rate of Xiaoyu's spaceship is actually higher than that of the opponent. This means that Xiaoyu's soft power is not enough to make up for the gap in hard power. The brutal war continues. In this war, the most eye-catching performance was the opponent's flagship, which was the largest. This spaceship has the strongest armor and the most complete defense methods. Moreover, there is a special attack method on it that Xiaoyu has not yet analyzed. It is like a terrifying killer swimming in the ocean of war. It only takes less than a minute to devour a small fish. The opponent's flagship is larger than the Tianyuan. And in addition to the flagship, the opponent also has two large spaceships that are no less than the Tianyuan. Therefore, although some of the enemy's spaceships have been eliminated before, 
Xiao Yu's control over the fleet is much higher than that of his opponents. But under the suppression of these three large spaceships, the situation on the entire battlefield is not of great concern to Xiao Yu. Optimism. If my computing power can be doubled, maybe, relying only on these 600 spaceships, I can even the situation. Hey, Xiao Yu secretly sighed. So far, the number of our own spaceships that have been destroyed is even. There were 80 class spacecraft and 15 Xion class spacecraft. The Tian Yuan was slightly injured and still had the ability to attack. Except for the spacecraft that was killed at the beginning. A total of 60 of the opponent's 400 spacecraft were destroyed. But in the end the three huge spaceships still have attack power and maneuverability. And have not suffered much damage. When fighting head on. The opponent's advantage in hard power is revealed. Their spaceship is faster than Xiao Yu's. Has more firepower than Xiao Yu's spacecraft. And even has better maneuverability than Xiao Yu's spacecraft. If Xiao Yu's control was not much higher than that of his opponent, Xiao Yu would have been completely defeated. Being able to reach such a situation is enough to prove Xiao Yu's inhuman strength. Presumably, Xiao Yu's fleet has left a nightmare-like impression on those aliens. Damn! This can't go on like this! Please add some more strength! Xiao Yu cursed secretly, and controlled the Yuan Hang and 40 reserve spaceships to join the battle group. Chapter 44 Primary Energy Weapons Because it did not master long-distance communication technology, the flagship of Xiao Yu's fleet, the sun, could not leave the battlefield too far. Because if it is too far away, the delay of the signal will have a huge and fatal impact on the maneuverability of the spacecraft. And the flexibility of the spacecraft will be greatly reduced. In such a fierce battle situation, a spacecraft that loses its flexibility is equivalent to being in space. Hit the target. Now, the sun is 50,000 kilometers away from the main battlefield and the delay of most spacecraft is within one-fifth of a second, which is barely acceptable. After confirming his safety under the monitoring of thousands of microsatellites, Xiao Yu launched the escorting Yuan Hang and 40 additional backup spacecraft into the battlefield. The sun was still sitting in the rear. In any case, the sun cannot participate in the battle. Although the sun is the spacecraft with the most intense firepower, the most complete defense, and the largest tonnage in volume, because the sun is Xiao Yu's flagship and must be protected under the strictest protection. Xiao Yu does not allow any accidents to occur to the sun. If something unexpected happened to the sun, Xiao Yu would have worked hard for thousands of years and returned to before liberation overnight. As 40 spaceships led by the Yuan voyage also joined the battlefield, the battle became more intense. However, with the addition of Yuan Hang, Xiao Yu still cannot suppress the opponent in terms of high-end combat power because the opponent's flagship is really too powerful. The Yuan Hang and Tian Yuan are both large spacecrafts, with a class of 200,000 tons. The other party's flagship is at least half larger than the Yuan Hang and Tian Yuan, which means they are at least 300,000 tons. Even bigger than Xiao Yu. The largest spaceship, the Sun, is one size larger. The most important thing is that the opponent's flagship is equipped with a new type of weapon. The launcher of this weapon is similar to Xiao Yu's high-speed machine gun. But what it fires is not a bullet, but a blue substance similar to an energy group. And it is extremely fast. Xiao Yu has done it a rough estimate shows that the speed of this strange cannonball is at least 30% of the speed of light, which is 90,000 kilometers per second. At such a speed, it is impossible for Xiao Yu's spacecraft to avoid it. It can even be said that at least half of the spaceships lost by Xiao Yu were destroyed by this strange weapon. If it weren't for Xiao Yu's extremely precise control of the fleet that barely suppressed the opponent, Xiao Yu doubted whether he would be wiped out by the opponent's group. Fortunately, this kind of weapon does not seem to be able to be launched over long distances. It consumes extremely energy and requires a lot of preparation time before each launch. Otherwise, Xiao Yu, who is at the rear, would have to worry about the safety of his flagship. The sun. This should be the prototype of an energy weapon. Xiao Yu made a lot of calculations and came to this conclusion. At this stage, Energy weapons only exist within Xiao Yu's theory and have not been developed by Xiao Yu. It can be said that energy weapons are a weapon that combines the high flexibility of laser weapons with the ultra high power of nuclear bombs. In Xiao Yu's estimation, in the next stage of space battles, energy weapons will replace various conventional artillery SH, LS, bullets, etc., have become the main weapons on the battlefield. The main weapons on the battlefield today are various types of bullets manufactured through electromagnetic acceleration. Through high-power electromagnetic coils, the bullets are accelerated to extremely terrifying speeds of up to several thousand kilometers per second. 
relying on powerful kinetic energy to kill the enemy. Spaceship. However, this kind of weapon has its own limitations. That is, the power is still too small to rely solely on kinetic energy to kill. Nuclear missiles are powerful but too slow. Bullets are fast but have low power. Laser weapons are the fastest, but can only be used for precision strikes. It would be great if we could get the manufacturing technology for energy weapons. Chao Yu thought silently. So far, this war has lasted for three hours. As for Xiao Yu, there are 650 spaceships. And there are currently 460 spaceships left. Among the 190 spaceships lost, 160 spaceships were destroyed by the enemy. And the remaining 30 spaceships were seriously damaged. Was urgently recalled to the rear by Xiao Yu and began repairs. The enemy has more than 500 spaceships. And currently there are still 352 spaceships left to continue fighting. 460 spaceships faced off against the opponent's 352 spaceships. Xiao Yu is at a disadvantage. Hey, I have surpassed the other party in terms of soft power. But in terms of hard power, my spaceship is really not as good as the other party. The protection, firepower, and maneuverability are all inferior. The other party has already entered into the research of energy weapons. Comprehension. My technology has not yet developed to this point. Shall you sighed and continued to concentrate on controlling his spaceship and engaging in a fierce battle with the opponent. The battle lasted for another hour. And the enemy showed signs of retreat. Obviously, this war not only caused serious damage to Shall you, but also made the opponent a little unbearable. So, Shall you just fired some more bullets and micro missiles from behind. After destroying three of the opponent's spaceships, he let the opponent leave without pursuing them. One is that he is not sure whether this is a trap. And the other is that Xiao Yu also needs time to cultivate. There are only more than 400 Xiao Yu spaceships left. Taking into account the spaceships in the rear that are not participating in the war and undergoing overhaul. The total number is less than 600. On the other side, from the more than 500 spaceships at the beginning, less than 300 ships escaped. Hey! Xiao Yu sighed and began the intense work of repairing the spacecraft. From the 1,073 spacecraft that initially set out from the solar system, to less than 600 spacecraft now, only half of the journey has been completed. And so many spacecraft have been lost. Xiao Yu's mood was a bit desolate. This was despite the fact that more than 100 nuclear bombs had been exploded over the enemy planet before, causing a serious blow to the enemy. Xiao Yu still suffered such a heavy blow. This can't continue like this. My losses are too serious. Xiao Yu thought secretly. We have to find a way to end the battle as soon as possible. Exterminate this civilization. We must exterminate them all. I have consumed too much supplies. If I cannot destroy them all and get enough supplies from this planet. Even if they let me leave now. I may it is impossible to reach the Tianyuan 4 star system. After the fuel is consumed. Xiao Yu will be unable to correct the course and slow down. Which is fatal to Xiao Yu. Moreover. How could I give up on energy weapon technology? It is impossible for me to develop this kind of technology before arriving in the Tianyuan 4-star system. If you want to exterminate the other side civilization, you have to land on a hydrogen bomb and face a planet. Laser cannons won't be of much use. Huh? By the way, you don't have to use hydrogen bombs. I have other ways. If Xiao Yu still has eyes, Xiao Yu's eyes must be as bright as light bulbs now. Because... There was a vicious plan calculated by Xiao Yu. If this plan is implemented smoothly, it will eliminate all the opponent's power and will not have any impact on various equipment and buildings. This will allow Xiao Yu to take over the other party's technology and material legacy to the greatest extent possible. Well, since it's either you or me who dies, it would be a bit hypocritical to insist on kindness. Xiao Yu thought silently. But if we really want to implement this plan, we must try to weaken the power of their interstellar team. Otherwise, after the plan is implemented, if they launch a suicide attack out of desperation, it will really be a big trouble. It has to be said that Xiao Yu has been a little shadowed by the primary energy weapons equipped on the opponent's flagship. If Xiao Yu takes over their planet, the star team will have no second choice except suicide attacks. Because this was a different civilization. Surrender was out of the question. Escape? After leaving the planet base? Where can they escape? This is vast space and the nearest stars are five light years away. Choosing to escape means choosing to wander in the cold space until death. I believe that any intelligent creature with normal logic would choose to come back and fight hard in such a situation. Xiao Yu sighed and began to add details of the plan. 
At the same time, he waited for the second confrontation between the interstellar teams. After a tragic battle, both warring parties need time to lick their wounds. During this period of time, Xiaoyu was not idle, but would still launch one or two nuclear bombs from time to time to harass the opponent. However, since Xiaoyu's specific coordinates were exposed, these nuclear bombs have rarely been able to reach places close to enemy planets. Because Xiaoyu's position has been exposed, the opponent can focus on this direction without worrying about other directions, and the interception rate will naturally be greatly improved. And it is impossible for Xiaoyu to launch a missile with its own power system to attack in another direction. Because the flames and radiation of the engine will expose himself more obviously. After discovering that launching missiles had little effect, Xiaoyu simply gave up the idea of launching nuclear bombs and could save some supplies. Within the three county level spaceships of the huge sun, Tianyuan and Yuanhang, Xiaoyu built a temporary dock. Countless robots were busy going back and forth, repairing the damaged spacecraft and at the same time, adding fuel to them, add ammo etc. Among them, more than a dozen spaceships that had lost their repair value were completely dismantled by Xiaoyu. Things that were temporarily unused were sealed up first. What could be used were all used by Xiaoyu to repair other spaceships. I don't have much material reserves. This plan must be implemented as soon as possible. Xiaoyu thought with some pain. After all, I can't compare with other people's entire planets. One planet. Even if no matter how poor you are, you are still much better than me. First, carry out the sniper flagship plan. As long as the flagship is killed, without the flagship's central support and fire cover, as well as the terrifying primary energy weapons, their combat power will be reduced by at least 30%. If the sniper flagship plan is successfully completed, we will continue with the civilization extinction plan. Chapter 45, Empty Spaceship if we talk about the combat effectiveness of a single spaceship, Xiaoyu's spaceship cannot defeat the opponent with the same tonnage. However, under Xiaoyu's super control and excellent teamwork, the gap in this area has been greatly narrowed, resulting in the opponent having superior firepower and the help of primary energy weapons. In the war, it was just a tragic victory. In fact, even laser cannons fall within the scope of energy weapons in a broad sense. But the opponent's energy weapons have surpassed laser cannons and are energy weapons in the true sense. As we all know, photons have no rest mass, so they can reach the speed of light. However, at the same time, because they have no rest mass, their lethality is also severely limited. Laser cannons only rely on high temperature burning as a means of killing. They are only suitable for precise strikes and are not suitable for facing large targets. According to Xiaoyu's speculation, the energy weapons of this alien civilization do not use pure energy beams similar to lasers, but use some special materials. Such substances with extremely small masses carry a large amount of instability. Because of its extremely small mass, it can be accelerated to speeds of up to 90,000 km per second. And because of the large amount of energy it carries, while it has high speed, it also has powerful lethality. In the current war situation, this type of energy weapon is undoubtedly the most suitable and perfect. Kinetic energy weapons, laser weapons, and even nuclear bombs can be managed with strong armor. As for energy weapons, before the development of shield technology, there was no need to think about defending against them. Judging from the fact that only the largest flagship is equipped with energy weapons, Xiaoyu can be sure that this alien civilization is only in the preliminary stage of research on such weapons. Otherwise, they would have loaded all spaceships with such weapons. At that point, Xiaoyu had no other choice but to wait for death. The powerful lethality of the initial energy weapon made Xiaoyu determined to kill the opponent's flagship. Xiaoyu could even pay the price of a county-level spaceship in order to snipe the opponent's flagship. How can I snipe down the opponent's heavily protected flagship when I am at a disadvantage? Xiaoyu began to think about this problem and began to control the central computer to make a lot of calculations. The only feasible way is to concentrate the superior firepower in the area. Attack with all strength and annihilate it. However, how to create superior firepower in the area when the overall firepower is at a disadvantage? Oh, it is really distressing. Xiaoyu sighed and deduced. Three days later. Perhaps, this method can be tried. Xiaoyu thought and began intense preparations. It took Xiaoyu ten days to repair the damaged spaceship. During this period, in addition to repairing the battleship, Xiaoyu also performed another job. That is to create a large number of empty spaceships. The so-called empty SH. L spacecraft is a spacecraft with only one outer SH. 
L, a simple calculation module, and a simple power module. Apart from looking exactly like a village level spacecraft, this kind of spaceship has no other functions. It has no attack power, does not carry any ammunition, and has extremely weak defense. It can even be penetrated by just one bullet. Xiao Yu has built more than a hundred of these empty SH L spaceships because it is just a SH L. This kind of spacecraft consumes very limited raw materials. In fact, if it weren't for the size, no matter how much it was, it wouldn't be able to fit. Xiao Yu even wanted to build a thousand of them. After all the preparations were completed, Xiao Yu loaded all these empty spaceships into the Yuan Hang, led the fleet, and flew towards the alien planet again. It's time to launch the second battle, Xiao Yu thought. It's time to launch the sniper flagship plan. Xiao Yu's actions immediately received a response. Hundreds of spacecraft took off from alien planets, or from shipyards in planet synchronous orbit, and headed towards Xiao Yu. When they were hundreds of thousands of kilometers away from each other, the flagship Sun and the Yuan Hang, which carried a large number of empty SH L spacecraft, stopped with 170 village level and township level spacecraft as rear, and the remaining more than 400 spacecraft. All were thrown into the battlefield by Xiao Yu. The other party invested more than 260 spaceships, including the largest flagship and a battleship equivalent to Xiao Yu's county level spaceship. Xiao Yu probably stayed on the planet to defend the remaining one. This phenomenon made Xiao Yu slightly worried. But when the plan got to this point, it was no longer possible to give up. Still following the old routine, Xiao Yu successively launched giant flash bombs, high speed bullets, micro missiles, and micro satellites, purchasing a dragnet on the battlefield. But this time, the opponent seemed to have gained experience. The torrent of bullets and micro missiles did not cause much damage to the opponent. A total of 20 other spaceships were destroyed by Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu's side lost six village level spaceships in the first wave of confrontation. The two sides quickly fell into a struggle, and violent bursts of fire bloomed in space from time to time. Every spark represented the complete destruction of a spacecraft. On Xiao Yu's side, the largest spaceship is the Tian Yuan. The opponent is a flagship equipped with preliminary energy weapons. In comparison, the Tian Yuan and the opponent's flagship were both lower in terms of volume tonnage and firepower. The opponent's flagship is majestic on the battlefield, and almost every shot of the energy cannon can kill one of Xiao Yu's village-level spaceships. Fortunately, each shot requires a long preparation time, so Xiao Yu's fleet will not retreat. Xiao Yu watched all this silently, and counted the time silently. That's almost it. Let's start the sniper flagship plan. Xiao Yu gave the order to set off. Immediately, more than a hundred spacecraft separated from the escorting spacecraft. They formed a formation led by the Yuan Hang and began to move in the other direction. This direction is the direction of the alien planet. That's right. It's a move passed down from the ancient military art of the Xia Kingdom to surround Wei and save Zhao. After dedicating a part of the spaceships to attack the opponent's planet, Xiao Yu only had about 50 escort spacecraft left. If the opponent launches a surprise attack at this time, as long as one more county level spacecraft comes, plus a hundred small spacecraft, there will be hundreds of them. There is an 80-80 chance that Xiao Yu will be destroyed. But since Xiao Yu dares to take such a risk, he naturally has his own reasons. Thousands of microsatellites scattered in space can provide Xiao Yu with sufficient warning time. If there is an accident, Xiao Yu can naturally handle it. Xiao Yu knew that his actions must be closely monitored by the other party. But this is what Xiao Yu wants. If the other party ignores Xiao Yu, Xiao Yu's plan will not work. This planet is about 5 million kilometers away from Xiao Yu. Based on the maneuverability of the spacecraft, it can reach the destination in more than three hours. At this distance, the communication delay between Xiao Yu and these spacecraft will also reach a terrifying 10 seconds. In other words, even if these spacecraft reach their destination, they have basically no combat effectiveness. The communication delay is too long, and these ships will be easily killed. However, Xiao Yu's original intention was not here, and he naturally did not care whether these spacecraft had attack power. Xiao Yu has made an estimate, which is about the space combat power of enemy civilization. First of all, at the beginning, the opponent refused to choose space battle, but relied on the planet to fight Xiao Yu. Secondly, when Xiao Yu forced the opponent to engage in a space battle, the number of spacecraft they sent was more than 500. When the battle with Xiao Yu entered a stalemate, they did not send new reinforcements. What does that mean? Xiao Yu believes that these more than 500 spaceships are likely to account for most of the opponent's space combat power. 
or even as much as 80 to 90 percent. In other words, there may be less than a hundred battleships left on the opponent's planet. When facing Xiaoyu's fleet, they will have to rely on less than a hundred spacecraft and orbital weapons to fight. But don't forget, this battlefield will be in low Earth orbit. Xiaoyu still has nuclear bombs, and Xiaoyu has also prepared some special gifts for them. It is said that the only way to attack the enemy is to save them. After Xiaoyu comes up with the surprise prepared for them, Xiaoyu is sure that the opponent will draw strength from the frontal battlefield and go back for reinforcements. And how much power will be taken away? Xiaoyu did a lot of calculations and believed that the other party would take away the county level spaceship and some small spacecraft. And its flagship spaceship would stay here. Because only in this way can they continue to ensure their advantage on the frontal battlefield. And at the same time, they will have sufficient strength to face Xiaoyu's assault fleet. This is the most reasonable and safest tactic. And they have no reason not to choose this option. I hope everything is as I deduced. Xiaoyu thought silently, nervously watching the other party's movements. Facing this formation of interstellar battleships heading straight for the opponent's planet, the enemy spacecraft did not react at all on the frontal battlefield. More than an hour had passed, and the battle was heating up in the frontal battlefield. Well, the other party must think that the county-level spacecraft left on the planet and the various weapons deployed in orbit are enough to stop my fleet. In this case, I will give you a surprise. Shall you issued an order? As this order was issued, immediately, the cabin door of the Yuanhang opened and village-level spaceships flew out one after another. There are as many as a hundred ships. They are empty SH. LS. They have no fighting power. But the enemy doesn't know that? Xiaoyu wanted to know how they would feel when they discovered that they suddenly had more than a hundred spaceships. And the total fleet strength reached two hundred spaceships. According to Xiaoyu's past strength, more than two hundred spaceships are enough to suppress more than a hundred alien spacecraft. After all, there is no flagship here and no energy cannon here. This is their base camp. So returning reinforcements should be inevitable. Shall you notice that in the frontal battlefield, enemy spacecraft made mistakes one after another. And Shall you took the opportunity to kill five spacecrafts. You're shocked. Aren't you? You're confused. Aren't you? Then hurry up and come back for help. Fools! Shall you yelled out of frustration. Chapter 46. The Death of the Voyage. That's right. These empty spaceships are the gifts Shall you prepared for them. With the addition of these 100 empty SH L spaceships, Xiao Yuming's apparent strength has reached 180 village level spacecraft, 23 township level spacecraft, and the county level spacecraft Yuan Hang, bringing the total to 204 ships. Based on the combat power Xiao Yu has shown in the past, these spaceships are enough to suppress the 100 spaceships and all orbital weapons they left behind. Moreover, this is the opponent's base camp, and all their combat power is defeated by Xiao Yu. When suppressed, how can they defend against nuclear bombs that Xiaoyu may launch? Xiaoyu believes that they have not forgotten the painful lessons he taught them by launching nuclear bombs before. Therefore, returning support is inevitable. Xiaoyu has long expected this. Sure enough, when Xiaoyu suddenly had a hundred more spaceships in the frontal battlefield, the opponent's warships were a little panicked. There were some mistakes in their evasive movements, defensive movements, attack movements, etc. Xiao Yu as you took the opportunity to kill three spaceships. The lair is in danger of being wiped out entirely. And no one can stay calm. Xiao Yu saw that on the planet. An alien battleship the size of a county level spaceship led 80 spaceships to take off in an emergency. At the same time, in the frontal battlefield, some alien spacecraft began to violate the battlefield survival rules. Desperate assembling began. A hundred spaceships gathered together urgently. And under the leadership of another battleship, the size of a county-level spaceship. They made an emergency return trip. How could Xiao Yu let them go so easily? Even if you are acting, you have to act like one. As a result, Xiao Yu controlled his own spaceship and began to pursue it fiercely, pouring out gunfire fiercely. After destroying 20 more of the opponent's spacecraft, he gave up the pursuit angrily under the fierce attack of the primary energy weapons equipped on the opponent's flagship. The current situation on the battlefield is that on Xiao Yu's side. There are still 300 small spaceships and the Tian Yuan left. While on the other side, there are more than 100 spacecraft left, including the flagship. The balance of victory in the frontal battlefield has begun to tilt toward Xiao Yu's side. Because, no matter how excellent the performance of the opponent's spaceship is and how powerful the primary energy weapons are, their number is too small. Only one third of Xiao Yu's spacecraft in the frontal battlefield 
Xiaoyu could already suppress the opponent. Although, this phenomenon was created by Xiaoyu through trickery. As long as the team with the Yuan Voyage as the core starts a war with the opponent next to the alien planet, the opponent will immediately see through this scam. Facing the attack of high-rate machine guns, these MTSH L spaceships are no better than paper ones. There's not enough time yet. Calm down. You must calm down. Xiao Yu muttered silently, paying close attention to the situation on the battlefield. The opponent's flagship is still extremely powerful. Each SH L of the powerful energy cannon can destroy one of Xiao Yu's spaceships. Under the fierce attack from the opponent, Xiao Yu fully exerted his precise control over the opponent by an unknown amount. He struggled to deal with it and took advantage of the opponent's advantage. He made a mistake and knocked down the opponent's spaceships one after another. The Yua Hang is still three minutes away from the opponent's rescue fleet and two and a half minutes away from the opponent's base fleet. It's almost time. Let's start the sniper flagship plan. Xiao Yu issued his order through radio waves. Immediately, in the frontal battlefield, half of the spaceships gave up on the enemy they were entangled with, escaped from the battle with all their strength, and began to move closer to the Tian Yuan. The other half of the spaceships maximized their firepower, no longer caring about damage or ammunition. Due to the problem of attrition, the enemies that half of our own spaceships had previously abandoned were brought into the range of our own artillery fire. In the battlefield filled with artillery fire, changes that seemed chaotic but were accurately controlled by Xiao Yu were taking place. Among the more than 100 spaceships left by the opponent, at least 80 were entangled with half of the power in the battlefield controlled by Xiao Yu while the remaining 150 spaceships were led by Tian Yuan, quickly approaching the opponent's flagship. Life and death, success or failure, all depend on this. Xiao Yu plans to use 150 spaceships plus the Tian Yuan to kill the opponent's flagship. The alien flagship's muzzle flashed with light, and countless blue electric lights crisscrossed back and forth. As the light became brighter and brighter, an energy cannon was shot out with a bang. The target was the Tian Yuan. This time, Xiao Yu did not control the nearby small spacecraft to move forward to resist the human body pad, but directly took the shot forcefully. The Tian Yuan was directly hit by this SH. L with a large hole 10 meters in radius. But fortunately, Xiao Yu's spacecraft does not have a bulky and space-consuming life support system. The internal structure of the spacecraft also adopts a modular structure. This level of damage is within the acceptable range. It's rude to come and not reciprocate. Xiao Yu muttered silently. Let you also taste my power. More than 150 spaceships, as well as the Tian Yuan, which still had combat capabilities, simultaneously erupted in their own anger at this moment. Within the high-speed machine gun, the powerful electromagnetic energy accelerated the bullets to incredible high speeds. After flying out of the muzzle, they immediately rushed towards the alien flagship. At the same time, there were hundreds or thousands of micro-projectiles. Missiles were also launched by Xiaoyu and the laser cannons and laser guns equipped on more than a hundred spacecraft also began to fire. Through various tricks, Xiao Yu fought hard to lose a county-level spacecraft and used his own energy and material reserves to finally successfully create a firepower advantage in the area even though the overall situation was at a disadvantage. In the frontal battlefield, more than 80 alien spacecraft were being held back by Xiao Yu's 150 spacecraft, and they were engaged in fierce exchanges of fire. The remaining 150 spacecraft all joined in the operation to encircle and suppress the opponent's flagship. Near the alien planet, the Yuanhang has been engaged in a head-on firefight with the opponent's warship. During this confrontation, the other party immediately noticed something strange. After all, the quality of those 100 empty SH L spaceships is really poor. There is only one empty SH L, which can be completely penetrated by just one bullet, apart from scaring people. It does not have any other effect. Most of the more than 100 empty SH L spaceships were wiped out by stray bullets, and the rest were quickly wiped out. When these empty SH L spaceships are destroyed, they can't even explode, because they were only equipped with a very small amount of fuel by Xiaoyu. After the first round of confrontation, 100 empty spaceships were completely destroyed. Xiaoyu believes that at this moment, no matter how stupid the other party is, he has realized this problem. That is, this is a trap. An obvious trap. So based on the current situation on the frontal battlefield, the opponent should immediately realize that his true purpose is actually the opponent's flagship. More than a hundred spaceships that were originally deployed to support the base camp returned immediately. How can we let you go at this time? Xiaoyu smiled crazily, controlled the Yuan Hang, and led the remaining 80 
or so spaceships to fight for their lives. Here, Xiaoyu's combat power consists of more than 80 small spaceships and one county-level spacecraft. On the other side, there are two county-level spaceships and 200 small spaceships. The performance of a single spaceship is not as good as the others, and the total number is not as good as the others. Facing the Yuanhang Formation, the alien spacecraft has an overwhelming advantage. The Yuan Voyage, plus these 80 or so spaceships, can only hold it for 5 minutes. Counting the return journey, I only have 10 minutes. At the cost of one county-level spaceship and 100 small spaceships, Xiaoyu is able to gain these 10 minutes. Within these 10 minutes, Xiaoyu will control the Tianyuan and lead 150 small spaceships to kill the opponent's flagship. If the opponent's flagship cannot be killed, the subsequent civilization extinction plan will be seriously affected. Come on! Come on! Xiaoyu muttered silently, manipulating the power in the frontal battlefield, rushing towards the alien flagship crazily, attacking with all his strength. The situation has entered a heated stage. Here in the trap, the Yuanhang and its formation are being slaughtered by the opponent. In the frontal battlefield, the spacecraft responsible for the containment mission is frantically entangled with the opponent's spacecraft without fear of death. The spacecraft that is the main body of the sniper flagship plan is pouring out all its strength. Of anger, more than 150 spaceships, plus one county-level spacecraft, can pour out hundreds of thousands of bullets in one second. These bullets will rely on powerful kinetic energy to collide with the opponent's battleship armor. Hundreds of laser cannons are firing crazily. Burning fuel. Converting the fuel into energy and launching it. Burning the opponent's hull. Thousands of micro-missiles were like bloodthirsty locusts. After approaching the opponent in a hail of bullets, they immediately exploded. There were countless missiles immediately. The projectiles accelerated to extremely high speeds exploded out. Like a heavy rain. Hitting the opponent's hull armor. Xiaoyu has already used his full strength. Used all his attack methods. In fact, if it weren't for the fact that the sun was really not in danger, Xiaoyu would have wanted to control the sun to go up and fight. However, at the same time, the opponent is also launching a fierce counterattack. All the combat power of the alien flagship exploded. In addition to the energy cannons with long intervals, high-power laser cannons were activated at full strength and hundreds of electromagnetic high-speed machine cannons were firing at full strength. In this battlefield that looks like a meat grinder, every minute and every second, a spaceship explodes, and then the fragments of the spacecraft will join the cannonballs flying everywhere, attacking the surroundings indiscriminately. During this fierce war, shall you receive the signal. The voyage is dead! At the trap, the interstellar battleship formation led by the Yuan Voyage has been completely wiped out by the opponent and the Yuan Voyage formation has been completely destroyed. This is the first time Xiaoyu has lost a county-level spacecraft since leaving the solar system. After the Yuanhang formation was completely wiped out, there was at least one county-level spaceship-sized alien warship in that direction, leading more than a hundred small spaceships, heading towards the frontal battlefield with all their strength to support the flagship. It is expected that in four minutes, we'll arrive here. Do I only have four minutes left? That's enough. Shall you roared in his heart. You on hang? We can't die in vain! Chapter 47 Killing the Flagship and Pandora's Box On the frontal battlefield, under the superior firepower in the area created by Xiao Yu, and under the pouring of a large number of SH, LS regardless of cost, Xiao Yu had torn a gap in the sturdy spacecraft armor of the alien flagship. Xiao Yu could even see to the gas constantly escaping from the gap, as well as some debris rolled out by the gas. The increase in volume and mass means better firepower, but it also means reduced mobility. Therefore, it will be impossible for this alien flagship to escape, because it cannot escape Xiao Yu's spacecraft at all. The fierce battle continues. Of the 150 spaceships responsible for the entanglement mission, less than a hundred were left. Amidst the roar of artillery fire, suddenly, a large messy blue electric light emitted from the muzzle of the energy cannon of the opponent's flagship, and then dimmed. The energy weapon has been killed! Good! Xiaoyu was shocked. Without this big threat, the opponent's flagship only had conventional attack methods. There are still two minutes for the fleet to return. Xiaoyu's heart collapsed. While nervously calculating the speed of the alien fleet's return, he launched an attack on the alien flagship with all his strength. The current alien flagship has long lost its original majesty. Now, its energy cannon has been damaged, and at least ten holes have been torn out in the hull. A large amount of gas is escaping and the gaps are constantly flashing. 
when there was a flash of electricity. Xiao Yu knew that it was because the internal circuit was damaged. One minute left. Time has entered the countdown. Damn it. I'll give you a hydrogen bomb to try. Let's see if you have any effective interception methods now. Xiao Yu smiled ferociously in his heart, controlled the remaining fleet of his own, and launched at least 20 interstellar missiles. Under normal circumstances, in a star battlefield, launching interstellar missiles is equivalent to a useless effort, because their pitifully slow speed may be easily intercepted by the opponent's laser weapons at any time. But things are different now. The alien flagship and escort spacecraft were almost disabled by Xiao Yu. They no longer have such powerful interception capabilities. Twenty spherical interstellar missiles roared away. The target was the alien flagship. Following the launch of the interstellar missile, several intense laser beams burst out immediately. The first interstellar missile engine exploded immediately. And the entire interstellar missile was spinning in circles. And it was unknown where it was shaken. The next ones that were destroyed were the second and third ones. Of the 20 interstellar missiles, a total of 18 were intercepted in this short flight of less than 3 seconds. But two more bombed directly into the alien flagship. The moment the interstellar missile was launched, Xiaoyu had already issued a new order. All spaceships within a certain distance of the alien flagship must retreat at full speed. Since there is no air in space, the lethality of hydrogen bombs is extremely limited. But within a certain range, hydrogen bombs are still the most terrifying weapons. At the moment when the hydrogen bomb explodes, the high temperature of hundreds of millions of degrees will melt all known substances and its violent radiation will attack surrounding objects indiscriminately. Such powerful radiation will burn sensitive components inside the spacecraft, destroy the circuit, etc. The powerful anti-overload ability was fully revealed at this moment. Almost in an instant, the spacecraft approaching the alien flagship within a certain range had accelerated to a speed of 2 kilometers per second, and was still accelerating rapidly, trying to escape from this place. A land of death. The hydrogen bomb exploded. There is no doubt that there is air and a large amount of matter inside the alien spacecraft. So the power of the hydrogen bomb is fully revealed. Xiao Yu saw a shocking scene. At this moment, the huge alien flagship with a length of nearly 800 meters suddenly emitted an extremely strong flash of light from the inside. The strong spacecraft armor was torn into pieces like fragile pieces of paper. And part of it flew out at high speed. The other part is directly vaporized. Two hydrogen bombs blasted it out of space leaving only a piece of debris. At close range, hydrogen bombs are the undisputed king of destruction, no matter how strong the armor is. To hydrogen bombs, it is just as ridiculous as window paper. Finally it was eliminated! Xiao Yu breathed a sigh of relief in his heart and issued a new order. The goal has been achieved! Retreat across the board! Xiao Yu can imagine the importance of this alien flagship to the other party's civilization. First of all, the opponent's interstellar warfare capabilities are extremely limited and completely disproportionate to the material reserves of an entire planet. Among the opponent's limited star-level combat power, such a huge flagship-level spacecraft is also equipped with the only energy cannon. One can imagine how precious it is. Without this flagship, the strength of the opposing interstellar team has dropped by at least 30%. Xiao Yu was already prepared to face the other party's anger. As the retreat order was issued, all the spaceships still in the frontal battlefield no longer continued to entangle with each other but chose to retreat. Powerful acceleration burst out, and Xiao Yu's remaining 300 or so spaceships began to flee. Behind them, there was a desperate pursuit by the alien fleet. Gradually, in the sniper flagship plan, the severely damaged Tianyuan spacecraft seemed to be unable to catch up with the larger army, and slowly fell behind. The Tianyuan was still resisting, but the strength of the resistance was getting weaker and weaker. In the end, its laser cannon muzzle flashed but no laser beam was emitted. The high-speed machine gun muzzle rotated, but no more even if a bullet is fired. The Tianyuan is indeed without any fuel, and it is indeed without even a bullet. But all of this was created deliberately by Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu tried his best to disguise the Tianyuan as a spacecraft that had lost power, lost all weapons, and was abandoned. According to Xiaoyu's speculation, the other party should be happy to accept such a gift. After all, in the two previous large-scale conflicts, Neither side captured even the smallest spacecraft of the other side. Now, with the opportunity to fully analyze the opponent's spacecraft technology, who will give up? Xiao Yu has prepared some gifts for the other party on the Tianyuan. These gifts are packed in a Pandora's box. And as long as the box is opened, the devil inside will bring destruction to the other party without mercy. That's right. 
Xiao Yu put 80% of the wood spirits in this box. Xiao Yu has not forgotten one of the characteristics of these wood spirits. They grow and evolve by devouring the wisdom of intelligent creatures. When faced with intelligent creatures, they will be crazy. In the solar system, during these thousands of years, Xiao Yu has verified this speculation countless times. Xiao Yu believes that there is a 99% chance that the other party will take the Tian Yuan to the ground base for dissection. Then, they will find this conspicuous box that looks like some kind of precision instrument and does not have any lethal characteristics. After any attempt to see through its internal structure was blocked by the box's highly radiation-resistant material, they had a 90% chance of opening it. And as long as the box is opened even a millimeter gap, the invisible wood spirits, which only exist in the form of radiation sources, will rush out crazily, and there is an 80% chance that they will begin to devour their wisdom and souls. There is a 90% chance that on the ground, under the cover of the atmosphere, these aliens will not have any effective means to fight against the wood spirits. By the time they analyze all the characteristics of the wood spirit and figure out how to fight against it, they may have been killed by the wood spirit. Shall you thought? This will be an extremely heroic killing. After comprehensive analysis, Xiao Yu believes that his plan will have a 60% chance of success. If it succeeds, everything will be fine. Xiao Yu will get the other party's technology and resources on the alien planet. And Xiao Yu will be able to rebuild a huge interstellar fleet. If it fails, under the current limitations of technology and materials, Xiao Yu will have no possibility to fight against the opponent. At this point, Xiao Yu will lead his remaining spaceships to escape. If he is lucky, when he finds the next star, Xiao Yu may have three or four village-level spaceships left as capital for him to start again. These wood spirits are Xiao Yu's last hope. Therefore, Xiao Yu must take it out when the winning rate is the highest. Instead of using this method to keep the bottom of the box at the beginning, in the desperate flight, Xiao Yu saw that the Tian Yuan, which was hovering there and had lost all power and all weapons, was surrounded by dozens of spacecraft from the other side. Among these spaceships, there was also a county ship, class spaceship, they first conducted a tentative attack on the Tian Yuan. Without any response from the Tian Yuan, a satellite was launched by them, and the satellite entered the Tian Yuan. The Tian Yuan still made no movement, as if it had received the signal sent back by the previous satellite. A small spacecraft approached the Tian Yuan and began to land. After a full three hours of investigation, the other party was completely sure that the spacecraft in front of them was completely harmless. So, Several small spacecrafts towed it away together, seeing the Tian Yuan disappear from his sight. Xiao Yu sighed, retracted his sight, and began to concentrate on escaping. The pursuit in the universe lasted for two full days, with both sides escaping tens of millions of kilometers before the other side gave up the pursuit of Xiao Yu and began to return. Xiao Yu also got a rare respite. The losses are too heavy, Xiao Yu sighed. The only county level spaceship left is the sun and there are less than 300 village-level and township-level spacecraft left. Then, let's start waiting. Xiao Yu thought silently. I can't get any information about the current situation of the wood spirits. I have no choice but to wait. The time is set for one month. One month later, it will be the day when my fate is pronounced. Although the future is unknown, I believe that I will be the one who wins in the end. Chapter 48 Return Xiao Yu waited quietly in the dark space. During this month, Xiao Yu carried out an overhaul on all damaged spacecraft. During this overhaul, another 20 spaceships were dismantled by Xiao Yu, and their parts were installed on the remaining spaceships. Xiao Yu's voyage fleet has a total number of 271 ships left. Among them, only one flagship class spacecraft, the Sun, was left. While arranging the overhaul of the damaged spacecraft, Xiao Yu was still conducting deductions trying his best to simulate what might happen after the planet was attacked by with spirits. Gradually, a month passed. Xiao Yu controlled the spacecraft and began to return. The bright blue flame illuminated the dark space and also emitted intense radiation. In this dark space, it is very conspicuous. Xiao Yu believed that if the other party was still alive, they would definitely be able to detect this movement. However, until Xiao Yu's fleet approached the other planet 5 million kilometers away, there was still no movement on the other planet. No spacecraft took off, and the space-based laser turrets, missile launchers, etc. running on the planet's synchronous orbit did not launch any attacks. Xiao Yu felt happy. The distance of 5 million kilometers can be crossed in less than 4 hours at Xiao Yu's speed. If an interstellar missile is launched, it will only take half an hour for the interstellar missile to bombard the planet. 
in terms of the universe. This is a very close distance. Xiao Yu is not sure that his civilization extinction plan will succeed. Because creatures like with spirits have been with Xiao Yu for thousands of years. But Xiao Yu has never conducted experiments with intelligent creatures. So he is really unsure of how useful they can be. This might be a trap. Xiao Yu thought in his mind. Xiao Yu is not worried that the other party will set a trap to ambush him in space. Because when the spacecraft takes off, its engine will expose its traces. During this period, Xiao Yu had been monitoring this direction with all his strength and found no sign of the spacecraft taking off. The only thing worth worrying about is that the other party will set up an ambush on the ground of the planet. And then when Xiao Yu lands, they will suddenly attack and severely injure Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu didn't believe that these with spirits alone could completely destroy a civilization. When a civilization faces destruction, it will always burst out with amazing potential and endless heroes will emerge. This has been proven countless times on the earth. In Xiao Yu's speculation, the most likely scenario is that all the wood spirits will be killed by the opponent. But these wood spirits will also cause heavy damage to the opponent. As for how severe the damage can be, it depends on luck. I don't care if you die or not. Just launch a few missiles over there first. Xiao Yu thought. The missile launcher at the bottom of the sun stretched out. And five interstellar missiles carrying large yield hydrogen bombs flew rapidly towards the planet. This time, Xiao Yu did not set up these hydrogen bombs to explode outside the atmosphere, but to have these missiles explode when they reached the ground. The warheads of these interstellar missiles launched by Xiao Yu were loaded with high-yield three-phase bombs. Wrapping a layer of thermonuclear material on the outside of the atomic bomb is a hydrogen bomb. And then wrapping a layer of fissile material on the outside of the hydrogen bomb is a three-phase bomb. Most hydrogen bombs on Earth are three-phase bombs. Three-phase bombs can achieve maximum lethality, and can also cause maximum radiation damage, which will cause irreparable losses to the planet. Xiao Yu believes that if they still have the ability to resist, they will definitely resist. It took these interstellar missiles a full five hours to reach the other planet. In fact, based on the full speed of interstellar missiles, it will only take less than half an hour to arrive. However, if flying at such a fast speed, when these missiles come into contact with the opponent's atmosphere, they will be instantly destroyed by the opponent's planet's atmosphere. At such a fast speed, there is no difference between the planet's atmosphere and the hard steel plate. There was no way. Xiao Yu had to accelerate these missiles first, and then slow down before reaching the opponent's atmosphere. In this way, he could ensure that these interstellar missiles reached the ground safely. Xiao Yu saw five bright meteor-like lights appearing on an alien planet five million kilometers away. They were caused by friction and heat between the missile and the atmosphere of the other planet. The missile successfully entered the opponent's planet's atmosphere, and no one came out to stop it. Xiao Yu looked into the distance silently, watching the huge fire that suddenly erupted on the planet. There were five groups of fires in total. Even if Xiao Yu was five million kilometers away, Xiao Yu could clearly observe the movement. The power of hydrogen bombs will be severely limited in space, but it will be different on the ground where there is abundant gas. It can be said that the destructive power of a hydrogen bomb that explodes in the atmosphere is more than 10 times higher than that of a hydrogen bomb in space. Xiao Yu knew that during the Cold War on Earth, the former Soviet Union once built a hydrogen bomb with a yield of 100 million tons. But in the end, it was not detonated. The reason is very simple. The former Soviet Union did not have a hydrogen bomb with a yield of 100 million tons. A test site large enough to accommodate its huge explosive power. In desperation. The former Soviet Union split it into two 50 million ton hydrogen bombs, which detonated smoothly. Even a hydrogen bomb with a yield of 50 million tons is still more powerful than the expectations of former Soviet researchers. This resulted in the complete destruction of all the test equipment and test organisms that it had prepared in advance. All animals within a radius of several hundred kilometers centered on the nuclear explosion lost all their hair and died miserably in the following months. This is true for hydrogen bombs with an equivalent of 50 million tons. The smallest of the five hydrogen bombs launched by Xiao Yu has an equivalent of 200 million tons of TNT. This means that in addition to conventional high temperature, radiation, shock waves and other lethal effects, these hydrogen bombs will also have a permanent impact on the crust of the other planet. In the future, violent earthquakes will occur frequently on the other planet. Volcanoes and other phenomena. If it were Xiao Yu, Xiao Yu would never allow these hydrogen bombs to explode on his own planet. Xiao Yu believed that the other party would never allow the planet he lived on to be so damaged. But the missiles were not blocked. This can only show that the other party has really lost the power to resist. Did the wood spirits really wipe out all the other parties? 
If that's the case, maybe I should focus on the remaining wood spirits. What if I worked so hard to eliminate this civilization? But the wood spirits took advantage of it? If you kill me, the fun will be great. Xiao Yu thought in his mind, controlled the fleet, and began to slowly approach the planet. The distance gradually narrowed to 500,000 kilometers. Xiao Yu first destroyed all the opponent's space-based laser turrets, missile launch pads, space docks and other equipment that may have hidden ambush around the planet, and then started the next step. This is the first time that Xiao Yu has been so close to the planet. This distance is already within the envelope of the opponent's planet's magnetic field. Xiao Yu detected a magnetic field about twice as strong as the Earth's. Sure enough, there is a magnetic field. Otherwise, if a planet without a magnetic field developed an intelligent civilization, it would be outrageous. Xiao Yu thought, this is interstellar space, and there are no stars protecting this planet. If it does not have a high-strength magnetic field and develops intelligent civilization, Xiao Yu will overturn many things he knew before. Although the solar wind often affects radio communications on the Earth, the solar wind also protects the Earth from all kinds of interstellar radiation. If there is no solar wind, it is still unknown whether living things can appear on the Earth. The distance is still slowly shrinking. 400,000 kilometers and 300,000 kilometers. This distance is equivalent to the distance between the Earth and the Moon. At this distance, shall you measure the atmospheric composition of the opponent's planet in detail and began to prepare for the upcoming landing operation. The atmosphere of this planet contains extremely high concentrations of sulfur. This is not a good phenomenon. The robot needs to be modified in order to adapt to such air without being corroded. Xiao Yu thought and began to transform the robot. In the early stage, Xiao Yu planned to send five village-level spaceships carrying a thousand robots down. He would first find out the situation clearly before sending out more robots. The distance was shortened to 100,000 kilometers. Xiao Yu began to operate the newly manufactured thermal imaging detector to conduct geological mapping of the opponent's planet. Since there is no light source here, visible light can only be replaced by infrared rays. Under the detection of the thermal imaging detector, Xiao Yu discovered a phenomenon that surprised him extremely. The detection results show that the temperature on the ground of this planet is actually about 20 degrees. There are no stars here to give them heat. So where does this heat come from? Xiao Yu was puzzled. After further detection, he finally understood. The core material composition of this planet is different from that of the Earth. The core of the Earth is mainly composed of iron and nickel. The core of this planet is mainly composed of various radioactive elements. As the radioactive elements continue to decay, a steady stream of heat will be released to the ground. The Earth obtains heat from the sun, and this planet obtains heat from the decay of radioactive elements in its core. I see. That's it. No wonder it has a gaseous atmosphere. Shall you suddenly realized. As a puzzle was solved, the distance between Xiaoyu and the planet was shortened to 30,000 kilometers. It's time to launch satellites, Xiaoyu thought, controlled the spacecraft launcher, and launched more than 80 satellites. These satellites have different functions. Some are responsible for detecting geology, searching for minerals, and some are responsible for mapping terrain, etc. But they all have one most basic function, and that is communication. After being launched, these satellites will provide signal coverage for the planet. Xiao Yu, who is in space, will be able to command robots anywhere to carry out various actions. It's time to launch a landing operation, Xiao Yu thought, and dispatched five village-level spaceships, carrying a thousand robots, and slowly approached the atmosphere of the other planet. Chapter 49, Landing on an Alien Planet The village-class spacecraft is used in both near-Earth space and outer space. It can also fly freely in the dense atmosphere. As the altitude decreased, the thermal imaging detector gradually captured images of the planet's surface. Xiao Yu saw that this planet was an endless desert with no water, no liquid substances, and no trace of any living things. At the same time, Xiao Yu also detected strong nuclear radiation. Xiao Yu knew that it was what was left over from the hydrogen bomb he exploded on the other planet. The five village level spacecraft did not land directly. Instead, they searched for the planet under the guidance of more than 80 satellites in the sky. The search results surprised Xiao Yu. Because although this planet is large, traces of intelligent biological activities only occupy a very small part. Xiao Yu only found a building complex similar to a human city in one place. Dozens of giant buildings with a height of 10,000 meters above the planet's equator. And only a few places similar to mining bases in the rest. 
Xiaoyu speculated that the dozens of giant buildings with a height of 10,000 meters should be the super giant fusion engines that drive the movement of the planet. On the entire planet, only one city where creatures gathered was found. This phenomenon made Xiaoyu confused. Do they live underground? No. It's unlikely. If they live underground, why would they build cities on the ground? No matter. Let's go and take a look first. Xiaoyu thought as he directed a village-level spaceship to land on the edge of the city. 200 robots formed a team and started heading towards the city in a neat line. These robots have been specially modified by Xiaoyu. Their materials can resist the corrosion of high concentrations of sulfur in the planet's atmosphere. At the same time, these robots are equipped with the Gauss pistol newly developed by Xiaoyu. Under Xiaoyu's control, these robots have amazing of melee strength. The Gauss pistol does not fire bullets through gunpowder, but a pistol that fires bullets through electromagnetic coil acceleration technology. The initial velocity of the bullet is very high, and accordingly, the lethality is naturally very powerful. The electromagnetic coil acceleration technology used in space battles is the high-speed machine gun equipped on Xiaoyu's spacecraft. After miniaturization, it is the Gauss pistol. The style of the city is very weird. It is different from any architectural style known to Xiaoyu. Most of its buildings are very low, except for buildings that are obviously used for scientific research, military and other special purposes. The rest of the buildings are not taller. More than 5 meters. Xiaoyu speculated that this may be to better obtain geothermal heat. The low buildings brought convenience to Xiaoyu. Without the obstruction of buildings, Xiaoyu can more accurately scan the ground for active heat sources to determine whether they still have the power to survive. On the Dark Earth, these 200 robots equipped with night vision devices slowly spread out and explored the city. Xiaoyu wanted to know what happened on this planet during this month. In the battle between the Wood Spirit and these intelligent creatures, was it the Wood Spirit that won and completely wiped out the other party? Or was the other party wiped out? Wood Spirit? If the Wood Spirit destroyed the opponent, where did the surviving Wood Spirit go? If the other party destroyed the Wood Spirits, would they still have the power to resist and wait for Xiaoyu in ambush here? This is an alien planet. This is an alien city. There is no light source here. And the air is filled with high concentrations of sulfur. The environment here is like H, L to humans. Fortunately, these robots do not feel fear. Otherwise, even specially trained special forces might not be able to withstand the psychological pressure such an environment can bring. A robot broke away from the large army and walked towards a 10 meter high building. Among the buildings that are generally less than 5 meters tall, this 10 meter long building stands out. Shall you guess that there must be important things stored here? Ahead, a sudden vibration spread through the air and was captured by the detector equipped on the robot. Where there is air, vibration means sound. This signal was quickly transmitted to the temporary base by the transmitter on the robot, and then transmitted to the sun through the satellite in the sky. Immediately, this signal aroused Xiaoyu's alert. A moving object appeared in the thermal imaging detector. It was a strange creature that was less than 30 centimeters tall, but over 2 meters long. With 6 legs, this creature is very similar to the lizards on the earth. The difference is that this creature has a large head and does not have such a long mouth. This creature kept uttering weird and unintelligible syllables from its mouth and kept retreating in the building, seeming to be very afraid of this robot. Seeing its movements like this, Xiaoyu's heart moved. Generally, creatures with low intelligence can only make a few kinds of sounds. Being able to make so many syllables with different tones means that this creature should be intelligent. Xiaoyu immediately controlled the robot to aim the Gauss pistol at it and fired a shot in front of it. Immediately, the high-speed Gaussian bullets cracked the ground. The creature screamed and became silent, as if it had fainted. Xiaoyu felt it was very funny, so he controlled the robot to step forward, picked it up, and walked outside. After meeting with the robot army, five robots took out high-strength ropes and tied it tightly, placed in a village-level spacecraft waiting outside. And then the village-level spacecraft took off and entered the interior of the sun. Here, there are various instruments that Xiaoyu has prepared long ago. Xiaoyu plans to conduct a comprehensive examination on it to understand the various physical data of this intelligent creature. Although you have caused huge losses to me, you have failed. As a winner, I have no interest in killing. You can go to meet your god happily, Xiaoyu thought, and controlled the robot to cut off its head without hesitation, letting it die in a coma without any pain. Afterwards, a comprehensive inspection began, and Xiaoyu studied each piece of data. Warm-blooded animals, with a constant body temperature of about 27 degrees. 
and a brain capacity of 3,000 milliliters are not much different from humans. Hermaphrodites? Can they reproduce by themselves? That means they have no love, no family. Well, the society of this creature, it must be freezing cold. Like humans, it relies on liquids to transport nutrients in the body. It has a huge digestive organ. Well, the immune organ is also quite strong. Xiao Yu studied bit by bit. Slowly, a strange phenomenon caught Xiao Yu's attention. They originally seemed to walk upright, which can be seen from the fact that the forelimbs are significantly weaker than the hind limbs. It seems that they also experienced the evolutionary process from crawling to upright walking at the beginning. And then, for some reason, they returned to crawling. The way of walking. Most likely, it is to better obtain the geothermal energy of this planet. Huh? Is this a degraded optical sensing organ? Is this their eye? Xiao Yu saw that their eyes had degraded, and a thermal sensing organ replaced the eye. Gradually, Xiao Yu came to a conclusion. They should not be the original species on this planet. It seems that they migrated from another completely different environment. Then, in order to adapt to the environment of this planet, they not only changed from walking upright to crawling, but also changed from walking upright to crawling. Optical perception becomes thermal perception. Every civilization has its own magnificent story. Xiao Yu sighed and continued to study. Xiao Yu also has another purpose in capturing this creature, which is to better study its physiological structure in order to develop better lethal weapons. Since there are living creatures, it means that during the battle between the wood spirits and them, the wood spirits were destroyed, which also means that they must still have the power to survive. Xiao Yu cannot allow them to continue to live. But Xiao Yu cannot directly attack the city with hydrogen bombs or the like because then the electronic equipment in the city will be destroyed, and Xiao Yu will not get the information he wants. The killings of the wood spirits started in an instant. They could not have the time to prepare and destroy all the information. So Xiao Yu had no interest in capturing them for interrogation. If he wanted to know anything, he could just search for information in the electronic devices. Okay. After comprehensively studying the body structure of this lizard man, an idea appeared in Xiao Yu's mind. In this case, infrasonic weapons are more suitable. They only kill living things and have no effect on buildings, electronic equipment, etc. Infrasonic waves with a frequency of 9 hertz are the most suitable. Xiao Yu came to the conclusion and immediately began to develop corresponding infrasonic weapons. In interstellar space, infrasonic weapons cannot be used. On the surface of a planet with a thick atmosphere, infrasonic weapons are very practical. The killing principle of infrasonic weapons is to use low-frequency mechanical longitudinal waves to resonate with the organs in the living body, causing the organs to deform, shift or even rupture, in order to achieve the purpose of killing. During this period of time, Xiao Yu carried out busy weapons research work while launching large-scale landing activities. The number of village-level spacecraft that have reached the surface of the planet has reached more than 50, and more than 10,000 robots have been released into the city to conduct various detection activities. In the city, the robot formation was constantly resisted by the lizard people. Xiao Yu mercilessly killed them one by one. But this kind of resistance also annoyed Xiao Yu. Time passed bit by bit in this situation. And finally, the giant infrasonic weapon developed by Xiao Yu could be put into actual combat. Xiao Yu made a total of five of these giant infrasonic weapons and loaded them on five village-level spaceships. These five village-level spaceships were controlled by Xiao Yu to float over the city. The entire city was within the killing range of these giant infrasonic weapons. Chapter 50 The Barren Star Xiao Yu has been fighting against this civilization for several years. Now, this protracted war is finally coming to an end. Exterminating a civilization sounds like a very cruel thing. But it is not as cruel as being exterminated yourself. This is a confrontation between civilizations. There is no morality. No mercy. Only cold killing. Infrasonic weapons. Activate. Xiao Yu gave this order without any emotion. Immediately, Low-frequency mechanical longitudinal waves began to wreak havoc on the planet. These sound waves will be able to penetrate the building and cause damage to the creatures inside the building. At this stage, it is almost indefensible unless it is tightly protected with special materials that can absorb sound waves. But Xiao Yu doesn't think that they still have the strength to do so in this case. Xiao Yu has made calculations. The continuous emission of high-power infrasonic weapons for 20 minutes will have a serious impact on the lizard people and rupture their internal organs. In 30 minutes, it will be able to kill creatures directly exposed to the influence of infrasound waves. Eight hours later, 
creatures hiding within 5 meters underground or within building bunkers will not be immune. The satellites orbiting this planet are watching here with cold instruments and constantly transmit the signals they observe to Xiaoyu. Time has passed 20 minutes. Xiaoyu saw that in the center of the city, in a huge square, the ground suddenly opened up and dozens of small spaceships flew precariously. Xiaoyu sneered. Are all the pilots dead? Are the lizard men driving these spaceships novices? Xiaoyu mercilessly maneuvered a hundred village-level spacecraft to approach and launched a spaceship war in near-Earth space with the opponent without the suppression of primary energy weapons. Xiaoyu's spacecraft once again narrowed the gap with the opponent. Fifty minutes later, the opponent's spacecraft was completely destroyed. As expected, these lizardmen still have some residual power. Fortunately, fortunately, I killed their flagship in advance. Otherwise, I would be in a bit of trouble facing the flagship that came up with the determination to die. Xiaoyu thought a little thankfully. With 30 minutes later, a large number of lizardmen began to appear in the city, totaling almost a thousand. The two claws in the middle of these lizardmen's hands were raised high, grabbing various weapons and rushing out to confront the robots. Xiaoyu maneuvered the village-level spacecraft to the sky above this area and increased the power of the infrasonic weapon. Immediately, these lizardmen began to writhe in pain on the ground and were killed mercilessly by the robot formation. If you knew this outcome from the beginning, would you have laid a hydrogen bomb trap for me in an attempt to destroy me? Xiaoyu thought coldly, without any mercy in his heart. But it's still a bit strange. I'm still not sure why they attacked me. I'll pay special attention to this aspect when collecting information later. Xiaoyu thought. This is the first alien civilization Xiaoyu has encountered. And Xiaoyu was not sure whether he was the alien civilization the lizard people encountered for the first time. In other words, these lizard people may have encountered alien civilizations more than once and learned some information that Xiaoyu did not know. It was probably because of this information that they preemptively attacked Xiaoyu. You takes action. Since these more than a thousand lizard men were slaughtered, no large scale lizard men have appeared again. Occasionally, scattered lizard men will run out of the building with a mad roar and then be killed by robots. Kill it directly with a Gauss pistol in your hand. To be on the safe side, Xiaoyu used infrasonic weapons for two full hours. After confirming that there were no more surviving robots, Xiaoyu began a large-scale landing activity. Among a total of 281 spaceships, Xiaoyu only left 30 small spaceships to escort him. The remaining 250 spaceships, including 200 spaceships, landed in this city carrying nearly 40,000 robots. Among them, the remaining 50 spaceships carried 10,000 robots and landed in the giant building hundreds of thousands of meters high. This giant building, Xiaoyu speculated, should be the engine that drives the movement of the planet. 40,000 robots landed in the city and launched a large-scale search operation. Xiaoyu will not let go of anything of value. In a building, Xiaoyu saw the other party's computer system for the first time. Xiaoyu already knows that the other party's computing module uses the same photon computing technology as his own which means that he can extract the other party's information. As long as he cracks the encryption system and translates the other party's recorded text, he can do it without any problem. Obstructive reading. In addition to electronic data, Xiaoyu also tried his best to collect all data about this civilization, such as their architectural concepts, social models, various technologies, etc. As the satellite detection system collected more and more data, and as Xiaoyu collected more data, Xiaoyu had a preliminary understanding of this planet. This planet has obvious signs of being transformed. Xiaoyu is becoming more and more certain of his guess. That is, this civilization is not an indigenous civilization on this planet, but an immigrant from later times. At the same time, Xiaoyu also made a detailed measurement of the geological composition of the planet. Looking at the results, Xiaoyu couldn't help but sigh. It is really a barren planet. The elements that make up the planet's crust are very single and most of them are concentrated in light elements. This is in sharp contrast to the large number of heavy elements that make up its core. However, a large number of heavy elements are concentrated in the core of the planet, making it impossible to mine it. Therefore, it is not an exaggeration to say that this planet is barren. Xiaoyu speculated that this may be a planet orbiting a first-generation star. So this planet was mostly composed of light elements at the beginning. Then, this planet may have interacted with another planet orbiting a second or even third generation star. After the collision and the fusion of the two planets, a series of extremely complex geological changes occurred. 
forming a strange structure with heavy elements in the core and light elements in the crust. The so-called first-generation stars are stars formed shortly after the Big Bang. The content of heavy elements in the first-generation star system is extremely low. Stars reformed from cosmic dust after supernova explosions are called second-generation stars. In second-generation star systems, the content of heavy elements is much higher. The Sun is a second-generation star. The large-scale data collection operation lasted for a month. Within this month, Xiaoyu collected a large number of data storage tools similar to computer hard drives on the Earth. He also collected a large amount of information about the opponent's technology through dissection and analysis. Immediately, Xiaoyu launched a decryption operation. It is not difficult to translate the other party's text. With a large amount of text data, Xiaoyu can roughly determine the relationship between this character and other characters by analyzing the number of times a certain character appears in the document and its position in the sentence. Logical relationship. Determine whether it is a subject, a predicate or an object. And then through further analysis, the meaning of this character can be determined. But before translating the text, there is another difficulty standing in front of Xiaoyu. And that is the other party's data encryption system. A civilization's data encryption method has a great influence on the social form and living habits of the civilization. Xiaoyu does not understand the other party's information. So it will naturally be difficult to crack it. But Xiaoyu has this confidence. And he will definitely crack it. In addition to the decryption operation, Xiaoyu also took over various mining bases, various equipment processing plants and other facilities that the other party had no time to destroy. Xiaoyu even discovered about 50 half-manufactured interstellar spacecraft in a secret base. This result made Xiaoyu very happy. Xiaoyu plans to take over the lizard man's work and continue to build these spacecraft. How can you relieve the hatred in my heart without ruthlessly plundering this planet? Xiaoyu thought of the hundreds of spaceships he had lost, and his heart grew more and more filled with hatred. A large number of useless buildings, factories, and other facilities were demolished by Xiaoyu. Then, Xiaoyu moved all the recyclable things back to his warehouse. While the useless things were abandoned everywhere, Xiaoyu is completely fishing out of the lake. But he will have nothing to do with this pond in the future. Before leaving, he will naturally catch as many fish as he can. Any sustainable development is nonsense. Useful buildings and factories have been modified accordingly by Xiaoyu to make them more suitable for his own usage habits. Xiaoyu plans to build at least 1,000 more spaceships on this planet before he is willing to leave. Time slipped away in Xiaoyu's busy schedule. Within this year, Xiaoyu transformed the two lizard people spacecraft manufacturing factories. With the arrival of a large amount of raw materials, Xiaoyu has been building continuously. New spaceship. However, what Xiaoyu is building now are all small spaceships. And no large spaceships have been built because Xiaoyu wanted to wait for the energy weapon technology to be analyzed before building it together, and directly upgrade the large spacecraft to an energy weapon system. However, Xiaoyu also made some preliminary preparations. During this period of time, Xiaoyu has repaired two large interstellar shipyards in orbit around the planet. Construction can start immediately after the technology and resources are in place. County-level spaceship. While busy at work, Xiaoyu suddenly received a signal. What? Part of the core encrypted information has been decrypted? Xiaoyu was shocked and started reading immediately. The decrypted information contained only one sentence. Since receiving the early warning that our planet was about to explode, we spent 20 years building a large spacecraft that could carry 300,000 people. Before the disaster struck, we escaped to an outer planet far away from the star. Above, planet explosion? Xiaoyu stayed there. Chapter 51 Harvest Season Xiaoyu remembers clearly that the Earth, the home of all mankind, exploded, the earth exploded, leading to the destruction of all mankind. Only Xiaoyu, a lucky person, escaped early. Xiaoyu has always had a suspicion before. That is, whether the explosion of the earth occurred under the intentional control of some mysterious and unknown existence. However, there has been no evidence to prove this suspicion. Xiaoyu can only bury this doubt in his heart and wait until his technology is sufficiently advanced to explore again. Xiaoyu's known information is that the Earth's iron-nickel core, under the influence of some unknown force, undergoes proton-neutron fission. Heavy elements rapidly decay into light elements, and a large amount of the remaining mass is transformed into energy caused the Earth to explode. This release of energy is extremely powerful, far exceeding that of nuclear fusion. The mass-to-energy conversion rate of nuclear fusion is about 5%. That is, in nuclear fusion, about 5% of the mass is converted into energy. 
and the energy conversion rate of this unknown change is almost as high as 50%. Such huge energy exploded the earth into pieces in an instant and also led to the destruction of the earth. The release of energy is divided into several levels which are closely related to the microscopic world. Among them, chemical energy, such as conventional explosives and hydrogen-oxygen combustion, all belong to chemical energy. The microstructure involved is at the molecular level. That is, atoms are reorganized into molecules to release energy. Nuclear fission and nuclear fusion are at the atomic level. That is, protons and neutrons recombine and change into new atoms, releasing a large amount of energy in the process. The source energy of the Earth explosion that Xiao Yu observed was the energy released during the recombination of basic particles such as quarks, antiquarks, and gluons that make up protons and neutrons. This is a brand new energy source that humans have never been exposed to. Xiao Yu didn't know before whether this unknown and mysterious force was man-made or naturally formed in the universe. After escaping from the Earth, Xiao Yu has conducted a lot of research in this area. But due to the limitations of basic physical theory, Xiao Yu has never produced any results. Now, Xiao Yu's suspicion about the source of this power has deepened, because these aliens and their planets are also destined to explode. How similar is this to Earth? Xiao Yu was itching and eager to know the next content of the record. However, the current data deciphering work has only deciphered this sentence. The rest will only be known after protracted deciphering work. With no other choice, Xiao Yu could only speed up the deciphering while waiting anxiously. The construction of the base the collection of raw materials, and the construction of spaceships have been ongoing. During this period, Xiao Yu has built 40 new village-level spaceships. These newly built spaceships have greater mobility, defense, and firepower, because some preliminary technological analysis work has been completed. Xiao Yu has mastered the technology of the Lizardman civilization in this area. Xiao Yu was surprised to find that the principles of these lizard people's technology in material reinforcement were not much different from his own. When Xiao Yu strengthens the material, he does it through the radiation influence of the wood spirit and the addition of black insect corpses. The specific principle is to use the two organisms, the wood spirit and the black insect, to change the molecular arrangement structure of the material to make it more compact. Therefore, the various properties of the material will be further improved. Xiao Yu has already conducted research in this area before, but it has been incomplete and has not been able to create such tough materials through artificial means. Now, with the technological additions of the Lizardman civilization, Xiao Yu immediately made a technological breakthrough in this area. In terms of mobility, breakthroughs are achieved through more efficient nuclear fusion engines. In terms of firepower, it is a more rationally constructed electromagnetic coil acceleration technology. Science and technology is divided into two parts, science and technology. Compared with Xiao Yu, the Lizardman civilization is more advanced in technology, and its scientific theories are the same. Therefore, after Xiao Yu obtained the technology in this area, he could immediately make a breakthrough. If Xiao Yu is given a machine with anti-gravity technology or ultra-distance communication technology at this time, Xiao Yu will have to go through a lot of trouble to master its structural principles. This is the difference between science and technology. Specifically, the difference between the machine guns used by the human army during World War I and the machine guns used by humans in the 21st century is technical, not scientific. The appearance of these 40 newly built village class spaceships is no longer a spherical structure. Because its material strength is enough to withstand such a powerful overload. It no longer needs to be compensated for by appearance. Xiao Yu built these 40 village level spaceships into extremely cool battleship appearances. Just like alien spaceships in human science fiction movies. These spaceships have a streamlined appearance. A sci-fi fuselage. And beautiful wings. Anyway, there is no air resistance in space. As long as the shape of the spacecraft is reasonable, it can be built in any way. In terms of energy weapons, Xiao Yu also made a breakthrough by analyzing an unfinished energy cannon. The basic principle of the so-called energy weapon is to use a synthetic compound of the element Einsteinium. After heating it to a high temperature of tens of millions of degrees in a strong magnetic field, the Einsteinium will become extremely unstable and have extremely high energy. Energy weapons only require a few milligrams of Einsteinium to cause great damage because of their extremely small mass. They can be accelerated to extremely high speeds, even up to tens of thousands of kilometers per second. The moment it is launched and collides with an enemy target, these few milligrams of Einsteinium will explode instantly. And its lethality per unit area is no less than that of a hydrogen bomb. However, due to the extremely short half-life of Einsteinium in this state, 
it will decay into other elements in a very short time. Therefore, even with the relativistic effect, its impact radius cannot exceed 30,000 kilometers. And because it can only exist in the natural environment for a very short time, it must be launched immediately after the preparation is completed. This requires an extremely high power nuclear fusion reactor, which means that this weapon can only be equipped on large spacecrafts. Shall you finally understood why only the alien flagship was equipped with this kind of energy weapon? And why it would take a long time before the alien flagship would fire an energy SH? L. But even with all the limitations, it is still an ideal space warfare weapon. Xiao Yu has not forgotten that when he was in conflict with the lizard people's civilization, the other party's flagship relied on this energy weapon to kill at least 80 of his village level and township level spaceships, accounting for almost 7% of his total lost spaceships. One part. Einsteinium can be produced by special means in a nuclear fusion reactor. And the heating process can also be completed in the fusion reactor. What Xiao Yu has to do is to create another strong magnetic field and through many experiments, make this weapon more ideal. After achieving a technological breakthrough in energy weapons, Xiao Yu immediately started manufacturing county-level spacecraft in the space dock. What was built this time was an 800,000-ton county-level spacecraft, which was almost three times the size of the original sun. Moreover, with a large amount of raw materials collected from the Lizardman's urban demolition activities, Xiao Yu plans to build two ships at a time. Xiao Yu followed the names of the Yuan Hang and Tian Yuan, which were wiped out by the Lizardman civilization and still named the two spaceships Yuan Hang and Tian Yuan respectively. The construction of new photonic computers has also been put on Xiao Yu's agenda. After observing the lizard people's technology for manufacturing photonic computers and combining his own insights, Xiao Yu had a new idea. After the experiment was feasible, he immediately applied it to the construction. After the construction of the new photon computer is completed, it is expected that its computing speed will be 10 times that of the current photon computer on the sun. By then, this new type of photon computer will be equipped with one each on the new Yuan Hang and the new Tian Yuan. By then, Xiao Yu will have two places to stay. And he no longer has to worry about losing his computing power in an instant after the flagship is destroyed. This is the harvest season. After struggling to eliminate the Lizardman civilization, Xiao Yu has made great breakthroughs in materials technology, weapon technology, power systems, computer technology and other aspects. It's not in vain that I lost so many spaceships, Xiao Yu thought happily. After recycling all the recyclable materials in the city and smelting and rebuilding all his spaceships, Xiao Yu estimates that he will be able to build a thousand village level spacecraft, 120 township level spacecraft, and two 800,000 level spaceships, tons, and a 400,000 ton county class spacecraft. Xiao Yu does not intend to prospect or mine on this planet, because the various minerals on this planet are too poor. This city is probably the accumulation of lizard civilization for thousands of years. And now it is all cheap. Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu also found a lot of nuclear fusion fuel in the dozens of giant planetary engines that were 10,000 meters high. The entire construction process is estimated to take more than 10 years. Xiao Yu is sitting in the sun in space. Presiding over all this, time gradually passed. And in the blink of an eye, three years had passed. Shall you finally crack the second paragraph of this most core information? Our interstellar navigation technology is not mature. During the three-year interstellar voyage, our spacecraft suffered a serious malfunction. This caused us to lose another half of our population. But with God's favor, we, the seeds of civilization, finally arrived on a new planet. After escaping to this planet, we witnessed the destruction of the home planet. Our scientists had a heated discussion and analyzed the reasons for the explosion of the home planet. But they argued for several years. But they could not argue about a single problem. Result. Just then, one of the greatest scientists came up with an astonishing theory. Chapter 52 Luck Xiao Yu watched quietly. In the dark, Xiao Yu's thinking seemed to be connected with the thinking of the greatest scientist of the lizard people. These are two weak civilizations that share the same pain. The difference is that when the home planet is about to explode, the lizard people's technology is more advanced than the people on Earth, allowing them to escape to other planets in the star system in interstellar spacecraft. The people on Earth were much worse. Except for Xiao Yu himself. All died. The translated information appeared in Xiao Yu's mind word by word. He completely rejected the idea that the home planet exploded naturally. He believed that this was a deliberate act by a civilization with extremely advanced technology. We don't know the specific reasons, but all experimental data shows that it was indeed man-made. 
under the natural environment. This kind of thing will not happen. There are only less than 150,000 people left in our civilization. These 150,000 people are the elite of the entire civilization. And this most elite scientist is the most elite person among our 150,000 people. He has, he has extremely high prestige. Under his influence, most people believe in the theory of planet explosion. This planet is unexpectedly barren. We can't find any large-scale minerals on it. So we can only accumulate it bit by bit. Fortunately, this planet has its own heating system. So our survival, the conditions can still be barely maintained. Under the harsh and harsh living conditions, and under the crisis of civilization's demise, we burst out with an incredibly strong desire to survive. And one technological barrier after another was broken through. However, in the face of the terrible when we face the most serious obstacle to control nuclear fusion, our progress has stalled. The information came to an abrupt end here. The following text has not yet been deciphered. The timekeeping method used by this civilization is different from that on Earth. However, Shall you has ascertained the length of time represented by various time titles in their civilization, and then directly translated it into the timekeeping method used on Earth. Shall you fell into deep thought as he recalled this piece of information in his mind. A magnificent scene appeared in Shall Yu's mind. This is a civilization. A civilization more powerful than human beings. They discovered some signs that their home planet was about to explode at least 20 years in advance. 10 years earlier than Shao Yu. It took them 20 years to build a giant spaceship that could accommodate 300,000 people. Shall you could imagine how much pressure it would be to build a refuge for a few people before the end in this kind of androgynous civilization. Without love, family, and cold social relations. Shall you could almost see all the overt and covert struggles in this process. He didn't know how many conspiracies and conspiracies took place. And he didn't know how many tragic things were buried in history. Most importantly, the ship was actually built. What makes Xiao Yu most unbelievable is that their spacecraft actually uses chemical fuel or nuclear fission fuel instead of nuclear fusion fuel. This piece of information clearly stated that they encountered the technical barrier of controllable nuclear fusion only after arriving at the new planet. After the spacecraft was built, during their three-year space journey, their spacecraft had an accident and lost half of their population. Xiao Yu remembered the time when he faced the collision between Mu and Yu. It was as if he was the only one left in the entire universe. Shall you never wanted to experience that kind of loneliness and despair, and the fear of facing the irresistible power of nature again in his life. My own experience is so similar to that of this lizard man civilization. How many hardships and dangers did they go through before they reached the new planet? Why not themselves? Judging from current information, there are at least two Earth-like planets and one Jupiter-like planet in their original galaxies. Their parent planet is one, and this barren star. It seems that they have made a breakthrough the technical barriers to controllable nuclear fusion. And enough nuclear fusion fuel was obtained from the Jupiter-like planet to build a planetary engine. And then the interstellar wandering began. Thinking back on the information he had learned so far, Xiao Yu's heart was ups and downs. Like these lizard people, Xiao Yu also has many doubts. At present, it is basically certain that the planetary explosion is the result of the involvement of some external force. As for why it detonated the planet, it is still unclear. But there is one thing that Xiao Yu is confused about. That is, since this kind of external force has the ability to detonate planets, can it be said that they can't find these people who escaped? Such as the 300,000 lizard people. Such as Xiao Yu? There is another point. That is, since this civilization has reached the technological level of detonating the planet from the air, it can't cover up some signs that the planet is about to explode? So that Xiao Yu and these 300,000 lizard men escaped? If their purpose is to wipe out civilization, then why do they let these survivors escape? If their purpose is not to wipe out civilization, then why do they blow up the planet? Xiao Yu couldn't understand. But Xiao Yu thought of one thing. That is, the fact that the lizard civilization took action against him and refused to live in peace with him must have something to do with this reason. What information did the lizard people get? What was the reason that made the lizard people take the initiative to attack me? Xiao Yu thought silently. The answer to all this should be in the follow-up part of this document. Nearly one-third of the work on deciphering the document has been completed. With the remaining two-thirds of the file content, Xiao Yu estimated that it would take him another three years to crack it. The new photon computer has not yet been built. In order to obtain enough computing power to crack this material as soon as possible, Xiao Yu invested more energy in the construction of the new photon computer. The photon computer under construction consists of 100,000 super-photon CPUs. 
as well as corresponding array hard drives and other hardware. Thanks to Xiaoyu's newly developed distributed computing algorithm, Xiaoyu will be able to completely control these 100,000 photon CPUs. The more CPUs in a supercomputer, the better. If there are no advanced distributed algorithms to match it, a large number of CPUs will not only fail to increase the computing speed, but will also lead to a decrease. With Xiaoyu's current level of technology, controlling 100,000 photon CPUs is the limit. Time passed slowly, and a year later, the first giant photon computer was built. However, because the construction of the new Yuahang has not yet been completed, this computer is temporarily installed on the sun. Can't wait to change to a new home. Xiaoyu controlled 10 times the computing power of before, and worked hard to decipher the lizard people's core information. The second passage was deciphered. After demonstration by the most outstanding scientists, with our current technological level, using this planet as a carrier is the most feasible solution to launch interstellar navigation. This means that we need extremely powerful energy. And at present, we do not have any physical theoretical system that can provide a more powerful energy source than controllable nuclear fusion. Without controllable nuclear fusion technology, we will not be able to launch interstellar voyages. Faced with this technical barrier, our technology came to a standstill until something else happened. We discovered another intelligent biological community hundreds of meters underground on this planet. This is really surprising. Before, we had never thought that there would be intelligent organisms hundreds of meters underground. Intelligent biomes exist with us on this planet. Fortunately, this intelligent biological community only has the technological level of the cold weapon age. And it is extremely violent. There is no possibility of being captured as slaves. Therefore, we eliminated them without hesitation. And with the demise of this civilization, it seems that the disappeared gods have begun to favor us again. And in the second month after the destruction of this civilization, a key breakthrough occurred in controllable nuclear fusion technology. What happened in the future can be described as twists and turns. It seems that after wiping out this civilization, our luck suddenly improved. Breakthroughs in various technologies have occurred. Photonic computers have been created. And controllable nuclear fusion technology has been used by us. We have mastered it. New materials have been developed. We have developed the super giant planetary engine. And our science has entered a stage where a hundred flowers are blooming. We don't know whether these things are related to the civilization we destroyed. If it is not related, it seems to be too coincidental. After a lot of research, our scientists still have no clue. However, there is one speculations began to spread among the people. This speculation is very amazing. Some people say that maybe the laws of the universe are like this. After wiping out other civilizations, the luck of your own civilization will improve. This seems to be the reason why our planet suddenly exploded. Maybe our civilization is the nutrient for another highly developed civilization to improve its own luck. However, until there are clear research results, nothing can be certain. The long-awaited interstellar travel has finally begun. We obtained a large amount of nuclear fusion fuel from the Jupiter-like planet, stored it on the planet, and then started heading towards the young star. At the same time, in order to verify and eliminate the remaining concern about whether civilization will improve its own luck, the provisional government decided that if it encounters other civilizations in the universe, it will do its best to eliminate them if possible. Xiaoyu looked at this passage and fell into deep thought. So that's it. That's it. Xiaoyu murmured to himself, feeling a storm in his heart. The question that Xiaoyu has always wondered finally has an answer. Chapter 53 Why? Xiaoyu never believed that his speculation of profit first was wrong. Xiaoyu always believes that if there is not enough profit motivation, the lizard civilization will not be able to take the initiative to take action against him. Now, Xiaoyu's guess has finally been confirmed. The Lizardman civilization took the initiative to attack itself in order to test the hypothesis that eliminating other civilizations would improve the luck of its own civilization. At this moment, Xiaoyu thought of a lot of things. Could the explosion of the Earth be the result of a certain civilization blatantly attacking the people of Earth in order to improve its own luck? Such an idea came to Xiaoyu's mind. But Xiaoyu keenly caught a doubt. No. No. There is another doubt that cannot be explained. That is, what is the standard for the extinction of civilization? All intelligent creatures that make up this civilization have died? Or have the inheritance of civilization been lost? But it seems that neither of these two points makes sense. Although the lizard people's planet exploded, 300,000 people escaped and did not become extinct. And they continued to pass on their civilization. Although the earth exploded, 
I also escaped. And the human civilization on Earth remains the same. It continues to develop. Since civilization continues to be passed on, it does not seem to be regarded as the extinction of civilization. Since this mysterious and unknown force has not exterminated this civilization, it seems to show that the lizard people's guess is wrong. Or the extinction of civilization. The guess that you can improve your own luck is wrong. But during this period, I was also very lucky. I obtained energy cannon manufacturing technology, a large amount of building materials on the lizard planet, and a breakthrough in the construction technology of new photon computers. Is this because I eliminated is it because of the lizard people's civilization? The mixture of conflicting information made it impossible for Xiaoyu to come up with a clear answer. At this moment, Xiaoyu even had the idea of eliminating a civilization to test the speculation of whether the elimination of civilization will lead to better luck. The second paragraph is gone here. Xiaoyu had no choice but to build a fleet while waiting for the completion of the deciphering work. Gradually, another five years passed. Xiaoyu's construction work was fully completed. The sun was resmelted, and its materials were reforged and became part of the new Yuan Hang. And the construction of the new Tian Yuan was also completed. So far, Xiaoyu has a total of 1,243 spaceships, including two 800,000 ton county level spaceships, namely the Xintian Yuan and New Yuan Hang, and a 400,000 ton county level spacecraft. One ship is the New Sun. There are a thousand village level spaceships, and there are 240 township level spaceships. The three county level spacecraft are equipped with Xiaoyu's most advanced energy weapons. Xiaoyu also gave this energy weapon an extremely popular name called Dragon God Cannon. The weapon systems of township-level spacecraft and county-level spacecraft have also been upgraded. High-speed cannons manufactured using more advanced electromagnetic coil acceleration technology have been fully used. New high-energy laser cannons have also been equipped on all spacecrafts. The overall actual combat capability of Xiaoyu's fleet has made a huge leap forward. Now Xiaoyu. If he faces the Lizardman civilization again, Xiaoyu is confident that he will eliminate all the opposing forces within a month. New photon computers are installed on the Tian Yuan and Yuan Hang. Normally, Xiaoyu will live on one of the two photon computers, and the other one will undertake computing tasks for the entire fleet that do not require Xiaoyu's intervention. The Yuan Hang became the new flagship of Xiaoyu's fleet. Xiaoyu loaded all the recyclable materials on the planet onto the spacecraft. Then, Xiaoyu controlled the fleet and arrived above the planet. It's time to leave, Xiaoyu thought. After staying here for so many years, this matter should be settled. Xiaoyu does not intend to stay on this planet and go to Tian Yuan. One is because this planet is too barren and has basically no development value. The other is that Xiaoyu, who has obtained a new type of spaceship and sufficient raw materials, will be able to control the fleet to achieve higher speeds, at least a thousand years in advance. Arrive at the Tian Yuan four-star system. In this case, it is not cost-effective to continue to stay on this planet. Goodbye, Baron Star, and wish you good luck. Xiaoyu said silently and gave the order to set off. Immediately, more than 1,400 spacecraft simultaneously ejected bright blue flames from their tails and began to set off towards the dark universe. With Xiaoyu's departure, this Baron Star fell into silence again. It will continue to wander in space. Maybe it will be lucky and be captured by a star as its own planet. If it is unlucky, it may encounter a black hole and be directly swallowed. Xiaoyu doesn't care about its fate. There are too many such things in the universe. In the second year after Xiaoyu left the barren star, all the core information of the lizard people was deciphered. The interstellar voyage begins. We leave our star and enter the dark space. The planet transformation plan has begun. Due to the lack of supplies, the project is proceeding very slowly. We are slowly transforming the entire planet's atmosphere. And we have built cities on the ground. Civilization is being maintained and passed on with difficulty. Gradually, our tribesmen have forgotten the warm and comfortable home they once had. But I will never forget it. I was horrified to see that our tribesmen had terrible physical symptoms. Changes. As intelligent creatures, we undoubtedly walk upright. However, in order to withstand the cold and harsh cosmic environment and obtain more heat sources, we began to gradually evolve in the direction of reptiles. And our photoreceptors began to degenerate. We evolved new heat-sensing organs. I don't know whether this change is good or bad. I can only eagerly look forward to reaching the destination as soon as possible. I have almost forgotten what the light looks like. Xiaoyu's fleet began to accelerate again. In fact, 
during the confrontation with the lizard civilization in the past few decades. Xiaoyu's fleet and the planet had been moving closer to Tianyuan Sea. With this acceleration, Xiaoyu's fleet reached a speed of 900 kilometers per second relative to Tianyuan Sea. At this speed, Xiaoyu will reach his destination in about 1,600 years. This time has been saved by more than a thousand years than originally estimated. In the dark universe, there are stars in all directions. The most distant stars are even tens of billions of light years away. The universe is so big and mysterious. There are so many things that I have never understood. Xiaoyu sighed and continued to read this information. In the long journey of more than a thousand years, we have not encountered any civilization. So there is no way to verify that guess. At the same time, our scientific and technological progress has also seriously slowed down. It seems that the good luck brought by the extinction of indigenous civilization has been we have used up. Our group has always been limited to less than one million people. It has to be said that the environment of this planet is really too harsh. So bad that even if we have carried out transformation projects for more than a thousand years, without the life support system, we still cannot survive on this planet. Life is so boring and peaceful. Until something happens, it completely breaks this tranquility. Two thousand years after the escape began, a very serious accident occurred in our civilization. A newly born young life raised a question when receiving education on the history of escape from our civilization. I still remember the name of this young fellow who later grew up to be one of the most outstanding scientists in our civilization. This question has almost overturned our society. His question is very simple. In class, he asked his teacher, after escaping to a new planet, because we are close to the Jupiter-like planet, we have unlimited there is a source of fusion fuel, and there are almost unlimited minerals on the original parent planet. Why can't we develop technology here and wait until the technology is developed enough before escaping? Why did we start escaping without adequate preparation? His teacher was stunned, because his teacher suddenly realized that he had never thought about this problem. Not only him, but also our entire society, with a population of nearly one million, has changed over the past 2,000 years. No one in the world has thought about this problem. It seems that all of us have suffered from selective amnesia at the same time. Forgetting this problem and just focusing on escaping. When technology has just reached the point where the planet can travel between stars, we immediately set off on a long voyage. This issue has had a huge impact in our society. Our entire society has been engaged in a large-scale discussion for hundreds of years. During this period, various hypotheses have been put forward but none of them has its convincing enough. In fact, until now, we don't know the reason. We don't know why no one thought of staying in the home galaxy and developing technology first before escaping. Xiaoyu fell into a daze. There was such a storm in Xiaoyu's heart that the central computer almost crashed. Yes. Why? Why? This seems to be a very simple truth. Stay in the home galaxy first. Use those resources to develop technology. And then escape after the technology is developed enough. Isn't this principle very simple? Isn't it very easy? Have you been thought of? But why? Why haven't I thought about this problem before? Why haven't I thought about this problem at all before? Shall you murmur to himself? His heart even more shocked. Why, why? Chapter 54 Dark Jungle In fact, if he hadn't been inspired by this written record of the lizard man civilization, Shall you would never have thought about why he had never considered staying in the solar system. It seemed that some force dominated Shall Yu's thinking. After Xiao Yu mastered the controllable nuclear fusion technology, he couldn't wait to build an interstellar fleet and start a long voyage. Now, Xiao Yu began to think about this issue. Why, why? Did you forget it? Xiao Yu quickly rejected this answer. This is basically impossible. Moreover, if he really forgot, what about the lizard man civilization? Why doesn't even one person in the lizard people civilization, with a population of more than 100,000, think of this problem? It took more than 2,000 years after the escape for a young being to ask this question? Xiao Yu couldn't understand. There must be something weird here. Xiao Yu thought silently. Now, there are only 1,600 years of voyage left to the Tianyuan 4 galaxy, and it will take nearly 2,000 years to return to the solar system. It seems that continuing to sail to the Tianyuan 4 galaxy has become Xiao Yu's only choice. At present, it is basically certain that the explosion of the Earth was deliberately caused by some kind of being. So, if I want to stay in the solar system, is it also deliberately done by this being? What is its purpose? What on Earth is it doing? What do you want to do? Xiao Yu felt a chill that penetrated his bones. 
This is the chilla being played like an ant without even noticing any signs of it. Calm down. Be calm. Xiao Yi tried his best to control his mind and set the entire fleet to automatic navigation. Only 1% of the computing power was left to monitor the movement of the spaceship fleet. And the remaining 9% was 19 of his computing power was devoted to complex calculations. Xiao Yu is building one model after another, trying to analyze why this unknown and terrifying existence does what it does, and why it does what it does. It is still the principle of profit first. What this unknown being does will definitely bring some benefits to itself. First of all, what this unknown being does leads to two results. First, the Lizardman planet and the Earth explode, leading to civilization it was hit hard. And secondly, it tempted the Lizardman civilization and me to quickly start an interstellar sailing adventure. But it's really contradictory. I really can't find a reason to explain these things. Maybe this is done by two different beings? Suppose there are two civilizations in the universe. One is a benevolent civilization, and the other is a malicious civilization. Maybe a malicious civilization destroyed the Earth. But my existence was hidden by a benevolent civilization, in order to prevent the malicious civilization from discovering me. That's why I was prompted to leave the solar system as soon as possible. There is too little known information to analyze. Let's explore it slowly in the future. Shall you sighed and gave up on further analysis? Perhaps. I should make a guess about the level of technology of this hypothetical malicious civilization. Shall you thought and started to analyze. It also allows me to estimate when I will have enough ability to take revenge. Yes. Revenge. You must take revenge. Shall you thought fiercely and started to analyze. But after just a while. Xiao Yu gave up the idea of analyzing its technological level. Because this method of destroying the Earth is simply unheard of and unseen by Xiao Yu. There is no way to achieve this method in any theoretical system known to Xiao Yu. With Xiao Yu's current level of technology, it is impossible to guess. Let's do it step by step. Xiao Yu stopped analyzing and began to read the core document of Lizard People Civilization. Our ethnic group has been having a big discussion for hundreds of years. But there is no result from the discussion. The only thing that is certain is that this phenomenon is definitely not normal. There must be other unknown forces affecting us. Let us subconsciously forget this idea. We know nothing about this power. And there is no way to resist it. So we can only choose to turn a blind eye and just work hard to develop our own civilization. In the 6,800th year of interstellar escape, we encountered another interstellar civilization. This interstellar civilization accidentally exposed its traces while capturing one of our abandoned satellites. We quickly held a plenary meeting to discuss countermeasures. Some people believe that we should exchange intelligence with them and live in peace. After all, the other party's technological level is not much different from ours. Others believe that we should take the initiative and eliminate him to verify whether it will be possible to eliminate other civilizations. Speculations that lead to an increase in our own luck. After all, we are a civilization that has mastered preliminary energy weapons, which is a little higher than this alien civilization. Moreover, the opponent is just a fleet, and we have the entire planet as our backing. A planet, no matter how barren, is always better than a star fleet that cannot get any supplies. I firmly oppose it. I believe that we should live in peace and exchange information with each other. This will benefit both sides. However, my opinions have not been adopted. I look at them. In this alien civilization, a hydrogen bomb trap was set up on the route. I watched the opponent dodge and I watched the opponent start to launch a counterattack. Xiao Yu couldn't help but sigh when he saw this. At the beginning, I didn't hold the idea of peaceful coexistence. But there is no way. It is too easy for two different civilizations to develop estrangement and suspicion. Ever since the other side set up a hydrogen bomb trap to try to eliminate itself, it has become impossible for these two civilizations to coexist peacefully. The following contents are all records about the war process. And Xiao Yu knows all of these processes. The only thing he didn't know was what happened after the Wood Spirit arrived on the other planet. Xiao Yu paid special attention to this piece of information. Our flagship was destroyed by the opponent. But we also captured one of the opponent's flagship spacecraft. From the beginning of the war to the present, the opponent has shown extraordinary combat effectiveness, which has caused us to suffer huge losses. Some of the people began to question those warring factions. But things have developed to this point and are irreversible. Only one of us is destined to survive. The other party's flagship spacecraft was brought to our planet, and we began to analyze the other party's technology. However, during the analysis process, we didn't know what happened. In an instant, most of our researchers died, 
and the rest people are still dying. This is a means of killing that cannot be analyzed and defended. The other party is obviously just a civilization that has just mastered controllable nuclear fusion. So why does it have such a huge destructive weapon? The route was inevitable, and our army suffered all casualties. After we finally mastered the habits of this terrible creature and eliminated it, our 800,000 people had only less than 20,000 left. I watched that alien civilization landed on our planet, sent out a large number of robot troops, and began to kill our people. I could only watch helplessly, and there was no way. I was just a junior electronic being. I don't have any ability to fight against the opponent. So, I chose to commit suicide. Before I committed suicide, I left this document. I thought, you will see it. Right. A strange civilization. I believe that you will have the ability to decipher and translate this document. Although you exterminated our civilization. I do not hate you. After all, we were the first to attack. I only have one question to ask you. After annihilating our civilization, has your civilization's luck, no, or luck, been improved? I know that you have not mastered energy cannon technology. The rest, material technology, photon computer technology, controllable nuclear fusion technology, etc. are not as advanced as us. Before I committed suicide, I have exhausted all my strength to save these for you. Technology, but at the same time, I have also set up many obstacles to prevent you from learning these technologies from our civilization. So tell me, have you mastered these technologies? If you have fully learned these technologies without expending much energy, then I can know that annihilating our civilization will indeed improve the luck of your civilization. Which proves that our guess is right. On the contrary, then proving that our speculation is wrong. If you have not learned these technologies, then I am sorry. But it is impossible for me to give these civilizations to you for free. Okay, tell me now, have you learned these technologies? Malyaton Civilization, the first artificial intelligence creature of civilization. This is the last chapter. All the information came to an abrupt end here. Xiao Yu stared at the document blankly, letting every word of the document slowly flow into his mind. The original text of this information was not like this, but Xiao Yu translated it into text that suited his reading habits. And it became like this. After reading this document, Xiao Yu felt disappointed. I have indeed learned your technology. And the learning process has been extremely smooth, with almost no obstacles. I was completely unaware of the many obstacles you set up for me. It seems that my luck, or luck, has really improved after wiping out your civilization. Maybe your guess is right. Eliminating civilization can really improve the luck of your own civilization. But, if this is true, then how dark the entire universe must be. Shall you sigh? Tianyuan 4 is getting closer and closer. In less than 1,600 years, Xiao Yu will reach his destination. Chapter 55 Cleaners and Guardians Xiao Yu fell into deep worry. Basically, the speculation that extinction of other civilizations will lead to an improvement in the luck of one's own civilization has been confirmed. However, at present, Xiao Yu still doesn't know why the civilization that detonated the Earth let him go and why he forced himself to obtain interstellar space. After gaining the ability to sail, you must leave the solar system immediately. This feeling is very bad. Xiao Yu has always been accustomed to taking everything into his own hands. This is true on the Earth, in the solar system, and when fighting against the lizard civilization. But now, the information obtained from the lizard man made Xiao Yu really confused. Xiao Yu even wondered whether there would be a huge trap waiting for him at Tianyuan 4. But Xiao Yu thought about it and decided that Tianyuan 4 would be the destination of his voyage. He had decided it early on the Earth. The incident was unlikely to be the result of manipulation by some mysterious entity. And besides Tianyuan C, there was really no other place to go. So he suppressed his uneasy thoughts again. Xiao Yu gave up the idea of returning to the solar system without hesitation. The current speed has reached 900 kilometers per second. If he wants to return to the solar system, he must first decelerate to zero and then accelerate facing the sun. Xiao Yu cannot afford such a huge amount of fuel consumption. Besides, is it necessary for that unknown existence to lay such a huge trap for such a weak civilization? The combination of various factors made Xiao Yu determined to continue to Tianyuan C. Another area of concern is the coexistence of civilizations in the universe. It is conceivable that under the guidance of the principle that extinction of other civilizations will lead to an increase in the luck of one's own civilization. The universe must be in an extremely chaotic, cruel, 
and dark situation. Moreover, the weaker the civilization, the more popular it is. Because weak civilizations are easy to destroy. The people on Earth are really lucky to have developed so far. Shall you sigh? Although I have no intention of wiping out other civilizations to gain my own development, I must guard against being attacked by other civilizations. In order to survive, I must become stronger as soon as possible. Xiao Yu thought, carefully putting away his previous optimistic thoughts. From now on, I must speculate on other civilizations with the most malicious thoughts, and must maintain the highest degree of vigilance against other civilizations. If I detect the slightest omen of bad luck, I will immediately take action first. I would rather kill the wrong person than suffer a loss. Xiao Yu really made up his mind at this moment. On the barren star, Xiao Yu received a large amount of material supplies. Therefore, some elementary, not very energy-consuming scientific experiments can already be started. However, because he is unable to conduct research on basic physical theories, Xiao Yu does not expect these primary scientific researches to achieve much results. Xiao Yu deeply realized the truth that a place with abundant materials and inexhaustible energy is a good place to carry out scientific research, such as in the solar system, in the void of the universe. And no matter how civilization defies the sky, its technological progress will also be severely delayed, such as the lizardfolk civilization. With a planet as its home, it has been wandering in the void for more than 6,000 years, and it has only developed from the initial mastery of nuclear fusion energy to the point where it has just mastered primary energy weapons. Shall Yu's scientific research direction mainly focuses on improving energy weapons and developing nanorobots. The improvement of energy weapons can bring powerful combat power to Shao Yu. If the nanorobots are successfully developed, they can bring powerful defense capabilities to Shao Yu. Before the breakthrough in energy shield technology, nanorobots were the most practical means of defense. Because nanorobots are only at the nanometer level, it is impractical to equip nanorobots with their own energy sources. This problem can only be solved by developing wireless energy transmission technology. Wireless energy transmission technology has been studied for a long time on Earth. It can be traced back to Nikola Tesla in the early 20th century. It is rumored that Tesla has implemented the technology of wireless transmission of electric energy in his villa. But it has not yet been discovered. Confirmed. The principle of wireless energy transmission technology is very simple. It constructs an electromagnetic field and then installs an induction device on the nanorobot. When the induction device resonates with the electromagnetic field, the electrical energy will be transmitted to the nanorobot. While on Earth, the main obstacle to wireless transmission energy technology was the problem of excessive energy loss during the transmission process. However, through Xiaoyu's painstaking research, Xiaoyu has reduced the energy loss problem to an acceptable level. The nanorobot Xiaoyu initially built was at the thousand nanometer level, which is one ten thousandth of a centimeter. These nanorobots are all supplied with energy through wireless energy transmission technology and usually move within countless small pipes laid on the inner wall of the spacecraft SH. L. If the outer SH. L of the spacecraft is damaged. These nanorobots will carry raw materials from the nearest raw material storage point and then use themselves as an adhesive to repair the breach. But this means extremely large computing power requirements. Xiaoyu has made calculations to meet the fast enough repair requirements for a village-level spaceship. At least billions of nanorobots are needed. For more than a thousand spaceships, the total number of nanorobots required exceeds one trillion. The amount of calculation required to operate these trillions of nanorobots at the same time can be imagined. Fortunately, Xiaoyu has two super photon computers, and most of the work performed by the nanorobots does not require Xiaoyu's direct intervention and can be directly thrown to another photon computer. Xiaoyu only needs to make some overall direction decisions. Master. But even so, Xiaoyu estimates that after these trillion nanorobots are put into use, the usage rate of the main computer will increase by 5 to 7 percentage points. It took Xiaoyu 5 years to build the first billion nanorobots for testing. Xiaoyu modified a village-level spaceship, laid a large number of tiny pipes on the inner wall of the spacecraft SH. L. And installed thousands of raw material storage points. After all preparations were completed, Xiaoyu planned to test it to see if these nanometer robot capabilities the village-class spacecraft left the fleet alone. And then another village-class spacecraft raised its gun and aimed at it. Xiaoyu gave the order to fire. Immediately, through electromagnetic coil acceleration technology, high-speed bullets accelerated to nearly 10,000 kilometers per second were shot out. They instantly reached the outer SH. 
L of the test spacecraft and had a fierce collision with it. Ten seconds later, a hole with a diameter of one decimeter was torn out of the outer SH. L of the test spacecraft. The shooting stopped. And then Xiao Yu saw an astonishing scene. At the metal gap, the special material that made up the outer SH. L of the spacecraft seemed to come to life in an instant and began to squirm and extend. Ten seconds later, the gap was first blocked by a thin layer of special material. And then this layer of material began to continuously it thicken on its own. And after a hundred seconds, the gap completely disappeared. Xiao Yu breathed out gently and relaxed. Within one hundred seconds, Xiao Yu controlled more than five million nanorobots near the gap, transported specially processed raw materials from six material storage points, and then used himself as the adhesive to cut that the raw materials formed into particles are glued to the gaps. From a macro perspective, it looks like the outer SH. L of the spacecraft will grow on its own and then block the cracks. A gap of one decimeter in diameter consumes 670,000 nanobots. Nanorobots are disposable consumables, which means that a nanorobot production workshop must be built in every spacecraft, especially in times of war. Nanorobots must be continuously produced to replenish the constant losses. Those, moreover, after equipping the nanorobot repair system, the total energy consumption of the spacecraft is expected to increase by 5 percentage points, which also needs to be noted, but it was finally built successfully and proved feasible. With this technology, the loss rate of my spacecraft will be greatly reduced in interstellar wars. Xiao Yu thought happily and started further research work, such as how to reduce the energy loss rate of wireless energy transmission technology, such as reducing the energy consumption of nanorobots, improving the flexibility of nanorobots and other research. There was also a breakthrough in the research on the Dragon God Cannon. The speed of the energy mass it fired reached one-third of the speed of light. And the energy was also slightly improved. Time slips away slowly in the busy research. In the blink of an eye, a thousand years have passed. There are less than 600 years left to reach the Tianyuan 4 galaxy. And less than two light years are left in the voyage. Tianyuan C has become the brightest star in the sky. She exuded a faint red light and looked extremely beautiful. At this time, Xiao Yu received a strange message. In fact, it is not appropriate to say that it was received. This message appeared so suddenly in the main control computer and was noticed by Xiao Yu. This message did not need to be translated. It was automatically turned into words that Xiao Yu could understand. The 13,600th Dark Energy Broadcast Third Star Field If you can receive this message, it proves that you have at least basic interstellar navigation capabilities. The information reported below may be crucial to you. So please analyze it carefully. The sweepers have increased their efforts to clean up the third star field. At the same time, traces of ghosts have appeared in the third star field for the first time. Your situation may be very dangerous. This message contains simple long-distance communication regarding the instrument manufacturing method. Please import this information into your central computer. The program will automatically start the manufacturing process. Then please communicate with us so that we can locate your coordinates. At that time, there will be specialized personnel to welcome you to the safe area. I repeat, your situation may be dangerous. Very dangerous. Broadcaster, Guardian Alliance 3rd Star Territory Detachment. Chapter 56 Tianyuan 4. Or Cloud. When he just realized this information, Xiao Yu was shocked. Xiao Yu even wondered whether his central computer had been invaded. But it did not develop according to the worst case scenario. At present, it seems that this is just a piece of information. Xiao Yu did not rush to analyze the meaning of this piece of information, but quickly launched a large-scale inspection of the main control computer where he lived. Xiao Yu checked every corner of the array memory and analyzed every signal receiver, trying to analyze the ins and outs of this piece of information. But the result disappointed Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu did not notice any clues in this information. Xiao Yu, who experienced the Lizardman Civilization incident and noticed the face of the Dark Universe, has now become frightened and has begun to be vigilant to the highest degree against any alien civilization. This situation of not being able to find any trace of the other party made Xiao Yu very uncomfortable. After a comprehensive inspection failed, Xiao Yu began to analyze the meaning of this piece of information. The first thing to analyze is the method used by the other party to broadcast this information. As far as is known, this broadcast method is not any method known to Xiao Yu. Conventional radio signals will be greatly distorted after being transmitted for a certain distance. For example, a signal sent from the Earth is completely noisy when received one light year away. 
This means that this radio wave the signal carried above is lost. Shall you can be sure that the source of this information is definitely one light year away. Or even hundreds. Thousands. Or tens of thousands of light years away. The most terrifying thing is that this message can be directly translated into a language that Xiao Yu can understand without Xiao Yu's intervention. This is very terrifying. A signal with certain intelligence? How is it possible? Xiao Yu is a little unbelievable. A signal is just a signal. Just a beam that is emitted. How can a signal also contain intelligence? But if the signal does not have intelligence, how can it appear in Xiao Yu's computer and be translated into a language that Xiao Yu can understand? Xiao Yu couldn't figure it out and could only put this question in the back of his mind. There is no doubt that this civilization is definitely a super civilization that has surpassed me for who knows how many years. And the other party doesn't seem to be malicious. But one sentence aroused Xiao Yu's alert. Please import this information into your central computer. The program will automatically start the manufacturing process. Then please communicate with us so that we can locate your coordinates. After encountering the Lizardman civilization, Xiao Yu decided to speculate on all alien civilizations with the worst intentions. Naturally, this piece of information is no exception. Wireless signals with intelligence are imported into the central computer? What if this piece of information contains some malicious program? After building a long-distance communication instrument, my coordinates are exposed. And what should I do if the other party comes to kill me? After all, in killing other civilizations under the guidance of the principle that it can lead to the improvement of one's own civilization's luck. Any civilization can be used as nourishment in the eyes of other more advanced civilizations. It can be assumed that the other party's intelligence signal can only have the capabilities currently known, but does not have the ability to automatically obtain control authority. The issue of importing it into the central computer must be discussed later. Xiao Yu made up his mind. Because Xiao Yu really didn't dare to take this risk. Assuming this message is true, then it mentions four keywords. Sweeper, Ghost Clan, Guardian, and Safe Zone. From an overall analysis, it seems that an existence called Guardian has constructed an area called the Safe Zone to resist the Scavengers and the Ghost Tribe. Moreover, the word Alliance was added after the Guardian. Shall you analyze silently? Then let's first analyze that in the Dark Universe, it is impossible for such a thing as an Alliance to exist. Since it is an Alliance, it must be composed of more than two civilizations. However, since annihilating other civilizations can improve the destiny of one's own civilization, how can these two civilizations coexist peacefully? There is a possibility that these civilizations, in one they had already come into contact when they didn't know the principles of the Dark Universe at first. And after many years of coexistence, they had merged with each other and could no longer be separated, and it was possible to form an alliance. But the chance is still very small. Moreover, this possibility is only suitable for a very small number of civilizations to form an alliance. In this piece of information, since there is a term Guardian's Alliance's third star field unit, this possibility can basically be discarded. The second possibility is that there is an extremely powerful civilization as the leader, contacting many weak civilizations to form an alliance. Under the suppression of the powerful civilization, the principle of the Dark Universe will temporarily fail. However, why does this powerful civilization need to do this? Is it I wonder if eliminating these many weak civilizations will bring more benefits to them? Maybe it is out of pure kindness and moral sense? It's such a joke. It's basically impossible. Shall you came to a conclusion? Since the Alliance statement is basically untrustworthy. How true is this information? Shall you had serious doubts? According to convention, to lie and deceive people, there must be truth and falsehood in the information so that the other party can be frightened and deceived. So it seems that the sweepers and ghosts are real. I just don't know what these two terms represent. What is it? The sweepers may be the ones who detonated the earth. But what are the ghosts? Facing the terrifying unknown, Xiao Yu felt faintly worried in his heart. Xiao Yu was not ready to accept the principles of the dark universe. And a new crisis came again. This time, it was the sweepers and the ghost clan whose meaning Xiao Yu temporarily didn't understand. The universe is so big. There are so many things that I don't know. Perhaps, with my current level of technology, it's a bit ridiculous to speculate on such existences. Is it possible that what I know is actually wrong? After all, the principles of the Dark Universe have only been verified by the Lizardman civilization in me, and it is not clear whether it is accurate or not. Is it possible that the information told by this Guardian Alliance is true? A safe zone? It would be great if there really was a safe zone where I could develop technology with peace of mind. 
Xiao Yu sighed, and his heart began to waver faintly again. Should I try to import this information into the central computer? Xiao Yu thought, this is a gamble. If the gamble is right, I will get rare time to recuperate. And peaceful exchanges with other civilizations will allow me to the speed of scientific and technological development has been greatly increased. If I lose the bet, I may be used as nourishment by other civilizations and be brutally slaughtered to death. And I will be removed from the universe. This is a dilemma. In the midst of complicated thinking, Xiao Yu gradually made up his mind. At least the universe I see is dark. Therefore, I must look at everything with a dark eye. It is better to rely on others than to rely on myself. Besides, I am not necessarily so unlucky. I just happened to meet someone here. We have arrived at the Sweepers and Ghost Tribe. We are now less than two light years away from Tianyuan 4. And it is less than 600 years of voyage. Let's reach Tianyuan 4 first. Xiao Yu was cruel and deleted this message. Then, without any hesitation, he accelerated all the way and flew towards Tianyuan C. Although this piece of information stated that it contained methods for manufacturing primary overdistance communication instruments, Xiao Yu did not believe that he could obtain these technologies safely. To obtain the manufacturing method of ultra-distance communication equipment, this code must be imported into the central computer and allowed to run automatically. However, Xiao Yu was unable to determine whether this information contained malicious code. Don't bring unnecessary danger to yourself because of greed. Xiao Yu thought, for hundred years passed by, and Xiao Yu was still 0.6 light years away from Tianyuan 4, which is about 6 trillion kilometers. After leaving the barren star, during the long voyage of more than a thousand years, Xiao Yu finally saw the rest of the matter besides his own fleet for the first time. It was a large meteorite about 30 meters tall, with a total mass of about 10,000 tons, and it was mainly composed of dry ice and iron. Here is the Oort Cloud of Tianyuan 4 the boundary of Tianyuan 4's territories. Beyond here, Xiao Yu will truly enter the Tianyuan 4 star system, because its mass and age are smaller than those of the sun. The Oort cloud material of Tianyuan 4 is only 0.6 light years away from the host star, which is almost half the distance of the sun's Oort cloud. The brightness of Tianyuan 4 has further increased. Of course, at this distance, her brightness is not essentially different from other stars. It is still just a bright spot without any detailed features. The moment he saw the meteorite, Xiao Yu felt like crying. During the long journey of more than 5,000 years, Xiao Yu could not tell anyone about the loneliness and desertion he felt during the journey. The helplessness of watching the spaceships being damaged and abandoned one after another. The life and death moment of fighting the lizard civilization. And the fear of facing the vast universe. At this moment, there was suddenly a gap for venting. Because it is a star that emits light and heat all the time. Can bring light and warmth has a lot of matter, and is no longer as deserted as the star in the universe. At this moment, Xiao Yu only felt that his whole spirit felt relaxed. When setting off from the barren star, Xiao Yu's fleet had 1,243 ships. When it arrived at Tianyuan 4 or Cloud, Xiao Yu's fleet had 965 ships left. Among them, all the losses were village-level spaceships. Because a large number of village-level spacecraft were dismantled, and used to repair township level and county level spacecraft. During the voyage, those who could not keep up with the larger force would have to be dismantled. But all these sacrifices are worth it. Xiao Yu is finally going to complete mankind's first interstellar voyage. Here will become my paradise. Here, I will complete the development of basic physical theory, the research and development of energy shields, and the research and development of super distance communications. I will build many spaceships, and I will gain powerful power. Tianyuan C. Here I come! Chapter 57 Arriving at Tianyuan 4. Xiao Yu began busy preparation work. The design work of Huan Yanyuan's for large scale particle collider was put on the agenda. And the site selection work of the base also began. At this distance, with Xiao Yu's current technological means, it is enough to make quite accurate and detailed measurements of Tianyuan C. The latest observations show that the Tianyuan 4 galaxy is quite similar to the solar system with only some differences in some details. The age of Tianyuan 4 is about 1 billion years, and it is still in the juvenile stage of a star. There are a lot of early characteristics of stars here. The Tianyuan 4 galaxy is like the sun in its youth. Through the solar occultation method, shall you determine that Tianyuan 4 has one rocky planet and two gaseous planets. The nearest planet is a rocky planet, only 30 million kilometers away from Tianyuan 4. 
Its mass is 0.4 times that of the Earth. And its volume is about the same as Mars. This planet has been gravitationally locked by Tianyuan. And will always have only one side facing the main star. The main base selected by Xiaoyu is on this rocky planet. If you only consider the convenience of fuel access, it is most appropriate to build a base on a satellite of a gaseous planet. However, Xiaoyu has other considerations. So he still plans to build the main base on this planet. On the outside, about 50 million kilometers away from Tianyuan 4, is a spectacular asteroid belt. This asteroid belt is much larger than the asteroid belt in the solar system. Xiaoyu estimates that the total mass of matter here is about six times that of the Earth. Whether a new planet will be formed here is still uncertain. After all, the initial physical quantities that can determine this result are too many and too complicated for Xiaoyu to make an estimate. For 100 million kilometers further out, there is a giant gas planet with a mass of 1.6 times that of Jupiter. This giant planet has an orbital resonance relationship with the third planet of the Tianyuan 4 galaxy. The ratio is 3 to 2. The first gaseous planet orbits Tianyuan C three times, and the third planet orbits it twice. 300 million kilometers away from this giant gas planet is the third planet. It is also a gaseous planet, with a mass about five times that of Earth and a volume about nine times that of Earth. This shows that the density of the third planet is much less than that of the Earth. Xiaoyu believes that this should be an evolving gaseous planet. In the Tianyuan 4 galaxy, there are still a lot of raw materials left to make stars and planets. The material density in the interstellar space of the Tianyuan 4 galaxy is about six times that of the interstellar space in the solar system. This shows that this third planet will continue to absorb the various gases in interstellar space grew larger and larger, eventually growing into a gaseous planet similar to Jupiter. As for the first and second planets, because they are too close to Tianyuan 4, the material here has been blown away by the strong stellar wind of Tianyuan 4, so they have lost the ability to continue to grow. Three planets, as well as countless asteroids and a young star, make up this vibrant galaxy. Shall you name the first planet Tianyuan A, followed by Tianyuan B and Tianyuan C? Tianyuan A will be my main base. I will build a huge scientific research institute and spacecraft construction base on the backside of Tianyuan A. Tianyuan B will be my fuel base. It will provide me with a steady stream of energy. Endless fuel. The Tianyuan 4 star system will become my new home. This is paradise. Shall you thought happily? There are still 200 years left in the entire voyage. In full expectation. Shall you spent 190 years. With the last 10 years of the voyage left. Shall you finally entered the scope of Tianyuan C's true control. The heliopause of Tianyuan 4. The stellar wind emitted by Tianyuan 4 came to a standstill here. Beyond the heliopause is the world of interstellar radiation. And within the heliopause is the territory of Tianyuan C. Here, it is 4,200 million kilometers away from Tianyuan. Although Tianyuan 4 is smaller than the sun. Because it is too young. Its stellar activity intensity is 30 times stronger than that of the sun. Correspondingly, the distance between its heliosphere and its main star is also farther than that of the sun. Ten times more. Here, Shao Yu directly detected high-energy charged particles from Tianyuan-4 for the first time. Somewhat strangely, the Tianyuan-4 star system does not have anything similar to the Kuiper belt in the solar system. Shao Yu estimated that this may be because of its special interplanet composition and their gravitational battle, which cleared out the material in this area. This means that the number of observable comets in the Tianyuan-4 galaxy is much smaller than that in the solar system. It will take about 10 years to sail these 200 billion kilometers. During these 10 years, shall you watch the increasing strength of the stellar wind with joy. The stronger the stellar wind, the closer it is to Tianyuan C. Time passed slowly, and shall you was only 3 billion kilometers away from Tianyuan C. This distance is roughly equivalent to the distance of Uranus from the sun. Here, shall you observe the gorgeous aurora at the two poles of Tianyuan C for the first time. The magnetic field strength of Tianyuan C is 5 times that of the Earth. And the stellar wind strength of Tianyuan 4 is 30 times that of the Sun. Combined, the laser of Tianyuan C is extremely spectacular. Like a bright blue interstellar streak, the whip was flung majestically through space. Shall you control the huge fleet and began to slow down. 20 days later, Shall you arrived at Tianyuan C orbit. Coincidentally, Tianyuan C happened to be running not far from Shao Yu. Looking at this small gaseous planet, Shao Yu's excitement was beyond words. A large number of detectors were launched by Xiaoyu and entered the orbit of Wanyanyuan C. 
a steady stream of information was collected by Xiao Yu. I want to use Tian Yuan Si as a base to build a big fort. Xiao Yu thought with some grudges. Whoever dares to invade my territory, I will beat them hard. The dark universe theory has become a shadow in Xiao Yu's heart. In order to prepare for the possible arrival of alien civilization, Xiao Yu must improve his strength as much as possible to ensure that his scientific research plan can proceed smoothly. Sixteen days later, Xiao Yu crossed the Tian Yuan B orbit. However, Tian Yuan B happened to run to the back of Tian Yuan 4 at this time. Xiao Yu unfortunately did not see the true face of Tian Yuan B. Twenty days later, Xiao Yu finally reached Tian Yuan A orbit. Here, it is only 30 million kilometers away from Tian Yuan 4, which is only about one half of the distance from Mercury to the Sun. The radiation intensity here is at least 70 times stronger than the radiation at Mercury. However, Thanks to the high-power anti-interference communication equipment that Xiao Yu had prepared long ago. All spacecraft are still under Xiao Yu's control. What a strong interference! It's time to start research on long-distance communication. Long-distance communication is not afraid of any interference. Also, if there is no long-distance communication, when I am on Tian Yuan A, Tian Yuan B and Tian Yuan the fuel collection work at Tian Yuan C can only be left to the program. And I really don't trust it. Xiao Yu thought silently and made up his mind. Under the current theoretical framework, overdistance communication can only be achieved through quantum entanglement technology. A large amount of research has been conducted on this on Earth, but basically no progress has been made. And no one is sure whether there will be progress in the future. The reason is very simple. Although quantum entanglement is faster than the speed of light, it affects the particles at point A and will be immediately reflected on another coherent particle at point B. However, People cannot detect the relationship between this pair of mutually interacting quanta. What information is conveyed must be matched with the corresponding secret key. That is, what impact place A has had on this particle, and the observation results of place A. Only by combining the two can the information be interpreted. But the key it can only be transmitted through traditional means. Calculated. It still cannot be regarded as superlight speed. However, Xiao Yu already had a vague speculation in his mind. Perhaps, through some specific means, this restriction could be cleverly circumvented. Now, we are just waiting for a large number of experiments to verify it. Looking at Tian Yuan C from this distance, it is 5 to 6 meters in diameter, and it is so dazzling that it is impossible to look directly at it. Not only is it impossible to see directly, this place is simply an ocean of light. The infinite light carries a huge amount of energy and spurts out. Like a turbulent sea, Tian Yuan A faces Tian Yuan Silai. Just like a sesame on a basketball, Tian Yuan A has been locked by the gravity of Tian Yuan 4. And only one side will always face Tian Yuan 4. Which brings certain convenience to Xiao Yu. With the big shield of Tian Yuan A here, Xiao Yu can safely avoid the excessive radiation of Tian Yuan 4 on the backside of Tian Yuan A. And calmly build a base and develop technology. Xiao Yu has slowed down the fleet to 97 km per second relative to Tian Yuan 4. This speed is only 20 kilometers per second relative to Tian Yuan A. Xiao Yu is chasing Tian Yuan A. After catching up, Xiao Yu will land on Tian Yuan A and start his construction career. Because it is too close to Tian Yuan 4. Tian Yuan A's atmosphere has long been stripped away by Tian Yuan 4's powerful stellar wind. So it has no atmosphere and no satellites. Tian Yuan A is very dense. Like a solid iron ball. It has no geological activity and its surface is full of craters. The temperature of the side facing Tian Yuan 4 reaches 700 degrees Celsius, and the side facing away from Tian Yuan 4 reaches 700 degrees Celsius. The temperature on one side is only minus 150 degrees, which is very similar to Titan. There is no methane lake here like on Titan. But at Xiao Yu's current speed, it only takes 10 days to walk back and forth between Tian Yuan A and Tian Yuan B. Fuel collection is very convenient. And it doesn't matter if there is no methane lake. After a full month passed, Xiao Yu finally caught up with Tian Yuan A. Then, three county level spacecraft brought all township level spacecraft and 200 village level spacecraft into orbit around Tian Yuan A, leaving more than 600 ships. The village level spacecraft, carrying a large number of instruments, equipment, etc., began the landing process. Chapter 58 Departure Tian Yuan B because Tian Yuan A is locked by the four gravitational forces of Tian Yuan. The back of Tian Yuan A will be eternal night. Under the cover of this dark night, Xiao Yu will launch another vigorous era of construction. This time, 
Xiao Yu made up his mind that he would never leave the Tianyuan four-star system with unlimited resources until he had enough ability to protect himself. The universe is really too dangerous. Not to mention various naturally formed dangerous areas, such as supernova explosions, black holes, neutron stars and other territories. Just talking about various alien civilizations is enough to scare Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu is like a toddler walking in a dangerous jungle full of wild beasts. Every step needs to be careful. If you are not careful, you will be caught by the wild beasts and turned into nourishment. In order to survive, in order to pass on human civilization, I must live. Xiao Yu thought silently. Controlling the new flagship, Tian Yuan released about 200 satellites. Making a signal coverage, Xiao Yu lived on the Tian Yuan. Controlled more than 200,000 robots on the ground and started the construction of the base. The surface of Tian Yuan A is generally flat, but the details are filled with many impact craters. The formation of this kind of impact crater is inevitable. A star system is always chaotic in the early stages of its formation, filled with all kinds of headless asteroids. They run rampant inside the galaxy and hit whoever they catch. The initial material accumulation of a planet is accomplished by the impact of this kind of asteroid. It can be predicted that Tian Yuan A will gradually increase in size and mass in the long years to come. But it will not be as fast as the growth rate of Tian Yuan C. That's all. These asteroids have brought abundant minerals to Tian Yuan A, ensuring the source of raw materials for Xiao Yu's construction of various spaceships, bases, etc. The first thing Xiao Yu built was a huge scientific research institute. In this scientific research institute, Xiao Yu will carry out research on various aspects, including long distance communications, energy cannons, energy shields, more advanced nanorobots, more efficient nuclear fusion engines, etc. At the same time, with the Central Scientific Research Institute as the radiation point, Xiao Yu launched large scale address exploration activities, looking for various elements he needed on Tian Yuan A, and began to build a large scale mining base at the mineral deposit site. The collected minerals will be used by Xiao Yu to build Huan Yanyuans for large scale particle collider. At the same time, Xiao Yu also launched large scale space for construction work. Although the rampaging asteroids will bring various rich minerals to Tian Yuan A, there are some unsightly asteroids that will also bring certain troubles to Xiao Yu's construction work. For example, if the impact point of the asteroid happens to be at the Central Academy of Sciences, there will be big trouble. In order to prevent this from happening, as well as some of Xiao Yu's hidden worries, Xiao Yu built these space forts in full compliance with the highest capabilities and standards. In addition to conventional high power laser cannons, these space turrets are also equipped with the latest energy weapons developed by Xiao Yu. Moreover, Xiao Yu plans to build 10,000 such space turrets. With such quantity and quality, it is difficult to tell whether it was built to prevent asteroid impacts or alien fleet attacks. It has to be said that although the authenticity of the Dark Universe law cannot yet be determined, the process of fighting the lizard civilization has left enough psychological shadow on Xiao Yu. In addition to the Central Academy of Sciences, mining bases, construction bases, and space forts, Xiao Yu also built an extremely huge building. In Xiao Yu's plan, after completion, such buildings will be hundreds of meters high and number in the tens of thousands. According to certain mechanical laws, they will be distributed at the equator, pole, day and night boundary of Tian Yuan A, etc. This is a planetary engine. In Xiao Yu's comprehensive plan, the four large particle colliders in Tian Yuan will be built on an orbit 438 million kilometers away from Tian Yuan. In terms of fuel replenishment, construction material transportation, and energy acquisition, after comprehensive consideration, it is most suitable to build in this place. However, if it is built in this place, Tian Yuan A will cause serious gravitational disturbances to this giant instrument and destroy its orbit. Therefore, on the one hand, in order to eliminate the gravitational influence of Tian Yuan A, on the other hand, in order to verify the construction concept of his high power nuclear fusion engine, Xiao Yu decided to play a big game. That is, by building tens of thousands of large planetary engines, Xiao Yu decided to push the orbit of Tian Yuan A to 41 million kilometers closer to Tian Yuan. By then, the orbit of Tian Yuan A will change from the current distance of 40 to 30 million kilometers from Tian Yuan to 20 million kilometers. This is an extremely amazing project. Such a project would have been unimaginable on the previous Earth. However, Xiao Yu has now mastered enough large-scale nuclear fusion engine construction technologies and has a deep enough understanding of celestial mechanics. Such a huge project can be built in theory. 
during construction. Xiao Yu can also check every technology he has mastered one by one, and can also obtain countless test data, which is of great benefit to Xiao Yu's comprehensive grasp of current technology. This project is equivalent to an exam to assess Xiao Yu's current technological level. If this project is finally completed, Xiao Yu's technology will produce a huge leap in technology. At that time, Xiao Yu will be able to increase the current sailing speed from a maximum of 900 km per second to 1,500 km per second. Per second. The principle of pushing the planet closer to its orbit is very simple. It uses these planetary engines to decelerate it. Then, its orbiting speed is not enough to offset the gravitational pull of Tianyuan 4. And it will fall towards Tianyuan 4. Then, after Tianyuan A falls into a suitable orbit, these planetary engines will begin to accelerate Tianyuan A to give it a suitable orbiting speed. Of course, this process will be extremely slow. In Xiaoyu's plan, the entire process will be completed in 10 years. Generally speaking, except for special cases like the barren star, there will always be some minerals of various kinds on a naturally formed planet. No matter how many. Tianyuan A is a typical example of this. Regardless of whether the reserves are large or small. In short, Xiaoyu found all the elements he needed on Tianyuan A. Then, the era of vigorous construction began. After the construction of the Central Academy of Sciences and various mining bases, Xiaoyu began to build ground parts processing plants. Then, based on these parts processing plants, Xiaoyu began to build ground parts processing plants. After the construction of the spaceship factory building, space elevator, and up to 500 space elevators was completed, Xiaoyu immediately began to build the space dock. After all preparations were completed, a steady stream of new spaceships began to be built. After the new spaceship was built, Xiaoyu immediately organized a long-range fuel collection brigade consisting of Tianyuan, 50 township-level spacecraft, and 300 village-level spacecraft, because ultra-distance communication technology has not yet been developed. This first raw material collection operation must be led by Xiaoyu himself, because only in this way will Xiaoyu fully grasp the entire collection process, and then program the corresponding automatic program comes with the dazzling Tianyuan-4 as the background. The tails of Xiaoyu's more than 300 spacecraft simultaneously fired bright blue flames and began to set off towards Tianyuan-B. The orbit of Tianyuan-B is 400 million kilometers away from the orbit of Tianyuan-A. Of course, this 400 million kilometers is the shortest distance. Now, because the two planets rotate in different positions, the distance has expanded to 500 million kilometers. Based on Xiaoyu's current speed of 900 kilometers per second, it only takes six and a half days to arrive. Counting the acceleration and deceleration time, it will not exceed seven days at most. Along the way, Xiaoyu has seen what youthful vitality is. The density of matter within the four Tianyuan galaxies is at least dozens or hundreds of times higher than that of the solar system. Almost every once in a while, Xiaoyu can encounter a planet with a diameter of large meteorites over five meters roared arrogantly in the interstellar space. Fortunately, some irrelevant meteorites happen to occupy the forward trajectory of Xiaoyu's fleet. They could only be destroyed by firing laser cannons. Along the way, Xiaoyu was troubled by such meteorites. This is a common characteristic of young stars. A stable galaxy like the solar system will take at least billions of years to slowly form amid the gravitational battles between the major planets and the main star. In this process, asteroids are either expelled from the inner solar system, such as the Kuiper Belt and Oort Cloud, or they gather together to form a stable orbit, such as the asteroid belt, or they are attracted by large planets and collide. For billions of years after that, a stable situation will slowly form. Obviously, Tianyuan 4, a star that is less than a billion years old, still has a certain time gap before the galaxy it dominates can form such a stable situation. This kind of meteorite attack reached its climax when Xiaoyu reached the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt in the solar system is just an illusion. You may not be able to see anything if you wander in it for a hundred years. However, the asteroid belt of Tianyuan-4 is worthy of its name. Here, you can see it with any telescope and in any direction. Thousands of meteorite chunks. Even with Xiaoyu's current level of technology, he would not dare to break into a meteorite of this density. There was no other way. Xiaoyu could only control the fleet to slow down and fire laser cannons in all directions. And then he stumbled through the asteroid belt. By the time we arrived at Tianyuan B, eight days had passed. One day beyond the scheduled time, Xiaoyu cursed secretly, reevaluated the difficulty of mining in Tianyuan B, and then plunged into the atmosphere of Tianyuan B. 
Chapter 59 Planetary Engine The mass of Tianyuan B is greater than that of Jupiter. And accordingly, its gravitational control range is also larger than that of Jupiter. Shall you observe that among the satellites orbiting Tianyuan B, there are more than 20 that have reached hydrostatic equilibrium. This place is very suitable for building an interstellar fortress. Well, after the construction of one annuance for large particle colliders and the new spacecraft is completed, the construction project here will begin. Tianyuan C will also be built into an interstellar fortress. In this way, Tianyuan B and Tianyuan C will become the two lines of defense in the Tianyuan four star system. If we encounter any blind aliens, even if their technology surpasses mine, they will still be able to fight. Xiao Yu thought secretly. The material composition of Tianyuan B is not much different from Jupiter, which means that Tianyuan B will become Xiao Yu's inexhaustible source of nuclear fusion fuel. After a preliminary inspection, Xiao Yu sat on the Tianyuan, using 50 township level spacecraft as escort force and drove all the remaining 300 village-level spacecraft into the atmosphere of Tianyuan-B. As Tianyuan-B's the atmospheric currents drift slowly, 300 village-level spacecraft were busy for a full month before they collected enough fusion fuel to fill all the spacecraft. Judging from the current construction progress, these fusion fuels are enough for Xiaoyu to use for three months. It's still a little lacking. My various projects are too big and consume too much energy. Using these combat spacecraft to collect fuel is too inefficient. It seems that after returning, we have to develop a special type to collect fuel. Fuel for the spaceship. Shall you, who embarked on the return journey, made up his mind. During this period of large-scale construction, Shall Yu's total energy consumption alone is estimated to be comparable to the entire energy consumption of mankind in the Earth era. This is an incredible amount. Fortunately, there is an entire planet as Shall Yu's energy source base. If it were on Earth, there would have been an energy crisis long ago because it was fully loaded with fuel and the mass of the spacecraft increased. It took Xiao Yu 10 days to return to Tianyuan A, with the arrival of a large amount of fuel replenishment. Various construction projects in the era of large-scale construction accelerated again. Xiao Yu temporarily stopped the construction of combat spacecraft and began to build a spacecraft specifically for collecting fuel. This spacecraft is larger than any of Xiao Yu's current spaceships, and its total mass reaches 3 million tons. The volume reaches 1,200 meters by 500 meters by 60 meters. In Xiaoyu's plan, this kind of spacecraft is already a medium-sized city-level spacecraft. However, there is still a certain gap between this kind of spaceship and a real city-level spacecraft. Apart from the necessary laser anti-collision device, it is not equipped with any other weapons. Its maneuverability is very poor, and its maximum speed can only reach 100 kilometers per hour. Seconds. Its protective power is also very weak. A low-power energy cannon SH. L is enough to level it. Overall, it basically has no combat effectiveness. But it is very suitable for use as a transport spacecraft. In Xiaoyu's plan, each of these spaceships will be equipped with 200 village-level and township-level spacecraft. After arriving at Tianyuan-B, the city-level spacecraft will enter the orbit around Tianyuan-B, and it will be equipped with village-level and township-level spacecraft. The spacecraft will enter the atmosphere of Tianyuan B to mine. After the collection is full, the fuel will be transferred to the municipal spacecraft. And then it will continue to collect until it is full before returning. A total of five city level spacecraft were built in the first batch, counting the village level and township level spacecraft equipped respectively. Their full load of primary fuel can meet the current consumption of Xiao Yu's various project construction for one year. Moreover, with his first experience of collecting fuel, Xiaoyu has programmed the automatic collection. In the future, he will not have to go to Tianyuan B to mine fuel in person. After solving the problem of energy sources, Xiaoyu began to work hard on the construction of various space turrets, ground turrets, large planetary engines, and large particle collider. Municipal level spaceships are busy shuttling in space, transporting large amounts of fuel for Xiaoyu. Thousands of mining bases and hundreds of mechanical foundries are operating at full capacity. Hundreds of village-level spacecrafts are responsible for the task of transporting the planet's surface. And Tianyuan A was busy going back and forth. And the entire Tianyuan four-star system showed a prosperous scene. Three years later, the first large planetary engine was built. This is a giant building with a height of 100 meters and an area of 600,000 square meters. The entire building is in the shape of a tilted cylinder. Shall you also installed an adjustment device at the bottom of the building? which can easily adjust the entire building, the tilt direction of the building, 
Thousands of robots are busy inside the building, debugging various instruments, and are installed throughout the building. Millions of sensors continuously transmit information to the central computer. Xiaoyi uses his huge computing power to respond to them one by one. The fuel tank pressure is normal. The nuclear fusion reactor is normal. The cooling system is normal. And the injection port is normal. Xiaoyi looked at the data one by one. And after confirming that everything was normal, he issued the order to start the machine in order to prevent a large amount of air eruption from affecting the space docks, satellites, etc. He arranged. Xiaoyu adjusted the orbits of various aircraft in the direction in which the jet ports faced and avoided them in advance. As the startup command was issued, thousands of nuclear fusion reactors immediately began to operate at full power. A large amount of energy was transported out by wires and transferred to the pressure chamber. The pressure chamber was pressurized and heated to an unimaginable degree. A huge amount of under the influence of high temperature and high pressure. The propellant is ejected from the injection port at an incredibly high speed. This is the backside of Tianyuan A. Here is the eternal night. But suddenly, at the equator of Tianyuan A, a bright blue light appears. This light rises into the sky, with a length of tens of thousands of meters, as if a dazzling bolt of lightning pierced the dark sky, illuminating the nearby area with a radius of dozens of kilometers and a faint blue. It was as if Tianyuan A suddenly grew a slender tail. A satellite operating 300 kilometers above the ground was blown by this airflow. Immediately, the extreme high temperature burned and melted its outstretched wings. Then, the satellite was like a mosquito in the strong wind and was blown away. The blow reached the second cosmic speed of Tianyuan A, and it rolled and rolled without knowing where it went. I'll wipe it! Xiaoyu stared at all this in stunned silence and uttered a rare curse word. The jet height of the airflow and the thrust generated by it have exceeded my original estimate. It seems that the orbits of various aircraft in space need to be readjusted. After the satellite was blown away, Xiaoyu's pre-built seismic wave monitoring instrument detected a weak shock wave. Xiaoyu knew that this was caused by the deformation of the Earth's crust under tremendous pressure. At the same time, tens of thousands of detectors installed ranging from tens to tens of thousands of meters underground also continuously transmit data to Xiaoyu's mind. These data will help Xiaoyu analyze the stress on the Earth's crust. Xiaoyu's brain was spinning rapidly. While thinking about these issues, he nervously watched the data from the pressure sensor and carefully controlled the thousands of robots and tens of thousands of controllers inside the planetary engine. Constantly doing so. Minor adjustments. According to the current data, the number one planetary engine will be able to produce a huge amount of reverse thrust for Tianyuan A. The specific performance is that the number one planetary engine can produce a deceleration of Tianyuan A of 0.1 millimeters per minute. The current orbital speed is 59 kilometers per second which means that if other factors are not considered, it will only take more than a 100 years for the number one planetary engine to bring the speed of Tianyuan A to zero. But considering the crustal pressure, deceleration direction, and later acceleration issues, only one planetary engine is far from enough. At least 10,000 planetary engines are enough. Shall you calculate it silently? 10,000 planetary engines. Well, five years is enough time to complete the construction. Building a planetary engine is a complex process. During the construction process, in addition to considering the construction process, the geological conditions of Tianyuan A must also be considered. The reason is simple. If a planetary engine is built in a place where the crust is not hard enough, when the planet when the engine is started, under the huge pressure, it may directly break through the Earth's crust and run underground. Moreover, because the planetary engine is too powerful, Xiaoyu must also consider various issues such as material tolerance and heat dissipation system. But even in the face of various difficulties, Xiaoyu is confident that all planetary engines will be built within five years. Labor is not a problem for Xiaoyu. As long as the raw materials and energy are sufficient and several major robot factories are operating at full capacity, thousands of robots will be produced every day. These high-quality workers who are tireless, precise, and make no mistakes or shall use a strong guarantee for carrying out various constructions. Now, the total number of robots busy on the ground of Tianyuan A, as well as various spacecraft such as Transportation Brigade and Combat Brigade, as well as space docks, forts, etc. has exceeded 1 million, and it is still increasing rapidly. This is only the initial stage of construction. After Xiaoyu pushed Tianyuan A to a suitable orbit, the construction of Tianyuan's for large-scale particle collider was the real challenge to Xiaoyu's technology. 
the Tianyuan-4 Large Particle Collider will rotate around Tianyuan-4 at a distance of 38 million kilometers from Tianyuan-4. Relying on the centrifugal force of its own rotation to offset the gravitational pull of Tianyuan 4. As a result, the total length of this collider will reach more than 200 million kilometers. And based on a diameter of 20 meters, its total mass will reach more than 700 billion tons. This does not include the quality of the necessary reserve maintenance fleet and the quality of various anti meteorite impact turrets. This will be a great project. Xiaoyu's technological level will take a huge leap with the completion of one annuance for large-scale particle collider. Chapter 60 Moving for Tianyuan A The large particle collider is an essential tool for studying the microscopic world. Xiaoyu will accelerate a pair of protons in the collider to a point infinitely close to the speed of light, and then let them collide with each other. At the moment of impact, the impact point the energy level will reach the level of one femtosecond after the creation of the Big Bang. At this moment, the proton will be smashed by the impact, and various microscopic particles that make up the proton, including those that have been observed and those that have not been observed, will appear. Figure. Xiaoyu will be here to verify whether the Higgs boson really exists. Although there are laboratories on Earth claiming to have found the Higgs boson, their results have not been verified. If the Higgs boson is really observed, then Xiaoyu's basic physical theory will advance to a new stage, and there will be countless theorems and formulas derived by Xiaoyu. It is foreseeable that these new theorems, the formula will support Xiaoyu's scientific development for thousands or even tens of thousands of years in the future. Just like the theory of relativity and quantum mechanics has supported Xiaoyu's technological development in the past thousands of years, as long as the existence of the Higgs boson is confirmed, the standard model will be verified. Regarding the question of how mass is produced, the theory of the Higgs mechanism will give an almost perfect explanation and mass it means energy. By then, Xiaoyu will be able to find a way to obtain unlimited energy at a theoretical level. In the midst of busy construction, time slipped away bit by bit. Five years later, 30% of the construction of the space turret was completed. The construction of the four large particle colliders in Huanyanyuan has not yet started. Tianyuan B and Tianyuan C the construction of the space fortress has not yet started. But the construction of the planetary engine has been 99% completed. In another month, the last planetary engine will be completed. The superpower of planetary engines means a lot of fuel consumption. In order to supply these 10,000 planetary engines, shall you increase the size of the transportation brigade to 100 city-level spacecraft and 20,000 village-level and township-level spacecraft. This is a huge fleet. If these fleets have the combat capabilities that shall you had when he first left the solar system, shall you will be able to completely crush the lizard civilization with these spaceships. But unfortunately, these spacecraft only have the most basic power system. Their maneuverability, attack power, and defense are all extremely weak. They basically have no combat effectiveness and can only be used as large trucks. Especially city-level spaceships are more fragile than village-level and township-level spacecrafts. In fact, considering Xiaoyu's current material technology and power technology, it is not suitable to build such a huge spaceship now. But if it is only used as a transport aircraft, it is still okay. At the junction of day and night in Tianyuan A. As a dexterous robot tightened the last screw and completed the last welding process. The construction project of 10,000 planetary engines was declared completed. These 10,000 giant planetary engines were regularly distributed by Xiao Yu all over the surface of Tianyuan A. Some were on the equator. Some were at the boundary between day and night. Some were on the far side. And some were on the sunny side. These planetary engines will play different roles depending on their location. Finally, the construction is completed. Xiaoyu was a little excited. In the past, this was a great project that humans could not even imagine. But now, Xiaoyu has built it on his own. In areas A and B, the planetary engines are activated according to the preset power. Areas C and D are temporarily on standby. Xiaoyu issued the order. Shall you set different powers for each of the 5,800 planetary engines in Area A and Area B? The specific power is mainly based on the solidity of the local crust, as well as the location and the tasks required to be performed at that stage. After comprehensive determined by calculation, this is very precise data, and there is no room for error. For example, engine number 576 in Area A starts at full power, but engine number 93 only starts at 7.3% power. More than 5,000 planetary engines must work together to complete the tasks assigned by Xiaoyu. Area A is located at the boundary between day and night in Tianyuan A. 
The 4,600 planetary engines here are the main power area for decelerating the planet. Opposite Area A The 4,000 planetary engines in Area D are the main source of power for accelerating the planet. Area B and Area C mainly serve as auxiliary forces. The moment thousands of planetary engines started, Xiaoyu felt a tremor from the depths of his soul. It was an indescribable feeling. Xiaoyu noticed that under the full power of the 4,600 planetary engines in Area A, the crust of Tianyuan A was squeezed by an incomparable force. And the hard crust began to be squeezed, transformed. The whole planet was trembling slightly. Xiaoyu saw that on this side of Area A, the Earth began to crack. And the geological activities that had long ceased in Tianyuan A began to resume. In some places, they even stood up abruptly, forming countless mountains hundreds of meters high. Later, in more places, trace amounts of hot magma began to slowly gush out from the cracks in the Earth. Xiaoyu knew that this was because these areas were squeezed by the inertial force of the entire planet. Fortunately, Xiaoyu had explored the terrain in advance before building planetary engines, mining bases, foundries, etc., and specifically selected the thickest and strongest places in the Earth's crust to build. Places with mountains and lava are all places where the Earth's crust is weak. It didn't have much impact on Xiaoyu. From space, thousands of blue rays of light, hundreds of thousands of meters long, suddenly appeared at the boundary between day and night in Tianyuan 4 and in the always dark area B, flying freely in space, like arrogant dragons. The area covered by the exhaust gas of these planetary engines has long been cleared of all flight instruments by Xiaoyu. Otherwise, if it is blown by these exhaust gases, it will definitely be blown away directly. A total of 5,800 planetary engines were activated for a total of 60 seconds. It's not that Xiaoyu doesn't want to achieve the goal quickly, but that it lasts for 60 seconds, which is already the limit. Otherwise, not only the planetary engine cannot bear it, but also the crust of Tianyuan-A. If it continues to be started, the crust of Tianyuan-A will have it may be directly destroyed by these big guys. Under the combined action of these planetary engines located in different areas and with different powers, Xiaoyu detected that the speed of Tianyuan-A orbiting Tianyuan-4 was 59,600, and 43.72 per second from the aphelion. The speed of 3 meters was reduced to 59,600 and 43.722 meters per second. And its speed was reduced by 1 millimeter. The fourth orbit of Huanianyuan was pushed closer by 57 meters by Xiaoyu. This is an amazing achievement. And it means that Xiaoyu has truly entered the stage of technology that can control planets. Okay, the first phase of the advancement test is over. Shall you stop the test with joy and turn to analyze the huge amount of data obtained from this test? These test data are very valuable. The most intuitive point is that it is related to the maximum speed that the spacecraft built by Shall you can reach. By analyzing the data from the operation of these giant planetary engines, Shall you will be able to build a more efficient spacecraft propulsion engine, allowing Shall you to once again achieve a maximum speed of 900 kilometers per second. Three days later, Shall you who had digested all the experimental data, started the second push experiment without finishing it. During this push, each planetary engine was activated with different powers for a total of 67 seconds. This experiment once again reduced the aphelion speed of Tianyuan-A by 5 millimeters, and at the same time advanced its orbit by 267 meters towards Tianyuan-4. After calculation, the gravitational acceleration generated by Tianyuan-4 against Tianyuan-A is 213 meters per second. In other words, if Tianyuan-A had no orbiting speed, in the first second, it would fall towards Tianyuan-4 at a speed of 213 meters per second. In the second second, its speed would become 213 meters per second. One second is 426 meters. The third second is 639 meters. And so on until it is accelerated until it is limited by the theory of relativity. It will eventually crash into Tianyuan-4. What Xiaoyu has to do is to focus on Tianyuan's 4 gravity acceleration, do some small auxiliary movements, and use scientific calculations to achieve his goal. Thousands of planetary engines have been working intermittently for seven years. Under Xiaoyu's precise command, the orbit of Tianyuan-A has been pushed closer to 8 million kilometers. The current average distance from Tianyuan-4 is only 22 million kilometers, and it continues to fall towards Tianyuan C at a slow speed. At this point, what Xiaoyu has to do is no longer to slow down Tianyuan A, but to accelerate Tianyuan A to prevent it from continuing to fall towards Tianyuan 4. At this time, 
the 4,200 planetary engines built in Area C and he came into play. Under Xiao Yu's unified command, Tianyuan A began to be slowly accelerated, and its speed of falling towards the sun began to slowly decrease. Eventually, Tianyuan A will reach a speed sufficient to maintain its stable orbit at a distance of 40 to 20 million kilometers from Tianyuan. Xiao Yu has made calculations and found that the speed is about 70 kilometers per second. The deceleration continued for another four years. In the end, it took 11 years for Xiao Yu to complete this great project of moving Tianyuan A. The time consumed was slightly longer than Xiao Yu's original estimate. This was mainly because the data was not complete in the initial stage. Let these planetary engines stay here as a souvenir, and they may be of some use in the future, Xiao Yu thought, controlling millions of robots to move the various instruments and components of these planetary engines. Stored properly? Anyway, the Tianyuan 4-star system is very rich in matter, so there is no need to recycle these instruments. Then, it's time to start the next phase of construction. The construction of Huantianyuan's for large-scale particle collider has officially begun.